Hey now! It's your boy PSA Sitch here with another Sunday Sunday show <laughs> with everyone's favorite gagger. <laughs> no, don't <laughs> I'm not do gonna it. Say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. We were talking before the stream. Anyway, with everyone's favorite uh, harmonica YouTuber. gagging enthusiast, Adam Frenzen. Oh my God. What's up, everybody? Uh, happy Sunday. We're covering a, a much requested video this week, Sitch. What's, what, what is this video? Are we not going to say join by? The oh yeah, and favorite, by the way, we have a favorite. We have a par- <laughs> Doomer we have, Media. We have a party crasher today. Doomer Media. Oh, should we even call you Doomer anymore? Because that's not your official nom de plume no longer. Yeah. What? Uh, what should we Doomer's, be promoting? Doomer is fine. I don't, I don't want to be associated with your little operation here. Isn't so. it parallax? Look, a, a rebranding would be good for you, Doomer. Nobody likes you in the chat. Nobody likes you in the comments. <laughs> I think rebranding might be. Might be in the cards for you. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, let's just, I mean, why not start with a fresh slate here? Let's just yeah. call you Parallax, right? That's Parallax. your new channel. I just, I, <laughs> if, I, if I'm going to come here and talk politics, then it's going to stay Doomer. Okay, Doomer okay, it is. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You know what? I'm not, I don't want to call you anything else. You're Doomer forever in my mind and in my heart. Right, yeah. He's a uh, bit of a doomer. It is on, that is true. on brand. So that yeah, is true. I'll keep calling you dickhead too. So it's fine. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> that works. Only in your dreams. So today we'll be covering one, maybe two, of our favorite pyramid head, Bill Cipher that you have at home, Illuminati. Yeah, uh, an incredibly hyper woke leftist, insane, Karen type individual. <laughs> Uh, who we we listened to very briefly on the leftist mafia podcast in the episode that we watched on that um but before we so she had two videos one that was about the definition of woke which is totally crazy and the second one is all about propaganda oh no uh but before we jump into those videos maybe we should start about we should talk about how everyone on the internet is dumping all over pyramid head she got into a little bit of drama yeah what happened there i did chud cover that before anyone else did because i feel like chud did a video on that and then the entire internet decided they were going to do an inter- a video on it as well people I people th- were already shitting on her pretty hard it was it's one of the worst l's i've seen but it moved twitter, from, which is, it moved from twitter to youtube though yeah like yes. it was on twitter people were dunking on her and then everyone decided let's just make illuminati videos I mean, I was going to fucking dunk on her. It's some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> it's an industry now. So the drama yeah, everyone... was something to the effect of she accused somebody of uh, cribbing her her video style or something like that. Mm-hmm. She she accused one of Legal Eagle's editors of mm-hmm. stealing her style. And her style are things that are incredibly common, like <laughs> shockingly common, not even her own assets. These are plugins from like Envato Elements oh, or Motion bad. Array. Oh, that's bad. And then beyond that, <laughs> the editor was just, he, like, he was like sending her an email. He was like, hey, I'm a big fan of yours. I was just wondering like what plugin you used um, to do this effect in this video. That, that's well, like all he was doing. Was, let's back up. Let's do this in order. We're kind of jumping ahead here. Uh, sure. So to, to answer your question, Adam, this was drama that started on Twitter. I believe Chud was one of the first people to cover it on YouTube. Um, I don't know why his video didn't get more views because it was really good. And then, yeah, and then everyone just started dumping on her on YouTube. So what originally started happened? What originally happened was uh, someone on Illuminati's editing staff noticed. Oh my God, that legal eagle, famous mainstream media left wing type guy, mm-hmm. kind of normie lawyer guy, mm-hmm. uh, had used. Two things in his video, two things in his video that apparently he stole from Illuminati. And do you know what those two things were? Ooh, oh, what are they? Uh, well, they are the, the... <laughs> the first was a graphic. A graphic? Oh. A background graphic. You know, like you have the background graphic, graphic that you Must put have been something on. very custom, something it... amazingly done, to, like paid for by a, oh, a, yes. a premium artist. Oh, yes. Get this. Okay, uh-huh. it was a picture of a piece of paper a, with a, the top of the paper ripped a painted off. piece of paper right something some elaborate drawing on it that everyone knows is famous branding for the channel no like a <laughs> microsoft 95 powerpoint presentation background picture. just a, like a fucking ripped piece of paper it's a ripped piece of just a paper it's like, the top literally 
It's it's a PowerPoint template from the mid nineties. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yes. It's yes. one of the most common graphical elements in video design. It predates YouTube. Yes. To no. and to make to make no. things funnier, the first time that she used this was like two years ago. People after have been doing this for decades. I know. After he used it. Yes. Yeah. Holy oh, fuck. Oh wow. So she used it after the fact. So she basically stole it from him. Yes. Ouch. Well, no one, no one stole it from anyone. It's just a stupid accusation to me. <laughs> okay. It's like even, even if you did, even if, even if an editor of Legal Eagle went to her video, screenshotted it blank before text appeared, and then just changed the color, who, no one cares. It's, as you said, it's like the most common thing in a video ever. So for her to say that he stole it from her, it's like, it fucking, like it's ludicrous. It's, right? it's basically, it's, what, what's really funny about it is that it's admitting that she doesn't really have any style. Like if that's <laughs> if that's what you think someone stealing your style is, is like, oh, they also used a ripped piece of paper. Like, bro, holy shit. Like, you don't have anything going on. Like, what the fuck? How do you get mad about that? I that's know, pretty sad. I know. That is very So that was sad. the first accusation. Uh, the second accusation is even worse. Even, it's somehow even worse dumber, than though. a ripped piece of paper. <laughs> worse, worse. <laughs> The second accusation is that in Legal e Eagle video, he had a very special, very unique animation graphic. Okay. Okay. So you've, this is something custom yes. that he made. Yes. You've never seen anything like this in a video in your entire life. Okay. okay. Something brand new. Right. So you know how like when there's text on a page. Right. And yes. you want to like uh, show the audience a very specific you know, sentence in the text. Yes. And so a, there's like a little graphic. Where the text becomes highlighted by a highlighter no way you're you're kidding me <laughs> that's well, in every legal, single legal video had text on p on, a, on the screen and it got highlighted by a highlighter he stole it from her like he a... stole the highlight she owns the concept of highlighting text in a video wow wow it the, the the greatest thing about this this is this is honestly just this is classic this is a this is a chef's kiss walking into a room full of rakes is that this effect <laughs> is called this effect is called the vox highlighter effect that's what you search for if you go to a plugin hub to try and do the effect because vox was doing it in like 2014 or something yes oh i've They've been seen doing that this all for almost videos. 10 fucking years yeah this is like yes. the yellow highlighter just glides across the text correct right i mean yeah. you've yeah. seen that in like that's in all the videos, all the yeah, and I'm not, and I don't mean like there was no videos. like there was no visual of a highlighter. It's just literally there's text, and then the text gets that little yellow box that like highlights it. Yeah, and that's it. That's the, on the court only, TV that's like a thousand yeah, years the, ago. The the only thing that kind of makes it interesting is that there's a tilt shift zoom effect people use sometimes, but I don't think she even uses that. So she doesn't even use the best version of it. Like no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. No, she didn't even use that. It's right. they've, this has been around from like the 1970s. I've seen like, you've seen like grainy footage of JFK dying and they highlight the text underneath. <laughs> like this yeah, is, no, I see it's oh on my... TV. It's on cable TV all the time. Yes. So did she send a cease and desist to legal Eagle? Because I don't, that's not smart if he's so, an attorney. <laughs> right. So instead of Illuminati handling, first of all, instead of just being like a sane person. Right. And if an editor not first told her this, yeah. I would look at them and I would say, is your brain working? Did you inhale car fumes all day? What the fuck are you talking about? Okay. Instead of just having that sane rational reaction to call their, her own editor an idiot for bringing this to her. And then instead of having the second sane reaction where even if she thinks this is a big deal to email legal legal privately and discuss it with him, she's like, no, I'm going to go on Twitter and I'm going to blast him. Oh my God. I'm going to get this editor fired. So, so she goes... So hold so on, could, she had an editor that talked to her about the situation? Supposedly. Okay, so she's not even the one doing these effects. No. Some editor is doing these effects. Uh, so this is really, really, it's worth pointing out really quickly that she runs a content farm. Maybe the only thing she really does is voiceover and like maybe supervision, but they produce so much content. Like, we're okay, we're talking about two hours of content a week. Right. And like sort of 
I That's say, it. You know, I, I mean, say, we do like twenty hours. Of well, okay, but these, I mean, it's, it's produce edited content. content. <laughs> produce content. What? Not, this not is going a, on stream. Hold on, I'm producing a show right now. This is produced content. What are you talking <laughs> produced about? Produced in finger quotes. I would, I, I would guess. <laughs> Sit. Shut up. <laughs> like, I would, I would guess that she has like at least a dozen employees. I don't know mm -hmm. how they could produce this much content. It's they so, do it's, produce a lot of content. Yeah. It's wow. so fucking much. Wow. She's like the kingpin. <laughs> yeah, no. Listen, she's making bank because her videos all get oh, I a know. lot of views. So we looked it's them a, up last time we talked about them. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. she's doing like twenty five million views a month. Right, despite the fact that you know the videos are all insane and terrible. Right. Um, at least nowadays, supposedly she made good days back in the past that I've never seen. Um, but okay, so what happened was oh okay, so then the, the top this all off, there was an editor of Legal Eagles who apparently was a fan of hers. And he he asked her or went to her Discord and said hello, hello. I am an editor for Legal Eagle. I am big fan of you. Uh, can you help me with some things? Right. He wanted some advice or something about right. some editing facts. He wanted the plug-in. He's like, yeah, what not, plug not the What plug-in do you use for this? Exactly. Not the editing what, effects. How do you question, tear but, the paper? Do I use but, my hands? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not the editing effect in question, but some other some other editing facts. And it was so weird because first of all. You have like if you're a YouTuber and a and another and an editor for a different YouTube channel, what's like much larger than than yours because Legal Eagle is you know a very right. big channel. Stratosphere. Legal. Yeah, Eagle says he's like, like a big fan of yours and like you know wants to talk to someone for advice or questions. You wouldn't you think you'd be like, oh yeah, of course, you know, let me uh, let me talk to this person, right? This would be a good connection to have. No, instead, all of, all of her Discord mods are like. Get the fuck out of here, loser. <laughs> this isn't the place to ask these sorts of questions. Like, they're just oh so dismissive. Oh, my God, really? It's, it's wild. It's totally <sighs> wild. Um, They're so dismissive of her. Uh, and then apparently he also followed up with some email, which, you know, she never responded to or something. Um, So so then, so basically what she does was she goes on Twitter. She accuses this editor by name. And I think their no Twitter way. handle was like their literal name or something. So she doxes him in addition. Yes. Ouch. She does dox <laughs> Ouch. She doxes him. <laughs> Um, and she's like, oh, this fucking person, you know, was asking for stealing, you know, my effects in the discord. And then she, you know, she makes public ac accusation against legal eagle so that he was stealing. And at first everyone's like, they read the messages on the discord. They read the email and they're like, this person isn't stealing anything. They're just asking you for help. And you obviously didn't give to them. And they're being very nice and polite. You're an insane person. And then they look at the accusations and they say, you're a double insane person. These were not stolen. These are some of the most common graphics used in every video ever. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And she gets annihilated on Twitter by even famous lefty douchebag H bomber guy. Oh yeah, no H bomber guy dropped the H bomb on her. He did. He did. He and he accused her of plagiarism herself in some past video. Right. She did where she you know took some part of a documentary or something. And he showed receipts. He had a video with it. Yeah, he he went he went after her hard, um, and so basically everyone but the leftist mafia crew, who of course all defended her, <laughs> including Lance the Surfs. Lance the Surfs had some tweet that was like, "Oh hmm, my god, what a cut fucking tweet!" Holy he is, shit, he is super cut. I mean, first of all, he's like, you have to admit, you have to admit it. He's okay. He's responding to like legal eagle. I'm going to yes. paraphrase. I don't give a fuck if this is misinformation. He's like, he's like, well, you got to admit it's a bad look. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about, Lance? What the actual fuck. He, yeah, legal, he, well, he said Legal Eagle was had a bad look. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah. He, well, Lance huh. is like they're butt buddies or some, they're like on a fucking podcast or some shit. The yes. only people that were defending her, literally, the only people on the entire internet that were defending her were her podcast co-hosts. But Legal like, Eagle didn't do anything mean. I mean, he was nice. No, no, he, no, he, no. He's very polite. Yeah, obviously. So he's an adult. Listen, what was the bad look in Lance? He's a mind. lawyer. Yeah, you know, of he, course. He, he responded to her on Twitter professionally, very professionally yes. and cordially. It, he didn't. He yeah. didn't say he did anything wrong, but he responded cordially and professionally. Lance responds to Legal Eagle saying, like something like, "Yeah, like, whoa, you got to admit this is a bad look, bro. Wow, this is crazy." Oh, and so then, he, of course, he's saying the whole stealing the assets is a bad yes, look. He's, he's saying okay, that's a bad look. Gotcha. Right. right. That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> right. And then, uh, so basically everyone, including, you know, most of the people on the left, totally jumped down Illuminati's throat, utterly attack her because this is the most crazy accusation ever. Um, and then the worst part in this, and then, so, okay. So this has been going on for like a week or two. Illuminati recently comes out with a video a few days ago 
you know, covering the drama. And really? Yes. It's a terrible video because she only really talks about like everything we just we just talked about, which is what the story is. She only talks about that for like two minutes of like a 40 minute video. Wow. The rest of it is all these other accusations. Cause you know what happens with, you know, whenever someone gets dumped on by the internet, everyone that has any grievance ever, you know, comes out of the woodwork to attack them. Yeah. yeah. That, that picture of the guy in this suit. <laughs> I saw a picture of her room yeah, and her right. room was very, very messy. She seems exactly. like a very messy girl. <laughs> right. That's no, but it's, that's what always happens. Some, yeah. She's it's like, and about as, this mess in my room, the, um, <laughs> I had a, her, I had a very her tough parents time. are like tweeting her like, like you never cleaned your room <laughs> tw ten years ago. <laughs> like, yeah. If 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 you're storing up a spirit bomb, I I, I won't leak. But uh, do you know about the other allegations? What no? What are they? You're talking about the wonder allegations. I'm, I'm talking about her ex employees, <clears throat> like three of them. Yeah, that's that's what the, the her video is. It's all about that. Uh, okay. Um, but I don't really want to get into them because I don't really give a shit. But so, so basically, she's, yeah. she's a slave driver, right? That's the word on the street. That's the accusation. Yeah. She's yeah. The word on the street is she's an asshole, mm -hmm. right? Which everyone should know, depending on our, you know, according to how she reacted to this insane. Well, situation. just the, just the Twitter accusation alone kind of yes. outs her as an asshole. Well, <laughs> I mean, she's trying let's to be honest here, right? So, so essentially, you know, someone does something wrong, everyone in the world sees this as the big green flag to go jump down their throat with every accusation they've ever made. But unfortunately, this kind of gives her the ability to put out this video where she only addresses the legal eagle stuff for like two minutes and just admit she's wrong because it's literally undefensible. Right. There's no way to defend these actions. And then she'll spend the rest of the video time on all these other accusations and then, you know, kind of dismissing all those other accusations and defending herself, which kind of creates this illusion in people's minds that, oh, she actually defended herself well and thus, you know, she'll be forgiven right. going forward. Um, but so... In, in, in her video, even though she admits that what she did was wrong with Legal Eagle, she doesn't actually admit the big problem here, which is, first of all, that it's insane that she would think this in the first place. I, right. I, don't, I don't understand how you could think this in the first place. It's like anyone that thinks that a highlighter effect and a paper ripping effect is stolen from you, why would you ever trust their opinion on anything ever at so, that point? That person what, what is detached of, from reality. What One of her former employees said that she like doesn't watch YouTube at all, so she's just completely disconnected from the platform. That could which, be. Like, that, I, that would that's, make sense. That's, that's yeah. the only explanation that yes. makes sense to me as to how like because because uh, otherwise it's it's like it's like schizo posting. I mean, yes. it's like legitimately <laughs> like you need to go see a psychiatrist. How can you? <laughs> yeah. How can you? Like the only excuse is that she just doesn't know anything about YouTube, which is funny being a big YouTuber, but that's probably true. Well, yes. but the, uh, did the editor put her up to this? Did the editor gaslight her into thinking that this was some who, stolen who knows? asset? Who, well, who well, knows? so okay. So part of the part of the stuff Sitch doesn't want to get into is that all, all of her like former employees were basically saying that she tries to cultivate like uh, an angry mob of yes men. Like she will mobilize people against other people. Like mm -hmm. she'll get pissed off at people, and like she needs she needs the people that she's around, like her employees and stuff, to back her up when she gets in these little fights. This is like one of the things that all of them said. Mm -hmm. So it, it that could easily be what's going on is like, she just basically has a bunch of people who are there to be like, Oh yeah. Yes. Queen. Like you're fucking right. You know, whatever you say, and then just get mad, you know, and agree with whatever the fuck, which, you know, that's not a good situation. To in be exchange in because, for continued work. Are they all like freelancers? I, I, I don't know the exact situation. So she's basically saying like, you got to be on Twitter and back me up when I get in these little Twitter skirmishes. <laughs> But like, and the, is the this why is, I'm just curious if this is why Lance is backing her up on Twitter? If he's, if there's like, I mean, some stipulation I don't, I don't in probably, the contract. Well, I don't, I don't think Lance is her employee. I think they're just friends. Sure. But like, <laughs> but my, my point is like, if you surround yourself with yes men, when mm -hmm. you do something really fucking stupid, like when you're walking into a room full of rakes, no one tells you to stop. Right. Which is yeah. like, what are the, what are the reasons you need to have people that tell you when you're fucking up? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. But if somebody a true friend, somebody might get even by gaslighting her a bit, though. Like, oh, yeah, yeah these true. assets are totally unique to us. Here, go you're on. Saying that, you, you're saying that her, legal, editor, legal. her editor is like, this fucking bitch isn't paying me enough. Let me try to get her. <laughs> that would be like so funny. On Twitter. Well, it's she's disconnected <laughs> from reality. Look, do you think the editor is disconnected from reality? I'm doubtful. Like, the you're editor saying, probably like, knows what's up. Right. I, you're I, saying I that Illuminati is essentially like Putin. She's completely disconnected from information, and she yes. relies on her editor generals to tell her what's totally. what. Totally. And they, they're just feeding her wrong information. Yeah. They cause well, this it's whole kind of, catastrophe for. Well, it's, it's kind of brilliant. 
<laughs> like when you, apparently when you get to a certain size, you can just do that because like Linus of Linus Tech Tips infamously just doesn't watch YouTube videos, mm-hmm. and like he runs one of the biggest YouTube channels, which I well I you don't, don't have time for it after. I mean, if you're running a content farm, you're dealing with people all day and whatever. Probably, yeah. You don't yeah. have time to watch YouTube videos. Right. We're reacting, so YouTube. we have to. I well, I'm always YouTube watching YouTube life. videos. What are you talking yes. about? That's not true. Really we watch YouTube videos the all the time. I know. No, Look, so, it's literally this, our job to react know, to YouTube videos. Well, of course but we're watching YouTube videos. The the second thing that her apology completely missed, which is even more important mm-hmm. in my mind, besides the fact that she's like completely disconnected from reality, is she well, does wait, wait, I don't think we spent enough time on the H Bomber guy stuff. Because I don't think oh. you actually said like H so H Bomber guy did this mm-hmm. video or accused her of plagiarizing other people's videos. And he linked a video that showed like side by side comparison of her doing one of her videos and then the documentary that her video is is based yeah. on. So she basically has a history of just outright plagiarizing. Well, okay. Well, okay. I would say that H. Bomber guy, because he is also an idiot, mm-hmm. shouldn't have used the word plagiarizing. Hey. He's a lefty. He's not an idiot. Come on. But those are synonyms. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Um, he shouldn't have used the word plagiarize because to plagiarize means to lift something and not credit the source. Oh, so she did credit the source. Yeah. So she does say, like, first of all, it's a it's a clip from a documentary. No one thinks she made that clip. Okay? Right. It's very obvious that this that's not something that she made. No, no, no. She, she's she's stealing the the voiceover from the documentary and then redoing the voiceover herself. So she's stealing the words. No, 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 no. So she, what she does is she has the clip and some of the voiceover, and then she adds her own voiceover at, at parts because she wants to edit the clip down, essentially. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, right. So she's not And like she's claiming, crediting, so... Right. And, and, and she supposedly credited mm-hmm. both in the video and in the description, supposedly, uh, where this came from. Right. And talked about it in the video. Okay. So it's, so you could say like it's improper, co- like it's copyright infringement. Like I don't, you can't, you know, she's just using something else to make her point. She's not editing to it, you know, or editing it in some way to make it for use. Yeah. She's but it's not plagiarizing. It. Right. So, but anyway. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So that's a useful distinction. Right. Um, I like so, it better okay. when she's just like the plagiar, the pl- plagiarizing I, 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 queen, though. It's it's much better. It's easier to hate her that way. Exactly. No, you can still listen. Still hate her way, right? She's still a hypocrite. So, but the second thing, and the more the more important thing, is that the the point of what she was doing of attacking legal eagle and specifically attacking this editor and having pictures with his name and his messages, she's trying to get this guy fired. Right. She's trying to get this guy from to legal lose eagle. Yes, yeah. she's trying to get this guy to lose his fucking job. She, in her mind, when she's deciding to do this, she's looking ahead and thinking like, Legal Eagle, some big YouTuber is going to come out and he's, it's so kind of funny. It kind of shows her insane. Either one, she's insane, she didn't think any of this through, or she's a little bit more malevolent and she was thinking, I'm going to gain clout here because I'm going to have a bigger YouTuber apologize to me for taking, my, you know, stealing from wow. me. Wow, right? that's is gonna insidious. Help me. And- He's going to come out and he's going to fire this person for doing this action, right? Because that, like, like assume there was like a actually legitimate claim, and some legal evil editor did steal something improperly from her. Right. That would be the move for him to fire this person. Right. So, so this insane, uh, evil person, Illuminati here is like, I'm going to try to get this guy fired from his job, and she never acknowledges how malicious that is. Right. Well, she's so, in favor of cancel culture. They all are. Uh, right. So I don't the, know. The, the whole thing to me mafia. Is, right. So the whole thing is like wild, but um. So okay. So that's kind of like the backdrop to the to all this. We, uh, you know, she made this video a couple weeks ago, and I was like, I was like, listen, everyone's dumping on Illuminati right now. Right now, we the time. gotta <laughs> jump on the panwag. <laughs> well, I mean, it's in the algorithm now. I mean, I saw like 20 <laughs> right. videos responding to this drama. That's how people are so freaked out because they're like, bitch, that's a torn piece of paper. What the <laughs> hell are you doing? <laughs> like el- everyone on YouTube knows the highlighter effect. I've never seen something so obviously like one-sidedly wrong in my life. Yes, yes. That's why it I'm did. wondering if the editor gaslit or like who... So someone brought her the information that this was like a, a serious moral infraction that has taken place here. And she's like, right. yep, that totally is. <laughs> right? 
Right. I mean, I, I think she's just, you know, she creates conflict and uh, she's pretty oblivious. That that seems to be the best explanation to me. Oh, OK. Uh, maybe. I mean, she she is not an intelligent person. So well, she, uh, I, I'm just saying she didn't hatch this plan herself. Somebody one of her editors complained about this situation and then she said, oh, I can use this to my advantage. Right. Without vetting, um, without vetting the complaint, right, and that right. complaint was either made, like the either the editor was gassing her up or the get editor was incompetent. Mm -hmm. So, but I I, I'm thinking if she's like a mean bossy bitch, that the editor might have been gassing her. Maybe up. it's very possible. It's very possible. Um, I should get that thing, the add-on that lets you see dislikes on YouTube, because I'm curious to what the dislike ratio is on her. Oh, I will, I will tell you right now. Let me go check it out. Yeah, see on what the video? see what the dislike is on her video that she's like defending herself. Because I feel like all these people, to me, this is like the ultimate. This is the I know I said Kyle Rittenhouse was NPC test. This is like the ultimate NPC test. Anyone that defended her is literally brain damaged. Right. <laughs> okay, so you, you mean the Illuminati exposed video? Yes. Uh, thirty-three thousand updates, fourteen thousand downboots. Wow! So, uh, wow! Okay, so it's not still... that bad. It's like seventy percent likes. Right. Okay. So all her fans, but that's her audience. So all right? her simp's are gonna just defend her and and um. That's the thing. All the people pissed off about this are gonna go watch her fucking video. Right. <laughs> so, what well, you think? I'd be a little curious. Be like, oh, you know, she actually addressed the allegations. Oh no, she spends all time talking about something else. Okay. She has a well. I'm sure, and you didn't bring this up in your little rebuttal to her video, but mm -hmm. she, she probably brings up a bunch of people attacking her online, right? She does. Yeah. So someone, someone in the comments of that video, they said the exactly. This is the exact correct comment. They said, "This response is just quote. I am so sorry. I did a bad. Now want to hear some shit about other people to make them look worse than me." Yeah. So what about is in the video, right? Yes. Yes. So here's here's kind of an interesting question. If you put your foot in your mouth this hard, do you think it's the better optical play to just ignore it and move the fuck on with your life or apologize and like admit wrongdoing? No, this like, this move that she did was the best optical play, I think. Oh, oh really? Oh, really? OK, yeah. interesting. Because it gives people the false. Now, whenever someone brings it up, her simps will just be like, what do you she apologized for this? What are you talking about? And they link this video, right? This basically gaslighting video. Lots of engagement. Nice. Yes. So, I think this was the move. This is this is this is like the good move. This now, if we ever make a mistake on this level, which we never will, because we're not that stupid. I know. I can't we'll remember this tactic going forward in the future. Maybe we should have Doomer make a mistake like that, so we can test it out, test the waters. I'm not, I'm not that stupid. Well, I mean, actually, I think Doomer's already made all those mistakes, right? With the oh, Chappelle true. video That's and. True. Like he's already video, been down this. The just, okay, the Chappelle video. video was a tactical mistake, but I was right. I think you just don't like black people. You don't like Chappelle or Django. Yeah, what's up with wow. that? Very. Yeah, I'm, I'm defending. Look, I'm defending Django in the new video. Okay, getting my repentance. Oh, sweet. Okay, so anyway, so that's enough of the drama. So now we're gonna watch this video. This is where Illuminati covers the whole what is a woke controversy so you can see her totally insane oh fuck's sake wacky uh definition of woke yeah the second half of this video drives me bat shit it's just so All right, i'll go i'll go get the blood pressure medication fuck <laughs> yeah uh, Salandre for twenty dollars. Thank you, Salandre. Says I find it funny how Illuminati is complaining about someone copying her when she got her success from copying R slash format. True. That's a good point. Yes, definitely. That's a good point. This format is very persuasive to people. This highly edited documentary yeah. style filmmaking video. People mm -hmm. just eat it up. That's why she has a million subs. It's always funny to me. Where there's people like this, like Big Joel, a lot of these other uh, YouTubers who you watch their highly edited content and they come across like, I am this totally calm, sane, irrational person. Look how calm and sane and rational I am. And then you see them on a live stream or you see them on Twitter and they're like an unhinged maniac. Right. Like, yeah. they're like, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, they're a completely different person. As soon <laughs> as you take like, the script oh out of their hands, they know nothing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or they're just like... Like they they know nothing, but they're just like a total a hole. Yeah. Well, the, like, the, 
I feel like in my video that... and in your videos and in Doomer videos, I feel like a lot of our personality comes across in the videos. Like, I don't feel like we're like when I, when I would do a video and then I do yeah. a live stream, I feel like people go from one to the other and be like, oh, I understand this is the same person. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like yeah, I can... a, a car crash. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> let's get Jesus. into this. Once again, to stop pyramid schemes, scams, and other forms of corruption. If you missed your chance to pick up the original Illuminati pyramid plushie with an eye out for oh, corruption, no. don't fear, she's back and better than ever. Makeship is doing. You want, you want <laughs> to you want you do some... the plushie? Look at this. Isn't that not like the worst looking plushie you've ever seen in your life? Oh, yeah. Looks terrible. It's so ugly. I mean, I've never seen a plushie I would want to buy, so I don't know. Who's That's better you buy... at exposing scams than a scammer, right? That's true. You bought at least four of our plushie each, Doomer. Yeah, what's going on, Doomer? What are you doing with all those plushies? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Sammy told me she's like, "Who's this? Who's this Doomer media guy? He bought so many. He bought more plushies than anyone else here." Yeah. A time warp campaign, and they're relaunching some of the original campaigns. It's so and bad my plush looking. <laughs> this I just can't get over it. It looks awful. Stop ripping on our plushies. These look so them. bad. So if you missed your chance about what two pizza head i know pizza this head. is a big ugly ice cream pizza what the hell Ooh, two and a half years ago at this so point bad. to grab the original pyramid plushie with the magnifying oh glass my God. she's back but only for you think it we... opens up in the back <laughs> what you have to you have to buy it's and an, find out it's an innocent question for about two weeks so if you want to get your hands on one oh. head on over to makeship.com or just Look, click the link her. in the description box Dang to go right to my plushie now you're excited legos have gone woke disney has gone woke even m&ms have succumbed to the woke oh, she brings up the m&m in the very beginning they all bring up the m&ms find virus but hold on what does woke even mean Let's ask Bethany Mendel, who wrote an entire book on the object horrors of woke culture. I'm sure she'll have a clear and concise explanation. Uh, Bethany? Why? Could, could, would you mind defining woke? Because it's come up a couple times, and I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So, I mean, woke is sort of the idea that um, I... This is going to be one of those moments that goes viral. I mean, sorry, I... It's, it's hard to explain in a 15 second sound bite. Well, yeah, look, your it, time. Okay, well, um, so it seems- God, This is such propaganda. The eerie music in the background, like, oh my God, will she be able to define it? <laughs> it's so scary. Look, she's having a meltdown right in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. music track is just, oh God, it's so just manipulative. It just tells you exactly how to feel. I don't, yep. I don't like that. Seems like that helped absolutely no one, but that's okay. We have a bunch of other people we can turn to who consistently discuss this new detrimental phenomenon. Let's turn to Fox News. They seem to be the ones that talk about this the most. So obviously they should have the best definition, right? But it's sort of like the Supreme Court definition of pornography. You know it when you see it. So the Democrats want to get you in an argument where you're having to define de defined wokeism as if the Webster's Dictionary is defining it. And that's not what it is. It is a, it, it, it could be a feeling. It could be a sense. According to Fox News, woke is more like a feeling. It isn't something that has to be defined. I got it. I got it. Okay. But what type of feeling? Is it the type of feeling I get when I pull my nachos out of the microwave and find that the cheese hasn't melted quite right? No. Okay, so this is why we need definitions, people, because uh, direction's unclear. But for people who can't just... Yes. Well, it's, there's just this, Matt, this whole woke thing is such a massive gaslighting. Everyone knows, everyone has a sense of what is being discussed. They might not understand the philosophy behind it. They might not, might not understand exactly what's going with wokeness. Everyone understands what is happening. They understand that the left has changed its position, especially on the internet, and definitely seems to be far more anti-liberal, far more aggressive, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone we, understands this. We we need to we need to institute a doomer's law, which is just such as law, except for they know they're doing it. And that's what everyone does all the fucking time. Yes. Every yes. political argument is just fucking people arguing about definitions <laughs> and trying to change the fucking definitions of words. It's so fucking annoying, dude. Yes. Like holy fuck. Yeah. That's Changing the definition true. to win an argument. True. Yeah. And it's funny because most of the people on the left when they read her definition that she gave on twitter 
about systemic uh, you know injustices and Ben Shapiro's definition except for Big Joel most of them read it and they just said oh that's true I agree with that good yeah exactly that's a good thing right so it's just like the whole conversation's so dishonest it's yeah. such an obviously dishonest dunk because someone you know stumbled in an interview which has never happened before in the entirety of all human existence but she's bringing her definition to it which is what's insane right seem to define the woke is they certainly seem pretty damn terrified of it over the last few years, we have seen politicians, journalists, and just normal everyday people use this word to describe virtually everything that has remotely changed since 1950. Oh, oh there's no. a box Women can work now, support themselves, <laughs> and get a credit card? It's the curse of the woke mind virus. <laughs> but like, seriously, people can go to school and learn about the real history of the United States and like you can do this for anything, anything, like anything that your opposition does. You can find the dumbest person in the room saying some dumb fucking shit and then act like that's everybody. Like, uh, yeah. just you so mean the Daily Show strategy? That's what uh, fucking everyone does, dude. Like, I know, they've been doing it for years. Right? It's very fucking frustrating. Yeah. Like, people, I, I'll probably make a video at some point on my second channel. It's like <laughs> why I fucking hate politics. And this is one of the biggest reasons. It's just like so mm -hmm. fucking frustrating. Well, and she oh just, my God. She just defined CRT right here as just teaching kids proper American history. I know. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Wait, she did? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I must have fucking, I must have zonked out there for a second. What? It's the curse of the woke mind virus. <laughs> but like, seriously, people can go to school and learn about the real history of the United States. The real history where the white yeah, people were to blame for everything. We're all the only thing that they remember about George Washington was he was a slave owner. Yeah. You know, I went to school. I'm an old man. Okay. I'm a very old man. So I, I went to school a very long time ago. Right. And, you know, pre all the, all the woke stuff. And I remember in elementary school in history, we spent an inordinate, inordinate amount of time learning about how the Americans wiped out the Native Americans. Right. <laughs> that was like the entirety of my elementary school history class. Oh, here's all, here, you just keep shoving your head all the stuff about how we killed the Native Americans. And then it's like in middle school and high school, I learned about the horrors of slavery, you know, again and again and again. Like the idea, like this totally insane gaslighting idea. I don't know what state these people are talking about, but the idea that, you know, in the 90s, everyone was learning that, you know, slave owners and white, uh, that's white slave owners and black slaves were all like holding hands and skipping through the metals. This is a complete total lie. Okay. I had to watch Roots. I had to do all this stuff. Everyone was taught all the horrible stuff that America's, you know, been doing forever. You know, I grew up with all this, you know, the v America and Vietnam was terrible. We literally lived through America and Iraq and Afghanistan being terrible. Like, this is a complete rewriting of history. This didn't happen. Right. We, we watched Malcolm X in my middle school. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. The idea that schools just are raw, raw America. Is that what you're saying? It's just a fiction. At well, least, I mean, yeah. This is a complete, this is a complete fabrication. Well, I mean, broadly speaking, I mean, there is propaganda in school, it's, but it's not like, I mean, it's it's not like it's completely whitewashing everything. Like, no, there's there's an acknowledgement that you know, there there was some uh <laughs> some skullduggery going on, <laughs> right? It's an oh my god, we're not as perfect as the propaganda is, and we're actually see, there's schools propaganda. There you kind go. of a terrible country too, just like every other fucking country. Oh my god, it's blasphemy. No way, no, 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 not blasphemy. It's woke behavior. She's America bad all the way, you can tell. Yes. Well, it, it is woke to to act like America is as bad as all, you know, every other country in the world has done bad things. That is woke. That is entirely woke. Right. Yes. Yeah. And while all of this is relatively amusing to watch, there are some very real dangers associated with this new uptick in outrage over seemingly meaningless things. As people are... You know, this is... They always do this thing. They're like, oh, that's not happening. It's not a big deal. But if, but it, if is it is, we need to protect it, right? <laughs> it's like, great. <laughs> it's like, oh, they're all arguing over the seemingly meaningless things. But then when they try to outlaw it, oh, we have to fight. We have to fight so hard. This is fascism. Fascism has come again to America. <laughs> it's so true. Now, you know, it's funny because they always complain about, you know, you can't define woke. These people couldn't define fascism. Oh, of course not. They can't how define anything. How loosely Look, they Since you know it when you see it, okay? Yeah, exactly. 
Donald Trump is a fascist. Well, what, what does that mean? What, what do you mean he's a fascist? Well, I mean, you know, he's a, he's authoritarian. You know. Yeah, no, they mean authoritarian, but they're they also authoritarian. authoritarian, which is the problem. So, they just fascism. When someone calls someone a fascist, I mean, they're, listen, there's like some tiny minority of people in America that are like pro fascism. They're not part of politics. Okay. But when some leftist calls someone a fascist, that's them. They just want to call someone a Nazi, but they know that the Nazi label is so overused right. that they want a different version yeah. of it. So they go for fascist. Fascist is the new Nazi for them. Right. They're screaming out of their freaking skulls about M&M's desexualizing a damn candy. Others are using the exact same rhetoric to abolish DEI programs, enact anti-trans legislation. Good. Wait. Did, did anybody actually give a fuck about the... Wasn't that just the green M&M stuff, just a meme? Did anyone actually care? Like, people care about no. this stupid... They did it on... Shit. They ran spots on Fox News and stuff, but... Right, but it was like... It wasn't that big. They thing. had to it get rid like, of sexism in the M&Ms. Right. Well, okay. So complaining about the M&Ms thing is stupid, <laughs> but there is an actual argument there that none of these people ever address, which is that... You know, yes, who cares if a candy product becomes less feminized or something? No one gives a shit. But the argument is, well, what is the ideology behind the reason for defeminizing the M&M? &M? Sexism. Sexism, right? Yeah. And then, so that is tied into woke ideology. I think Tucker did a segment on it once, and I don't, you know, I didn't see it. So I don't, I'm assuming he wasn't sitting there masturbating under the table to the green M&M, &M, just so upset that, you <laughs> Look, know, she was no longer as sexy. I'm assuming he just that's not, he brought up it was like, this is dumb. That's not the good argument. The good arguments, they did a bad job. Okay. Cause I'd still fuck the green M&M. &M. <laughs> the non-binary green M&M &M doomer. Absolutely. Really? She's not numb. No, it's, I'm pretty sure the green M&M &M is still a woman. Okay. The original She's green M&M &M was a microaggression. That's why they got rid of it. Wait, am, so. I, am I misgendering the green M&M? &M? You are. Green M&M &M is still a lady. Okay. An MB. She's still... She, look, Slash. there you go. A still, still a cis green M&M. &M. I, I type in green M&M &M &M on Google, and it's like the third picture is her like... <laughs> these like big lips, like leaning back. I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, she was on? wearing stripper shoes, right? Right. She used to be. Not right. anymore, though. Yeah. Said so she should search for um, Green M&M &M Rule 34. And, and you know, it's weird. Books. They actually... <laughs> someone, someone has a link to all the... Because they redesigned a lot of the characters. Right. Like, in subtle ways. Um, we can't gave... use sex to sell candy anymore. I know. Damn right? it. It's weird because they, um, they made the Green M&M's lips a little less full. They mm. gave her, like, the... Like she's wearing like a shirt, I guess, underneath her body or whatever the fuck it is. They changed. They gave her like tennis shoes instead of the stripper boots. But it's weird. The chocolate M and M, the black M and M, right? She still has the high heels. That's very sexist. That's very sexist. Wait. Speaking of which, is uh, is Sammy G around? I need a commission. <laughs> Sammy, do you have any, do not you have take any, any, you have any, uh, any degenerate pencil, commissions from Doomer, please. Hmm. She is in the chat, so there you go. Good. About M&M's desexualizing a damn candy, others are using the exact same rhetoric to abolish DEI programs, enact anti-trans legislation, and ban books with no regard for the consequences. Sure, it's all a stupid... You know, did you see today Hillary Clinton tweeted out she was she tweeted out some NBC article that was complaining about all the you know all the LGBT books that are banned, right. and very very poor choice of thumbnail. The thumbnail for the article is the book Gender Queer, which is the book everyone uses as the example of degeneracy in school. If that's the book that has, I'm sure you've seen it, like the cartoon character like underage boys like giving each other blowjobs in the shower. No way. Wait, really? What the fuck? Yes, and that was that was the thumbnail in the NBC article that that Hillary that I'm sorry that Chelsea Clinton not Hillary Clinton that Chelsea Clinton tweeted out complaining about the book banning and everyone's like dragging her for it. like oh my god Chelsea Clinton in favor of showing kids you know wow. uh, pedophile cartoons wow that's a huge mess up yes it made up circus act but there's a lot more going on behind the razzle dazzle of it all that should uh -oh. certainly make us stop and think for a second. So today, I want to talk about it. Why did the word woke suddenly become the calling card for every right-wing grifter in the world? What are they really saying? 
and what are the consequences? Why did this thing I'm that came Illumina about suddenly oh. start to get named and talked about? Why? Call, call it, I calling can't people, uh, calling people grifters, huh? It takes one to no one. Yeah, totally. Hey, there, buddy. True. True. All the right wing are grifters to woke people. Of course. Yeah. Dude, that's one of the, the fucking grifter gets so overused. Like, yeah, it annoys me. Like the two two things that like just everybody gets called is like clout demon and grifter and it's like almost it's straight up almost never true even people i hate are very rarely like clout chasers or fucking grifters like lance isn't a grifter he's just stupid right <laughs> i don't you know what i think lance is a grifter i, I think don't lance think so. i well okay let me i would that. i would take i would take bad odds on that let me let me <laughs> like, be clear i think i i shouldn't maybe i shouldn't use the word grifter because i do think he is like an actual leftist and believes all this dumb shit but i think he know i think when he tweets out these things that are lies I think he, he knows, knows he's lying. Yeah. yeah, I think he knows he's lying. Like some of the stuff he tweets out is so wild. Like there's no way. Right. Well, I, I have a much lower opinion of the average person than you do. So it does not surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> the world will never know. Naughty. And this is the corporate casket. Sammy G says, did, she's asking, do you, do you want a picture of you in the green M&M doomer? Is that what you wanted? You get Abs uh, busy? Can you, can you draw like, like a, like a menage a five? Can you draw like four of them? <laughs> <laughs> how many, how many? You're going to hook uh, up with a bunch of M&M's. How much are you going to pay her? That's the real question. I, this is like the big bucks commission. Okay. Like an M&M &M orgy. Is that what you're looking for? There doomer? should be a degeneracy surcharge involved in this. Of course, yeah. yeah this, this isn't degenerate. It's beautiful. Are, are you going to be your your avatar? Or are you going to be you? Uh, I'll, I'll leave that up to the artist's interpretation. Okay. <laughs> no. Jeez. Oh God. You shouldn't do that because now now it's going to be a picture of you. Like you have like a like a you're a stalker and you have like a poster of me, but in the poster of me you have like me wearing the green M&M outfit. Dude, Illuminati's gonna make a video, and she's like, "These fucking <laughs> these Nazis were doing a hit piece on me." Then they started talking about fucking M and M's. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna clip that out. It's gonna be in her response. I hope so. I it's hope gonna so. be in the first part of the response. Yes, yes, and you could put me saying, "I hope so." In these the, guys in the targeted response. me, and look, all they could talk about was screwing M and M's. <laughs> look, they literally commissioned art on the live stream. She's going to show the art. Oh, my God. It's going to be brutal. Please. Oh, my God. That'd be the best thing ever. Here's a picture of him having sex with M&Ms. A picture of Doomer Media and his degeneracy. But first of all, lefties shouldn't be king shaming, okay? <laughs> let, let me live true. my life. They don't have uh, any qualms about contradicting themselves, Doomer. You should know that by true. now. True. Oh, I'm more... They will get mad at you for kink shaming and then kink shame you right afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> look at this music. Oh, it's so. And look at this picture. What was that? Is this like the, the anti woke, woke squad like burning the city down? Like the Death Eaters attacking? Like what's happening? No way. That's a Black Lives Matter protest. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. That's what it looks like. <laughs> oh, look, there's Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Before the word woke was co-opted by people who clearly have no idea what it means. <laughs> That's, I hate that. They have no idea what it means. It oh. actually had a pretty easy definition, as well as a pretty self-explanatory origin. Oh no, this is gonna in be In essence, bad. woke was vernacular commonly used in the black community that simply meant being aware of the world around you. The term stay woke has been around for literally decades and has been used consistently throughout time as a way to describe waking up to reality or being aware of the dangers of society. She's so, I mean, stepping around it. When you're supposed to be mm -hmm. woke to systemic racism, sexism, transphobia, and homophobia. Right. That's the specifics of it. But she just cast it as, you know, being aware of reality. Well, I mean, I would argue that woke people... Uh, mm -hmm. disregard objective reality at every turn right well you know like way back in the day you know it, it meant you know be aware of you know you could be you could be attacked by like racists right in the 1920s you're a black guy walking home from your gig 
as doing some jazz musician thing like oh you know be aware some like random people might try to lynch you on the, the street the kkk stay woke. might come after you yeah, yeah right right now but obviously it's like okay that's not what it means you know nowadays right well i think it still does but it will has a, a different a much different connotation well it's the cops that are coming gonna come and be there an go. arm of the kkk and right. arrest you surreptitiously or or murder you in the street well no it's it's more like you have to stay woke to the fact you have to be aware to the fact that you're going to get canceled online if you say anything <laughs> that's not allowed right yeah it just meant that you knew what the fuck was going on. It really was that simple. And for the better part of our history, it was a relatively unused term for anyone outside of the black community. But as the dawn of widespread social justice campaigns came about, such as Black Lives Matter, the word has been progressively co-opted and appropriated. Now, for liberals and other left-leaning folks, the meaning has remained relatively the same. It's just becoming more indicative of someone that is at least relatively aware of the hierarchies and oppression in society, though. So it's funny because she says it's relatively the same thing it meant 20, like in 1920, but then she gives a completely different definition. <laughs> someone who's aware of the higher power hierarchies in society. That's a completely different idea than the right. original idea. Well. Not not in her mind, it's not because she's assuming that she's correct. Yeah. So to obviously. her, those are the same thing, right? Or she's so you know she's one of these people that thinks like, oh, there's really been no there's oh, no difference no. between like 1920s and today. Like this is exactly the same for like a, like you know a black person could be walking on a street and randomly get attacked while they're going out the subway. You know. Yeah. And get no lynched. improvement is part of the equation. Right. I I just saw she has a video on prison labor, and that's going to be really bad. Holy fuck! <laughs> I would bet didn't mean people who use the word actually did anything with this knowledge. And yes, my dear liberals and softy centrists who know what's happening in the world and do absolutely nothing to try and fix it, I'm talking to you too. See, the debate is over whether or not it's really happening in the world though. So that's what annoys me about this whole conversation because the right is defining it the same way as the left. There's just a, a disagreement over whether or not it's true, whether or not it's an accurate picture of the world. But um, for right, yeah, no, yes, but it, you know, she just said right there, she's you know the whole like, oh, there's all these liberals and centrists. They know, they know how bad it is. They know that there's racism everywhere, and yet they sit there and do nothing. These white moderates, oh my god, they're the they're even worse than the racists. Well, I mean, aren't we arguing that it really isn't it everywhere, and so we don't have to do anything about it? Yeah, I mean yeah. that is the counter. It's well, really two counter stupid one to is, try to do something about something that's not really a problem. Right, right. The, the the two counter positions are yeah. One, we don't think that we live in 1920s racist America. Okay? Right. I, I don't think we don't think that there's this massive uh, systemic racism that's being perpetuated against people constantly right. in America. But gaslighting then, people to think that that exists is a great way to right. drive people to the polls to vote for Democrats. Of course. Yeah, of course. And then number two, and this, you know, the part that she leaves out, and this is very dishonest because she is a socialist, as all these people are, is that the solution that wokeness is pre presents is socialism. That's right. the solution that's presented. And though, so they all, they always leave this out. They always conveniently leave out the solution they're proposing. Are you telling me that the woman who runs a freaking content farm and makes like a hundred grand a month on YouTube <laughs> is a socialist? Is that... Is that what you're? Is that what you're implying here? Yeah. Yes. Yes, Adam. Do you, I do you mean, think that her editor seems like a uh, hyper capitalist here? Well, do you think that her editors? Uh, you think she? You think she runs her channel like a co-op? That'd be a good question for Illuminati. Do you run your channel like a co-op? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I bet not. Look, the, the it, problem is the problem is like every... bossy with all these people. If she ran it like a co-op, they they'd vote her out of the co-op. They, they've successfully argued though that like claims of hypocrisy just don't matter like the the entire audience will just link that stupid comic with the well and it's just oh, a get yeah, out of jail yeah, free yeah. card for literally everything yeah. yes the the Very it's convenient. really annoying because you notice this in fan bases everyone in the fan base knows that the argument's stupid but they all like they all either oh, delete themselves so or just pretend like it's a good argument just because they want to get the w that's so like, annoying right because if, like if we're going to be steel manning for the comic Mm -hmm. You know, like that'd be like, oh, 
you criticizing a leftist for saying like, oh, will you stream on Twitch, right? And Twitch is owned by Amazon. Are you stream on YouTube and YouTube's owned by, you know, Google, right? And these are capitalist companies. So therefore you're helping a capitalist make money. It's like, well, okay, you can't really live in our capitalist society and be anti-capitalist and, and not in some way help a capitalist unless you go live on a farm in the middle of the woods somewhere and grow your own food and, you know, sew your own clothes and do all that stuff, right? That that would be when the com the comic is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Where it wouldn't be appropriate is if you literally do run your own business that you have control over, which she does, and she doesn't actually put into practice the economic theory that she thinks everyone should be forced to do. Because she could. It's within the realm of possibility. Right. It's yeah. completely. Well, if, if, if you, you believe you in our society. You can't start your own Twitch, but you can start a channel that's a co-op. Right. Like if, if you if you believe that our society is this horrible thing that needs to be overthrown and that the solution to that are worker co-ops and you don't run a worker co-op, then you're a complete piece of shit. It's no more complicated than True. that. Wow. Like it, you're you're you are just as bad. Actually, you're worse than the people you're criticizing because the people you're criticizing don't believe that society is is wrong to be the way that it is. But are you like, worse than Jeffrey Dahmer? I no, it wouldn't Probably. go that far. <laughs> no, I, I would. I would say word. I would say. Listen, I believe Illuminati probably has tasted done, human flesh. You know, you know flesh. the movie Get Out. You know the movie Get Out. <laughs> oh okay? yeah, totally. Yeah. I listen. You know that Illuminati's got some black people in her basement that she's just waiting <laughs> to switch bodies with. Okay? Jesus Christ! Look at that stuff she's, she's got in the background of the of the video. Yeah. Like that's probably the stuff to do that kind of procedure. Mm -hmm, mm hmm the old brain swap procedure there you go there you go why do you think it says br2 in the background brain replacement too of course yeah he's already done it once anything with I mean, this like, knowledge and yes my dear liberals and softy centrists who know what's happening in the world and do absolutely nothing to try and fix it i'm talking to you too but you know that applies See, to her that, well that's that's no the, <laughs> it does. she just she just did exactly what i said she was going to do because she's assuming that she's correct. Not only is she assuming that she's correct, but she's assuming that everybody else sees the world the same way that she does. Yes. Which is right. insane. Right. Like that, that's just, that, I mean, that's just like solipsism. I like, I, I don't know. That, that's crazy. Well, no, you know, when you're like two and you don't under, you know, when they do like the, the test on like two year olds mm -hmm. where they, they, they show you that they hide something under a cup and then they have another person come in the room and they say, hey, does that person know which cup it's under? And then two-year-old's like, yeah, they should know. Because the two-year-old right. doesn't understand that the world doesn't understand what they understand. Like, that's the level of age development that Illuminati <laughs> is stuck in. Okay. She's still stuck on the cup test. She doesn't understand but, that we have a different belief. Right, right. But uh, no, but she, she said that, oh, the people that know and aren't doing anything about it, you know, you're the worst. It's like, well, wait a minute. If you're not running your channel like a co-op, if you're not running your life according to your principles, then you're the worst. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, she thinks by making these videos, she's going to convince other people to do that. So therefore, she yes. doesn't have to. How like she's already that? doing her part, showing other people how to do it. Right. How convenient it is for all these leftists and socialists that the way in which they're going to fight, the way in which they're going to make the world a better place just happens to be a way in which they make shit tons of money and have no personal sacrifice or stake in, in it whatsoever. Yeah, it's completely predictable. That That's what <laughs> always happens. I would love to be a freedom fighter fighting for the revolution and I just happen to make gobs of money and have to sacrifice nothing to do so. Of course. Not yeah, that you're, you're clout you're... chasing on you twitter all the time you're you're an innocent and virtuous halliburton executive you know just <laughs> interested in democratizing the fertile lands of iraq <laughs> purely out of virtue of course of course of course don't bring up halliburton in iraq you'll get us in trouble Jimmy. <laughs> stop it you'll summon me radio <laughs> i don't do it i mean i was i was fed posting the last time i was here i think you guys are gonna be fine okay good but for right-wing people, the word woke took on a whole new meaning. The it's the same fucking meaning. <laughs> Why? It just drives me crazy. Atlantic argues that the word is now used as just another descriptor for progressive oh, no. or liberal. It's this argument again. Yeah, she's, Big Joel Why? stole his argument. Did you know that, Doomer? Big oh. Joel stole his argument from Illuminati. Why isn't she going after Big Joel? Oh, yeah, there you this go. This argument We're is so fucking bad. It is. It is. I don't it understand. Is. Like I okay. So like five years ago, 
I went so far out of my way to not know anything about politics. I do. I wanted nothing to do with it. I didn't read anything. I didn't watch the news. I, I didn't watch any political commentary. I stayed completely the fuck away from all of this shit. And even in that state, I knew this was wrong. How do they not know this argument is wrong? It's so dumb. Oh my God. They, I think they, I feel like they know this is just massive gaslighting. I, right. Do they have some other understanding of what a liberal is? Um, they don't know. They don't understand the philosophy of any of this stuff. Right. They literally uh, just think liberal mean left wing, conservative mean right wing. That's that's the end of the thought process. Yeah. Um. But no, it's funny because as you said, why didn't she go after Big Joel for? Well, actually, Big Joel didn't steal from her. We we learned from this that Big Joel stole his entire argument from Adam Sur- Sewer. Ooh, I don't know if you've ever seen Adam Sewer is awful on Twitter. He's oh, like he's a terrible. super yes. woke, insane, dishonest, you know, one of yeah. these. Uh, so he's a liberal? There you go. Progressive. Uh, no, Come on, let's be. He's a super leftist progressive type. He's very, very dishonest. Very, very, you know, everything is racist type. Um, and I read this article. You know, it's hilarious. This article talks about both sides of its mouth. Because in the beginning of it, it's just saying it's another another word for liberal. But at the end, even this article does address her and Ben Shapiro's Twitter definitions and then agrees with those definitions and then says that's a good thing. Really? Oh, wow. Yes. Do, so. It actually label it actually names the Shapiro tweet in the article? Yes, it does. Wow. Okay. It does. Yeah. Awesome. Right. And, and, and we should restate for due diligence that this is the dumbest fucking argument in the world because if wokeness is anything, it is fundamentally anti-liberal. That's like, there's no other way to define it. Yeah, they need it, to it, change it that word it, to equity right there. Pursuit, uh, the screen says woke is just another word for liberal. Um, what many conservative critics of wokeness actually oppose is the pursuit of equality, but it should say equity, equity right? yeah. If it said right. equity, I'd be like, yeah. That's tr- well, true. That's exactly right. They do. Well, no, Adam, you just got you got to play word games, okay? If if it if it would be bad to say equity, then you say equality because it sounds better. Yeah, true. Sad. Just fuck fuck straightforward communication. Just make everything as confusing as possible. Well, so no e- one knows what the fuck you're talking about. When you're that's, pursuing that's, that's equity, how discourse works now. When you're pursuing equity, you're it's equality of outcome, and you're you're forcing, um, illiberal policies on people. That's why equity is illiberal. Yeah. No. But also, I mean, you're basing it off. You're, you're, you know, you're making trying to have a racialized outcome. Right. Yeah. Which is inherently anti-individual. But I'm pretty sure Adam Sewer here knows. He knows the difference between equality and equity. Right. I'm pretty sure he knows. He didn't put equity because he's like, oh no, I'll get in trouble. Well, this is this is another thing that fucking leftoids do all the time. Is they're like, nobody argues for equality of outcome. Nobody argues for equity, and then they'll say equity is good. In their next video, of course, it's yeah. fucking insane. But nobody whatever. says this. But if they were, that's good. That's like the most common like leftist. Like, Kamala argument. Harris tweeted it out before the election. She just was out. We need equity. We need to think about equality yes. of outcome. Yes, in no uncertain terms. Mm-hmm. That's what they're after. Liberal, but in a derogatory manner. But I have a different view of it. When we look at just some of the ways that this word has been used, we start to actually see the bigger picture. In September 2022, the first trailer for the live action version of The Little Mermaid starring Halle Berry was released. Almost immediately, people started to collectively lose their damn minds, claiming that Disney had officially gone woke by casting a black Ariel, who remember, and might I add, is a made up character in a kid's movie. Mermaids are not real, but apparently we have- I keep hearing this argument. This is it's so annoying. Someone makes a really stupid argument, and then all the stupid people come out, like like uh, and feeding, it. you know, like piranhas, and they all feed off of this stupid argument, and then right. they just vomit it everywhere. State okay. lines. Yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. He crossed state lines. It's like this is this is what we hear with whenever they race swap character. It's a fictional character. It's a fictional <laughs> character. Oh yeah. There's no such thing as mermaids. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? It has nothing. nothing to do with the conversation. And yeah. you know why? You know why? Okay. If there was a famous black character, right? If we mm-hmm. went and said, I think the Black Panther character should be a white guy. And they get all triggered. It's like, Black Panther is a fictional character. What kind is a fictional place? Right. Just make them all white. Who cares? Yeah, they wouldn't be for that. 
Of course not. They it's would like not the be dumbest down. argument. That it's argument a fictional would be character. Oh my god. <laughs> Why do so they are love you, are you gonna, so much? <sighs> are you, you going to watch this little little mermaid remake shit? Of course not. That seems that seems like that seems like good rage bait to make a fucking Maybe. video out of. I, all these Disney remakes are off. They're so bad. I haven't seen a single one of them that's even halfway decent. I mean, they they make a billion dollars, so I know. But they're I, that's why they make them. They just make them for money. But well, you watch I mean, them, yeah. and then you watch the the animated version. You're like, wow, the animated version is just like a hundred times better. Dude, the fucking flounder looks so bad. Holy shit! It does. It does. I think I I remember. I don't remember exactly what I tweeted. I tweeted out something very mean. Oh my god! When the trailer first dropped. Where I had like, uh, I, I think I said something like, I said it was very bold of, of Disney to cast Sid from Ice Age to play <laughs> Little Mermaid or something. I but just no. don't, like the the entire reason you animate stuff is so that it's not realistic, so things can be exaggerated exactly. and have character and shit. Like exactly. Fuck. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like you watch, um, you know, you watch uh, the the live action version of Aladdin, and. It's like that you whenever you or like Beauty and the Beast or any of these ones, you watch the animated version and the energy level feels so high. Like it feels fun and it's high and it's exciting. And you watch the live action version and it feels like you're just been slogging around in the mud. You just feel like you've always weights on you. Everything feels slow and boring and bland and terrible mm. by comparison. So. Interesting contrast. Have you seen the original Little Mermaid? Of course. Oh, I mean, okay. I never liked it. Of course, I'm a boy, and I was like, "This is a movie for girls." Well, that's why you said. But that's why I was like, "Why did you say of course?" If I mean, I've never seen The Little Mermaid. I just assumed it was a chick flick. Because uh, first of all, Disney it's a movies. mermaid. What Look, mean? mermaids, not really big in the testosterone community. Mm. Merman, Adam. <laughs> Merman. <laughs> Doomer, did you like uh, The Little Mermaid? I know you've probably. It's probably one of your favorite movies. I actually don't think I, I think that's one of the few that I, ha I haven't seen Little Mermaid or Beauty and the Beast. Right. I think I've seen all the other Disney 2D stuff. Really interesting. Um, when people are also, Mulan's the best, over, by the way. When people are losing their mind over a black Little Mermaid, I think, mm -hmm. well, it's not really a movie for me, so why should I even care? Were people losing their mind over it? I don't know. Insider here says racists are trying to, trying and failing to prove that mermaids can't be black using science what? well well okay. you can't you can't trust anything that oh, fucking news organizations say about twitter nowadays they'll find like three people they're dude they're fucking sunny v2 they're doing sunny v2 content they find one comment with three fucking upvotes and make a whole fucking video about it it's the same shit true, true. yeah well she's gonna get into this and, and we'll get into that in a yeah, second the, but, um, the science no the so the, the we science had, of we actually, black mermaids <laughs> When I was a kid, we actually owned the v, like the VHS copy of Little Mermaid, you know, in like the giant plastic Disney box. Oh, did you? Wow. And the reason was that for, for some reason, my brother, who was older than me, he really liked the Little Mermaid soundtrack. <laughs> and he he really liked oh. Sebastian. For, he was like a huge Sebastian fan. I don't know why. So I know that we'd be in the car and I'd listen to that fucking Under the Sea song like a million times. That probably is why I didn't like Little Mermaid. I was like, I'm sick of this shit. Just the song's not bad. I think I've heard some of the songs. The song's okay. I mean, maybe. I just I heard them to death. Like, whatever, That's true. So. so. He had an issue with race of a fictional creature that uh, does not exist in reality. But anyway, and actually, no, not anyway. As another side tangent, I remember reading something around this time of like an article or something that came out that if mermaids were actually real, their skin actually would be darker. They would not have pale skin and red hair like oh, Ariel was God. depicted like 50 years ago or whatever. So she's saying it doesn't matter because it's not it's a fictional character and doesn't make sense. And now she's saying, well, actually, scientifically, it would be it would be. Dark. You don't understand the science of mermaids. Like, okay. shut the fuck up. Like, it's so dumb. <laughs> OK, OK. Interesting. Interesting. Whatever. Because of like interacting with the sun and everything, they would naturally kind of start to tan skin and the melanin would become more present. Anyway, now I digress. Let's go back. The new aerial trailer was met with nearly two million. Oh. Oh, no, okay. I don't know if she talked on the video. I think she did. Ian dislikes and a constant barrage of comments saying that Disney had gone too far. Suddenly, everyone in the world had an opinion about the movie and was shocked that people would not stick to the original Little Mermaid. Some claimed it was scientifically inaccurate to cast Bailey in the role. Everyone's best friend, Matt Walsh, who I had to recently learn who this fucker was, said <laughs> this. If anything, not only should the Little Mermaid be pale, she should actually be translucent. 
if you look at deep sea creatures, they're like translucent. Oh, God. They have no kind of pigmentation whatsoever. Is, uh... I, I, can, I can hear you screaming. It's a so, fucking graveyard of bad takes, dude. It's so, but this is so dumb because, listen, I don't like Matt Walsh. Very, I, made my, I made my opinions on Matt Walsh very clear. But it's very obvious. Even if you haven't seen the video, you just read that quote, okay? It's very obvious that Matt Walsh is fucking joking. Of course he is. He's yeah. saying a joke. He doesn't actually think that the Disney movie Little Mermaid should feature a character that has translucent skin. You can see all our organs inside of it. He was making a joke. And this is like such an insane level of gaslighting. All these publications went out and they attacked what he said as if he was being serious, as That's if this was so a serious sad. thing. That's so sad. They're so out of it. it. Like, this is the dumbest. They actually think Matt Walsh is so racist. He doesn't just want Little Mermaid to be white. He, he wants, wants her to, to be, be translucent. translucent. The ultimate white person. Yes. <laughs> Completely Literally has no melanin in her skin. <laughs> what a crazy world. Melatonin. I always get those mixed up. Melatonin. Is it melatonin or melanin? Which is the one that makes you sleepy? Melanin. It, melanin okay, makes melatonin. You blind. Melatonin makes you sleepy. Yeah. It's melanin. Oh, okay. So I was right game. the first time. Melanin. Okay. Yeah, melanin. Someone was gaslighting me. And okay. So I'm not gonna act like some sort of She just she's doing politics and she just discovered Matt Walsh. That's interesting. She doesn't look at any content online. I, just, I guess that's true. I just discovered Matt Walsh. Now I'm a political YouTuber. Yes. Fancy fish expert, but Google is the thing that exists. So let me go ahead and look it up. So da, 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 da. that's another thing too. Just let me just Google this. Right. Let me just Google all these answers. Type. type. Oh, look at that. There are multiple fish that live at the bottom of the ocean that are in fact not translucent and are in fact black. Oh my God. Oh. Are, we arguing, are we arguing about this? Are we Joke actually having busty. a protracted argument about the fucking skin of little... Oh, my God, dude. Matt Walsh so exposed. Cringe. Your joke was wrong. Scientifically inaccurate joke. Get out of here. <laughs> That's well, terrible. Okay. And, and All jokes address, should be scientifically yeah. accurate. What a crazy world. <laughs> it, it, they never... I've never seen... I've literally never in my entire life seen any of these leftists actually in good faith, address the race swap argument. No. Okay. Yeah. The the issue isn't, oh my God, you're race swapping characters. It's that the race swapping of the character is yet another example of Hollywood and culture and the media seeming to give into the ideology of wokeness. Okay. Right. That's what triggers all the people when this stuff happens. Right. That's why they get so upset about it. Well, a lot of times it is kind of scientifically inaccurate. If, also, I mean, if you look at, I, I mean, obviously people always bring up Game of Thrones, but I mean, Game of Thrones is a, a beloved story. So people are willing to look the other way a bit. But you have all that. these people, you know, all, all these black people living in like cold places and stuff where they never see the sun. It's just. It's where were really there black realistic. people living in cold places in Game of Thrones? Isn't isn't that the case with the? You mean the Valerians? The Valerians, yeah. Well, well, well they no, first they of all they, they have came... they have Valerians that are like. Are all Valerians black? No, they have black no. and white Valerians. No, so yeah. no, there's most they're Valerians like, it's are like white. a multicultural society. The Valerians, right. the black pe the black people are from like Dorne and the Summer Isles and Essos. Oh, okay, so they would be dark. Yeah, yeah, they're, the black people. They were in in the books only the people from the Summer Islands. I think were black were described as black in the book. Um, the Valerians were supposed to be super, super white. Right. And they race swapped them in Game of Thrones, which I think was silly, but it was literally the only place they could insert diversity into the story. Right. And I think since people liked the show, they basically just kind of hand waved it away. They didn't really care about it. Well, the um, scientific accuracy, the scientific accuracy for melatonin, mel melanin <laughs> is. Closer to the equator, the darker yeah, the sun. Yeah, more sun you obviously, get, right? yeah. yeah, obviously, sure. Winter places, northern, less sun. Yeah, yeah, less sun. Obviously. And sure. all well, the, that that works for mermaids, too, I would assume, if mermaids are close to the surface or if they're just like deep sea diving ma maidens, right. they never sure. come up to the surface. So. I, None of I, that is I actually wanna, I want to send 
So I, I've sent a lot of emails to professors mm -hmm. asking about questions. About mermaids? And, not, not about mermaids, not <laughs> yet. Melanin. Okay, but point, point being, they actually very often respond if you like send a thoughtful question. I, I want to I hit up some marine, bi marine biologists, you know. If we actually had mermaids, like would they be white? Would they be black? Like would they be fuckable? Like what, <laughs> what, what's the science of mermaids? And like see if, they, see if you get a response. What if they funny. did the thing where like they laid eggs and then you had to like, you know, go like release yourself on the eggs. You didn't actually have sex. Right. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm writing an I'm writing an article for dailywire.com. Can you can you give me the mermaid science? Maybe my how, mermaid. How likely would it be that you could actually have sex with a mermaid if it was free? That's terrible. Where would the hole be? Would it be in the front? Would it be at the back? I hope these are mermaids are of age. There is there is a thing. Well, that's not even a question, too. I don't even, isn't Ariel supposed to be under? Ariel seems very young to me. Yeah. But there is a weird thing, too, with... Um, I was talking about that mermaid. There you go. There, sure. there is a weird thing, too, with it. There does seem to be a pattern, and I don't understand it, where red-haired characters get the brunt of the race swapping. Right. It's yeah. very strange. It's a very strange phenomenon. There aren't as many redheads, so they can't complain. Well, because they're, they're the least valuable white people. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Hmm. This includes one that does look absolutely terrifying, by the way. It's named the Atlantic Wolffish. Maybe Matt should go ahead and try and give that one a cute little pet. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to his hand or any other important bodily appendages during the course of his education process. Now, to be clear, his argument... Meme. Argument is obviously insane, and I would again like to point out that uh, she is in fact a mermaid, which does not exist. Okay, so sorry to hurt your feelings if you didn't know that yet, but um, mermaids are not real. Uh, Listen, and why they... did you just argue about fucking mermaid science? <laughs> you don't get to fucking argue about it and then be like, by the way, this shit doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, then fucking cut it out of your video. Like, fuck. When we do a remake of Blade, okay, and we recast Blade as a white guy. And they get very upset. We'll say, "What well, vampires aren't real. What are oh, you mad yeah. about? Vampires don't exist. Terrible. Um, so this whole argument over a fictional creature is actually fucking insane. But let's move on to another example, shall we? Just a couple months ago, Disney decided to create a new show with everyone's favorite adorable marshmallow robot, Baymax. In it, a scene with the squishy bundle of joy depicts Baymax searching through menstrual products and asking for assistance with which to choose. Almost immediately, everyone and around the aisle steps in to help, including a person wearing a transgender flag t-shirt. So people automatically assumed that they were a transgender male. In all, it was an adorable spot and I'm- Okay, so obviously, uh, pyramid head here. Wait, here Daily. Go. So people automatically assumed that they were a transgender male. So they said people In automatically all... assumed that this person was a transgender male. I right. Get to the right phrase frame here. Okay. You see that person that's wearing the trans flag t-shirt under the Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. So obviously Pyramid Head here didn't actually watch this spot before commenting on it. If you actually watch it as I did, you don't that that person says or heavily implies that they use tampons. Okay. <laughs> These are the so, ones that help me with right, my they, they terrible say, the line periods. they give is they say I like the ones that have wings. Right <laughs> now, you wouldn't say that if you were buying them for someone else, because you know what you, you would say. Oh, they like the ones, right? You wouldn't say I like the ones, right? You'd only say that if <laughs> I you make wore my them. wife wear these. Yes, so it's super obvious that that person is a trans man. Not she's not just wearing, or he's not just wearing a fucking t-shirt with the trans flag on it. You'd say that they use fucking tampons. Okay, but Pyramid here didn't even watch the clips. So they're like people were saying. Like, oh, like it was just a conspiracy, you know. Is she arguing that the guy is not a trans? I think she's arguing She just that said, he like, is. listen, she's just like distance with which to choose. Almost immediately, everyone and around the aisle steps in to help, including a person wearing a transgender flag t shirt. So people automatically assumed that they were a transgender male. They automatically assumed does... Right. Oh my god. Why does the robot need fifteen boxes of tampons? Well, okay, we'll get into that. In People just keep handing him tampons. Like, how right. many buttholes has this thing got? <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. But In all, it was an adorable spot, and I'm sure it made people feel seen. 
But Brett Cooper, the new darling of Daily Wire, was in her studio meticulously designed to look like a streamer's bedroom, decided that the inclusion was the worst display of wokeness ever in the history of ever. Obviously, this was Disney's gay agenda. A company that had meticulously created heterosexual romance for decades all of a sudden has a gay agenda. Sure thing, babe. Okay, so first of all, the argument that just because a, 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 a film studio has shown heterosexual romances for decades doesn't mean that they don't have a different idea about what they want to do or promote now. Sure, yeah, right? they could flip. Obviously. Uh, the second thing is, I actually went and I watched Brett Cooper talk about this. I don't watch a lot of Brett Cooper content. I'm not super familiar with what she talks about. So I, I'll admit, I went into it thinking like, oh, she's probably going to give some like very standard, you know, right wing take. But to my surprise, she actually gave a very good take on it, which was saying she doesn't have a problem with children's shows talking about girls getting their periods because a lot of girls, you know, they go through puberty and it's a weird thing for them to deal with. And bringing that issue to light, she has no problem with that whatsoever. The only problem she had with it was she said it was so virtue signally for them to shove in this, you know, trans person into the scene for no reason. Right. right. That was the only thing that she really had a problem with it. So, but there's another interesting thing here too, because I went and I watched the whole scene. It's like, it's like this like 20 second clip or whatever with the robot. I've never seen this, uh, was it Big Hero 6 or whatever the fuck this robot a, is from? I've, yeah, Big Hero 6. It's awesome. Yeah. That movie. I've never great. seen it. Okay. It's good. If you're saying it's good and you hate like kids movies, maybe I'll check it out. But yeah. Um, it's weird because that scene is a good example in my mind of someone writing a scene to make fun of wokeness. And then someone up the line of production says, you can't make fun of wokeness. We have to retool this scene to make it woke. And then that destroys the original joke, but you can still see the original, the point of the original joke in there. Which is what you were alluding to, Doomer, when you said, "Why are so many people handing this person tampons?" Wait, what, what, what was the joke supposed to be? Yeah, what's the so joke? The joke seemed to be that the robot is buying tampons for someone else, right? Okay? And the robot doesn't have like you know, it's like a robot. So the robot is just like it's supposed a medical to buy tampons. robot in the movie, though. So I mean, it's a what? It's a medical robot, some sort of medical robot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the robot walks into the you know the play, the CVS. And doesn't know like anything and it walks up to this woman it's like hello you know can you help me you know I'll purchase tampons which ones would you recommend and the woman looks at this thing with like kind of like horrified and the joke is and so like the first thing that you're supposed to think is like this woman is like why the fuck does a robot need tampons right oh, and it's going to be so, turned yeah. off by this but then the after a second the woman all of a sudden becomes like hyper like helpful and she's like trying to like really explain like what tampon they use. And like all these people all of a sudden come out of like fucking the woodwork to all try to give this robot tampons. And they're all like giving their advice on like what tampons they get. And the joke is supposed to be that, this is my interpretation of it. The joke was supposed to be that in our hyper woke times, everyone will not, no one will question the fact that this thing that does not even look human requires tampons. And they're all bending over backwards to help give this fucking non-human entity tampons. Right. Because they're all like, oh my God, they're also, you know, hyper woke progressive. That's what I think the original joke was supposed to be. Right. Because that's so the only way an the anti, scene makes it's sense. It's an anti woke message. Yes. This this is my right. guess. Uh, but then obviously someone up the line said you can't, you know, oh, you can't make fun of wokeness. You can't do this. And so what they did was they just kind of toned that down a little bit and they insert this trans person into the scene. And then it's like, well, then what's the joke exactly? Right, yeah, I don't. The, the scene suddenly loses the thing that makes it funny. Right. Should have so. the trans person come in as like a big burly dude with a woman's voice and say, <laughs> "I need tampons." <laughs> right. I don't know about that part, but. <laughs> well, that's basically the joke that they're doing with the robot, right? right? Essentially, essentially, right. yeah. Right. And then these and then are for your wife. Everyone, no, they're for me. Right. And then for everyone, instead of them being like horrified, they're just all like, oh, let me just give you like, you know, a hundred boxes of tampons. Right. Look, they're so stoked. They found a way for men to buy tampons. Right. True. Maybe he just whatever makes tasty. you sleep better. They're ultimate capitalists, right? They're like, holy <laughs> shit, Dylan Mulvaney is selling all these tampons to men. Oh, God. <laughs> It's At true. Night, but then of course they don't care if they the... use the tampons. They just want to buy them. 
That was the weird. Was that supposed to? Be, was that supposed to be like a joke video? Like, what the fuck was that? Dylan Mulvaney, Dylan Mulvaney buying tampons. About tampons. Yeah, that was the weirdest thing. To shove them up his behind. Yeah. What? Yes. Yeah, oh my god. I know. What's happening? I don't want to know what's happening there. The recent Legos disaster. So run for your lives. Legos has gone woke. Blah 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 blah. They Look, she doesn't even address the the video she's brought up. She doesn't even no. address the trans. It just says Brett video. Cooper bad. Right. Okay. They have inclusive Legos now. So Legos recently announced that they would expand their character range to be more representative. Some characters will have Down syndrome, limb differences, anxiety, and more. Don't ask me how they're going to depict a Lego with things. How depressed would you be if you're a kid and you grew up with all these disabled Legos? Like, here, play with these disabled kids. <laughs> they're going to give the Lego that's got like the Down syndrome thing. I know. Mom, when I grew up, can I have Down syndrome? <laughs> like my Legos? Oh, my God. Can no, you imagine honey, giving it's a, a genetic kid? condition. It's a, I think, didn't they make a, they recently made like an autistic Barbie or something? No way. Does it look like you? Aren't you? Uh, yes, yeah, so it looks exactly like me. I mean, aren't don't kids play with toys as like you know aspirational things? Like I could be the fireman, I could be the policeman, I could be the astronaut. Now it's going to be like I could be a guy in a wheelchair. That's what they used to do, but now it's all about you know instead of being aspirational towards something better than yourself, it's all just accept who you are and never change. Right. Look, they I'm, did make. I'm very, I'm very compassionate. I play with Legos with, with guy disabled people. Yes, they did make a autistic Barbie, um, that looks slightly autistic. Like they gave it just a hint of autism. Is this for the autistic people to buy that Barbie? I'm sorry, not that autistic. Specific... They made a Down syndrome Barbie. Right. I know what you mean. Met. Yeah. Do Down syndrome people buy that Barbie, and they feel represented? Um. It's so strange. I mean, I don't know, but just fucking let him. Who gives a shit? I mean, we, you know, so we, like with Barbie, I mean, honestly, I don't care. It was like a like Barbie. There's been a million different Barbies for literally mm. every person that's ever existed. <laughs> so I don't give a Barbie. shit. But it is it is funny. It is like a funny weird thing. And listen, they should have gone full Down syndrome. Okay, I don't think they went far enough. <laughs> I, I mean, if you look at it, it just like barely has like a hint of Down syndrome. It's not like. You know, it's kind of like cowardly, in my opinion. They should have gone full Down syndrome, Barbie. You agree that toys are somewhat aspirational, right? You give your kids some kind of toy that they identify with. Right. Do, I, is I it a little I don't odd? Think I, I don't think I aspired to be a fucking soldier when I was walking around with little fucking toys with guns. That I don't know. But that explains why you're the way you are now. You didn't aspire to be Luke Skywalker or, or Han Solo? No. No, hmm. I'm, I'm a doomer. You didn't aspire I, like, to be C three PO or okay, a gay straight robot up, from the straight from up, the past. not at all. But it seems to be that other people do, which to be like to keep it a buck. I think you're kind of a fucking loser, but whatever. <laughs> like, well, so I got a long argument, I think, with Mahler about this like a while ago, and maybe this is just my own autism. You know, I I think people more aspire to like principles that they're taught in movies. Uh, rather than becoming certain characters. Of course. But apparently, so many people disagree with me. So maybe this is just a me thing. So I don't know. But no, you uh, identify with Luke Skywalker and you want to emulate Luke Skywalker's behavior, right? Yeah, but I never thought like I want to literally be Luke Skywalker or right. Han Solo or Superman or any of these things. You know, I never, that's not the way I thought about the world. You don't think people have to entered it. the Air Force because they wanted to be a pilot because of Luke Skywalker? Um, I, I have no clue. Probably not. Yeah, un unfortunately, I have to agree with Sitch. Like the the people that I looked up to when I was young, it wasn't even slightly about me wanting to be them. Like one of them was Malcolm X. I'm not going to be anything like Malcolm X, but you know, he, had a, he had a fucking fascinating life, dude. He had, dude had some uh, very interesting dude. Why did you hate black people then if you're so anti, if you're so aspired to be Malcolm X? Well, I, I grew up and learned. Oh. <laughs> Malcolm X was one of your heroes? Yeah, Malcolm X is probably the oh, person okay. that I idolized the most in high school. Really? What? Why? He's, have, have you heard anything about his life? It's fucking Yes, amazing. I saw the movie with the... Denzel the Washington. Denzel Washington? Like, he's, he's legitimately like... It, it's one of the most insane 
like come from behind to become an incredible person's stories in like modern history. It's okay. actually amazing. Hmm. Uh, Danimal made a meme. I sent you Doomer. It's pretty. Uh, oh God! Da wait, Danimal. Is Danimal the? Hold on. Oh no. It's oh, on Discord, okay. Adam. If you want to see. <laughs> That's actually kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> Danimal shared it on Twitter too. So that's a that's a pretty tame meme for Danimal, isn't he? The one who's always doing questionable, uh, <laughs> oh, questionable shit. stuff. Am I of am course. I misremembering? No, that's Danimal him. That's Danimal, obviously. Stuff. Yeah. Anxiety. I have no idea, but it's still very cool. Basically, a oh, I forgot. I brought up the the Down syndrome Barbie. Oh, you did? <laughs> I did. Yeah, they don't go. They didn't go far enough. I agree. Okay. I agree with you, Sitch. I mean, they should have gone. They should have changed downy. the shape of the head there. <laughs> they, they, they went totally lazy fashion. Here. Oh, did. just tilt the eyes up they a little did. bit. Yeah. Presented. If some character. Uh, PC for fifty dollars. Thank you so much, PC. Because unfortunately, I can't watch today's stream live. So here's my indulgence for the month. Well, thank you, PC. What a wonderful world we live in, where free will can be bought. Just as Adam Smith intended. True. Also, Doomer wins the next video. Yeah, when, when's the next video, Doomer? What's going on? Oh, uh, I mean, I was literally in After Effects editing it right as you guys sent me an invite. So nice. I mean, it's Sweet. coming. Well, there you go. I just did an animation test. Pretty good. Wow. There's gonna this is, is this an animated video. video or... Well, it's, it's oh, it's MoGraph. It's not like it's not like character animation. Oh wow! Is, is this a main channel video or a second channel video? Yeah, main channel. You're do. Are you stealing any effects from Illuminati? Because these are going to be video <laughs> essays, right? So i i had a I had a joke that I'm probably not going to actually do, but I was going to do the Vox highlighter effect, <laughs> um, intentionally with the purple, and then I, at the bottom I was going to put Vox highlighter effect copyright Illuminati 2021, <laughs> which is honestly a pretty honestly a pretty good joke. Do it. You should do it. I don't think I I don't think I want to use that effect though, but I don't know maybe. No, just shove it in there. Just make it up at a place that makes no there. sense. Just... <laughs> <laughs> don't you don't talk about it. You don't bring it up. It's just a visual gag for anyone that notices. No one will get yeah. it. It'd be like it doesn't waste. matter. You'll get it. That's all that. That, matters. that was that was the, one of the things I was worried about because, like to me, that's like straight out the funniest joke that I had in the fucking video. But no one's gonna get it. Is a problem. So it yeah. doesn't matter. Sometimes you gotta do things for you. Okay. True. Not true. <laughs> Some characters will have Down syndrome, limb differences, anxiety, and more. Don't ask me how they're going to depict a Lego with anxiety. I have no idea, but it's still very cool. Basically, a lot of people will now have a character that actually represents them. And to Fox News, this was terrible news. They found it divisive and terrible. One host said that Legos were causing a divide in the country. Sorry, I, I meant to say that with like a straight face, but I just, I can't. Anyway, here's the quote. Republicans think it's insane that they are forcing identity politics Oh, she did the thing. There it the is. The torn paper. paper. Yeah. Oh my God, what a Man. thief! Beautiful. That torn paper. Wow. It really is all it's cracked up to be. Look, 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 there it is in all its glory. Oh my God, look at that graphic. Not very cool. I typed "torn paper" PNG transparent background. <laughs> on is Google that the images. first thing that comes up? <laughs> That's like the first. Yeah, exactly. And then look at that. She added a shadow effect underneath it, so it's like three D. Oh my god. Oh yeah, Impressive. the paper has to come off the monitor a little bit just to. Yeah, do look it. at the impressive uh, editing. How? How did she do that? This is this technology. By, by the way, a lot of people in chat coping about Malcolm X. Not a single one of you fucks is half the man Malcolm X was. Okay. <laughs> Get fucked. All right. Well, they're not racist. So. Malcolm X, huh? Malcolm X is great. Also, I kind of, I'm, I probably would agree with her about the, like, I'm sure Fox said some dumb fucking shit about sure, this. Sure. All it's right. Some Legos. That's are upset that they didn't make a drag queen stripper. And I'm going to. That's a pretty funny quote. Hell yeah, it is. To be Why honest, don't I don't think Democrats stripper? even remotely care what Legos is doing. You're just trying to create controversy on the dumbest issue in the world when it literally does not exist, except maybe in your head. I just, and of course, I, we obviously I just question if if you have a kid that has and suffers from anxiety, mm -hmm. why would you get them a fucking anxiety Lego? Yeah, like, wouldn't you want to give them some something that, like a Lego that didn't have anxiety? Like you're trying to right. say. Oh look, this Lego doesn't have anxiety. It won't help you get over that. Right. Here's your little anxiety Lego. 
I understand the Down syndrome. Like, I'm sure that there's like Down syndrome girls that would really love the Down syndrome Barbie, right? Like, I get that. Um, right. But the anxiety one, that doesn't make any sense. First of all, how, yeah, how as she even she says, I don't know how. What, does it have like a like a scared face? Like, how do you show the internal <laughs> mental illness of a of a character on a fucking Lego? It's just weird. Look, I know that you have a uh, debilitating anxiety. Right. Here, I got you an anxiety Lego. That look, I know you're just, every time you look just at make it. a no. That's fucking easy. Just make a Lego that has a joint. Look, I know there you, you have a. I know you're there suicidal. You look, I got you a suicidal Lego. <laughs> look, I know you have anorexia. Look, <laughs> I've got you anorexia. The Lego, Lego has like the slash marks on its arm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I, honestly, I'm kind of mixed on this one. I can I can see why a fucking Down syndrome kid want a Down syndrome Barbie or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck. But at the same time, there is kind of a problem with like, like it, disabilities are generally speaking, it, it you know they wait wait your ability wait to differently live a life. abled, uh, not disability. Oh, okay, God. okay. <laughs> well, like, it's funny because like, what are you gonna say? I was just, I was just saying, like. At the same time, like people with disabilities shouldn't be discriminated against, obviously, but at the same time, it's probably in their best interest to try and overcome it as best they can, right? Yes, yes, right. Yeah. Um, but no, it's funny because, you know, you have this critique, you know, Fox probably said something stupid about the Legos or whatever. You know, they they hyperbolize it um, because they have to talk about whatever, you know, a new whatever the new story is of the day and they have to hyperbolize it for their audience. And so, but then she takes their critique and she makes it even dumber. She can't even have like a good critique against it because she says, I don't think Democrats even care about, you know, these uh, woke Legos. It's like, well, wait a minute. If people on the left didn't care about, you know, the identity politics Legos, then the Lego wouldn't do it. That's yeah. why Lego is literally doing it. It's their virtue signal. It is weird. And it does play into the idea of victimhood culture that if victim, if victimhood gains you status, then these are a bunch of high status Legos right here. All these disabled Legos. Right. Well, that's an interesting point, too, because like, you know, in, in, you know, 10, 20 years ago, you know, you'd be like, oh, you know, this disabled Lego is just showing you, you know, representation, right? If you're disabled, <laughs> maybe you'll like it. Oh, my God. But now it's like, oh, this was what you said. Now it's like it's completely different. Now, now the other Legos have to shut the fuck up and listen to the one armed <laughs> Lego or the, or the Down syndrome Lego because you know, so it's true. lower on the oppression hierarchy. Some uh, someone in chat just said minor attracted person Barbie. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's not that's not good that's a spicy meme oh man can you imagine the the game the lego game that they're playing with the disabled lego you get over here straight white male lego you get in the dog house how how would you visually represent Jesus. map barbie you, a, a barbie <laughs> standing next to a smaller barbie what do you oh mean? that's all it would be <laughs> oh no it's just a Barbie that has like the little the map logo on the, it. The, the bigger Barbie is smiling and the little Barbie is frowning. <laughs> yeah. It's so over once there's a map flag. Once oh they make the god. map flag. Oh god. They already have, I thought. I don't remember what it looks really? like off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure they because I'm Please, trying to remember there was no. some tell me no. There, there was some there they have some symbol or some flags. I know that people were reproducing. They're trying to shove it into like the pride flag or something. No way. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head. I'm sure someone in chat knows. They're trying to include it in that all inclusive flag. They're like, put the map on the, on the yes. inclusive LGBT flag. But no, I really like that's a great meme, Doomer. You should have you should you should make that. Have the, the Barbie smiling and like the little Barbie sister frowning. <laughs> oh, no, that's sad. <laughs> Obviously cannot forget one of the most recent woke controversies from good old Candace Owens, who recently lost her absolute shit because an underwear company portrayed a person in a wheelchair within their ads. I'm serious. In her absolutely mindless rant, she literally said that representation is not important. The real kicker, Skims, the company she was criticizing, was making an entire line of accessible underwear, and that's why they were showing someone in a wheelchair. So newsflash, Candace, some people need things made in a particular way so they can actually use them. A company making inclusive products has absolutely nothing to do with you. If you're that opposed to underwear, don't wear any. There is a thing called commando. You can get on board with that if that's your cup of tea, but leave other people be. But now that we've gone through just a few examples, have you started to notice a trend? Woke isn't going against liberals or liberal policies. It's going against people. The Little Mermaid is woke because she's black. 
Baymax is woke because there's a trans character. And Legos is woke for simply acknowledging that disabilities exist. So, well, okay, wait a minute. So first of all, Candace Owens is stupid. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And her comment about the Skims underwear was stupid. Um, so fine. There you go. There's your one good critique. Fair enough. Um, but the whole, and this is like the, the you know, the, she can't steal man or understand any of these arguments. It's not that they're against the person. They're not like, we don't like this actress who's black playing, you know, Ariel. It's against the ideology of why this is happening. That's that's what they're complaining about. It is an ideological complaint. It's not a person complaint. As much as she wants to twist it around to be like some kind of bigotry argument, which is what she's trying to do here. Of course. They're complaining yeah. about the rationale behind these actions being made. Okay. She's trying to say right wingers hate people they're cruel right. people that's what she's trying to do twist right. this into some argument she wants to make yeah because just, just imagine the inverse of this this would be like if you know they were replacing you know black panther and blade and you know other black characters with white uh, actors and you're like why are they mad about this well it must be because they must be because they hate white people right they're mad at all these white people replacing black people in these roles right become yet another symbol for people different from white, cis, straight, able-bodied people. Woke is just another dog whistle so people who are racist, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist don't have to come out and say what they really are. That's oh, all it's been. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. She, got them, she got them all there from the, from the intro. Didn't White, I? cis, straight, able-bodied people. Woke is just another dog whistle so people who are racist, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist. What Did is I this? not call this from the very beginning? What did you say? Well, in the very well, beginning, first of all, I one said, of those is based. Well, I said wokeness, the definition of wokeness that the left uses is waking up to racism, sexism, oh, right. homophobia, and transphobia. You did. And yeah. they're the there right, is. the right there is basic. Is. The right's definition of wokeness is, is the people who have woke up to racism, sexism, and hom uh, homophobia and transphobia that doesn't actually exist. Because the dis right. the discrepancy is over whether or not these things are actually true. Well, so people okay. on 4chan running around collecting the Dragon Balls. This is this is how you know that she's woke right here. Yes, obviously, yeah. obviously. Uh, my main contention with this part is, what the hell is these graphics? Mm -hmm. It's just a guy writing. Oh, you can't even racist. <laughs> a person on a phone, transphobic. A person talking to a microphone, homophobic. A person typing sexist. Well, these like, are the people obviously on Twitter leaving these comments. These these are the like, right wing that trolls. It? Yeah, the anonymous okay. trolls. Okay. It's like a bunch of random like stock footage of white people doing things and <laughs> it's like right so. No, they're being mean to marginalized I mean, people online, obviously. That I microphone mean, is your microphone. Sitch, you don't know. see look it's I don't have a fuzzy uh pop filter like that. Oh, so okay. No. Like like straight up though, this is a content farm, so that is like the correct thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, Very low effort stock footage. Yeah, people doing I mean, things. Yeah, that would be a funny funny joke if you were doing like a parody of a woke video. Just every time you have like stock footage of people doing something that's completely disconnected from whatever you're talking about, just like a white person like you know opening boxes, and you just put like racist <laughs> over everything they're doing. Transphobia is new. It was like. 10 years ago, it was just racist, sexist, homophobic. Now it's right. transphobic. Don't have to come out and say what they really are. That's all it's become. And when you think about that definition, then the manner of how they're using it becomes that much scarier. While they go off about the dumbest things in the entire world, this rhetoric is not limited to stupid cable TV shows and idiotic video streams. It's worked its way into a variety of social structures. And it's interesting because She's basically saying that anyone who uses the word woke is being racist, sexist, transphobic, homophobic. Mm -hmm. So actually denying that those things exist is those things. Yes. Well, this, is, this is the whole dog whistling thing where it's like, yes. you know, we, 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 can, we know what you really mean. Yes. She's saying that whenever someone complains about wokeness, they're complaining about uh, black people or gays, or women, or trans people. And they want those people, you know, depowered or eliminated from society. That's what she's saying. Right. So this would be like if we said, listen, guys, whenever you hear someone on the left 
talk about equity, what they really mean is they want to eliminate all white people. <laughs> so whenever someone just in your mind, when someone uses the word equity, just swap it out for eliminate the whiteies. Aren't there some Get people that actually cracker. believe that, though? I feel like there are people that actually believe that. I'm sure there are. That but I'm just saying does mean that. Right. Right. So that so then it's like, oh, and it's like and then and then I would say, oh, my God. When I tell you to just redefine a word in your mind to mean something like very malicious, now whenever you look at left people, don't they seem so much more evil now? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. It's such a lame argument. It's all rhetoric. Yeah. And that's where the word comes in. This music drives me crazy. <laughs> Public schools in the United States have gone woke. And of course, we all know what that actually means. Over the last few years, we have seen an unprecedented attack on the American public education system and the woke teaching values that some claim exists. Leading the charge is the Twitter account Libs of TikTok. Oh Every day they oh, post God. allegedly shocking videos of teachers who oh, basically right. just show an ounce of support for their students who are not straight, white, or cisgender. Through the use of inflammatory statements, Libs of TikTok takes everyday instances of teachers simply trying to do their jobs and make them sound as if these teachers have told their kids that like Santa Claus doesn't exist or something. Like, God forbid teachers mention that gay, transgender, or non-binary people exist, or if they fit in any of those categories themselves. While this whole thing feels outrageously ridiculous, it has caught fire and the account has roughly 2 million followers on Twitter. Now, we are seeing the effects of this as the trust between parents and students has severely diminished. It doesn't help that companies like PragerU are also telling parents that their kids are being, and I quote, absolutely damaged by the education system. The Heritage Foundation, which well, has been true. the leading voice in false science and false panic, has also stepped in and written op-eds claiming that woke capital is transforming education into a field for transgender activism. According to them, schools are instructing students to trust. By the way, just to throw this in there, uh, if you go and you Google uh, critical race theory journal, you'll notice that more than half of them are named education or pedagogy. It's like the entire point is to change the education system to propagate their ideology. That's not a conspiracy. That's just a fact. That's a very yeah. easily verifiable fact. Yes. That's, that's scary. That's, I mean, that's the, the gaslighting around this and the dishonesty around this is so wild. It's the, again, it's the, this isn't happening, but if it's happening, it's good and it should happen more. It's like, oh, how dare people on the right complain that in education, you know, they're shoehorning in all this woke you know, ideological garbage. How dare they complain that this ideology is being shoved in the public schools? Right. When it obviously is. Wasn't wasn't there an instance, I, I don't remember if this is accurate or not, but I'm sure that you guys will know. Wasn't there an instance where a fucking like white kids were told to sit in the corner or some shit and like it, like basically were discriminated against for being white to try and shame them? It's like, a, it's like a lesson about race. Oh, that happens all the time, Doomer. That's yeah. like a regular thing. There, oh, Yeah, great. there was some... The shame corner. <laughs> it's in <laughs> every single <laughs> classroom in America now. There was some... Uh, I remember this was a while ago. There was some incident where they were supposed to be teaching kids about racism, and they're like, in order to make the white kids... There was both. There was, there was one uh, lesson where they made like the white kids segregate themselves and sit in the corner so they could they like understood you know what it was like to be in the back of the bus essentially oh my and then God. Th there was another one where they did it but they did it with like they recreated it but with the black students but it was like a situation where there's like two black students and like 20 white students so it was really fucking awkward <laughs> and so, like yeah there's a lot of this oh, stuff. i remember and, that one yeah and it's so annoying because whenever you bring it up you know, the response is, well, I you know there's lots of people and they, I'm sure there's lots of bad teachers that teach CRT, you know, poorly. It's like, no, 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 no. The ideology is, is dog shit. And the problem is, this is the real problem. You can't have a con. We literally cannot have a public conversation about whether this ideology should be taught in school. Like at least back in the day when we were having the debate about intelligent design, right? Everyone understood what was being talked about. It was intelligent design creationism mm -hmm. versus evolution like it wasn't no one was like hiding the ball on like what exactly was being talked right. about and there was a public conversation about well should intelligent design be allowed to be taught in biology or not but with this there's this complete dishonest gaslighting of like you're, you're not even allowed to discuss 
you know, what is being talked about under the guise of critical race theory or woke ideology. It's You're just not allowed history. to talk about it. It's just it. regular it's, history. It's just history. Right. I'm just teaching the true history of America. Why do you not want to teach history? There wasn't some of that going on with the intelligent design thing. I feel like they were trying to say, oh, it's just it's just science, irreducible complexity. It's just normal science. It's not creation of them. Yeah, so there was a little there was yeah, a I little guess bit of some, trying to deceive right. going on, but I guess no one was they were to some extent. It. Right. Yeah. But maybe because it was the like they were the outliers. It was easier mm -hmm. for the mainstream to conversation to be about the reality. Where in this one it's the opposite. The mainstream is the one defending the bullshit. And so they're hiding the ball and they're basically going along with yeah, the ball that strategy. Is, that is interesting. Yeah. Because the mainstream media was not behind intelligent design. So they just decloaked it immediately. Oh, this is what right. they're really talking about. But yeah. our mainstream media is right there hiding the ball every single day. Oh, critical race theory. You know, it's just a legal theory. Stop this is not being school. taught in classes. This is yeah. a high level college subject matter. Yeah. And it's just it's and it's it's just so annoying. It's like they, they shovel stuff in schools and then when you know Republican legislatures try to legislate against it, they Oh my god, how dare you do this thing? How dare you start this? How dare you start this culture war over nothing? It's like, well, if it's over nothing, this is like what we saw with the, the CRT, you know, uh, bill in Florida. Mm -hmm. Like you read it and it's, you know, mostly, I think there's like one thing that I thought was somewhat objectionable, but like 99% of it, it's like, okay, this is totally fine. You know, if this is, so, if it's such a nothing burger as you claim, then why are you spending so much time and energy fighting it? Because it's suspect. not a nothing burger. It's their intelligent design. They got to get yeah. it in the classroom. They're just... They're sick that they might not get it in. Yep. From from a, from a tactical angle, one of the dumbest things the fucking left has done is defend CRT. It's <laughs> it's just optically horrible, and it's such an easy it's such an easy potato to drop. You just don't fight the battle, and it goes away. Well, it depends because people who are not leftists, so like liberals, could do that if they understood what it was. Um, but the leftists can't drop CRT because CRT is essentially like the foundational idea of wokeness. Well, so they, and no, they, also they can the... keep they can keep doing this stuff. They can keep their march through the institutions. Just don't defend CRT itself. But the 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 mm. gaslight version of CRT is what's driving the ship because now all the rank and file progressives think that it's just teaching you know the, black the history. So right. I mean, but the gaslight version of CRT is also what's black causing history, and they can't do that. What's well, also what's causing all the opposition? Yeah, but I mean, like the fact that they're doing that. Look, if they came out and said, you know, we're going to let CRT go, everyone's right. going to freak out. They're going to go, "What? Black? Now we're not going to fight for black history anymore? Are we progressives or what?" They're there, all going to lose a, their minds. There was a really funny sequence of events. I think, oh God, I think it was actually Sean. Sean was debating RGR and Destiny mm -hmm. on CRT, and neither I, I'm pretty sure neither of them had a fucking clue what they were talking about yes i know what you're um, about. yeah right. and then like later on destiny actually read about it he was like oh no we shouldn't be defending this <laughs> she, right. destiny read something on crt really yeah Eventually. this was like this was like this was like a year or a year or two ago. yeah this was a while oh, okay. ago yeah well there is though tactically i don't know because i because what you're saying i mean i i morally i agree with that they should drop crt but they do gain a lot of utility by getting to call the right wing racists you know, by trying to, you know, keep out the real black history from American schools. Does that ever end? Yeah, like black Cleopatra. <laughs> what if the Republican Party nominated a black candidate and a black vice president? It wouldn't matter. Well, they couldn't do the, oh. Well, they the, already, they, no, the they already have the response really for that. Well, that, that, that's the whole thing is that it's not actually about race. It's about like hegemony. Like yeah. if you're a, if you're a black person who supports the hegemon, then you're just a race traitor. Yeah, right. you're a c-word. Well, that's why the black. It would have to be a black candidate and a black vice president. It wouldn't. Candidate. It wouldn't matter because they would. Say, it wouldn't oh, make a difference. Yeah, this is a that's... black person selling their blackness to be part of you know the white supremacy. So the well, whites the whole... voting for the black person automatically makes the black person a, a, the, a like white yeah. supremacist. One of, the things, yeah. one of the things that drives me the most fucking insane about this is if you break it down, the concept of whiteness really isn't that objectionable or weird. The main problem is that it's called whiteness. It just there's no reason for it. It, mm -hmm. like there's 
it, all they're talking about is hegemony, like basically supporting hegemonic structures. There's no reason to connect it to race at all. That, that's yeah, the entire point of contention. Yeah. And yeah. like, it, it, it's just, there's so many, so many of these battles are just semantics, just like a completely empty, meaningless fight over fucking nothing. Right. But I'm pretty sure the CRT people did it intentionally because it just happened so of many course. times. Well, yeah, it, it's they did it intentionally because it goes back to Cheryl Harris, Cheryl Harris's paper about whiteness as property. You know, this is something James Lindsay always talks about. You know, the, in CRT, there's the concept that whiteness is a property in which uh, black people can acquire essentially by selling out. You know, what it means to be really black. In the sense, you know, this is like you know why in the CRT, like, oh, if you know, you get a normal job and you participate in normal society, like that's you selling out your blackness to try to you know to gain this property of whiteness. And then that ties into obviously, you know, the whole socialism, which is that, you know, what is the, the the main goal of socialism is to abolish private property. And so that ties into CRT. What is the main goal of CRT? To abolish whiteness, whiteness as a property. Right. So so racist. Gender ideology over trusted adults. Teachers are allegedly encouraging students to socially transition at school and keep changes strictly under wraps from parents, which in some cases. So it's funny. She says she said allegedly. OK, this is the classic example. It's not happening, but if it's happening, it's good. She just said oh, it's alleged. But now she's about to say that it's actually a good thing. Okay. Right. Well, she wouldn't know if it's happening because she doesn't read anything. So right. Ideology over trusted adults. Teachers are allegedly encouraging students to socially transition at school and keep changes strictly under wraps from parents, which in some cases might be true. But why? That's the part they usually miss. For a kid to feel safe discussing their personal feelings with teachers, they need to do so without fear that those personal feelings would be disclosed to others without their permission. This is so fucking pedo right here. I mean, it's fucking weird, yeah. It's just, she's... She's in favor of teachers, you know, keeping secrets from their parents. Well, they're trying to compare it to like child abuse. Right. Which is so, first of all, no one is, we all intuitively understand. This is like, this is such a, it's so weird. You know, there's a lot of dishonesty on both sides, but I feel like, I feel like each side uses different tactics. Like there's a lot of share tactics, but I feel like there are certain tactics that each side kind of uses uniquely. And I feel like the left really does this more. Maybe I'm just wrong, but I feel like the left really does this more where they play this like weird, po I guess probably because it's postmodern, this postmodern like deconstructionist definitions game where there's some concept that we all like intuitively understand that doesn't really have to be, you know, like defined or discussed. And then they use that ambiguity to trick you or to try to trick you. To like, change the definition? Right. Like you don't need to explain why a teacher, if a student comes to them, and says, you know, my parents are abusing me physically, right, or sexually, or whatever. We all understand intuitively that the teacher shouldn't immediately go and call the parents. Like, you don't need to have a conversation about that. That's a very yeah. fucking obvious thing, right? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah like, they, call, duh. they call social services. Yeah, obviously, right? You know, you talk to social services or the police or whatever, right? You don't go and talk to the parents. Those are the ones that are being accused of the crime, right? But if it's a question of like a child transitioning. That has nothing to do, you know, unless the child says, I want to transition. And when I told my parents this, they started beating me, right? I'm like, and like just on their own, just saying like, oh, I, you know, I want to transition. Obviously, you should tell the fucking parents that. The idea that a, a teacher who knows far less about a child and has no legal responsibility over raising that child, right, right. should have the responsibility or the ability to make such a fucking massive decision in a child's life, like to socially transition them or to try to convince them to transition beyond that. This is like a wild, this is an insane argument. This is where the Florida bill came from because this situation actually happened. There was a teacher that socially transitioned the kid and they didn't tell the parents. That's why they yeah. call it the, uh, the parental parent rights. protection. Yeah, Parental Rights Act. Yeah, that's right. Why and they call and it that, that kid tried to commit suicide. commit suicide. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. and that's how the parents found out about it. Yeah, they're yeah. like the parents found out. Parents got a call from the school saying your kid tried to, to kill themselves. By the way, 
they, you know, we've socially teachers, transitioned your kids. <laughs> yeah. Teachers were, were transitioning your child here. And we didn't tell you about it. And they're like, what the, f-? like, yes, of course. It's insane. Right. Yeah. And they're suing the school and all this. And that's where the yes, bill originated yes. from. So yep. obviously Illuminati doesn't understand any of this. Well, right. and she's going to bat for the teachers. Oh, well, I mean, the parents might've gotten mad and hit the kid. Mm-hmm. So obviously we should make this a uh, great decision in their lives for them. How would you feel if you told someone a secret and they immediately went to tell someone else who may put you in danger if they were to know that secret? <laughs> this is so, this is so stupid. How would you feel if Becky told Rebecca that Cindy kissed her boyfriend? Hmm. How would you feel about that? Well, obviously, if a kid's getting socially transitioned by a teacher, you should shut up about it. <laughs> That's so insane. Oh, my God. Look at these arguments. Transgender kids in particular are some of the most likely children to be forcibly kicked out of their homes by their parents. That is a calculation. Okay. It's a calculation the teacher must make? Yeah, first of all, like, holy shit. The teacher's supposed to you know, weigh that. Um, secondly... So in, in her video, in her description, she has something that says sources and you click on it and there's all these like sources, but she doesn't have a source for that claim. She just said trans kids are the most likely to be kicked out of their homes by their parents. Right. I don't source, know. Source gut intuition. Yeah. I don't know where this came from. Um, I mean, it's probably right. <laughs> well, so the closest thing I could find, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't do like, you know, hours of research on this, but the closest thing I could find that everyone was citing was that there's this statistic that says uh, if you're gay, you have a two. If you're a gay child, you have a you're two times as you're twice as likely. I guess I should word it this way. If you're gay and a kid, you're twice as likely to be homeless than if you're straight. Okay. Um, if you're trans and you're a kid, you're nine times as likely to be homeless than if you weren't trans. Now, homeless with your family or just like out on the street on your own? I don't know. It doesn't say. Hmm. And so, first of all. What the fuck's going on there? Right? Because when you look at that that data, the data doesn't explain the reason. And so I think what happened was all these people look at that and they assume, oh, well, if you're trans and you're nine times more likely to be homeless, it must mean that your family's kicking you out, which it doesn't, that's not what it means. Right. It could mean that, you know, as as we know, that there's a higher likely that trans people have a, a much higher core comorbidity of other mental illnesses. Mental illnesses run in the family. Right. Yeah, you're living if, in a car with your family. Well, look, if you're, you're like, right. oh, I'm trans. Yeah. If you're, if you're if you're hanging out digging through the fucking dumpster at you know the CVS, you just you know get a little get a little uh, get a little hormones, you know. Well, and, well, well and that's another right. thing too is that you know why not? Why is the why is the assumption that the person is homeless and that's why the person is trans? That's why they're homeless as opposed to well maybe their homeless has created additional stressors in their life that has made it easier for them to be socially contagioned into believing they're trans, right? Sure. There can be a lot of Do, explanations for this. Well, like, okay, if, if if we just take it as like, what about a kid would make them most likely to get kicked out of their home? Like, do either of you doubt that's being trans? What well, I just I would people think, are getting kicked out of their home. You can't really I, just do that. Look, I'm just gonna kick you out. <laughs> yeah, so. first of all, it's not like you're legally depending on their age. But no, I would say no. If you would have like, if you were to tell me here are the top reasons why children, underage children, are kicked out of their homes, I. Like, I'm sure there are people that are kicked out of their homes for being gay and trans. I don't think that'd be the top reason. I think the top reason would be drug use or criminal activity. Can you just do that? Like, don't... Wait a minute. I have the you don't live here stuff. anymore. Move out. Look, I know you're 15. I know you're 12. I don't, I know you're I don't know. 12. I, don't, I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Yeah, of course you so, can't. You can't do no. that. The social services would show up on your doorstep. Say, listen, here's well, your I mean, kid. That's a, you're like, responsible well, for this okay. kid. What are you talking People about? People will, right. When I say, I don't think they can, I mean, you're not legally allowed to do that. People will still do it. I'm sure it still, it still happens in America, right? It's, it's a thing that happens, even if it's illegal. Parents disown their children? Of course. There are, yeah, of course. There are what parents What do they do? That, Drop them off at the park? Look, we're changing the locks. They say, they say, get out of this house and they'll come back. That happened. Wouldn't the kid just go live in the yard or something? I don't know. I, I, it depends <laughs> on the situation. Maybe the kid lives with uh, friends. They'd go Maybe live the with kid, a friend, yeah. You know, kids. So, would, they'd go live with the teacher, the teacher that keeps the secrets from everyone. Well, I'm sure the majority of, you know, when kids are basically forced out of their house by their parents, they're 
they're not living in not we're not talking about like you know upper middle class families. I know a lot. Of, like, I know a know. lot of kids that left on their own, but right. we're talking about like lower income situations. I just overall. this seems like a movie thing, where the you know the authoritarian dad comes out and says you're not living here anymore. You're out on the street. Well, I think that's how Pyramid Head is like envisioning it in her mind, like. You're gay, you know, you're too good to be straight like your parents. Get out of my house, right? Like, which I'm sure happens to some extent. But I think the majority of it is probably drugs and crime related and people living in, you know, tough situations. And the child is causing too much problems living at home. Go live with your gay friends. Right. <laughs> you don't live but here I don't know anymore. What the numbers are. How many kids are kicked out of their homes every mm -hmm. year? So I don't, I don't know what it is. But um, because I I'm thought a, that the majority of kids that are homeless, I thought, uh, were not kicked out of their house but run away. Now, very often they run away because they're facing abuse of some kind. But sure, yeah. But anyway, That's what regardless, I hear. right? But regardless, I couldn't find whatever source the fuck she was referencing in this, and she didn't provide one. She's just making it up. Both by this. This is this is the argument that they make that the kid should. The teacher should have authority over the parents, have a higher yes. authority than the parents. Yes. And the kids should confide, be able to confide in the teacher and the teacher should keep it on the DL from the parents. Of which course. Which is just not sane well, in any it, way, shape, or form. And it's totally hypocritical because if the politics of the situation were reversed, they would mm -hmm. have the exact opposite opinion, right? Yeah. If the like, teacher was like teaching them Christianity, look, you should yeah. be a Mormon. <laughs> Come to right, our church yeah, exactly. on Sunday. You know, you know that they would be losing their shit if there was some teacher who was very religious and there was a kid that was like trans and the mm -hmm. teacher took them under their wing and, and you know, detransified them, right? Oh, yeah. They would be, oh, my God, this is conversion therapy. How dare this teacher do this? What is the teacher's business to be involved in the kid's life? Blah, blah. Like they'd be foaming at the mouth in rage. Right. So yeah. It's all just, it's all bullshit. There's no principles involved here. It's all just bait, rooted on the... On who you know, what politics you're in favor of for these people. If the teacher is surreptitiously teaching the kid my ideology, well, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if it, if they're doing it to some ideology I disagree with, ah, right. the right. horror. It's so insane. Can't we just get ideology out of the classroom? Isn't just, I know. Isn't there other things that we could learn that aren't based in just i, you know, straight ideology? I would hope so, but you know. I guess American history is kind of the, like the civil religion that we all need to learn together because we all have different religions, as in Christianity, mm -hmm. Judaism, Islam, whatever. For for the for the spiritual realm, people have different ideologies, but at some level, we have to cohere as a society. True. I, I think that's the uh, that's the problem with things like American history because he the ideology that they want to teach is America bad. And that ideology isn't going to really help anyone. Uh, J Mac, our surrogate father. Thank you so much, daddy. J Mac for $20. What's up? Jamie? Says, I think, I think that there are some valuable lessons that religions teach, but if my kids were being taught those lessons by their teacher, I would be furious. It's the pushing of ideology that I and many parents are against. Perfect. Look, totally goes along with exactly what I was saying. And oh, hey, short fat talkers in chat, and he says, "Kick Doomer." True. Not yet. Got to wait till it's time. The student and the teacher that they need to do in their minds before they decide if they want to come out to their family or not. And for I just if I was a teacher and some kid was coming to me with this stuff, I'd be like, "Can't you tell your next period class? Can't you tell your next period teacher why are you bringing this up to me? Why do I want to know about this?" Uh, I think Doomer's AFK. I think he's touching the, the green M&M &M or something. Oh, yes? No worries. I mean, he's not responding. For some parents, this can feel like a stab in the back. Yes, parents have the right to know what's going on with their children, but do they have the right to know what's going on with their children if they're going to use it against them? How does the teacher know that? Does the teacher call him up and feel him out? Like, hmm, can I tell him <laughs> the kid's secret or not? Yeah. This is so weird. This I is know. so weird. Any teacher yeah. that's getting that involved in the kid's life and the parent's life should be fired immediately. Yep. Jeez. 
I don't think they do, but that's not for me to decide. As we speak, there are multiple lawsuits in the works to decide if teachers will be legally obligated to tell parents if students are showing signs of gender non-conforming behavior. And while they claim this is all about parents' rights, I see it a little bit differently, as do others. Kel Olson, who is a staff attorney at Lambda Legal says, I can't help but recognize that although parents' rights has been proposed as the basis and framework for a lot of these things, a large concern is not necessarily parents' rights, but parental fear of LGBTQ people and trying to control access to that by young people. And- <laughs> control I, access. I, I was like, let me just read a quote of someone who's just like, I'm just gonna redefine the entire issue in a way to make you seem like a bigot. Valid right. opinion. <laughs> like, okay. That'd be like saying like, oh, well, you know, I think all this, uh, I think all this fear that Illuminati is posing right here about, t- you know, w- why parents shouldn't, or why parents shouldn't be informed by teachers is because, you know, Illuminati thinks it's okay for teachers to groom children, you know, right. into the map culture. Right. Yeah. Look, I can just redefine whatever I want to make anyone look terrible. <laughs> I mean, you're making a persuasive argument though, <laughs> that Illuminati is in favor of teachers being able to keep secrets i mean she is she is like that creepy pyramid on the back of the you know on the money i don't know look immediately people are going to jump to the pedo argument when you're making this creepy pyramid head well i don't why (laughs) we use the pyramid why is our members at the pyramid why is anybody arguing in favor of teachers and students conspiring to keep secrets from their parents like that just it's so awful <laughs> it's just so awful so so there are, the parents okay, need so, to be informed right so their thought this is their thought process they think oh my god you have all these redneck maga parents who are just gonna beat their children they're gonna try to beat the gay and beat the trans out of their children and the child all they have is there some, you know, woke progressive teacher at their school that they can confide in? And it's, you know, it's that teacher's job to protect them from their evil redneck parents. Like that's the that's the mind image that this is a movie. You know, she has. Yes, it's a movie. This is not a thing. That right. happens generally, right? I'm sure it happens occasionally, but it's not like, you know, the widespread issue. The teacher in the school saving the student from the evil parent right. that raise right. them and has all the parental investment in them. Yes. Yes. But just wants to beat them to death. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this is just, it's weird. And it's covering, it's simping for pedophilic shit, which is just bad news, obviously. Well, and it, you know, and what the, the quote that she read from that guy, like for all these issues, I mean, I haven't, I don't know what bill she's talking about. The guy was like, this is just parents afraid of LGBT people. All the bills that I've seen regarding this, none of them say anything about sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. They don't say, oh, if the child is gay, you tell the parents. They're only about transitioning. They right. just throw an LGB just to confuse the issue in a very oh, dishonest of course. way. Yeah, of course. There's no social contagion going on with being gay. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I think that was Florida's biggest optical fuck up was they should have never included gay in the don't say gay bill. It should have just been transitions. Oh, really? Yeah, because that's allow- that's what allowed them to peg it as the don't say gay bill. Right? Oh, you're right. Like, yeah. You should just completely remove that. That has nothing to do with anything. That's not the issue. Right. But, you know. They messed up. And here- yep. uh, here's the thing. If you are a safe person for your kid to speak to about how they're feeling, they'll do that. And if they feel the need to hide it from you, then it sounds like you have some issues that you need to work out. It's not on the teacher and it sure as hell isn't on the kid. It's kind of on you as the adult to, you know, be the adult. Speaking of that statement, isn't that what all this outrage around wokeism is really being used for? To shift the blame? Before everything was about how schools were going woke with gender ideology, people were attacking schools going woke because of CRT being taught in grade school, which once again, it's still not. Critical race theory is a legal theory that's usually taught (laughs) in law school. Oh my God, she said the phrase. She said the phrase. She's such an NPC. Every time I hear the talking points, I just scoff at them. She said, critical race theory is not being taught in school. It is a high-level legal theory. High-level legal theory. Uh, I don't know if you you saw CT uh, made your uh, your Matt Barbie. (laughs) Pretty good. Jesus, fuck. Uh, Daniel said that 
they he knew three guys that were picked out for being gay before they were 18. So there you go. Kicked but then out, again, this was kicked out of their ago. house. Yes. But the animals old like us. So. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how much is happening nowadays. But. He's like, back in 1960, my friend got kicked out of his house. Well, I don't know if that's not, he's not that. Because his dad. No, that's what I'm saying. I, it happens. Very sure angry ha- that Listen. he turned homosexual. Right. Like, it happened. You know, I'm sure it happened a lot more back in the day than it happens now. Because just, obviously, you know, gay acceptance is far more valid, you know, in, in yeah. culture widespread. Um, but I just, the even you know, to say that that's a justification for, for teachers to be able to transition children without parents being involved is fucking insane. It's an insane thing to say. Sooner or later, the parents have to be involved, especially if the kid like lives in their house and well, obviously legal, the kid... legally responsible for. Wait, yeah. What what's next? So the teachers can be able to like go with the kid to get you know puberty blockers or something. Like, what the fuck? like obviously the parents <laughs> have to be involved in the process. Oh my god, that's hilarious. No, they just Not socially for... transition them. Yeah. Okay. No, they just get puberty blockers on uh, Twitter from Keffels. Allegedly. Allegedly. It's not for fifth graders. In reality, it wasn't about CRT at all. It was simply about teaching the realities of United States history, which newsflash, it consists of a lot of horrible things done by white people to black people and other people of color to oppress them. Wait a minute. That's what CRT is? Once again, it's still not. Critical race theory is a legal theory that's usually taught in law school. It's not for fifth graders. In reality, it wasn't about CRT at all. It was simply about teaching the realities of United States history, which newsflash, it consists of a lot of horrible things done by white people to black people and other people of color to oppress them. You notice how every single time one of these liars makes this claim, okay? They never provide, I've never seen a single one of them provide a single example of of evidence of this claim, of some school that because of the CRT law, you know, the government came in and said, you can't teach, you know, what like this thing about like history. Who I they've never provided an example of this. Right. Ever. Because it doesn't exist. Yeah, it's just this totally fabricated claim. And they all it's so annoying because I talk to people. And then like That's it's your first so problem. frustrating because it's just all the newspapers, they'll just they just write the same garbage the white and then people just read claim. it and they go well i read it in newspaper so you know it's got to be true they constantly not... insinuate history as being whitewashed but yes obviously and it's not they provide no examples they provide no examples of this if, if this is such a big problem if this is happening all over the country you think there should be oh look look oh here was a school in you know georgia where they said you can't you know, you're not allowed to teach, you know, the horrors of slavery. Oh, here's a school, you know, in uh, Alabama where they said, oh, all the slaves, you know, wanted to be, you know, were happy, you know, being slaves. Because I remember things like this happening like 20 years ago, right? Like in like these like rare instances popping up. But today they can't find an example of any of this happening. They never, they never provide anything. Right. They perceive about making if you don't, feel- they perceive if you don't teach America bad though, that is whitewashing history. Yes, like you have to truth. teach right. America is just terrible, evil place. Right. Otherwise, you're whitewashing history. Yes, that's a good point. Feel bad or making fifth graders feel like they should have to apologize to every person they see for racism being a thing that exists. It's simply you like that stock footage. Oh yeah, horrible. Okay. Every person they see for racism being what's going on is it, there? Th- what's this happening? Looks like- doesn't this look like a scene from like a soul snack video? This is totally a soul snack video. <laughs> she probably cribbed it from a soul snack video. <laughs> so with the stockfoods.com, they're like white cop, you yeah, know, arresting black bl- kid face against, you know, wall or something. This is like the Derek Chauvin, the prequel here. Yeah, there you go a thing that exists it's simply about learning the history of the country how that history yeah it's funny she flashed on the screen mlk you know mm-hmm. guy who was like communism sucks <laughs> we need to live wait. With solutions. wait if crt is just about learning the history of the country then why is it taught in law school oh well no because her argument is that crt is only being taught in law school but what the republicans are really complaining about is just being taught you know this history that's just being taught in oh, right school. yeah they're saying the Republicans are conflating history and the, right. the legal theory. Which, you know, really they're the ones doing that. So. 
Yeah. It's called gaslighting. Impacts us now and how we can maybe be better in the future. Oh, look, she's got the topical senators in there. Yes, Every person they see for racism being a thing that exists. It's simply about learning the history of the country, how that history impacts us now, and how we can maybe be better in the future. For people that consistently complain about people needing... You see that weird picture where they went, you know, they went to the White House. Um, I forget what each one of them's names was. It was the guy right. with the afro was in the White House. We're talking and about the black pic... state senators in, where is it, Wisconsin? No. Virginia? Uh, Tennessee. Or Tennessee. Something. So, yeah. yeah, Tennessee. This is from the trans shooter fallout, yes. right? Yes. They tried to pass an anti-gun bill, and these guys got very pissed and weren't allowed to speak well, in the So, Senate yeah, so what, basically what happened was um, they, there's all these, it was during when all those protests was going on where the protesters were inside right. the Congress chambers, the state right. or the state legislature there's, chambers. There's a school shooting in Tennessee. A trans shooter kills six people. And then they're trying to get some sort of Democrats right. are trying to get some sort of anti-gun legislation right. passed, which obviously failed because Tennessee is very red. It's Tennessee, obviously. Right. Yeah. And then uh, what happened was uh, they essentially in the middle of whatever their normal vote was, they basically interrupted it and they went mm -hmm. up to the mic and they started talking at a turn or whatever. Right. And so uh, they voted to kick them out of, uh, to remove them from office. Right. Um, which I think was, you know, a step too far, but whatever. Well, but I anyway, mean, they were so, shouting, kill Whitey in a bullhorn, so. Okay, so that didn't happen. If that <laughs> happened, that, <laughs> that didn't happen. Oh, that but, uh, oh, that didn't happen? No, oh, okay. they, didn't, they didn't shout, kill Whitey. Okay. But so the, the guy with the, the afro, there's a picture. So they went to the White House, because obviously, like, Democrats are, like, now they're lionizing these two, you know, individuals as if they're, like, the, you know, the greatest people of all time. And it's, like, the weird image of Joe Biden looking at him, and I swear to God, Joe Biden looks like he wants to fuck him. Like it's no still way. This image. No like, way. Like it's it's like Joe Biden has like his finger on his lip, and he's like he's like oh, like it's the weirdest picture. I'm like, is this fake? Like what is happening in this picture? What are they? Why is Joe Biden looking Tennessee. Like, so fuck this I gotta look for this picture. All right, let me yeah, open up. Like, let me open up Mid Journey. Uh, horny <laughs> Joe Biden stares down Afro Senator. What? Let's see, uh, J Justin Jones Biden White House. I'll see if I can find it. I was like, what oh, you is got his this? Name? Yeah. I just typed in I, Tennessee. It was just Tennessee Justin Jones. Senators. Senators. I'll see I if I can find it. That Joe Biden is that Joe Biden is kind of a weirdo. It was it was a it was a very a very weird picture. So I was like, mm, so what is happening? Basically the president is sexually aroused by this this congressman. That's what it looked like. I mean, obviously mm, it looks okay. like, you know, it's like a single bad frame, but it was like, oh man. Are they sitting down in the Oval Office? Yeah, they're sitting in okay. the Oval Office. Gotcha. But um, look at that. He just looks very excited. So about they it. got a big sit down with Joe Biden in the Oval Office over this. They did. Yeah. What is the incentive not to be a holes in the in the state there is Senate? No incentive. Yeah. If this is, I mean, they're totally being rewarded for their behavior. Well, that was another reason why it was a very. I think it was a completely tactical mistake for the Republicans to do this because they just basically rocketed, you know, these guys to. To famedom, essentially. Right. Yeah. So, and there was a there's a funny video of Justin Jones, I think just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Um. Or yeah, it was like a few years ago when he first entered politics, and you see he, you know, he didn't have an afro. I think he had like very short hair, and he's and he's talking kind of like mm -hmm. normally. <laughs> like oh when, no, he's you know, code or like, switching. You know, yeah, he's kind of talking in like you know the white voice, and then now it's like, oh, okay, so now it's, it just it feels like a performance now. So that would be the point of the whole thing. Like, oh, okay, I see what's happening here. So he's he's pulling a Roland. I always want to say Roland Emmerich, but it's not Roland Emmerich. That's it. It's another guy that made like it's like the director. Day. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the black guy that we covered his video. He's a CNN commentator. But his oh, name is Roland, but I don't Martin? know. Martin? Martin Roland. Roland Martin? Oh, maybe. Anyway. Anyways. Safe spaces, they sure as hell are trying their best to ensure that white children feel safe from having to learn about that history of the... <laughs> They're just trying to protect white children from history. Oh, this is so evil. They just don't want to learn about the true history. Look at that little white kid. Look at that little white kid in a sports jacket and glasses. 
he's obviously just begging to be racist. Look at him. Look at all those girls in his class. Jeez. Yeah, what the fuck? Why is he the only boy? Is this like a fucking anime? It's like the one boy in the, the class of all girls. Girl like, school. What the hell's happening? The country and that the history isn't pretty. And you know, oh, how they maybe will have to learn that good old great grandpa John may have been in one of those pictures from Jim Crow, Mississippi. Black kids and other kids know about this already. It's the Oh, God. are we really, are we really doing this? Yeah. He didn't Literally know, did you not, woke. didn't you know that like white people, white kids in America don't know about like racist, like America's racist history? They're just completely ignorant. They don't know anything about it. Yeah. This we is, haven't made any, uh, any civil rights strides at all. No. I'm so, I'm so tired. The white <laughs> kids that everyone is trying to, air quotes here, protect. <laughs> Still, as unfounded and frankly idiotic as the calls against woke education systems seem, they're having a massive impact on how schools can run. But we'll talk about that a little later when we discuss the laws that have come barreling into our country to address the woke mind virus. For now, let's look at what else has apparently gone woke, capitalism. Ooh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Woke capitalism, holy cow. It's a pretty ludicrous idea to say that capitalism in the United States has gone woke during the current moment. We are seeing round after round of layoffs from giant corporations, rising costs on even the simplest of items, and people slowly but surely running out of options for how they can even survive in this economy. Forget about thriving. But despite all of this, some people claim that companies have just gone too far in the woke direction. Where is this happening? Well, I have no idea. I would love for someone to show me a handful of companies that are actually doing anything relatively good beyond a few inspiring commercials. But none of that seems to matter when- See, there you listen. She defines yeah. woke as good. Yeah, there you go. But you know, she's like, all these companies, they're not socialists. They're still capitalist country, capitalist right. companies, right? Yeah. How can they possibly be woke? This is preposterous. I mean, woke just means not racist, but, but also <laughs> I said, yeah. I found the picture. I sent it to you. I'll check it out. Yeah. But she, you, you caught her defining woke as she's saying that the companies haven't done anything yeah. good, which would be woke. So the companies are not woke because they're not doing anything good. Right. Right. Yeah. Oop. And employers are requiring people to go through the absolute <laughs> horrors of like. DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion training. If you don't think that sounds so terrible, let me turn your attention to an article in The Federalist written by John Soriano about how he survived the terrifying and harrowing experience of learning how to treat people with empathy. Well, let me guess, she doesn't say anything about what's actually in those meetings. Uh, of course no. not, yeah. I don't yeah. think so. According to John, his woke boss was chomping at the bit to develop racial equity in the company. Oh, the humanity. He did, you know what? And I read the article. And he did say chomping at the bit. He's champing. He didn't at say the champing. Bit. He didn't say champing. He said chomp. God. It's champing though. It is champing. I thought of you. I read that and I said, "Oh, Adam would be furious right now." And she did it incorrectly as well. She yes. she didn't fix it. Yes. Vanity. Because of this, he was forced. So, but she's she originally made the claim that the companies weren't doing anything, and now she's saying, "Well, they are doing the, all the DEI stuff." Right. And they should be doing that. Yeah. This whole video is they're not doing it, but they should. And if right. they are doing it, it's good. Like right. This is the repeat, like every 10 seconds, she's like, this isn't happening. And then she gives an example of it happening. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Fuck? Companies aren't woke. They're not doing anything like DEI, which they should be doing. <laughs> and how dare they not do it? <laughs> right. Right. To be the representative for Latin people in DEI training, where he slayed the dragon of the term Latin X. Little did he know that discussing how people should be referred to is one of the most woke things you can actually do. Voicing your concerns is the whole point of these meetings. So, okay, wait, what is this like fucking gaslighting, you know, jujitsu here? Okay. She's like, well, if you're complaining about Latin X, you're actually the woke one. Because you're complaining about how people are referred. Like, wait, what the? F this is insane. Like, yeah. no, 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 no. You come in here and you try to read, you know, try to change a wait. term, and I and I want to change it back. I'm not the one complaining about changing terms. Sitch, there, there was another one you missed. She just said like, you shouldn't complain, but the whole point of these meetings is to complain. Yeah, well, you have to complain about the right things. Okay. 
Well, the it's funny because if you actually read the article, the guy's actually pretty funny because he says, he says, first of all, he's like, I don't even think he's, his, I don't even think he's Hispanic. He's like Italian or something. But for some reason, they like sign him to be the head of the like the Latin. They had to have like each person, they had to have like different like racial group headings or something. And for some reason, he gets, you know, signed to be the head of the Latin group. Oh, fuck. Okay. And he's like, he's like, well, I guess it's fine because I'm married to like a Latina woman. So, you know, I'm half Italian. You know, my children are like half wise guys and half like, you know, Latin, Latinxes or something. But it's funny because he says, so he goes, he gets, you know, uh, assigned to be the chair of like the Latin group. And he notices that in the documentation, it says Latinx. And so he goes and he meets with the other Latin members of the Latin group. And he gives this argument where he says, my first thing I propose is that we get rid of Latinx because that's actually racist. That's us, you know, losing our gendered language by adopting, you know, white imperialist language. Wow. And it's funny because he says the, two, the other people in the meeting all started to laugh and they agreed. And it turned out none of them believed the woke shit. They're all just shoehorned into this. Like, <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, they should, they should elect a uh, meeting. Yes. They should elect Ryan Gosling, the Supreme Chancellor of Black People. True. Why? True. Wow. I mean, I, that, I guess that's what we're doing now. Yeah. Okay. He, he could play Malcolm X for you. There you yeah, go. Ryan Gosling is Malcolm X. Mal Mal Malcolm X is a fictional character. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's but the next step. He acted as if changing the vernacular was a middle finger to the whole process. He got so close to the point and then just flew straight off the cliff. After he took his mental victory lap. Wait, what was the point, Pyramid? She doesn't say. Okay which are his words, not mine, he was forced to deal with the oh-so-terrifying DEI consultants. In the three-hour training, he was thrown into the world of studies and expertise about subjects such as colorblindness, mediocrity, and microaggression. Wait, she just said mediocrity. Yeah, that's meritocracy. <laughs> Did she say mediocrity? She said mediocrity. Go back. I consultants. In the three-hour training, he was thrown into the world of studies and expertise about subjects such as colorblindness, mediocrity, and microaggression. There you go. Fucking idiot. Mediocracy. Well, she doesn't read it, but if you actually read it on the... Here, here's your here's your Vox it highlighting It says meritocracy effect. in the article right there. Right, but here, here's your Vox highlighting effect. Meaning okay. he was thrown into the world of studies... And oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, no, she's used, is. she uses this all the time, though. Oh, my God. She the, she even has the tilt shift zoom now. She does, yeah. She's got the, the whole, the whole the thing. The page, yeah. Yeah. But, but if, you, um, if you read it, it says gasp. The woke white ladies got the vapors yet again. Meritocracy is a myth that experts, in the quotes, experts have found is designed to enforce patriarchy and white supremacy, intoned woke white lady number one. <laughs> yet again, woke white lady number two leaked into action, bombarding us with links to, quote, studies conducted by, quote, experts that demonstrated that all this that demonstrated beyond all doubt that the M word was simply an awful concept where mere mention constituted microaggression. That's hilarious. Because if like, you, if meritocracy you actually... is a joke. Here's yes. a study. Yes. A meritocratic actually... study. <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> that's a great point. But if you actually read the article, you know, the guy was talking about how in the meeting, you know, he was basically just advocating for, you know, we should be, the, the company should be operating on principles of meritocracy and colorblindness. And these, these woke white ladies are just freaking out, losing their shit. Explaining how that's all racist and evil. Wow. But of course, you know, Pyramid Head leaves all of this out of the, the video. So he tried I'd... to turn it into a, a real diversity and inclusion meeting. Right. I, I'm not I'm not convinced that she knows enough about this to believe it. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She she knows all the woke talking points. Basically MPC'd her way through right. a documentary style video essay. Probably. I mean, if I was to ask her three questions about colorblindness, do you think I would get like reasonable answers? No, or would, not you know, even the, close. the whole facade crumble. Yeah. No. She would oh call my. you a racist piece of shit. Oh my God. Our surrogate father, our forever daddy, J Mac, for $400. Wow. Thank you so much, J Mac. That's incredibly generous. Thank you. Our surrogate father, J Mac. Says all you need to shut these people up is reframe all of the books TikTok teachers using heterosexual language instead of LGBT 
QIA language, and parents will still rightly be upset. I don't trust any adult that isn't related to my kid to tackle those issues. Parents may drop the ball, but that doesn't magically shift the responsibility. No, that's a great point. That's a great oh, point. Yeah. If you if you had all these teachers teaching the kids like, you know, you need to be straight, you need to be heterosexual, marriage is between a man and a woman, they'd all be just fucking they'd be there'd be blood coming out of their eyes. They'd be so raged out. Yeah. It's all just about the politics, not that they don't care about the principle of all. It is enraging though to see some teacher trying to come between you and your kid there's yes. a lot of this ideological difference being forced into the classroom and you can tell even pyramid head here thinks you know conservative parents versus progressive teachers and she's siding with the progressive teachers yeah that's all it is that's literally all it is but that's what it annoys me because these people pretend they lie and they pretend like there's some principled argument they're making when it's not it's literally nope. just whose politics do i agree with i side with them yeah yeah which is peak npc thinking yeah yeah and to break up the parent child relationship over politics that's the worst part about it yes we have to save the life of the child adam you don't understand We're look their them. parents are going to indoctrinate them with that weird conservative ideology <laughs> <laughs> we need to indoctrinate them first essentially that's did essentially you see, it. Did you see that clip of the the twelve year old that wore the shirt? There are only two genders. No, what happened? Some twelve year old kid wore a shirt that said there are only two genders, and they sent him away from. They sent him home from school. They tried to say that it was like a political statement or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he gave a speech or something in front of the the school board, and just How old was clowned them all. He's like, tw uh, I don't know how old the clip is. It's lives of TikTok shared it. You can no, I mean, like, it. how was the kid? Like, not twelve years old. He even says um, in the clip, he's like, I, I am a twelve-year-old, and I should, <laughs> I should not be getting struggle sessions from teachers over this right? just innocent fact of science. He clowns them all. He clowns them all so bad. It's hilarious. Well, okay, wait a minute. I'm looking this up for a second. Yeah, bring uh, it up. We'll watch it if you want. It's awesome. Uh, I was, I kept, I was thinking like, yeah, this. Was this in Canada? I'm not sure. It says student arrested at Catholic school. No, that's not it. Arrested? High school student suspended and arrested for saying only two genders. No, he's 12 years old. Okay. He's not oh, so maybe this student. happened in Canada as well. Because this Canada kid is 16. Um, so I'm not sure because, because I'll say it, I don't listen. I don't like when parents have their kids be their mouthpieces. Well, the dad right. was obviously involved because it, the obviously. dad backed him up, yes. totally backed him up obviously. on this. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I don't like, you know, to me, I don't think you should have your 12 year old kid be wearing their political t-shirt and then talking in school. all So I don't, <laughs> I don't like any of that stuff. Even Wait if you're on the second. right politics, I don't. Wait my principles, second, I, I don't favor kids being the mouthpiece of their parents' political idea, ideology to schools and adults and all this stuff. Look, if you can't, I found it. If you can't, uh, if you can't have your kid go to school and clown on this woke shit, what the fuck is America about, Sitch? <laughs> what? The, seriously? seriously it's, no, i don't think it's funny hold on we'll bring it up we'll bring it up okay. and watch where it. is it I'll, i'm sending it to you so okay i don't i think it's funny but what i'm saying is i don't like this thing where parents have some political belief and then they basically have you know their kid regurgitate it kind of hide behind the shield of their child's right say oh here's my child this kind of adds weight to it like this is this is exactly what happened with what's her face i heard that how part. dare you girl you know how dare you like i just i'm sick of this political activism where people shove their kids out there to try to add extra emotional weight uh you know greta thunberg and just shove this extra emotional weight by having their kid read their political opinion it's like no fuck you that's manipulative so no i don't i don't appreciate it i don't like it if the well, kid I, okay, wants to me... wear a two gender shirt you know go you know go for it right let me like the counter argument I think is, I mean, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying because obviously, you know, they're working their kid kind of like a puppet, which, right. you know, 
would rub anyone the wrong way. But the, the interesting thing about this story is kind of how the people respond to that. So if you mm. know that you're, you know, some parent is gassing you up through their kid, do you, right. the response is important, right? Like, are you going to let them do that? Are you going to fall right into the parent's trap? What do you mean? Well, they didn't necessarily need to put this kid in a struggle session, right? No, obviously, listen, no. The kid shouldn't get in trouble for wearing the t-shirt. Right. right. But the fact that he did, I yeah, think, is interesting. Right. No, the, yeah, the fact that the kid got in trouble for wearing this t-shirt is insane, especially because presumably at the school, if you wore a t-shirt that said the opposite, you wouldn't get in trouble of it. Did you, you bring know, it up? Uh, oh, I have it up if you want to watch it. I have been told that my shirt was... Yeah, you want to watch it? Not really. Okay. I mean, we just talked about it for like five minutes, but it was just like a you know a big tangent. But because okay. my point we, is, we, we, we right. move on. We watch it afterwards. Right. This, yeah, just my, my whole point is just you know again, I don't like parents shoving their politics in their kids. You know, whatever. But this kid totally clowns. I don't. I don't like parents shoving true. anything in their kids. There you go. There you go. Look the. The funny thing is, this 12-year-old totally clowns him on the two genders thing. Well, what you mean is the father who wrote the speech totally clowned them through his kid on the two genders thing. I mean, there should... The the more than two genders thing is like anti-science, though, right? Of course it is. Well, we're talking... It it's is. out of school. It's literally out of school. They're I like, know. I As I said, I agree with the print... I agree with the argument. I just don't like it being done through children. If the kid wore a t-shirt that said Jesus never lived, do you think he would get in trouble at school? Unless it was, no, probably not. Well, this and is, yeah, and that's the hypocrisy of the situation. Total hypocrisy, yeah. Sure. It's like you're allowed to make fun of one religion, but you're not allowed to make fun of another. Right. Uh, we'll watch it later. Let's continue. Okay. Meritoc and expertise um, about subjects such as color blindness, yes. mediocrity, and microaggressions. She doesn't even know the difference between mediocrity and meritocracy. Well, what a listen. Dummy. Obviously, she was, you know, <laughs> she was, she was uh, affirmative action her way through. <laughs> she was is, a token f female in all these situations. Okay, is I mean they're kind of opposites, meritocracy and mediocrity. Of course they are. Yeah. They are the opposite. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a funny slip up. It's you know. Which, listen, I hate to be racist. Mm -hmm. I hate to it's be. It's technically sexist. sexist. Yeah. Get it Let's right. Both. Look, you're it's, sexist. No, 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 no. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up both. Okay. Okay. I hate to be racist. I hate to be sexist. But pyramid head here exudes a lot of white Karen energy. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. Wow. She exudes a lot of white Karen energy. That's wow. All you didn't have to bring race into it. Karen's yeah, not. Yeah, I didn't. Karen's not. But, have it, to but be white. I did. But I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor thing. It must have been such an experience. And after his job enforced vaccination requirements, he quit. But he did live to tell his remarkable story. Throughout the course of the article, he used the word woke 17 times, might I add. In total, he spent probably four hours of his life in DEI training, and the way he describes it, it was like he went to war. But it's not. It was four hours of your life, and you were paid to be there. You don't have to agree with any of it, but you do have to listen. Regardless. That's Imagine so if, crazy. Uh, that is crazy. This is some fucking 1984 shit. Imagine if, like, how do you think Pyramid Head here would feel if someone had to go to a four-hour meeting where they told them that wokeism was dog shit, that socialism is an ideology that brings only destruction and ruin, you know, and all this stuff. You think she's like, well, you know, it's, you don't have to really agree with it. It's just sit through it. It's, you're getting paid to be there. Why are you complaining? Right, totally. Or make Christians sit through a class, you know, taught by atheists who just are like, oh, the Bible's all fictitious nonsense, bullshit. Your yeah. God never existed. <laughs> Historical Jesus never even lived. Well, she probably would like that. So, but that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I, if she just likes torturing people, I mean, geez, yeah. come well, on. Probably. Everything you believe is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> this is the terrible woke monster that people are trying to slay all over the country. 
Over just the last year, about 44 bills in 16 states have been developed that seek to punish companies that adopt any type of DEI strategy or promote any type of woke messaging on climate change, diversity, or any other social issues. And all those bills do that based on the fact that they're racist as fuck. Mm -hmm. That's how they're able to do it. Right. They're able to say these programs are racist. You shouldn't do them. They discriminate against white, straight males. Mm -hmm. The phrase go woke and go broke has been a very common and very stupid expression used by a lot of these folks. <laughs> Banks in particular have also apparently gone too far. Take the recent collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. It didn't just crash because it overextended itself and made terrible business decisions. No, 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 don't, don't, be, don't be silly, don't be a goofy little bean. According to some right-leaning people on social media, it crashed because of its woke agenda, because, of course. One user wrote, the woke agenda coming from SVB is in large part to blame for their failure. The insane left-wing agenda is bankrupting our future. Go woke, get broke. And yes, because the left was who promoted the deregulation of banks. You got that one, chief. Oh, oh, wait, wait, no. That was Donald Trump who apparently did that one. Mm -hmm. This is such bad content. I know, this it's actually I'm cringing so hard. It's fucking painful to watch. I can't believe people unironically watch this content. That's so sad. Ugh. All it is is dunking on Republicans. Uh, as, I, I can get down with that, but like, I mean, be funny. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. Obviously the jokes are not hitting and the background music completely goes against any sort of you know, Boing. funny levity, Boing. <laughs> Boing. right? <laughs> this is very dour and dramatic. So the jokes are contrasting against <laughs> that, Trends. which makes absolutely no sense. So, but the Silicon Valley bank thing. I was not mm -hmm. a fan of people saying that it was a woke problem because yeah, that was a, that it was wasn't. A stupid comment. Yeah, right. But this comment is additionally just as stupid mm -hmm. because, as all the articles were saying at the time, the regulations that Donald Trump uh, cut back on or that the Trump administration cut back on would not have applied to SVB anyway. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because they were not large enough, or they were too large. I don't know. They were outside whatever the range was of these regulations in the first place. Every, I will say that every comment that people made on the right about SVB going bankrupt because of woke policies, they were, in fact, citing woke policies, as in, you know, they were more concerned about equity and inclusion than they were about running a bank. So, yeah, the, the bank was doing woke stuff, but that was, of course, wasn't it was. Why, that's that not why it went caused, bankrupt. Yeah. yeah, that's not what causes the, right. the collapse, though. So that's a good point. But I just want to make that clear because she will say, like the whole, the basic whole video is aimed at the right has no idea what woke means. Right. That's just, just this mystery. None of us can figure out. But right. Yeah. No. Mm, yeah. Apparently that was Donald Trump, not the woke left. You can go ahead and take your several seats and take them quickly. Now, regardless, other people have claimed that their 2022 environmental report that committed $5 billion in loans to sustainability efforts by 2027 is what actually destroyed them. Meanwhile- What? Hold on. That's the woke stuff. I know. <laughs> that's the fucking woke stuff. She just destroyed her own- Yeah, argument. she destroyed yeah. her own argument, and that's not right. why the bank collapsed. I know, but she's- Listen. Oh my God. Listen. She's not very intelligent. We've already, you know, we've already <laughs> talked about this. Okay. She's not even tracking the argument, though. Right. Jeez, I, I think she's going to try to. Out. I think she's going to try to disprove this with just by just declaring it not true, though. So we'll see. Oh, okay. Others still were saying that it was the investment into racial justice causes or their Pride Month campaign that killed them. And for those to be even remotely true, you would assume that they mean people had stopped putting their money into the bank because they didn't agree with those policies. But that's not what happened. Wait, that's not the wait. No, that's not the argument. Just, the argument would be that. As you said, uh, the accusation was that the bank cared more about making financial decisions based on politics rather than making money, and thus would lose the bank money, and thus people would lose confidence in the bank and pull their money out. Right. Not that they're like, I hate the transits. I'm going to pull my money out of this bank. That was not. That was not the argument. The bank went under because they made safe investments that were a good bet until the Fed raised interest rates. As soon as the Fed raised interest rates, those were not. Those investments immediately became underwater. Yes. That has nothing to do with wokeness or diversity. 
Right. Wokeness right. doesn't make them buy treasuries at of a low interest rate. No. These other things were going on, but they weren't what was responsible for the bank going right. under. Yeah. Plenty of people had money in the bank. The bank just used the money wrong, and that's what killed them. And funny enough, banks in the past have done this too, way before there was a woke agenda. So how do you explain them apples? Now, of course, despite the logical explanation being the correct one, people want to shift the blame to the wokeness. You know, there's an irony, though, that she she's attacking people claiming wokeness, but she didn't explain what the actual problem was. She just said they spent the money wrong. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That could mean anything. <laughs> that could literally be that could you could someone could be saying, oh, they spent money on woke issues. They spent the money wrong. Like that doesn't disprove anything. You just say, oh, well, course. they spent the money wrong. Like, that's, right. Come on. If they spent their money wrong on woke issues, that would yes. be a spending problem. the money wrong. Yeah. Yes, come on, Durr. Come on, pyramid head. Durr. And this is we're getting to my favorite part because this okay. the control part. Oh, okay. It's all about you. En you enjoy control. part of this. Well, it's just, it's so stupid because like the argument makes absolutely no sense, and she keeps flashing the word control just to like trigger people's liberty oppression foundation. They're like, what? Someone's trying to control me. Rawr, I'm mad. Adam has a strong sense of shot and fraud. Okay. He just loves hating this garbage. Of course. Yeah. It's it's very cringy. But I can see it working. I can see the like the dullards that watch these kinds of videos and think, you know, I'm watching some intellectual video essay here. Mm -hmm. It works on them. But it's, it's just emotional manipulation is all it is. This is just one example of what banks are dealing with when it comes to the woke hysteria. Others like JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Goldman Sachs have been cut out of bond markets because they promised to boycott energy companies in Texas that speak out against the firearm industry. What the fuck? When did, is that? Did you catch how that sentence made no sense? When did that happen? Well, okay, so for, she, for, she actually... How she, are they cut out of bond markets, first of okay. all? Okay. Like, well, she, she conflated two different things. Um, she said... They were cut out of the bond market for energy companies were cut out of the bond market for um, speaking out against gun issues. So there were two different things, which was basically in Texas, uh, they passed legislation that said that banks couldn't underwrite public debt if they either, there are two different bills, if they either had some sort of like anti uh, oil uh, stances mm -hmm. or if they tried to limit credit accessibility to gun shops essentially what so okay here's what, this, here's was what just, this is just in texas so this, this is, is not because bank of america is like a nash international company obviously yeah it was public debt in texas right okay right that they so couldn't underwrite te public the debt texas texas. state legislature is saying we're not going to do business with bank of america unless they do x we're not going to allow bank of america to underwrite state loans and things in, mm -hmm. in you know in the, okay. in the bond market essentially gotcha um so okay there's this is an interesting complicated situation which obviously pyramid head doesn't get into because she's an idiot so bank of america and jp morgan and i what some of the other ones that she mentioned they they, they made this decision this was after i believe i believe this was after uvalde uh, or something right and, and it's also kind of after I think they kind of did it piecemeal. It was off, also after, remember the uh, hotel shooting? The person, you know, killed all those people from the roof, the hotel. Oh, yeah, balcony. in Vegas. In Vegas, yeah. They basically said that they weren't going to, the banks made a decision that they were not going to allow uh, gun stores, which sell bump stocks, which sell high magazine ra capacity. Yeah high round capacity magazines that sell guns to anyone under the age of 21 and something else. Oh, and, and don't do background checks. They weren't going to allow those gun shop owners to use these banks essentially in their businesses. Wow. That's some pressure. Um, and so, and then, so then Texas turns around and says, well, then, you know, because of this, you know, you can't be involved in our you know public bond market. So I can have mixed feelings about this because on one hand, it is incredibly uh, hypocritical for the Republicans to do this because the platform at which they've run on for so many years was this sort of libertarian platform of you should let businesses do whatever they want. Yeah. Right. 
And this would be a, a basically a massive infringement on businesses' rights to do, you know, to have their own, uh, you know, opinions about whatever they want to do. Something which the Republican Party has stood behind for you know, the last 40 years. And this is something I've always said, and some people get very mad when I say it, which is that the Republican Party is not a libertarian party, but they've been using libertarian principles and libertarian philosophy as like a crux and a shield because libertarians generally make good arguments or at least arguments based on a principle that are kind of easy to defend or argue in favor of. Right. And so the Republican Party uses this as a crutch. And now we're kind of saying, oh, the majority of the Republican Party doesn't actually give a shit about libertarian principles really at all. They've just been using it as kind of like a shield. Essentially. Right. Yeah. And this would be a good make example. Good of it. argument against government intervention, and when the government is intervening on behalf of progressives, they want to use those arguments because exactly they're like exactly. shutting right. them down. Right. And this is a good example of it. Same thing with DeSantis and Disney is a good example of it. Um, however, on the other hand, I don't think it should be legal for banks to do this. I don't think it should to be pick legal and choose for their customers. Yeah, for, on political grounds. Of course, yeah. No. I don't think it should be legal for a bank to say, oh, it's totally legal for you to sell this kind of gun in your state. Well, we've decided based on our own political moral reasons that we don't agree with that, so we're not going to do business with you. I don't think that should be allowed. Yeah. To me, that's a massive uh, infringement on how business should be conducted in this, in this country. I think if you're a business, you're a non-political business like a bank, you should not be allowed to make decisions regarding customers on the basis of politics whatsoever. Yeah. I don't believe in any of that shit. You're basically so. trying to legislate through coercion. You're saying, listen, if you don't adopt our political outlook, we're going to turn your utilities off. Yes. It's like, what? Right. <laughs> right. How's that right. work? Yeah. So that's so fa like that's real fascist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It actually is. And it's totally fucking wild. And so even though I agree, I think the Republicans are being hypocritical in this instance, I do still agree with, fortunately, I'm not being hypocritical because that was never my position, but I do agree with this legislation mm -hmm. completely. I don't think banks should be allowed to do, to engage in these sorts of political actions. And if they are, you know, that the government has to, you know, obviously the federal government could do something to prevent that, but if the federal government's not going to do something to prevent that, I don't have a problem with states essentially. Texas, so... <laughs> Yeah, Texas fighting back is, against these actions. They're stepping in to protect the consumer, basically. Well, in the terms of the oil stuff, they're stepping in the per to protect their oil industry. And then in terms of the gun stuff, they're, it's really more of a, it's a political virtue signal. Right. But since I agree with it, I'm fine with it. Okay. <laughs> essentially. So. Well, at least you're honest. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, but I mean, that's the, you know, that's the truth of it. Illuminati should have added all this to her video. No, she doesn't talk about any of the issues. Really. Of course, yeah. P. Morgan, Bank of America, and Goldman Sachs have been cut out of bond markets because they promised to boycott energy companies in Texas that speak out against the firearm industry. Others have been sidelined for subsidizing abortions. So let me be clear here. This isn't about preventing an ideology. This is about control. When states step in to sideline banks because they show an ounce of social awareness, it isn't done to stop the banks from spreading that. She, like, she says an ounce of social awareness. She didn't say what the specific issues were. She says an ounce of social awareness, right? Well, she's in favor of them cutting off your utilities because you aren't woke enough. Right. She's Based. like, well, <laughs> there you go. But her, her main argument doesn't even make sense. She says, this isn't about stopping ideology. This is about control. Yeah, but, that's what's freaky because... Wait, 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 stopping... But you, you stopping an ideology is about it's about exerting control by definition, is it not? Sure. So what the fuck is this is arguments like idiotic? <laughs> it's is not it about stopping an ideology. It's just about control. Well, you need control to stop an ideology. I don't. What do you talk? That's number one. Number two. This is literally about stopping an ideology, a leftist woke ideology, which is about controlling the discourse. That's the whole thing with the woke ideology. It's, oh, you're not allowed to say certain things. You're not allowed to discuss certain things. You're not allowed to question anything because it's all a mechanism of control. Right. But it's backwards. They're saying right. we're in, in favor of, you know, political diversity in this particular case. 
So they're yes. exercising control to make sh sure that you don't have control. I mean, I guess they are arguing over control, but it's like she's making well, it seem like they want to control you. Yes. They want you yeah. to have freedom of speech. And that's right. controlling. Well, it's 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 this really gaslighty thing that they that they've been doing where it's like, oh, so Republicans in some state they pass some bill to try to crack down on, you know, a company being woke or a school being woke. And then all of a sudden, you know, the the left, their hair catches on fire and they say, oh, my God, they're cracking down on free speech. They're so authoritarian. Of course, ignoring that the entire way in which wokeness works is by being anti-free speech, yeah, is by being authoritarian, by saying you're not allowed to question certain things. Yeah, right. You're not ideological to... conformity is what they're asking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you if you question any of this stuff, you get labeled a racist and a bigot, and you get sent to the the white corner of shame. Yeah. The, where you get canceled. The white corner of shame. Exactly. Yes. Here's your. That is where you belong. That's where all the cool kids hang out. That's true. That's where all the weed is smoked in the classroom. In the white corner of shame. <laughs> it's all about Ideology. control. They're control. trying to control you into having free speech. They're all about it's all about control. They're trying to prevent <laughs> us from controlling you, these control freaks. <laughs> that's so true. That's that's what's that's why this part just annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> well, gee, who the hell Lava cares what projection. banks think? It's about controlling the narrative in their own state and limiting the amount of access their citizens have to companies that may actually help them. That's what cancel this is culture about. isn't real. Let's cancel see. culture isn't real, by the way. Did you know that cancel culture isn't real? Uh, but if it is, those people should have been canceled because they said a bad thing. Oh, but no, it's the other side that's all about control. The uh, they're trying to control you. Well, right. Listen, we're not trying to control you. We're all pro freedom here on woke side and wokeistan, right? It's not like the entire definition of wokeistan is being anti liberal, anti free speech, you know, anti freedom. No. They're going against the ideological conformists. And they're trying to control you. <laughs> it's just, it's so ass backwards. It's, it drives me insane. And yeah. she says it over and over and over again. I know. It's There's all no about control. It's like, come on, they're, no, it's more like the Calvary. It's more like the helpers. And just remember, the Republican Party, the right, they love to be the party of small government. This is not very small government of them. Just remember, this is really about control. <laughs> but unfortunately, banks aren't the only ones who have seen increasing anti-woke measures. Just over the last year, we have seen legislatures develop policies attacking schools, corporations, and general populations at the speed of light. And before Based. we take a moment to talk about all of this new anti-woke agenda and population control and legislation, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor. Check in with yourself. <laughs> I don't you love this <laughs> Don't you love that she has sponsors? Uh, I do. I love it's like, oh my God, we got to talk about, I got to protect all these big businesses. Me, yeah. the socialist. Let me talk about how I'm protecting capital. By the way, here's my sponsor. Totally. Before offering to help someone else, rest when you need rest and ask for what you need and say yes. Well, to be fair, it doesn't look that bad here. The, it was that, that, who's that guy who does the news? Some news guy or something like Cody that? Cody Johnson. Right. Yeah, his his were so cringe. Yes. Really oh bad. my god, it was, that was the fucking worst. Holy shit! Is this, a, is this a lesbian couple here? What's going on in this picture? They're just friends. hopefully. I mean, this is kind of like Joe Biden looking at one of the Tennessee <laughs> senators. Dude, there is that the is that the green M M&M and M with the uh, the brown M M&M? and M? Is that what's happening? <laughs> Oh my God. Jesus Christ! Who picked this stock foot? Fo who picked this stock footage? I don't even remember what the product is. I I don't either. Yeah, that's why I'm like, what's going on here? Is this Adam and Eve that she's pitching? FD Signifier always has Adam and Eve promotions in his videos. Have you noticed? That's that? so weird. That's so strange. Is it? He's like, like the family his audience, man. His audience is like buying like lingerie and shit. I don't know. It's fucking strange he's like Maybe the, he's got a lot of women watching his content or something he's like the family man and he's pitching adam and eve don't they sell like sex toys and shit. yeah they sell like like i thought they sell like sexy lingerie or something oh is that it oh okay i think so but... it's like a marketplace where no they sell sex toys and all kinds oh, of okay. shit yeah because big big joel used to use them as a sponsor and there's like 
one one of the best little Joel videos. I think it's his most viewed video. Is him talking about why he doesn't use them as a sponsor anymore. It's actually mm. funny as fuck. Why doesn't he? Uh, basically, because um, I, so my understanding is they're like a marketplace and they don't exactly vet everything that goes on. It's just like people can put up products and stuff. And basically, somebody was misadvertising like a gelatin dildo, uh, such that like people thought they could reuse it, but they couldn't. Like. If you reuse it, it gets like infected or something, oh, and like okay. you get, like it's it's really bad for you. But they but they would not like advertise it correctly. So Big Joel has this like email exchange where he's trying to explain to the like the guy who's trying to get him to do advertisements that like he's not going to do an ad spot for them unless they fix the description of this dildo, and they just <laughs> refuse to do it. It's actually hilarious. Wow. Well, you, you know why wow. he was you know why he was so focused. He's on his brain. got the butt aids from the dildo, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, God. exactly. He's one of these unhappy so, customers. So mean to Big Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Doomer's such a Big Joel simp. Look at this. I, I am. Know. Even though you know, I, it was Doomer. Look, I am. Doomer was the... No, he's Doomer's full of shit. Because Doomer was the one who was all like salivating for us to, to shit on Joel's woke tag. Oh, yeah. He's the one that sent it to us. What are you yeah. talking about, Doomer? Yeah. You set it up. Don't back down now. I know. Look, Look I, I'm a drama frog. Okay, that doesn't matter what I'm talking about. That's okay. Did I hope he got did how did the video end? Did he get some Did he ever cure his <laughs> brains? He... Yeah. No, he... What happened? Did, butt infection? did no, the they, infection they, they refused... go away? Did they amputate did... his butt? <laughs> they they refused to fix the description and he didn't oh, okay. he didn't use them as a sponsor again. Damn it. There you go. <laughs> We never got the we never got to the bottom of it. We got a message. Jesus <laughs> fuck. You got to message him. Find out how it turned out. <laughs> yes, turn out that make in the end. <laughs> yeah, I feel so behind. <laughs> you feel Jesus good. Christ. Transport your mind to a world where you can relax and treat yourself to your deepest desires with Dipsy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> with Dipsy. 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 Like hustle. A... Sounds like an STD. It sounds like a dipshit video essayist. I'm afraid you've look. Got we the have dipsy. the perfect product for you. You're 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 Dipsy. It's called Dipsy. Dipsy so, is an app full of hundreds of my, short, my sexy rocks. audio stories. They short, sexy audio stories. Yeah, unlock your sensuality with a subscription to an ever-growing collection of sexy audio stories. We have got to listen to some of these audio stories here. <laughs> It's the the window because it is capitalism. Look, I know the socialists don't understand capitalism. They they fear capitalism, yeah. but capitalism is very good at sorting people. So if Dipsy is doing a promotion on this woman's channel, they've figured out her audience is the one that bites for these sensual short stories. Of course, because you know who you know who buys this product, right? Women, women, Joe, yeah, exactly. Joe Mama, Joe Mama, there you horny, go. horny women, <laughs> horny women listening to their audio, <laughs> their sexy audio. Books. Isn't this hilarious? Illuminati <laughs> is pimping her audience is the horny women crowd. Yes, and she's pimping them out to <laughs> to Dipsy. Buy some Dipsy. Dipsy. That's the worst name for Dipsy. It sounds so close to dipshit. It sounds okay, I, dipshit and tipsy. It's like a tipsy like dipshit. Yes. This yes. is this is literally drunk girl at a party. <laughs> <laughs> She's so dipsy. You're right. You're so you're right. Yeah. That's the drunk tipsy that girl drunk, acting like a dipshit. That drunk dipshit from the party. <laughs> yeah, the dipsy chick. You, you said sex with her? What? <laughs> you had sex with that dipsy broad? <laughs> Why are you doing I'm gonna meet to you. She was totally wasted. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. New content is released every week. Immersive soundscapes. Do you know what an immersive soundscape is, Sitch? I'm assuming that's like people moaning into the fucking <laughs> microphone or something. You guessed it. <laughs> you guessing. guessed it. Okay. You guessed it. <laughs> immersive. Is that? Oh, no, no, it is. It's someone moaning to the, the soundscape. They got like, remember Gak? <laughs> that's like the best. Remember Goodbye Gak? Like you remember Nickelodeon gag? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the sound right there. They got <laughs> the slapping. Got their finger in the gag, going like. <laughs> oh man! Oh. oh man! We gotta listen to some of these. Well, he, okay. I just this is like a wealth of comedy gold. I, here. I'm, 
It is, but now I'm curious. Do you think that these are like male narrated or female narrated? Mostly? Female. Oh no, maybe male. It could be male. I mean, are, do women want to listen to other women making sex sounds over no, there? No, no, no. That no, that's me. Guy. It's you. You're listening to. It's you listening to the the men making the sex sounds, or you're narrating the sex sound. Did I you know women making sex sounds? Who? Nobody wants to listen to men making sex sounds. Did you know that there's a type of gay porn, oh, guy on guy porn, that's made for women? Did you know that? We yeah. we did know that because okay. someone in our audience is a very big fan of it. Sammy G, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, he talked about it several times. Oh, damn it. Sorry, Sammy. <laughs> so in between listening to your favorite stories Docs. again and again, you can always find something new to explore. And they also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and even sexy stories you can read if that's more of your vibe. Oh, <laughs> sexy stories. Soothing sleep stories. Dude, it's 2023. Nobody wants to fucking read. <laughs> What if, no, no, someone, someone's going to go, someone's going to subscribe to the service mm -hmm. to get the sexy stories, which they can then put into like a deep fake voice so they can have it read to them. I love how they're faking it like it's some sort of waterfall soundscape. Yeah, right. So let Dipsy be your oh. go-to. <laughs> oh, man. This is like stock footage of a woman masturbating in the bathtub. This is so <laughs> bad. I fast forwarded through this. What the hell's going on with her arm? I was actually listening to it. She's got some like massive red thing on her arm. That's a uh, the rose petal. It's oh, like a rose petal. Probably, specter, yeah, you're probably right. right. Okay. I was like, she's just a growth on her arm. Who plays to spice up your me time? Explain. <laughs> spice up your me time. Oh, look. Okay, first of all, <laughs> those feet look kind of suspectingly small. Yeah, that so looks like know. a child's feet. Yeah, What's going on here? A little Somebody's got like. That's a little so, so I think crazy. one of her editors might Christ. be uh, mm. <laughs> dipping into the wrong footage here. Yes. Enjoy your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. Oh, <laughs> Look, <yes>. there's, there's, <laughs> there's two people, you know, heating up. <laughs> you know, you know, when you're like, hey, hey, baby, you want to listen to a song with me? I'm like, hey, hey, baby, you want to listen to this dipsy, <laughs> dipsy <laughs> sex story with me as we're outdoors? Here's no, earbud. no guy wants to listen to this with his girlfriend. I'm telling no. you. No. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30 day free trial when you go to 30 day free trial, Sitch. <laughs> ding, oh, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> to dipsystories.com slash casket. Again, that's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash casket. Dipsystories.com slash casket. That's, listen, Why it's casket? the code name. The code name is casket because that's where you're going to put your shame. When you get right. Subscribe Why to is it casket? Is that her you're old gonna, channel name or something? I don't, you're going to bury your shame in the ground. You still want to do... So many of these sponsors are so skeezy, Fuck. Sitch. Sorry. I would... What that's happens? Right. Doomer. Did you drop crash. a brick on your dick or something? What happened? Adobe <laughs> Premiere crashed. Uh, oh, really? So oh, you're editing Piece at the same time? Piece How dare of shit you? program. Of course, yeah. I got work to do, dog. Oh, okay. Listen. Casket. I would 100% do an ad spot for Dipsy Adam. Would okay. you? <laughs> I want to listen to some of these stories so we can laugh at them. And then they wouldn't want to do an ad spot with us. No, do you want no, to hear me narrate our, a sexy story? Obviously, oh, the answer is fuck no. <laughs> so our, get dipsy. <laughs> are you actually sexy stories are narrated by sexy sounding people? Dips, there you go. There's the ad spot. This is just so. Well, you think our audience, 98% male, wants to listen to these dipsy stories? I don't think so. No, of course not. But it doesn't mean I wouldn't accept money to shill a product no one wants to buy. They would, they would give us one of those. <laughs> Your URLs, no one will go to it, and they yeah, immediately drop us. Somewhere. Yeah. Oh, It'd back. Funny, oh, though. back to the video. Back to the serious music. Oh, this, oh, oh, oh. I know that's your heart beating. Oh, from be all afraid. The from all the dips you've been listening to. <laughs> be afraid. I love how the video is basically like Republicans are taking over the world, but you still have time to listen to a sexy story with your boyfriend. <laughs> The world is basically crashing around you, but, you know, me time. <laughs> when you're taking a break from fighting the authoritarian fascist mob of the Republican Party, right. have a little bit of me time listening to a sexy erotic story on right. Dipsy with right. your partner. <laughs> Who's also a Republican. <laughs> 
Did you ever wish that you were captured by pirates on the high seas, but the pirate captain was really a kind, suave, beautiful man? Well, now that fantasy can become reality with Dipsy. <laughs> with Dipsy. You dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> The anti-woke anti legislation. That's what this part's called. You didn't think we'd get through an entire episode about woke mind virus without talking about the anti-woke gremlin himself, did you? Obviously, I'm talking about the governor of the country's most chaotic state, Florida, and I'm speaking about Ron DeSantis. Now, despite the state being called one of the worst places to raise a family, having rising rent prices and other terrifying statistics, Ron has decided that it was prudent to, instead of, you know, focusing on the real issues, focus on attacking the wokeness in public universities. Recently, he introduced the Stop Woke, Wrongs to Our Kids and Employees Act, which prohibits schools and businesses from, quote, teaching students and employees anything that could cause anyone to feel guilt, anguish, or any form of psychological distress due to their race, color, sex, or national ordinance. Lies from The Guardian. Every single publication that talks about this lies about it. That's not what it says. What it says is you're not allowed to teach someone that they should feel guilt or anguish based on their race, color, sex, or national ordinance. Right. Yeah. Okay. Which Important I thought all these fuckers would be in favor of. Yeah. Why should Wait, people no. feel guilty about that? <laughs> if, they, if they believe in the woke shit, then no, it's like they would not believe that <laughs> Yeah, no, the woke people, right, but the the mainstream left should be in favor of it. If, if this legislation was passed in the 1960s, it would be hailed as like a, a monumental success of, you know, progressive civil rights. Yeah, yeah. totally. Well don't, well, don't you know, Sitch, this is all just an extension of the Civil Rights Act anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they should say about the Stop Woke Act. This is just an extension of the Civil Rights Act. <laughs> that would be hilarious framing for DeSantis to say that. The media would never pick it up, but it would be true in it would essence. just be a good thing to keep repeating. Just kind of, just repeat it. Make them have to resp like, respond. Like say that, say that, and then the rest of the speech is just quoting MLK <laughs> in Rosa yes. Parks. Yes. I also love that he turned woke into an acronym just to add a bit of, you know, spice to the name. And in addition to that super broad definition of what isn't allowed, DeSantis is also barring university professors from talking about the state's voting laws and has said that. Okay, so she, again, is dumb. She read an article and misunderstood it. There's no law in Florida that bars professors from teaching students about state voting laws. Right. What, what she's talking about was there was a case where someone was suing the state for some voting law that was passed, and uh, state uh, University of Florida professors wanted to provide evidence against the state. And essentially, uh, he intervened to prevent that from happening, which you can be in favor of or against. But that's very different than saying teachers were not allowed to teach in class things about the state's voting laws. Right. That public college employees have no right to freedom of speech. So <laughs> let that one sink in. People well, but that, that's true. Not completely, but in terms of their teaching of classes. Sure. Uh, teachers do not have the right to free speech in terms of a class. They can't just teach whatever the fuck they want. That's yeah. true. Everyone agrees with that. They have to teach a curriculum. That's the whole point yes. of having a class. Yes. People are allowed to critique you or educate others about the horrendous voting laws you've enacted to stop people from being able to vote against you. That is perfectly within their First Amendment rights. Again, for a Republican right-leaning person though. who, again, small government and all about the First Amendment, this isn't, this isn't very policy of you. This whole line of rules brings a certain word to mind. Um, darn, what is that word? Oh, fascism. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's starting to feel like. Now, as always, these new laws... Have can, you, can you define fascism for me, Pyramid Head, please? Fascism. Please? Yeah. Fascism. Fascism is when the government does stuff. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Fascism is just right-wing socialism. I mean, yeah, technically. Essentially. <laughs> To do with protecting the children from you know having to be uncomfortable during their lectures this is again about control it's controlling what people know about our history and for desantis it's controlling what people know about our present too the you know it's the whole thing is like we need to tear down you know statues we have to rename everything we have to control the entire narrative and then when there's like pushback it's like you just want to control it yeah classic it's, it's, projection it's a funny statement coming from a video that is like 
very blatantly propaganda. Yes. Yeah. That is all about control. Controlling the narrative about wokeness. Look, woke is their word. They feel, you know, attached to it. I love the, the stock footage. It's like scrabble pieces that say the word law with <laughs> shadow. I'm on I a mean, different if, pick. Look, if you're if you're putting out two hours of edited content a week, you can't broadness of you can't be thinking about stuff. Right. Are people is she writing the script though, or is someone else writing the script? There's no way. It, just doing is like, Chat GPT writing the script? Yes, that would explain a lot. I mean, just just doing voice recording, and like maybe she doesn't even edit her audio. I mean, doing two hours. If you're doing two hours of edited stuff, <laughs> you would assume that there's like six to eight hours of takes, right? And that she would, does that one would of probably mean she's recording. She does like three a week. She okay. does like two hours of content a week. Wow. So like, I mean, it's probably two days just of audio recording. And then, like the rest of the time, I don't know what the fuck the rest. Of, there's, it's impossible that she's doing most of this herself. No. She definitely has other people writing and writing and editing the shit at the very least. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Of the act isn't an accident either, might I add. It's meant to scare people out of discussing anything having to do with gender and race and its working. Even before a Florida judge thankfully blocked certain aspects of the law after calling it positively dystopian, schools and teachers were already okay. So I want to talk about this judge that blocked part of this. Now, I've complained about this in the past. I know lawyers and judges get bored of like, because they have to read all these, you know, boring of opinions papers. and boring Ugh. legal papers and whatever. I cannot for the life of me stand when judges try to be cutesy in their fucking rulings, okay? You're supposed to be a professional judge. You should be talking about the law and, and at least pretend to be talking about the law in an impartial way, a oh, non-political no. impartial oh, way. Oh, no. Here, here's Someone literally, got cutesy. Yeah, here's literally the first sentence of that opinion. Uh-oh. In the popular television series Stranger Things, no the way. Upside Down describes a parallel dimension containing a distorted version of our world. Recently, Florida has seemed like a First Amendment upside down. No way. That is so unprofessional. Based on literature pilled. It's so lame. And then it actually, I like how it cites, it says, see Stranger Things, Netflix 2022. No way. I was going to ask you if they cited it. They did. They oh, did. That's so fucking bad. based. What are you talking about? Now and then you, after that. Now you have to go plus. watch the whole series. Yes. Damn it. And then after that, they say, now like the heroine in Stranger Things, this court is once again asked to pull Florida back from the upside down. Oh my God. The self-importance is so oozing bad. out of the text. I know. So pathetic. The judge I'm, is I'm like, I am in Stranger of, uh, Things. I am the protagonist. Yes. Oh, it's government sanctioned shit posting. Like, I, I'm all for it. Right. <laughs> well, and, and the only reason the judge was able to block an element of this, they couldn't block the whole thing. But they're, they're able to block an element of it, was again, this was a good example of the Republicans overreaching too much and then fucking themselves. Because the Stop Woke Act is almost perfect but there's one fuck up oh no just inside of it they included a section that basically would make it illegal to advocate for affirmative action on any in any level which really? obviously that's yeah which obviously that's not gonna be able to pass because you have affirmative action in this country already so yeah so that was a that was a pretty massive fuck up on their part but i have seen um because all the states that pass these laws all use the same template it seems like they're learning because I think the other states have dropped that section and they've reworded some of the problematic uh, thing. So a lot of the vulnerabilities in the law, they keep kind of tweaking it a little bit. Because I think, I think Rufo is essentially kind of uh, creating all this legislation and it keeps tweaking it a little bit. He, they, they didn't call it affirmative action, obviously, but they described something that would be descriptively the same yes. as affirmative action. Yes. Exactly. So they were saying you can't do this thing and they describe it and then you go, yeah, you can't oh. advocate for blah, blah, blah policy. And you're like, mm, that's basically affirmative action what you're describing. So Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're, sooner or later they have to get rid of affirmative action, right? Sure. But people should be allowed to like talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. Like... I guess you're right. <laughs> Obviously. Especially in a historical context since we've right. had it for so long. Yeah. Right. 
self-censoring their material. Some schools removed their anti-racist statements from websites, while Based. others canceled courses on race in fear that they would be breaching this new law. Based. It's clear that his plan was working, and Florida is not done dealing with this type of anti-woke bullshit. Based. In addition to the rising amount of book bans, anti-woke bills, and don't say gay laws, which yes, those are coming back, and of course, anti-trans legislation, there is certainly more on the horizon. And that includes a law that apparently would prohibit school instruction on human sexuality in elementary school, including discussions about menstrual cycles. Because apparently, it's too woke to tell girls what's happening to their own fucking bodies. And then, of course, this is more of recent oh news, gosh. but just to- What's elementary school? So, I isn't, I don't know. I said six through 12, though. I don't know when the, when the, the menstruation begins kind of tag this in here. Uh, Ron DeSantis also had this like panel to deregulate Disney and their kind of special tax exemptions and stuff like that. So Disney just worked within the rules and now gave that little panel that Ron set up no power for like the next 50 years. And I just want to remind you, the mouse always wins. Like the mouse is like the house at a casino. It always wins. You fuck with the mouse, you get the bite. So anyway, in it's that. hilarious. Jesus fuck, Who wrote for this? corporations. That's what I was going to say, beyond the like horrible cringe of that. Um, it's hilarious that a socialist is now shilling for one of I the know. largest corporations in the world. Not only that, they completely play around with intellectual property rights to keep things in the public domain for infinity. You mean out of the public domain? Oh, yeah, out of the public domain. Yeah. Yeah. To keep yeah. things away from the public. Right. Which you would think a good socialists would be you know they they I mean they complain about disney you know at nauseum disney's past being racist and now oh desantis is against disney well i guess i have to defend disney yeah a socialist who wants to abolish property rights simping for a corporation that totally oh God. keeps intellectual property oh, away from the masses well yeah. the uh the enemy of my enemy is a mouse so right you mess with the mouse and you get the mm -hmm. bite I do, you know, people so have been, hard. I know, it's so fucking cringe. You know, there, some of the, one of the complaints that has been shifted around the right against DeSantis, you know, because it's all DeSantis versus Trump, you know, uh, 2024 conversation, is that DeSantis is not ready for prime time. It's one of the things I hear. Oh, really? Um, and I think there might be some truth to this because I do think DeSantis kind of fucked himself with the Disney thing. Um, well, because yeah. <laughs> first of all, like, so, okay, so she's kind of behind because basically what happened was so, you know, DeSantis, you know, they tried to make it so Disney lost their uh, control over that place in Orlando, I forget whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of gave DeSantis this little uh, kind of bullshit legalese control over the area, but kind of retained all the control for themselves. So then they changed, so then DeSantis and Florida legislatures kind of changed things around to kind of prevent that. And so now Disney's finally doing which was what I would have thought they would have done from the beginning, which is they're suing the state of Florida uh, for what this is going on. For and discrimination. The thing is, yes. And the thing is, I like it's almost it's very hard for me to imagine that, that Disney's not going to win this lawsuit because it's very clear, and this is kind of the problem, and where I think DeSantis, DeSantis got way too egotistical about this. He's way, he's made way too many statements. Of course, yeah. About, all those are going to be in court. <laughs> Yes, all the statements he's made, all these anti-Disney statements he's made about Disney being woke, and all the political statements he's made about Disney, there's all going to come back to bite him. Because you you cannot, it's against the law. You can't have a governor can't of a state. target a company. Jesus. Yeah, target a company because they say, well, this company has political opinions I don't like, and this company said that they were going to, you know, or someone who worked for the who, who worked for Disney but doesn't work there any longer, you know, because the president of that of Disney or whatever section it was that made this, the comments about trying to raise money to get DeSantis out of office, it doesn't even work for Disney anymore, right? You can't have a governor say, oh, well, you know, fuck your free speech rights to be able to, you know, vote for whoever you want. I'm going to go after you and try to destroy your business. That's yeah. a, like, that's such an obvious, clear First Amendment violation. And so I think DeSantis is going to lose pretty big time on the end of that lawsuit. Is that going to be the October surprise? Well, I don't know if DeSantis is going to make it to October because, you know, you'd have to beat Trump in the primary, which, you know, there's going to be the uphill battle there. But yeah, he did you see the the clip of him saying that he's not running for president? It is super weird. Everyone was talking about it. Well, he 
What did some, he say? Some this? reporter asked him some question about the presidential campaign. <clears throat> and he makes this like really exaggerated facial gesture about how he's how he's not running for president. He's I'm, he's basically telling them he's not running for president. Is this, but is this recent or this old? It's like a week ago, maybe. Mm. Or this week. Evidently, you haven't seen it. People were talking no, about it, it, and I was thinking, you know, obviously, a bunch of people on the left were talking about it like it was just unforgivable. And I was thinking, oh, they're probably out of it. But I did look at the clip, and I, it is very strange. But it's strange in a just... I don't know. He's having an off day type of strange. So, hmm. but sometimes that can make a break. Um, yeah, I haven't seen the clip, but I know in Florida there's this really weird law, and I think we talked about this. That the, yeah. I don't really understand why it makes sense. Where like you couldn't, you can't be in office and then run for a different office. So right. Yes. To resign. Yeah. Yeah, it would be illegal for DeSantis to be the governor and then run for president. They're but trying then, to change that law, though. They did change it two okay. days ago. Really? Okay. So good. I'm assuming the clip where he said he wasn't going to run for president was before whenever they changed yes, this. Yes. Now, totally. Yeah. Now he's in. Has he announced yet, or? Uh, I don't know. I th I thought I heard that he was going to announce soon. Yeah. We need. I mean, to he's going doing... all over the world, you know, talking to foreign leaders. It's obviously <laughs> he's not doing that because he's the governor of Florida. Right. So there's a lot of election news going on now. This is like super early in the cycle, but there's a lot of shit happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think um, he hasn't. I don't think he's officially announced yet. Right. But probably he will now that he can. So. Right. Yeah. I I think Trump was fighting them changing the law. I'm he. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Or the Trump super PAC in Florida, <laughs> you know? which is kind of funny. That Trump is basically like, no, you have to resign the governorship to run against me. <laughs> that's such a, that's kind of a smooth move, to be honest with you. Uh, is it? It feels very petty. It feels very petty. Yeah, but <laughs> that's what Trump does best. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, I guess Trump that's true. wins at the petty game. Look, he gives, what are these nicknames if they're not petty? True. Yeah. That's true. He, he just he succeeds at it. I'm kind of shocked. Supposedly he's dusted off. He said that he's going to no longer call Hillary crooked Hillary because he's now going to sign it to Joe. Oh, crooked really? Joe. Wow. When I was like, I'm kind of shocked. I, to me, the very obvious one would be calling him slow Joe. Sleepy Joe yeah, was pretty good. Sleepy Joe or slow Joe. That seems he can't, he can't abandon his branding like that. Come on. Yeah. Look, Sleepy Joe he's... Biden, or slow Joe Biden, crooked. I mean, okay. You already used it with Hillary. Come on. He's a president doing where he can do whatever he wants. He just changes it up on the fly. There you go. <clears throat> there was another thing. The Kennedy Kennedy announced that he's running for president too. And I think he's like, John F. Kennedy? No, not the dead president. It's Doomer. Oh. <laughs> They're gonna get the corpse out. They're gonna wheel it up on stage. <laughs> we already have a corpse for president. We don't need another one. <laughs> ah, what can it uh, now I can't remember the name of RFK Jr. RFK, yeah, but I don't know his name. Is it Ronald? Is it Raymond? Raymond Kennedy? Raymond. <laughs> is it Roland Kemet Kennedy? His Roland. Name is Rat fucker. It's Robert. Okay. Robert. Like his, is it like okay. his namesake? Okay. <laughs> okay. So it is Robert Kennedy. Yes. That guy got assassinated too. It's his dad, right? He did. Yeah. Okay. So, but Robert Kennedy is running, and supposedly he has like thirty percent of in the polls already. What the? Was it that high? I thought it was like twenty percent or something. It's like twenty-eight or something. It's, yeah. it's pretty high twenties. Yeah, yeah. And I, I saw, what's her face, the manic pixie dream girl that you always love. Well, yeah, well, Mary, yeah. Marianne, Marianne Williamson, Williamson or whatever. Oh hell but yeah, dude. She's at something like nine percent. So that means people like are not into Joe Biden. How can you know Joe Biden is running because Joe Biden announced? Look. Joe Biden can't beat her platform of MMT, okay? Mm -hmm. No. Well, okay. Let's well, to, to be fair. So the poll was twenty percent for RFK, but it is a Fox News poll. So. Oh, okay. Take that as you will. There, there's a. That's the only poll there is, though. Well, that's the one that everyone's talking about—the twenty percent one. Okay. I haven't seen this thirty percent one you're talking about. All right. Does it have hers what, what at nine they... percent? It does. What if they oh. run Biden again, but they recast him as black? 
Now that is a fantastic idea. Oh, maybe that's maybe that's the difference because I was thinking if Mariana's not in the race, he's easily at twenty nine. Who, who? There's thirty. Yeah, there's thirty percent. Thirty percent of respondents are not into Joe Biden. Who who should we recast Biden as as, as black? Mm-hmm. Should we just ha- replace him with Obama? Just have Obama run a third term, but say that he's we're recasting Biden to be black now. Maybe would that work? Maybe that would work. Obama can't. Well, run. And, um, well, there there is precedent because in the future, Obama Nixon can run again because he's got a robot body. So like, there you go. They'll, listen, they'll say it really is Joe Biden. Joe Biden get outed President Barack Obama. Okay, so technically it's still Joe Biden running. Get out of more youthful body. <laughs> it's like being John Malkovich. Yes. Yes, exactly. That'd be pretty crazy if they gave Biden a complete Wait, body replacement. And then he's that like, never hit me. Aren't the endings of those movies basically the same? I don't know. Um, what movie? No, what? The being John Malkovich? Of, of get out is... Oh. Is the if him running away and then? Well, I know. I mean, like, I mean, like the, the right. I mean, like the plot. They are like the, similar, oh, yeah, for sure. The, the plan. Yeah, because John Malkovich is like the. Well, no, the people. Are like the, their consciousness. Wait, wasn't is, in John Malkovich? The wasn't their plan that they wanted to like sell access to, to his head to people? Uh, well, no, that's that's, that's what the that's what the protagonist did. But eventually, he found other people, and there was like a group of people that were planning to basically like possess Malkovich's uh, intelligence forever. And they had been like doing this over and over again. They like serially possess people, and like they periodically find a new host. And like Malkovich was the new host. Oh, okay. There was a portal into his that mind. That movie's so fucking weird. <laughs> that movie's fucking great. I love it is that funny. movie. It's a funny movie, but. Conclusion on that statement, I just want to say I'm very excited to find when Florida falls that it's going to become our new 50th state, Disney World, with the new capital being called like Mouse House or something. So anyway, Simping unfortunately, though, a good old Ronnie boy is not the only one spearheading the... Look at that. Look at that girl on the right. She's way too excited about him <laughs> signing that bill. <laughs> okay. Look. She's way too excited. My teacher's going to stop trancing me. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she's saying poggers. She's very happy. She is. The trance stops this Friday. Yes. These ridiculous anti-woke laws, they're popping up everywhere around this country. In Missouri, a bill that prohibits state universities from requiring diversity statements is going through the House as we speak. Meanwhile, in South Carolina... That's awesome. Wait, what? That's totally (laughs) anti-free speech. (laughs) What the fuck? That's so based. I love that. Diversity oh, statements? Man. What the fuck? M- Missouri's not playing around. They're like, screw this shit. Yeah. Didn't that. height? Didn't height leave the psychological association or something like that because they wanted him to do some, one of these yes. diversity statements? He did. He's he like, did, yeah. fuck that. I'm not gonna do that. It, it wasn't is basically the, like virtue signaling for the ideology. It wasn't the APA. I, it was some organization. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Look, when a public but, hearing was held earlier this month on bills that would prohibit universities' use of diversity requirements, four witnesses testified in support and 67 testified in a, and against it. This bill would prohibit institutions of higher education from requiring prospective employees to submit statements of diversity, equity, and inclusion. There you go. I mean, they should it, just ban that stuff straight out. If imagine, They did. Yeah, good. I'm not, I'm not even sure Catholic schools make you profess your love for Catholicism to get a job at the Catholic school, right? right. It's it just fucking up. creepy. It, it is, is creepy. creepy. It, w- it was funny. In one of her sources, I don't remember which one it was, in one of her sources about like CR, you know, the, you know, CRT is not a big deal sources. In the source, it literally, the journalist literally cites Cheryl Harris. <laughs> Wow. The lady, the CRT lady who wrote "Whiteness is a Property," wow. defending the fact that CRT is not a big deal, and they don't, and it's like they don't even identify her as like one of the main, you know, CRT advocates or anything in the article. It's so mm-hmm. dishonest. Republicans are committing a probe on their higher education institutions regarding how much they spend on programs and activities that are related to race or sexual orientation. One can only think that they're doing this so they can argue that no matter what the budgets are, they're spending too much money on these programs and they need to be shut down. Because after all, go woke, go broke, right? 
North Dakota has recently decided to take a page out of Ron's playbook and introduce Bill SB 2247, which restricts the teaching of divisive concepts in classrooms, orientations, and workshops. It also prohibits mandatory training in divisive concepts and requires that any DEI employee have duties that include, quote, efforts to strengthen and increase intellectual diversity among students and faculty. Wow. And if you're wondering what the hell that means, so am I. Of course. <laughs> oh, shit. She doesn't even know what it means. She's like, intellectual diversity? What does that mean? Of course, this type of law comes with the yeah. same questions as Florida's anti-woke bills. The parameters are far too broad, and many are concerned that it will impede on universities' ability to discuss any topics that have anything to do with race, gender, or sex. The whole idea of higher education... Uh, that's, always the, that's always the argument. Many people... You know, it's like when, they, when Trump says, People oh, are saying... <laughs> many people are worried that we won't be able to talk about anything. It's like, do we have any evidence for that? Well, no, but I'm worried about it. Well, it completely goes against the goal of having intellectual diversity, obviously. Of course. Because if you want if, intellectual diversity, you want to be able to talk about multiple things. Intellectual diversity? What does that even mean? I, I don't even know what that means. I can't even, I can't possibly think for two seconds to understand what that word would mean. Right. It means that you can talk about any ideology openly, even to castigate it. Even to talk Education. about how full of shit it is. Right is to teach people to question everything. It's about learning. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Peed on universities' ability to discuss any topics that have anything to do with race, gender, or sex. The whole idea of higher education is to teach people to question everything. It's about learning and developing your critical thinking skills. And these types of bills just kneecap that ability. Uh, okay. What? What kind of fucking bullshit is this? Okay. What, what, what college that has woke indoctrination is teaching kids to be able to question everything, including woke indoctrination. None, none of it. None. Yeah. yeah, that's the whole fucking point. You're not allowed to question any of this shit. The second you question any of this shit, oh, remember, remember that um, famous video of the teacher who was questioning everything. He was questioning that, you know, maybe it's okay for kids to wear culturally insensitive Halloween costumes. Oh, right? yeah. That got a and, lot of controversy going. Yeah. And the oh he had to go through the struggle session of all the all the big free speech woke advocates, you know, raking that guy over the coals. Oh yeah. For the struggle session. What what about what about when the uh, recently when that uh, female athlete was at the University of San Francisco, you know, oh, and questioning got everything. In the face? Right. She was <laughs> she was questioning whether, you know, trans women should participate in, you know, in uh, female sports, right? She right. was questioning everything. The, the woke people seemed really tolerant of the question everything attitude when she was stuck in a room for three hours because the police were afraid that if she walked outside, she'd get mobbed by the angry protesters. Didn't she get punched in the face? I mean, I, I saw she a did. video where or she said she did. I don't know if it's ever was on video or anything. Oh, okay. She said she got punched in the face by a, a man in a dress. <laughs> I saw a woman getting punched in the face. I saw, right. but it might have just been a different woman. Might have been a different woman being punched in the face. By Look, a man in a dress. I watch a lot of these videos of women getting punched in the face. They're so it's hilarious. A, it's yeah. I mean, when I think Jesus. of you know woke college, you don't watch I those Doomer. Question everything. No, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't make it a habit of watching videos of women getting punched in the face. No. I swear it's on video. So it's just that's Adam's know. like pastime. That's what he you know gets off on. Look, it's not that. It's not that big a deal. Okay. Listen, <laughs> listen. Tucker Carlson has the green M and M, and Adam has women getting punched in the face. Let's just let it go. They might be deep fakes. Let's hope. Okay. Okay. Look, obviously, the whole woke ideology is don't question us. The whole idea yes. of doing a diversity and inclusion statement is to profess how much you're going to forward the ideas of diversity and inclusion. Imagine if you did your diversity and inclusion statement questioning whether or not we should even be considering diversity and inclusion a good thing. They'd be like, yes. fuck, you're out of here. Fuck exactly. you. Look, you're supposed to virtue signal for 10 pages. This right. is not but, the right statement. But that's the the utter hypocrisy of all this video. When, when she says question everything, she means, oh, question all of, you know, the things I don't like. Right. Question when, that America was a, a good country. Right. <laughs> question right. that white people weren't actually all racist. Right. Those are the things that you're not supposed to question. Well, and she said, like, teach critical thinking skills. How much you want to bet when she says critical thinking skills? She doesn't mean like critical oh, thinking. No. She means critical theory thinking. Well, yes. critical thinking is a tool of the white man to uh, you know oppress minorities and women. Of course it true. is. Yeah. 
That is true. Along with uh, mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that movie. That is true. Uh-huh. Will people be able to discuss the work of Martin Luther King Jr.? Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, oh, of course no, not. No, they won't be able to. Oh, no. This is such gaslighting. They're not Angela be able Davis? To talk about anything. Maybe. I know, I know. Well, but I mean, maybe not. It might just be too divisive. Still, these bills just keep growing and are attacking anything the right claims is woke, including, of course, anything regarding the LGBTQ plus community. The ACLU has been tracking the bills popping up over the country, and so far, they've found over 430 anti-gay laws that have been introduced just this year in 2023. We're not even halfway through the year and there's over 430 bills. That's incredible in all the worst ways. Some of these bills forbid transgender students from participating in school sports. Oh my God, what? <laughs> what? The males can't beat up the women. Wow. How did you said males? I can't believe this. What do you mean? That, yeah. You said the males. Can't believe it. The males, yeah. Oh my God. I mean, they're male, right? Oh my God. Look, how am I supposed to get my feed of women getting punched in the face? They, <laughs> you can't watch women getting punched in the face by if women. If it's laws. Oh, yeah. Never it, mind. Does it have I'm, to be a guy? Is that, your, is, that your is that your specific fetish? It has to be a guy doing it. No, we're good. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Texas recently put forward a bill that closed a loophole for people competing with teams that don't match their sex assigned at birth. Originally, people could participate if they changed their birth certificates to match their gender identity, which is jumping through a bunch of hoops already. But <laughs> she's like, they should be able to compete just immediately. They shouldn't mm -hmm. have to jump through all these hoops. Why get your birth certificate changed? So just show up at the track. There you go. So. Pyramid Head Eight once again, mm -hmm. like whoever writes these scripts just skimmed an article. So you know she said there's like 400, 430 anti k bills, or whatever. So first of all, the article it doesn't say that. It says there was so there was that many anti LGBTQ plus bills, but only twenty nine passing the law. <laughs> okay, so it was not four hundred fifty. You know, legislatures are like dreaming of passing their their bill or whatever yeah or probably right. eight guys have various variations of the bill mm -hmm. struggling to pass or whatever now they're ensuring that even doing that won't be enough to let people play on teams that match their gender identity other look she just says okay transgender sports well we know her position on the yeah. on the controversy Oh, you guys! You guys might like this. She was apparently playing a character making fun of SJWs like three years ago. No way. <laughs> Where? Yeah. On YouTube. We're watching yeah, that now. I think either Nicholas Diorio or Chud Logic was tweeting about it, oh, and definitely. like had a, had the clip. We gotta find that. We're watching that clip. I'll, I'll put it in the Discord. I'll go find it. Other bills are going to force teachers to out their students, something that we've talked about earlier. Arizona, for example, put forward a bill that would forbid teachers from withholding information about their students' purported gender identity and would allow parents to sue the schools if the teachers didn't comply. Everywhere you look, Hell there yeah. seems to be another horrendous bill popping up that claims to go against the woke agenda. But again, that's not what it's about. Do you remember what it's about? Control! <laughs> it's so, it's so <laughs> insidious. What does it even mean, Sitch? Why does she keep saying this? Control. Because it's, it's like, come say it with me now. Control. She flashes control. <laughs> I, why does he stop? Look. Control. <laughs> so cringe. I know why. It why may be fun to looking up that claims to go against coming? the woke agenda. But again, that's not what it's about. Do you remember what it's about? Who did Everyone, it? Everyone, come say it with me now. Who did it? Who played it again? <laughs> not funny. Doesn't it, doesn't it like the image of her pointing at the pointing at the audience with control? Does it seem like something from like 1984? It's <laughs> totally 1984. You, you have like the friendly looking, like non-threatening, but also creepy pyramid, like saying control, control. This is so reverse psychology. It's like the Republicans are trying to control yes. you into not liking woke ideology. Are you going to let them do that? Are you going to let them control you like that? Mm -hmm. No, you're going to be woke conformist, just like I taught you in this video. Don't let them control you. 
Well, I control uh, you. Sitch, did you watch the Illuminati exposed video? Yes. Uh, her video? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We talked about it at the beginning, Doomer. You were here so, for that. Well, yeah. I, I, I look. I have Alzheimer's. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. He's an old man. Okay. But so apparently she docked somebody's suicide note in this. What? Uh, supposedly. I don't remember that part. That's what everybody in the comments is saying. Yeah. Wow. Ouch. I admit, I was kind of like listening to it while doing other things. Yikes. That's not good. No. So so someone sent her a suicide note? Like yeah, apparently he... like apparently somebody confided in her. Okay, so like Oh, I she's, remember. She, she's yeah. at war with like her ex-employees. Mm -hmm. This guy named Wonder. It's like 90% of the fucking videos I'm about this stupid guy named Wonder. And uh, she mm -hmm. made the claim that he sent some kind of like suicidal note and then that she, you know, tried to contact you know, people to get help for this individual or something. Right. Um, but Wait. then she, I guess I was listening to, it. I wasn't really watching. It. I guess she flashed the note on screen or something. So Is he a harasser it. or a, no, she was, she, he worked for her. Right. No, he, he worked for her. A bunch of, a bunch of her previous employees basically came out and were like, yeah, she's like a massive fucking prick. So, but he's like, going was... after her now. She's, she, she perceives him as a harasser. Yeah. Okay. I so guess, she, I don't know. She leaks his suicide note. You know, to get at him. Yeah. Just trying to get the drama straight. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. It's apparently really fucking pissed off her audience. They're way more pissed off about that than it, than like the legal legal stuff. Of course. Of course. You, dropping some guy's suicide note. Like he sends you a note where he's going to kill himself and you're using yeah. it in a video to make money. Does it have the dipshit fucking sponsor link in there? <laughs> Look, when you're feeling suicidal... Just look up Dipsy listen and to listen, Dipsy. To some, listen to some erotic stories. It'll put you in yes. the mood not to kill yourself. Yes. Ah, oh, so awful. I think CT tried to sign up on her phone. On Dipsy? For CT's Dipsy. like, I'm going to get me some of those stories. Woo! He said um, they have a seven-day free trial. And it, you know how much it costs? They don't... It looks like she's saying they don't charge you by the month. They charge you by the year. Uh-huh. And it costs $74. 70 well you, usually you can do like a month or a I year don't know. subscription and the, the screenshot she sent us it says erotic meditations and breath work i mean we, i just we need to look into that for research purposes because i feel like that's going to be some comedy gold in there oh my god i love this so she sent a screenshot it says choose your favorite category romantic dirty talk buy stories threesomes rough and wild Irish accents, British accents, black voices. Oh my god! Jeez, this is like a weird. Have a uh, Have you guys seen Grizzly Man? No, what's I, I know what it is, but I never watched it. That's the guy oh, that gets okay. killed by the bear. Yeah, yeah. Does that have to do with anything? <laughs> I mean, there's a, if you've seen it, there's a good joke, but don't worry. Oh, about okay. It. Hmm. Anyway, wow. let's uh, choose your favorite categories. Mm. Control. While it may be fun to laugh at the ridiculous claims that banks or Legos have somehow gone woke, the real life consequences of this hysteria driven narrative are happening all around us. You like that? It's got a, a flash image of someone who I guess was killed or something. Mm. And they're doing a candlelight vigil. It's like, oh, all these stop woke laws are literally killing the gays. Yeah. Sad. Us. People have successfully co-opted a word meant to portray knowledge and turned it into a way to spread hate. This isn't the first time. That well, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's bullshit. it was. It was you, Pyramid Head. Don't don't. You can't point at us. Okay, when you point at someone, three fingers point back at you. Okay, <laughs> it was you. It was you, the woke leftist that redefined the word woke to mean all the crazy anti-liberal shit that it means right now. It wasn't the right wasn't anyone else it was you you were the guys that did it you have full responsibility for this rebranding hell yeah take credit. this has happened it sure as hell be won't ashamed. be the last go to yeah. the so shame for corner. right now no weed for that's you the go to the white the, the white corner of shame right. end of today's episode this will continue to okay so let's um no let's hear i want to hear the end okay this is a topic I do talk about frequently on The Leftist Mafia, which is a podcast kind of live stream that I do every Thursday night, 5.30 PST, over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Illuminati. 
She spells naughty like she listens to the stories. Did you notice that? Uh, yeah. She does listen to the stories, obviously. She's like she's a naughty little girl. <laughs> <laughs> why she why she spell Illuminati like that? Um, why is there a naughty little girl in Illuminati? That's a good question. Why not? Yeah. I just, that's such a weird thing for educational videos. Look, I'm right. naughty. <laughs> I'm naughty. Look, Santa has me on his naughty list. Listen, know what I did? What? Listen I to listened Dipsy. to Dipsy. <laughs> yeah, like. Exactly. And also on my second YouTube channel, Illuminati T E A. So if you want to stay. She has a T? Hmm, okay. Up to date on current events and what's going on, make sure to check out that episode every Thursday, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Or I guess maybe it's PDT. Okay, whatever. Anyway, so let's... Look, she's pitching the leftist mafia. She's totally into it. In 2020... <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to listen to or, oh, this other video about why cops are all bad and why the media is all bad. <laughs> Um, Sorry, her second channel has lower view counts than me. Holy fuck. Nice. Really? Is it the T channel? Yeah. What's it? What is she talks about drama on that channel? Uh, I don't know. Uh, thumbnails look really fucking bad. Can Texas secede? Can we listen to the 12 year old as a little palate cleanser? I sent you the uh, the thing in Discord of her making fun of SJWs. Yeah, I sent it to you on um, Twitter, Adam. I'm gonna okay. bring it up and watch it. So, I guess I could just open Discord. It's it's both very hypocritical to what she's doing now, and it's also just unbelievably cringe. Right. Uh, Nicholas says, before she did a group channel, before she did a group channel with Tommy C, where she wore a red-haired wig and played a character named Sarah J. Warren. And she played a stereotypical SJW. Wow. Okay. So you can bring that up and we'll watch it. I don't read them super chats. And then we'll watch our cop video. Uh, Mr. Ubercross for $20 says, I would love someone to oh, actually no. show me where CRT is actually taught in law school. Disparate impact is taught in law school, which is what CRT springs from. But CRT itself is not really taught at all. True. You know, it's funny. It's dumb. That, right. Well, and also, you know, from like all the CRT literature that I've read, none of it gets into the nitty gritty of law. <laughs> like very rarely. I think I, I think I can think off the top of my head one CRT article that actually gets into like a nitty gritty thing that maybe would be taught in law school. And that's about it. It's almost all just ideological drivel that has nothing to do with like any, any aspects that you would teach someone in law school. So that's it's a like great philosophy. point. philosophy, yeah. Yeah, it's all just philosophy stuff. I mean, isn't there a philosophy of law? Seems like there's a philosophy of everything. Of course. Philosophy of science, philosophy of voting, philosophy yes. of democracy. But so the philosophy, philosophy of, of CRT, philosophy. the philosophy of law for CRT is just that the law is not objective or neutral, and it's all just rooted in you know white supremacy and white power structures and white hierarchy against that's you know non white people. That's a, such a giant. Right. radical claim yes now yeah. they have no evidence for this claim but you yeah know. who needs evidence right that's just evidence of uh mediocrity <laughs> that's all that is you want to do a three two one on the, the video sure i got the is it the redhead um, one it, yes sir okay three two one go Sarah J. Warren is unapologetically feminist, and if they don't like it, then I would love to drink their overprivileged male tears, okay? Miss Warren, uh, the, the boss is on the other line for you. Um, let me clarify something, Jimmy. Rip Wilson is not my it's boss. Not your boss. Uh, it, it's, it's the other boss. Oh, God. Put him through. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Sarah. Yes, Tommy? <laughs> Knock it off! <laughs> Got it, boss. <laughs> Sorry. Gotcha, bitch. Sarah J. Warren is... <laughs> I have Jesus no... Christ. I have no... First of all, that's the worst acting I've ever seen. This is pretty crazy. Like, you didn't have a different... Normally, when you do these things, you can do three or four different takes. Was this, like, a one-take thing? 
Yeah. Like we Come need on, this in five minutes. Come Give on, us your ter- your most terrible line reading. Yes. Obviously Jeez. reading off a screen. I mean, she took the time to put the wig on and do her makeup. And sit in front of a green screen. She couldn't do it. T- a second take on this maybe that was maybe that was like the 10th take they're like they're like she's not gonna get this no <laughs> whatever it's just yeah. terrible i've yeah. been there before when you're like the actors on their you know 129th take and it's just awful you're going mm-hmm. listen, you're doing it the same way every time can't you do it a different way <laughs> like when i say it sucks i mean it, i want you to try something <laughs> oh, different i want you to do something different yeah that's pretty awful that's pretty awful. so i remember we covered this um, when we covered the leftist podcast that she was on, she talked about how until she said that until she went to college, so I don't know when this video was, and I don't, I don't know how old she's supposed to be. She said until she went to college, she was a right wing libertarian. Right. And then it, basically she got brainwashed to being woke by one of her college professors. Oh yeah, you're right. She had, so, a, she had an affair with the college professor and, there you go. So uh, yeah, I think it was, she was like her ethics professor or something. Basically, brainwashed her to be woke, and yeah. I was like, "Wow, I'd be kind of making the entire." You know, it's funny. This whole video is about they're not indoctrinating kids into woke ideology in school. She's literally a victim of someone who was indoctrinated into changing her whole ideology in school. Wow. So very interesting. Every time I see her in pictures, she looks like a completely different person. This so doesn't. Wait. This doesn't look anything like. This doesn't look anything like the she, other pictures I've seen. No, I mean her head definitely doesn't look like a pyramid in that picture. Well, no, I'm I'm wondering if she gets like a nose job every two weeks or something. Oh my god! Adam. Well, her nose just seems completely different. No, oh, there, there's I've seen a there's a few pictures of her that she looks very attractive in, and there's some That's pictures really, that we've got to the the crux of the issue. Adam's like, I thought she was hot. Well, no, and then she's got some pictures that she looks kind of overweight in wow and then she's got this picture which is completely different i mean this is like i feel like this is a completely different person the fuck is going on right now she might adam is becoming coomer brain that's what's happening right now becoming well Well, i I mean on the stream he's just i'm just wondering how there are so many different pictures of this woman that look completely oh you're right i just different like different people yeah, I just googled her, and it's like there's like the picture of her on the Wicked Tube Wicked Tubia page, and then there's like a fat picture of her, the, and they look like two different, completely different people, right? Well, no, they look like the same person, just one's fat. Okay, okay. Listen, Adam, you get okay. fat it changes the way you look. I don't know if you're aware of this. Does it? <laughs> it all went to her face. Okay, it did. She's got like a couple extra chins there. Yeah. She, she should just grow a beard. Works for me. There you go. Oh, I guess yeah, I guess this go. does. I guess it does look like her in this picture. Okay, I yeah. take it back. Anyway, uh, before we get into the cop video, let me read the rest of cop these. video. What's a cop video? It's all about how copaganda has a is a plague on the nation. Oh, well, we're God. gonna do the two genders video first, though, right? Are we are we just doing the most brain dead lefty takes? Just so fucking, it's gonna shock on. This one is an Illuminati another? video. God, damn it! It's double feature. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, the you, the Thai you, guy for fifty dollars. Thanks so much, Thai guy. Says in the course of a year, the medium sized company where I work hosts thirty to forty one hour DEI trainings. It's hard to push back because you are seen as a bad person. Difficult to separate potentially good parts of DEI versus the many bad parts. Wow, that's awful. Thirty to forty. That's like fuck. How do you do? You do work? Do you do work or do you just do the DEI training? Yeah, the DEI is a full time job. Jeez. Pain. Oh my is it, god. Isn't the whole purpose of the DEI training that like it's getting company out of liability? Because like if someone does racist shit, they can be like, oh, well, we you know we made them go to the class. To an extent, I mean, thirty to forty a year seems like overkill. Like that, you gotta be a true believer at that point. Right? Well, 30, that 40, is, 40 hours a year. That is pretty crazy. Yeah. That is actually the point, though. They're like, yes. when they get sued, they want to be able to show up and say, "We tried to tell them not to be racist pieces of shit in this DAI class." Right. Yeah. CT for two Canadians says seventy four dollars a year for Dipsy. Can I write this off? <laughs> do not sign up, CT. You cancel your subscription. <laughs> Make sure. Because they always do that thing where it's like, here's your free trial, but if you don't cancel it, they're going to start charging you. So, of oh, course. oh, let's see if Midjourney knows what she looks like. Let's do this. I 
highly doubt it, but. Hmm. Your pal Ashley for twenty dollars. Thanks so much. Says I don't know if this was mentioned yet, but she also accused a somewhat larger YouTuber who reads Reddit videos named R slash for swatting her. She had to apologize privately for that. Just goes to show how bad shit she is. Wow. There you go. I didn't know about that. No. I mean, I heard the accusation, but I don't know about the details. But not surprised. Uh. Chaotic intention for twenty dollars as a reminder. Illuminati shame the Salvation Army for not allowing a trans woman into a woman's shelter. I believe they were being, I believe they were abused and other stuff by men. There you go. Very I do nice. remember that. That was yes. awful. Uh, insensitive for twenty dollars says Riley Gaines was told who is the YouTuber Riley Riley Gaines or is that Riley Dennis? Who's Riley Gaines? I don't know. Oh, Raleigh Gaines was the, the swimmer that got punched by the guy in the dress. Oh, yeah, that is, yeah. Uh, Raleigh Gaines was told by a university anthropology professor that there was no difference between skeletons based on sex. Wow. That is a giant lie. Wow. Okay. There you go. Yeah, wow. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, jump into Copaganda. No, let's go to the, let's watch the video, other video first. Oh my God! Why do you want to watch this video? Okay, we'll watch it afterwards. We'll go to Copaganda first. <laughs> Jeez, you're so insufferable. Come <gasps> on. You know why I want to watch it, right? Because I'm sure it's funny and the it's hilarious. Over... Okay, fine. Let's watch the video. It's hilarious. Okay, we'll watch the video. <laughs> this kid just destroys him in 16 seconds, and you can't even watch the video. Oh, okay. Okay, and we'll watch the video. Doom, are you watching too, or are you ed are you furiously editing? You got to get this video out by He's 6 furiously or something. Finger I'm, quotes I'm editing to green I'm trying to get, pictures. I'm trying to get Mid Journey to do her avatar with a gun right now, but I'll watch. Oh, okay. <laughs> you signed up for a Mid Journey, huh? Look at you. Oh yeah, dude. It's uh incredibly useful for uh, YouTube stuff. Mid Journey's great. Yeah. Are you ready to do a three, two, one? You got it up. I don't think Does everyone got it. We are doing. We are doing it. A watch together. It's a no. Twitter video. It's a Twitter video. Oh, okay. I'll send it to you. Look, Doomer. You don't just go back to editing. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> no, no. Make sure Doomer has get it. Watch the video. The <laughs> I should have sent it to you. I, should I need just to open... sign up for one of those. Look, um, I should. Just what's the best? Discord. Are we all? What's the best? The um, on Discord. What's the best? Uh, deep fake voice thing because i want to have something read to me articles but i can't stand like the fucking computer voice that you get from like oh it's the, the worst yeah yeah uh you... there's a free one hold on I'll, I'll link you you can get some better voices i just want i don't even i mean i don't even need one to like emulate someone i just want that someone that has like a realistic sounding voice that i could use just so i can have something read to me nice okay i'll try it ready well, actually you know what i'll have doomer read to me how about that oh look Voice changer. <laughs> ready? Let's go. Three, you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. I have been told that my shirt was targeting a protected class. Who is this protected class? Are their feelings more important than my rights? I don't complain when I see pride flags and diversity posters hung throughout the school. Do you know why? Because others have a right to their beliefs just as I do. I have been told that my shirt was targeting a protected class. Who is this? Oh, this is like a way short version of it. Damn it. Okay. Let's move on. No. Oh, That's okay. unfortunate. <laughs> this is a longer, there's a longer version of this. It's actually much better. I don't know. Why would they shorten this? Oh, wait a second. Okay. You have a different video. Oh. Wait, were you listening to the 16 second video? I was, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Oh, this, I was listening to oh, like, yeah, I was, I was watching what it was like. I had three minutes long. It's like a on. two minute, 30 second video. Hold on. Okay, oh back it up. Rewind. <laughs> Start over again. Oh, I can't believe I clicked on oh, the wrong God. video. Are you ready? What a boomer. Yes. You guys are going to remember this 16 seconds, but just pretend like you're hearing it for the first time. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one, go. In the 7th, 10th grade at Nichols Middle School, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. I never thought that the shirt I wore to school on March 21st would lead me to speak with you today. On that Tuesday morning, I was taken out of gym class to sit down with two adults for what turned out to be a very uncomfortable talk. I was told that people were complaining about the words on my shirt, 
that my shirt was making some students feel unsafe. Yes, words on a shirt made people feel unsafe. They told me that I wasn't in trouble, but it sure felt like I was. I told, I was told, that I would need to remove my shirt before I could return to class. When I nicely told them that I didn't want to do that, they called my father. Thankfully, my dad supported my, my decisions and came to pick me up. What did my shirt say? Five simple words. There are only two genders. Nothing harmful, nothing threatening. Just a statement I believe to be a fact. I have been told that my shirt was targeting a protected class. Who is this protected class? Are their feelings more important than my rights? I don't complain when I see pride flags and diversity posters hung throughout the school. Do you know why? Because others have a right to their beliefs just as I do. Not one person, staff, or student told me that they were bothered by what I was wearing. Actually, just the opposite. Several kids told me that they supported my actions and that they wanted one too. <laughs> I experienced... Wait, no. I was told that the shirt was a disruption to learning. No one got up and stormed out of class. No one burst into tears. I'm sure I would have noticed if they had. I experience disruptions to my learning every day. Kids acting out in class are a disruption, yet nothing is done. Why do the rules apply to one, yet not another? I feel like these adults were telling me that it wasn't okay for me to have an opposing view. Their arguments were weak, in my opinion. I didn't go to school that day to hurt feelings or cause trouble. I have learned a lot from this experience. I learned that a lot of other students share my view. I learned that adults don't always do the right thing or make the right decisions. I know that I have a right to wear those five, a shirt with those five words. Even at 12 years old, I have my own political opinions, and I have a right to express those opinions. Even at school, this right is called the First Amendment to the Constitution. My hope in being here tonight is to bring the school committee's attention to this issue. I hope that you will speak up for the rest of us so we can express ourselves without being pulled out of class. Next time, it may not only be me. There might be more students that decide to speak out. Thank you for your time and good night. Thank you. Okay, Seth. There you go. What do you think? That was a good statement. Yeah. Do you think his dad still, wrote it? Of course his dad wrote that. Or well, his, his dad, dad probably proofread proof it right. with him, but... Yeah. It's a good statement. You don't know. But uh, I still don't care. 12-year-olds don't have good opinions about politics. Base. So, I'm sorry. I know you're... Listen, I know you're in favor of kids voting. In the 7th, 10th grade. <laughs> yeah, but that's stupid. Middle. But uh, look, how do you think his dad is gonna vote for him? How do you think yeah. that vote's gonna I go? Know, I know. I mean, there the, was... the best point there um, that he made was this. You know, he's walking around. He sees all these pride flags, you know, hung up everywhere. Right. You're allowed right. to make political statements at school, yeah. but I'm not allowed to make my right. political statement. I'm not allowed to fight back against your political statement. I disagree with. Yeah. Why are you indoctrinating so... people? Mm -hmm. Why are you turning the goddamn frogs gay? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. There you go. Look, it's exactly. all a cons it's all a conspiracy. Yeah. How does Mid Journey know what Pyramid Head looks like? Oh, I, I had defeated images. Oh, okay. yeah. Obviously, I didn't know what. The... Damn it! These fucking horrific uh, <laughs> creations. Did you see that like creepy ass? Um... AI pizza commercial? No. What's uh, that? No, I've seen I've seen a bunch of these things. Oh, uh, which I'll send it to you at some point. It's real. It's like it looks like a it looks like a pizza commercial from the back rooms. It's very fucking like surreal. To, today somebody did um Wes Anderson directing Star Wars. Oh, that sounds funny. I gotta check that out. And this is like AI generated video. Yeah, it was yeah. AI generated video, audio, and I think the text as well. It's so crazy how fast things are going. It is. It is. I, I hate to break it to people though, but AI video has got some fucking got, got a ways to go. <laughs> yeah, but right. the fact that it seems like it went from like nothing to where it is so quickly. Yeah, overnight. Impressive. Yeah. It's like oh, from yeah, still sure. images to like video and audio and yeah, you know, two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's got a ways to go, but you know. You're like, wow, it'll probably be there, you know, around Christmas time. It'll be like feature like movies. Well, what's going to be crazy is it's like, it's going to be. It's going to be pretty easy, I think, in like a year to just film yourself like in front of a green screen, essentially, and then just Put do whatever. You whatever like it'll just, yeah. yeah. I mean, you could do the green screen, but I mean, like it'll just completely, like once it gets the image of the model of you, it'll just be able to do whatever it wants with your, yeah. with your model. I mean, that, that's going to be the real useful thing is to have, um, 
have it be able to just create 3D models for animation. So Yeah, AI is going crazy. Yep. Everyone's it's talking look, about it. And have it not look... Because like if you just film yourself in front of a green screen and just you know superimpose yourself on anywhere, it's going to look like dog shit. I think ChatGPT writes Illuminati's scripts. I would believe it. <laughs> it I think sounds that. like it. it. Sounds like. It. Anyway, just like jump into the video number two. Here we go. Copaganda: How police bought the media. Oh wow. wow! This video is filled with even more misinformation than the last one, if you can believe it. I really can't believe she's anti-cop. I know. Are you shocked by this? I am, yeah. Okay. In 2020, the United States saw one of the most massive protests take place in our nation's history. The George Floyd protests that summer came with an endless wave of opinions. I'm out here because I am 73 years old and I've seen this kind of madness for far too long. It's time, it really is. Nobody's asking to get away with anything, just justice. Some felt that they were a signifier of hope, that maybe there could be some progress happening. Companies at least tried to pretend as if they cared about racial inequality, even though we can assume that they most definitely do not. <laughs> Meanwhile, others saw the protests as outrageous and examples of anti-cop rhetoric, chock full of unneeded violence, uproars, and property damage. We didn't have protests last night. We had criminal acts. We didn't have people mourning the death of this man, George Floyd. We had people capitalizing. His death is on their hands. One of the reasons for this overwhelmingly negative view was the news. During the summer, they almost exclusively reported on the violence of the protests, even though an overwhelming 97% of cases Wait. were peaceful. This was what began as a peaceful protest in Santa Monica and now has turned to some mayhem. A dozen businesses were broken into as protesters filled the streets on Milwaukee's north side. Protests turned destructive in downtown. Wait, so I, I'm already almost certain that this is just wrong, right? Like, I, no, I, mostly is peaceful protests, man. <laughs> is is uh, the narrative? Is, is part it's of the all research about control. for the It's <laughs> part of the research for the Vosh video. I watched like everything that happened on Fox like the day after George Floyd, the situation happened. And like, they were all completely on his side. <laughs> yeah, this is complete revisionist history about this. Town Seattle tonight, here's what we know. The breaking news as the George Floyd protests turned destructive in parts of Manhattan. But something else lending itself to the immediate outrage was a strong sense of support for police officers. After all, they were supposed to be the good guys, right? At least that's what the movies, TV shows, and even the news tells us. For our entire lives, at least as Americans, we've been told over and over and over and over again that cops are the heroes, and they have been portrayed as such on shows like NCIS, Law and & Order, and even kids shows like Paw Patrol. We almost <laughs> always see the police as the good guys in film Paw and Patrol television and bus. fiction. They're always there to just stop the bad guys. This Okay. They're, we're gonna turn off this Paw Patrol. This fucking propaganda. Paw Patrol, man! I can't believe cops. they go after Paw Patrol. How dare this dog be a helpful police officer? Is, is it Paw Patrol like Inspector Gadget with dogs? I couldn't tell you. Yeah. So, uh, Doomer, as a uh, film connoisseur, uh, she's she's making a bold claim here. She's making a claim that cops are just always the good guys in movies. Like, there's never been movies where cops are bad or corrupt. Or what about right? Training Day? That won an Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there wasn't like, you know, an entire fucking movement of films for decades <laughs> <laughs> portrayed cops as the fucking bad guys. Yeah, totally. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus fuck. This certain media phenomenon has actually been going on for so long that there's even a name for it, copaganda. As the media wow. does their jobs to produce content that frames cops as the do no wrong good guys, it has made any type of criticism towards law enforcement that much more difficult. And this was done with intention. It has made reform virtually impossible, and it has forever altered the public discourse revolving around police brutality. See, that's why they can't get police reform passed. It's because of NCIS. Wait, but police reform has nothing to do with what the average person thinks? 
Yeah, no, it, no, <laughs> no, no, no. You, you don't, Zoomer. How can you be so foolish? Okay. What happens is. Oh, no, it's, it's Paw Patrol. Okay. The legislators, <laughs> listen, legislators go to the voters and they say, listen, we need to pass this police reform mm -hmm. to, to stop police corruption. And then the voters say, you know, I walked into my kid the other day and they were watching this adorable show with a cartoon police dog. And, you know, police don't do anything wrong. That's my feeling. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When I see that cartoon police dog, I'm like, please, good. Yeah. You know, I, I saw the footage of, of George Floyd with a knee on his neck and I thought it was horrible. But then I walked into my kid's room. My kid said, no, daddy. No, daddy. <laughs> it was an accident, daddy. He didn't mean it. You know, all I could see when I saw Derek Chauvin, I just could see the officer paw right. <laughs> standing on Derek. With his little paw on his neck. His little paw. And I'm like, that wouldn't hurt nobody. He's innocent. <laughs> but Christ. why is this even happening? The media is meant to be a critique of society and expression through art. The media is meant to be a critique of society. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be. The, the me the news media is so anti-cop now i mean other than fox news everyone is like anti -cop. well she just means like all media like movies television right. yeah right sure what if what I if mean, someone does it it's funny because she brings up an example she brings up dragnet um from and like leaves, 50 years ago yeah from 50 years ago and what she leaves out is if you look into it the whole point that the guy who did dragnet did was he felt that society was too anti-cop so he was doing a critique on really? society by making a pro cop that's radio hilarious show. that's hilarious but she leaves that all out wow well i mean she didn't she didn't read that so well that's true she didn't read anything someone wrote a script for her america okay. chat gpt wrote a script for her. america yes. is anti-authority already so oh oh i got a good anti-cop slant what's your meme uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But roll, oh, roll no. the <laughs> Okay. So why the hell are we seeing the same cop stories on repeat? And what does it mean for us as a society? Well, that's the focus of today's episode. And that's what we're here to talk about. So hello, I'm the Illuminati. And this is the corporate casket. The corporate casket. Oh, that's probably why her code is casket. casket yeah. Yeah. Okay. What does corporate casket mean? That means where the corporations can... bury the bodies. I think it means that she, that's where she is going to bury the corporations, even is though she, she was simping for Disney like heavily in the oh, last of course, video. Yeah. Disney doesn't get a casket. Disney gets Disney gets a throne. No Disney gets a DJ from Illuminati, apparently. Oh yeah. <laughs> Creepy. Yeah. What the hell is that? Oh, it's fan art. She puts a little fan art in there. Yeah. The history of the copaganda. Back in the day, cops in the media were not portrayed in the best of lights. In fact, prior to the 1920s, when you saw a cop on TV, you were usually about to see a scene of complete and utter incompetence meant to make you laugh at law enforcement's inability to do even the most simple of jobs. <laughs> in 1917's Easy Street, Charlie Chaplin even played a police officer who was only able to save the victim after apparently sitting on a drug addict's needle and picking up superpowers from the accidental injection. I'm not going to question the logic there. That's a whole different thing entirely, but that's pretty much about as incompetent as you can get. Police and media were almost always used as comedic relief and displayed as inept buffoons that were constantly being mocked by the others in the film itself. And the people gleefully watch the boys in blue fuck up in hilarious manners time and time again. And to a degree, that is a reflection of reality if we take a look at pretty much any point of the news cycle ever. After a while- So, so her logic here is when media was abashedly anti-cop or mocking cop, that's a reflection of reality. But when it's pro-cop, that's propaganda. Yeah. Okay. She's very anti-cop. Okay. While law enforcement officers were pretty sick and tired of their comedic representation, so they went to work trying to change media as we know it. And as you know, because we're talking about it today, they succeeded. They would take back their representation by force. In 19 It's funny, she's really in favor of representation if it's like disabled people. <laughs> but Down cops don't like their, repu uh, right. their representation in media and it's like, right. too bad. Okay, so she is going to. You do more. Uh, she is going to tell a very big lie here. 
or rather she basically lifted something from an article there's some washington post article that she's like lifting all this uh all this information from uh called how police censorship shaped, shaped hollywood and she's either going to lie by just quoting it directly or she's going to fall for the oldest news news reporter trick in the book which is they make kind of vague statements but in a broader context that lead you to believe things that are not true but they don't technically lie to you right oh uh, yeah that's yep yeah. yep uh doomer sent me a picture he asked chat gbt if i'm racist and chat gbt said that they don't know who the fuck i am interesting nice so thank you so He's look at also least chat asking chat gbt to write stories or write scripts for illuminati is that that's what, what he we're did looking at? that's what he did you gonna read that doomer it's actually it's kind way, of long it's it's kind of long it's actually way more intelligent than the actual video chat gpt did a better job right so but i like that when you asked if i'm racist it says it's important to note that accusations of racism should not be made lightly wow. and it is essential to have specific evidence to support such claims so there you go chat gpt sticking up for you i thought this thing was supposed to be woke i know so sad Okay, so listen ask, to what she's about to say. Ask ChatGPT if Sam Hyde is racist. I think he'll get a much different answer. <laughs> oh, let's oh, let's boot that up. <laughs> yeah, T Tifa was all big on the Sam Hyde racist train. Yeah, Tifa was convinced by the propaganda that Sam Hyde is completely racist. To work trying to change media as we know it. And as you know, because we're talking about it today, they succeeded. Do, I mean, this don't you think this is weird? That the left is all about representation. They're like, we need to get good representation for black only for and disabled people in in movies and tv right, right. Well, but any really representation is, for cops needs to be they're evil <laughs> categorically yes. what they really mean is that um they want representation for people that promote their ideology oh really yeah so if the cop doesn't promote their ideology right there should be so, a woke cop so here's that what chat great, GPT, that'd be a great idea yeah, here's what ChatGPT says about Sam Hyde. Sam Hyde is a controversial figure who's been associated with racist, sexist, and homophobic comics in the past. However, it's important to note that he's claimed that these statements are act and actions are part of a satirical act, and that his intention is to provoke and challenge the audience's perception of social norms. Ultimately, whether or not someone considers him to be racist may depend on their interpretation of his past work and statements. However, it is important to be aware of the potential harm and offense that can oh, be caused wow. by racist language and behavior, wow. regardless of whether it's intended as satire or not. Nice. So. Nice. Chat GTP. You did better than Tifa. Chat. Yeah. Chat did better than Tifa, yes. Okay. Anyway. But let's listen to what she's what she says here. They would take back their representation by force. by force. In 1908, the New York mayor shut down every movie theater in New York City with the police leading the charge. And to your okay, so and that's a says, huge lie, right? It is. So she says they would take it back by force. This mayor in 1908 shut down every movie theater in the city, right? So the implication that you would draw from that is that they shut down the movie theaters because they were playing anti-cop films, right? Of course, that's what I'm supposed to think, right? That didn't happen. That's what I that was going to say. That is a lie, okay? They shut that down the Illuminati movie theaters because lie. there was like a pandemic or something. Well, no, so what happened was this guy, Mayor George McClellan Jr. Um, so back in the early days of film, there was really no uh, either governmental or even internal regulation about film. In terms of what could be showed, what could not be shown, there's no rating system, of course. Um, so you'd get like a wide swath of like, and also, you know, obviously the mentality of things were back in the day were much different. So there's a famous film called The Kiss, you know, that showed a couple kissing, and people were like, this is so controversial. There's a couple kissing on screen. But there's also a film that showed someone being hung who was actually being hung or hanged or whatever the, the correct verbiage is for that. Um, and being executed on, on film. So there's kind of a like this wild snuff west film. Yeah. So there's like the wow. wild west of like, you know, sort of like, you know, what would be allowed to be shown and, and acceptability. And of course, in the 19, 19, early 1900s, there was this massive pushback from people that were afraid of poisoning the minds of children and the population with all this, you know, dangerous, uh, you know, material being shown on film. And so this mayor, Mayor George, McClellan Jr. Uh, was being pressured by none other, none other than the Progressive Temperance League. 
wow. to uh, start censoring films. Wow. And so he did. This was on. This was right before uh, Christmas, I believe. He shut down a bunch of uh, movie theaters in New York City under the guise of fire code violations. But in reality, it was because he was trying to placate a constituent of people that thought these movies were teaching the public bad moral values. Nothing about police was ever mentioned. It was all about like, you know, violence and sexuality and drug use and things of that nature. Right. Interesting. That's what I would and, have guessed. Right. And so this, this very dishonest article frames this and then Illuminati in her complete idiocy and whoever wrote this video just thinks it's true, assumed that this shutting down of the movie theaters had something to do with cop representation in film when that had literally nothing to do with the situation whatsoever. Why would you ever think that? Because you're like, an idiot? Were all movies about cops? No, of course of, not. Yeah. This right. is insane. It is. <laughs> Totally ludicrous, but they're living in, she's living in a hyper delusional nightmare world where she thinks that America is some sort of fascist authoritarian police state. So in her mind, this does make sense. She she's thinks she's creating for, that narrative though. She's yes. creating that hyper delusional right. world. Right. Because like you, when I saw this claim, I instantly thought there's no way this is true. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and lo and behold, it wasn't. Be with the police leading the charge. And two years later, the Association of Chiefs of Police drafted a resolution that adamantly condemned the media for the horrible portrayal of their industry. Oh, so Soon, terrible. even the Supreme Court would... So those two things were obviously unrelated. Yeah. Well, yeah, so so the police came out and they made a statement saying, we don't like that you're having bad portrayals of us in film. Right. Yeah. You know, who cares? I'm like, okay. Yeah, I mean, that... But yeah. it has nothing to do with the closing of the movie theater. No, But the way she, she puts it in the video, it, it right. appears to be connected. Yeah, right step in and say that movies were not worthy of First Amendment protection. So this is true, and it's pretty crazy. Um, at 1915, the Supreme Court did say that That's that odd. movies... Uh, well, so the reason for it was because essentially, essentially what happened was states started to pass laws about what kind of movies could be shown in their state. And they, they started to pass laws about regulations that films shown in the state had to follow. Um... And so then this, of course, was challenged, and the Supreme Court upheld it in 1915, saying it was legal for states to do this. To censor movies, basically. Or to create guidelines for movies to, to be uh, hmm. crafted. So, And um, it was funny, because I went and I, I looked at the original, the, the law, it was in Ohio, I believe, the law that was being contested, it had nothing to do with the police whatsoever. It was like some religious organization, you know, created this law. And it was like, you know, besides like, don't show violence, don't show sex, don't show nudity, don't show drug use, don't show clergy. It's, it's, there was literally a stipulation. Don't show clergymen in a bad light. It didn't say anything about police, but you couldn't show clergymen in a bad light. Protecting religion, huh? Interesting. Right. And so, but again, this is shoved in here. Like this Supreme Court case had something to do with, you know, protecting the bad image of police and nothing to do. With this right. Whatsoever. Yeah. So weird. Now, it was perfectly fine for media to be censored with no legal recourse. Eventually, that ruling would be overturned. But this was the very least of the industry's worries. And just I'm sorry, but is it too early for a tangent? I think not. Can we just put that in perspective of today for just a moment? And Unfortunately, I like to say it's hypothetical, but unfortunately with how the Supreme Court's currently sitting, nothing's hypothetical anymore. I'm looking at you, Justice Clarence, with the many, many trips, but of course you guys are just, just besties. Anyway, could you imagine that there's a case that goes before the Supreme Court and literally they're like, yeah, um, cops look bad in the movies and we don't like that anymore. And the Supreme Court agrees and go, actually, yeah, like this form of art, not protected. Yeah, you talk bad about cops, you're liable. Actually, interestingly enough, with all the rules... So, okay, it's all just made so, up shit, man. Right, right. So pyramid uh, scheme here. And that's what we should call it. It's a pyramid head. Pyramid scheme here. Um, pyramid woke mind virus here. Honestly thinks that in the year 2023 is going to be a Supreme Court case. The Supreme Court is going to say that movies do not have First Amendment protection. Right. Because specifically, a movie talked bad about police officers. Yeah, that's hard to believe. 
Oh my god, this person is so delusional. Creating the rules delusion. that are being yes, yes stripped away and house in some like states and counties and stuff you can't even protest anymore. I guess this isn't really hypothetical anymore. But I digress. That's apparently a conversation for a different day. No. So I I don't know what yeah, she's talking about. Where can you not protest? I have no clue. She didn't give an example of anything that she was talking about. Apparently, this can't protest. Anti-protest laws? Right. I don't know. I have no clue. Now, before long, the movie industry would become reliant on assistance from the LAPD. So what a twist here. And why, you might ask? Well, because their stars would continuously do illegal shit and they required help covering it up. Okay, this is very important. Okay. Stars would do illegal sh shit and they needed help covering it up, okay? Mm-hmm. I saw so, yeah, LA Confidential. They <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, I think this is the part, this is like the wildest, most factually inaccurate claim in the video. They needed protection for their stars that were homosexual because... Wait. Ask. <laughs> well, because their stars would continuously do illegal shit and they required help covering it up. So yeah, they essentially needed protection for their stars that were homosexual because, again, at one point in time that was illegal. I bet you were thinking I was going to say they were all doing mountains of cocaine. Nope, not really. They were just being who they were, but society hadn't caught up with that yet. Well, you know they were doing mountains of cocaine, okay. too. Let's be right. honest. So Pyramid Scheme here honestly thinks that Hollywood in the 19, you know, early 1900s teamed up with the police officers to protect their actors from being arrested for being gay. Right. And that was the, the main charge here. Right. Okay. That's what Pyramid Scheme thinks. There's a little quid pro quo going on. You know, we make you look good in movies and you don't arrest our gay actors. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So where does this claim come from? Well, you know, it's kind of funny because she- It's a batshit crazy claim. It is a batshit crazy claim. So it's kind of funny because she was complaining about people uh, stealing from her. So much of this entire video is just directly ripped off from this Washington Post article. Right. Which she, which she doesn't really, I mean, she has a picture of it, but she didn't really cite it and say, like, I just stole this article. So, and the person that wrote this article just did a bunch of bullshit lies and, and half truths. Um, right. But but whoever wrote the script did an even greater, for Illuminati, did an even greater uh, lie. Because here's here's what the, the paragraph from the article says. It says, meanwhile, as Hollywood grew larger, corporation, cooperation with police and other law enforcement agencies became more important for reasons beyond censorship. Hollywood needed the cooperation of the L.A. Police Department to preserve its star's reputation. The rape and manslaughter trials of silent film star Roddy Fas Fatty Arbuckle in mm -hmm. the early 1920s and the federal tax investigation of actors, including Tom Mix, tarnished the industry. Later, the LAPD historian Joe Dominic wrote, cooperation with the movie business and police ensured discretion for, quote, carousing wild men like Aaron Flynn and homosexual stars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she took that paragraph that starts with talking about how Fatty Arbuckle. Fatty Arbuckle, yeah. He wasn't had, gay. He wasn't even gay. No, he was accused of fucking raping and killing a lady. Right. Yeah. And this was. If, if you don't much know about worse this, than being gay yes much worse if you don't know about this like this is something that gets talked about all like in any film history classes like so influential old on fatty arbuckle the, yes well no this trial getting the Hayes code in in past originally because this tri this was like oj times a thousand okay? right you had the one of the most famous celebrities was accused of raping and accidentally killing a woman and it went to trial three times because the, the jury could never agree. It kept getting a hung jury. So this went on for like years. It was this massive fucking deal. But you can see how dishonest, how utterly dishonest whoever wrote, you know, Pyramid Scheme's uh, script is. Because in the paragraph that she lifted this from, she removed Fatty Arbuckle killing someone, right? She removed tax investigating of Tom Mix. She remo and, and she removed carousing wild men like Errol Flynn, who was not gay. Errol Flynn, by the way, he's a very famous actor back in the day, very famously known for women for being a, a blatant womanizer, a drug addict, and a drunk, and would often be picked up on the streets of Hollywood, you know, totally intoxicated. Wow. Um, she cut gay. all that out and took a single 
two words, homosexual stars, and said that was the reason. I got a picture of Fatty Arbuckle up. Not a look, good looking guy. Okay. Are you sure? I mean, he lives up to the name Fatty. That's true. <laughs> okay. So, so super horrible dishonesty from Pyramid Scheme here. To, yeah. to pretend like, <laughs> oh, all the Hollywood stars back in the day were just innocent angels and they were just being arrested for being the gays. Right, yeah. But there then, was not much I, innocence going on. No. But then I took it a step further. Okay. I went and I found Joe Dominic's book. And I, I tried to see the source that the Washington Post person. The Washington Post person Nerd. cut out even more stuff. Okay. This is from the original book that the guy wrote says the industry Hollywood also needs to protect its stars and other key players from career destroying scandals in an era dominated by Calvinistic morality, carousing wild men, carousing wild men like Errol Flynn and, and homosexual stars were constantly being picked up by the LAPD, but never booked Howard Hughes and Buzz Busby Berkeley were rumored to have been involved in auto accidents that resulted in deaths, but managed to never go to jail. Looking the other way when Hollywood stars were involved went back to the days of the murder of William Desmond. <laughs> oh, shit. Holy through, cow. And through the mysterious circumstances under which women in their prime, such as Jean Harlow and Lupe Velez, died. Calls would be made and charges either not filed by the police or were dropped by the DA. So it had nothing to do with homosexuality or homosexual acts. It was actually no. like getting in a car not. wreck and killing like a yes. family of four yes but no pyramid head leaves this all out it was just to protect the gays that was all it was hmm. ouch you but you know you're gonna start protect protecting the reputation of the police that let you off after you know drunk driving killing right. a family of four you're gonna be like Apparently, they needed to play nice with the LAPD, who are pretty famous for their corruption, so much so that LA is actually now investigating the 50-year police gangs. And apparently, LAPD has 18 police gangs, which is bananas. But Hollywood couldn't critique any of this because they needed the police's help to hide their various misdeeds and force permits and work as security on set. One day, an actor named Jack Webb decided he had the solution to the problem and a way to make both Hollywood and the police happy. And what was that solution you might ask? Well, it was to involve the LAPD in the production of a movie. Because, ah, uh, yeah, what could go wrong with letting the police completely control the narrative about themselves? There's no way that that could have any unforeseen circumstances on society, right? But Hollywood needed the approval of law enforcement and- Unforeseen circumstances? Okay, okay. <laughs> It's usually consequences, but. Right. Law enforcement needed yeah, Hollywood right. to stop portraying them as hopeless buffoons. So Webb and the LAPD chief, William Parker, entered into a partnership to create the movie Dragnet, which was, quote, an authentic look at police work. Okay. So Dragnet came out, I think the original Dragnet radio show, because it was a radio show before it was a TV show or a movie or whatever, it was in like 1948, 1949. So if you've been paying attention, She's jumped from 1915 to 1948. She skipped over Prohibition. It was 1915 to like 1933 or right. something. Yes. So she's skipping a lot of a lot of time in Hollywood history where cops were not looked upon fondly, including the films that were making fun of Prohibition and things of that uh, nature. Of course. But um, let's see. Does any do you, do you guys remember? In the 1940s, there was a very popular film genre. Right. Maybe one of the most popular influential film genres to come out, you know, ever. The it's 1940s? Still, in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. After World genre? War, especially after World War II. Okay. Very popular film genre. Yes. Right. It still influences movies today. Really? Mm -hmm. What's it about? Give you a hint. Nazis? It starts with the letter N. Mm -hmm. but it's not Nazis. Oh, it's not Nazis? No. Noir? Oh, film noir. Oh, Is that my it? God. Did I get it? You got it right, Adam. I'm so proud of you. Film yeah. noir. Right. This is like and, the dirty city with all the uh, corruption and right. people on the take. 
Yes, film noir, mm -hmm. one of the most popular film genres at the time period, still influential to today. Every Batman movie is still essentially a film noir movie, right? Especially the most recent one. Especially the most recent one. Um, let me ask you a question, Adam, uh, as, as a film person. Mm -hmm. uh, how are the police generally portrayed in film noir movies? They're all dirty cops. <laughs> They're all dirty cops on the take. Trying to take down Jack Nichols. It's Chinatown. <laughs> it's just Chinatown. Let it go, Jack. <laughs> this is this is why this video is so insanely dishonest. The most popular genre of detective films in the time period that she's talking about was vehemently anti-cop. The course. entire it's like a staple of film noir is that the cops are either corrupt or incompetent, and there has to be some PI. Some private investigator to go and solve the crime because the cops are all evil. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You're trying to get me cops. to take the fall, Kappa, but did I'm you, innocent uh, and you know it. Did, did you watch the end of that Jacob Geller video? Because he makes the same point. I don't What's Jacob the Jacob Geller? Geller video? I don't know. I liked it in Discord a while back. Oh. oh. I didn't watch it. it. Wow. Yeah. He he makes the same point. He makes the same cop propaganda point. Yeah, yeah. So like the the beginning of the video is honestly like the first two thirds are honestly pretty good. He's going over like the history of uh, the death penalty in the U.S. and oh how, like, that video, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How like most of the most of the supposedly humane ways to kill people are actually like just straight up worse than a firing squad. Like all of them. That's basically. true. <laughs> um, but then like at the end, he's like, oh, but you know, death penalties have you know gone down in recent years. Because now the cops just kill them. And then he goes into like a oh, fucking 15 minute rant hilarious. about cops. And it's like, it's hilarious. Uh, pretty fucking wild. They never make it to the courtroom. There's no death just, penalty case because they're dead in the street. There you go. I just, I could, this is like, you know, someone who like had to sit through film history classes and shit. I'm just like, this is the most wildly dishonest oh, uh, yes. retelling of film history. You know, this is film, seven and a half minutes of total dishonesty. Yes, like like film has been wildly yeah, there are pro cop movies and there are pro cop TV shows, obviously, but film has been wildly anti cop since its inception and had had many numerous wildly anti cop portrayals from you know the dawn of time, continuing forward at all spans, and to completely skip over film noir and its wildly anti-cop portrayal just so you can promote this bullshit narrative is the height of stupidity and dishonesty and as i said i looked into the guy that she was talking about this jack webb guy he literally explained that the reason he was creating dragnet dragnet was because he was pro-cop and felt like all these noir movies were just giving cops a bad name he was literally reacting to media and trying to criticize it the time right, the yeah. two the two famous uh apparently the two most famous radio shows at the time that dragnet would be competing against were both noir pi radio shows where the cops were all portrayed as incompetent or corrupt right so, yeah so good job with your complete dishonesty and lack of research pyramid scheme what are the cop movies that are have the, the good cops I mean, it seems like it's probably 10 to 1 dirty cops versus good cops. Well, a lot of movies where, like, the cops, like, the main characters will be cops and other cops will be, like, assholes to them. Sure. They'll be proven wrong, you know? Sure. You know, like Lethal Weapon or... Uh, Super the... Troopers. Wow, that's a, little... <laughs> that's a good example. Hot Fuzz, right? Right. There Those are go. the good cops. There you go. So the greater good. Yeah. Well, I just, I feel like it's like, oh, everyone's just like, oh, you know, you have this. She's really talking about like the, the TV shows. Yeah. And CIS. And oh, yeah. yeah, yeah things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Work. There, though, this wasn't just a movie, even though it started that way. Soon, the groundbreaking partnership between the LAPD and the industry rolled into a radio show, then a TV series and law enforcement was involved every single step of the way. The TV series was released in 1951, and they were not only working as extras, but they were controlling the entire narrative. The scripts were formally approved by the LAPD Public Information Division, and if there was anything the department objected to, the entire episode would be thrown in the trash. 
censorship at its finest. Objected to because it was unrealistic or objected to because it made the cops look bad? Well, okay. So the guy, his, so when Dragnet first came out, it was supposed to be uh, real. Finger yeah, quotes, realistic. Real, yeah. It was supposed to be real These tellings of real These are the real, real life crimes. stories of the right. LAPD. That was yes. their thing. That was the whole right, marketing exactly. behind it. Right. And so, yeah, so they had them look over it to try to get that quote unquote fact straight. Now, obviously, the police are going to try to spin themselves in the most positive no, way possible. For, never, you know, that kind of would stuff. never happen. Of no. course. Realistic. But they just, and, and listen, if you want to criticize that, you know, fine. I'm sure it was, you know, Dragnet obviously operated as some form of, you know, propaganda. That's fine. The, the dishonesty here is to take literally the one example of this happening and then try to paint the picture like this was the norm, you know, yeah. the model. Yeah, the norm. Like this is what was going on wild, widely in Hollywood when it's literally not true. And it's probably more the opposite. Of course. Yeah. I think if you did a survey, it would be 10 to 1 dirty cops versus clean cops in portrayals in media. Right. It just seems like the cops are always portrayed as dirty. I well, There's more conflict that way. I, well, that's exactly what you're saying. Like, I can't think of a movie that's not like a comedy movie where all the cops are portrayed well. Like, even in, even when there's the main characters are cops, like, usually everyone else in the department like, hates mm. them or is like an asshole to them. I can think of one. Let me let me try to figure out what it's called. Like mm -hmm. you know, like the other guys. You know, you have all even the other in hot <laughs> the other guy. Even yeah. in hot fuzz, the whole police department is in on the on the yeah, killing. The, yes, the, <laughs> they're the, all corrupt. The, uh, professor potions professor. Yeah, Harry Potter is the bad guy. Yeah, right. That's a lot of bad cops. And and all the cop and in the beginning of the movie the cops transfer him out to the city because he's making them all look bad because he's they're all incompetent. You're right. <laughs> yes, right. So it's like it's just this whole idea that like oh there's all this pro cop can ever. What's like I don't know what you're talking about. Like maybe right. these TV there's like these TV shows these fucking Law and Order TV shows everyone watches, but in movies I mean it's not even the case. There's like one good cop in the show, and then all the rest of the cops are corrupt or incompetent. Right. Yeah. It's just it's so like. Yeah, ridiculous. Know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And as you said, Train Day is like, super famous movie. Copland, super famous movie. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, all these fucking, like, I just, I don't, this is just so dishonest. Yeah. You're, I'm sure everyone could think of like a million movies where cops are not portrayed in the best light. Right. Thin Blue Line, obviously. Oh, famous yeah. Documentary. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> not exactly a pro cop film. Yeah. The story was presented as being undeniably true, which, it wasn't. It portrayed a diversified LAPD, even though they were still segregated at the time and seemed to completely miss the fact that- L isn't, that, isn't that a good thing? <laughs> Wait, isn't that the good thing? It's supposed to be aspirational? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, like, look, it's the one woke aspect of it. And she's even complaining about that. It's crazy. She's complaining that like they took it and they made them diversified, right? Yeah. That, isn't that what you want? <laughs> it was basically like Star Trek. This is what's so funny about this because they're doing the representation right. She's like, no, no, <laughs> this but is they're all cops, so no, I don't like it. LAPD cop same year had beat seven men for an hour in an incident so badly that it was later called Bloody Christmas. So much for nice. authentic. But that didn't seem to matter to literally anybody. And this new model of working with the LAPD to develop media content soon became the norm. And thus, <laughs> Copaganda was born. Maybe you've heard that phrase before. You, you think she's going to give all these examples of that happening in other movies? Or she's just going to say that and then we just have to accept it? Yeah, no. Wait, is she, is she implying that the LAPD works with the entire fucking motion picture industry yeah. to fucking sanitize the... That's actually what she's saying? Yeah. That's what she implies. That's the argument Jesus she's making. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Seems a little crazy, doesn't it? Seems a little off. off a, little a little unhinged. unhinged. Yes, yes. <laughs> Look, let, 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 let's be fair to her, okay? Somebody else wrote this, so. That's yeah. true. Well, it's funny. She accidentally gives a, a counterexample to this, that claim later in the video. and doesn't realize it because she brings up the wire, which is obviously it's not exactly make the cops look the best. The, the production, I believe, is her looking up some sort of Washington Post article and sending it to somebody to turn into a video make script. Make a video. Right? <laughs> this is like, turn this into a video script and send it yes. back to me. I'll yes. read it and then I'll send that audio to an editor. Turn this right. into a video. Right. That's basically how it runs, correct? 
I gotta get in on this scam. I know. <laughs> Talk about a grifter. Jeez. What Maybe she this do? is the. She does the voiceover. She does the voice, yeah. And she cracks the whip. First time you're hearing it. Basically, copaganda is just defined as, quote, the reproduction and circulation in mainstream media of propaganda that is favorable to law enforcement. It can be anywhere from TV shows to movies and even the news. Copaganda is after one goal and one goal only, to footage. make the police look good. Gone are the days of the comedic punchlines and the inability for them to do their jobs. Mm -hmm. What was... Remember there's a little show, I don't know if you've heard of it, a little show mm. called Reno 911. Do you remember God, that? I love that show. Yeah. <laughs> of course. That's why I was thinking of that show. Yes. Yeah. Remember, we're, we're, we're not, a, and as you said, Super Troopers, right? One of the like oh, yeah. wildly famously popular movie. We're yeah. not allowed to have uh, movies about cops being shown in comedic incompetent light. The other guys. The like, other just, guys, oh, yeah. Oh my God. They jump off they the building. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> you think what I'm thinking? Yes. I am. Yes. There goes my hero. <laughs> Aim for the bushes. Yes. Aim for the bushes. Aim for the bushes. <laughs> Dude, that's that is legit one of the hardest I've ever laughed at the theater. Of it was course. So fucking good. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. Kill off the characters in the very beginning of the movie. You're <laughs> like, yes. Wasn't expecting that. It was who is the rock and who was the second guy? Oh, it was, oh, it was uh, the... Ice Cube or Ice No, no Ice no. T. You fucking racist. It was uh, Samuel Jackson, wasn't it? No, it's I think nice. it was Sam Jackson. Is it Samuel Sam Jackson? Jackson? It was Samuel Jackson and The Rock. Yeah. Oh, okay. it up. Yeah, it was Sam Jackson. Damn it! <laughs> Fuck, that was so good, dude. That's I legit one of the, the best cop. scenes in comedy. I'm innocent. Ever. I'm innocent. He, that, that scene was very funny. Yes. Like the rest of the movie wasn't nearly as good, but whatever. Fuck it. No, I mean, the whole movie's funny. And then cut like scene opening funny. scene. Cut it's to funny, funeral. It's not that good. Yeah. But then you know why the why it's named the other guys too. Yeah. Because they're literally the other guys. <laughs> Now, police were displayed almost exclusively as the heroes. The folks there to help and those such, who can do no this wrong. This is such bullshit. And, is it? Th this is like, what this backwards is world bullshit. is this? Yes. Literally, Denzel Washington won Academy Award for Best Picture for Training Day. He plays a fucking dirty cop. <laughs> he plays the dirtiest of dirty cops. Well, it's funny. As you said, just... The Batman movie just came out, and the whole thing is about how the, except for Commissioner Gordon, the cops are all corrupt. Everyone is corrupt. Yeah, and that's what actually the... like that's the theme for like that was the theme for the first two Nolan Batman movies too. All the cops are all corrupt until Batman comes in. This is the mainstay. Copaganda is dead. Yes. Yeah. Another famous movie about corrupt cops, The Departed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just, I think that like, one won an Academy Award too. That one was huge. Yeah. Ma just, making just... fun of this video almost feels like beating up a fucking handicapped person. Like <laughs> it this does. Is so, this, this is, is so, so badly argued. It, it's shocking. Yep. Look, the media is out there simping for the cops. Where? Where? <laughs> Who? Who? Fox News. That's it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Look, there's so many cops that are retiring out or quitting because the anti-cop sentiment is so high now. Like cops are just a punching bag these days. Mm -hmm. That's not a good way. That's not a good feeling. Like if you if being a cop is a hard job, and if you sign up for that job, you expect to be treated like a hero to some extent. So what's sure. what's what's so odd is the fucking lefties are always on about how like workers are so good and fucking average person is like oh, a fucking yeah. martyr doing God's work. And cops are one of the few people who legitimately have a very fucking hard and dangerous fucked totally. up job. Totally. And they're like, no, you're a bunch of fucking monsters. Not only that, it's like <laughs> what, a what are you talking about, dude? It's like a blue collar job, too. It's totally yes. blue collar. Yeah, but they're upholding the system. So yeah, 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 yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. That that old chestnut, that narrative. Yes. Yes. I don't want to be a part of your system, right. man. Right, yeah. The cops who are protecting you from all the criminal element that would love to just come in and steal your stuff and no, she, take she basically implies at the end of this video that like that's all cop propaganda, Adam. Like you don't really need cops <laughs> to protect you from crime. That's oh god that's hilarious <laughs> does it go there that's hilarious that's hilarious. oh please yeah i know i feel your pain doomer i do <laughs> I, it's so delusional i just uh it's just 
This video has hundreds of thousands of views, by the way. All of those people are going to be the first to be subjugated. And they're gonna, people are going to laugh at them, too, as right. they're doing it. These people should read that book, American Desperado. Well, and also, I mean, this detracts away from actually valid criticism of individual police officers or systemic police problems that exist. Of course. Because yeah. it's so stupid, yeah. It's a, it's a boy who cried wolf. Yep. This new video, this propaganda is very, very effective. I even remember as a child watching, you know, certain movies or TV shows or whatever and seeing cops and investigators and stuff like that doing their thing, solving cold cases, all that kind of stuff. And it was so damn fascinating to me as a child. I was like, see, I told you, no, she's no. like a fucking Karen guy. She, she likes the true crime drama. She does. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. What is it with women fucking watching. eat that shit up? Why are women so obsessed with true crime drama? What's going on there? They do love that shit, don't yeah. they? Someone explain it to me. I don't get that. The true crime? She's on court women, TV all day. Women love true crime drama. They want to date a oh. criminal, man. They like bad Is that boys. Sit, you oh, don't. Okay. It's a bad that boy it. thing. Maybe. Like, I'm going to get me one of these criminals. One of these days. <laughs> <laughs> They're taking the exact wrong aspect of it. One wow, of these okay. days, one of these criminals is going to fall for me. <laughs> right, right. This has got to be the coolest job ever because you get to solve crimes, you get to help people, you get to save the day, you get to bring closure to these families for things that have happened to them and stuff like that. And the problem is, is that's exactly what propaganda does. It takes especially young people, but everybody and goes, this is good. This is what you want to be when you grow up. Thankfully, I did grow out of that, as you can obviously tell. But when I was younger, it absolutely did make an impression on me. So I'm not sitting here and saying, like, I'm some... Well, there you go. She's like, first of all, there's a lot of good answers in the chat about the answer to the question. But, about uh, the true crime stuff? About the true crime stuff. Oh, do tell. Well, my favorite one was... Uh, was it? Majin says, danger makes women drenched. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Dang. Christ. That's hilarious. Yes. I do not endorse that statement. Yes. But I <laughs> no, but it's it's a place. So basically she's like, when I was a kid, I watched the police, you know, do good things on TV shows. Mm -hmm. I got older and I was indoctrinated by my woke professor. Now I realize I was tricked. Right. It wasn't my woke professor that tricked me. It was all that propaganda as a child. Isn't that propaganda tricking kids into wanting to be good cops don't some of those people yes. actually become cops and become good cops yes you would think Adam, yeah I think, but no but then her woke professor well, there, taught her Adam, that, there are no good cops yeah that's what her woke <laughs> professor taught her her woke professor taught her there are no good cops all that is just fiction and once people actually once those people who dreamed of being a good cop become a cop they realize oh man i gotta be a dirty cop just to get uh, get by in here mm-hmm mm -hmm. I don't think that's the way it is. Look, I know no. people in law enforcement. We've had people in law enforcement on the show. Mm -hmm. Adam, you're just a tool at the hegemon, okay? I don't think Desert... You can't, you can't I don't, be trusted. Look, I don't think Counterpoints and Desert Runner are out there being dirty cops. I don't, I don't see them reenacting training day on their shifts. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe counterpoints. <laughs> I'm immune pyramid to all of this and I know better and blah, blah, blah. I fuck up just like everybody else. And though I'm not going to say what I did as a child being like, oh my God, I watched this TV show with this cool police officer solving a crime. And I thought it was really cool and that I wanted to be one that that's the biggest fuck up in the whole world. I think that just shows that this was effective marketing and that this is something that still continues to this day. Wait, did she just say that she wanted to be a cop? Yeah. Yeah. Until okay. a, a woke professor talked to her. Fixed her. Yeah. Indoctrinated her. <laughs> Changed her. And on that tangent, you've probably seen propaganda yourself more times. It's the laziest police uniform for a stock footage. Look at that. It's yeah. literally just a blank shirt that's got three police patches. <laughs> this isn't stock footage. This is Pornhub. So, soul snack. It kind of looks like it. That's soul snack all the way. Hello, ma'am. I heard you have a noise complaint. Yeah. No, but I'd like to make one. Ooh. You've seen that literally on Pornhub, <laughs> haven't you? 
That's a little too realistic. There you go. There Man, you go. We had a noise complaint, but seeing as how you're my stepsister and all. <laughs> I'm going to let this one Step go. Brother, I didn't know you were a police officer. Just graduated from the academy. <laughs> I'd like me to show you what I learned in police school. <laughs> Times than you can even, you've just probably never realized it either. So let me go ahead and help you out. Let's take a look at some examples of copaganda as seen on TV, shall we? Copaganda as seen on TV. Now, we've already talked about Dragnet, and that was pretty much the beginning of the end. But that's way back in the 1950s. People have had time to perfect this ability to make cops look extra special and awesome for quite some time now, and copaganda is quite literally everywhere. There's a seemingly endless amount of cop shows that grace our televisions. In fact, they make up about 20% of all the shows on broadcast networks. By the way, that doesn't even include predominantly- Wasn't, okay, I never watched The Shield. Yeah, um, but I know there's no did. way that is true. What? Twenty percent of the shows on broadcast networks are cop shows. The CSI shows are just—I mean—that seems like twenty percent of well, them in and I, of the, themselves. Well, no, it, it did, like what did she, she said on network shows? On yeah, network broadcast channels? broadcast shows. Yeah. No, but did she was that include cable or she just talking about like go, go back no. and see what she said. Okay. Twenty percent of all shows are cop shows. Amount of cop shows affect this ability to make cops look extra special and awesome for quite some time now, and copaganda is quite literally everywhere. There's a seemingly endless amount of cop shows that grace our televisions. In fact, they make up about 20% of all the shows on broadcast networks. So she's okay. Well, I think the article says network TV. Um, they had to change it a little bit so they didn't get plagiarism charges. Network TV cop shows. 20%. Broadcast TV. That's not cable, right? I mean, cable is broadcast. Uh, Yeah, I don't know what all these terms mean. It's Here's how much network idea. TV depends on cop shows. I mean, I guess they're just including literally any show about that involves law enforcement in any capacity. I mean, I, I, I don't contest the 20%. Do you... I mean, it well, seems like there's a ton of cop shows on. So, okay. So in the article, no, in the article, they're only talking about like ABC, NBC, Fox. You know, they're not talking about like, they're not including all cable shows. So this, so I, so this would make sense if you're not including cable. Yeah. I could believe that. So, okay. A lot of people, but here's, here's what she misses out. She never explains. There's a lot of cop shows on right now. There's a very obvious fucking reason why there's a lot of cop shows. In our modern society, if it takes place in America, how are you supposed to stru structure a TV show where your protagonist can be involved in violent conflict drama but still be the good guy? Cop show. They have, they have to be a cop. What else are they supposed to do? You can't just like what? What? Else, how else are you going to structure the show? They have to be a cop. It's just, it's very obvious what's happening here. But it could be a drug dealer. Yeah, but then they're not going to be, you know, it's going to be, they could do that, like Breaking Bad or something, but then it's going to be more and more. Oh, yeah, ambiguous. they're not going to be the good guy. Yeah. Right. And if you're on network An television, we're right. And network television is written for like stupid people. So, you know. <laughs> unlike but, the Such an Adam show. Don't they have an entire cop show that's. For Jesus. They have a entire cop show that's devoted to like rape cases. Yeah, is that special victims unit? Yeah, SVU. Special victims <laughs> unit. Yes. Isn't that million dollar extreme? <laughs> so, but anyway, what I was saying is, I never watched The Shield. But I know my parents watched it. You know, super fan, like super famous. Wasn't that show all about like? the main character the like in the police basically becoming more like corrupt and fucked up over time I don't it's like know. one of the most yeah. famous like cop shows to come out in the last 20 years i don't uh, know okay. cop shows. i have no idea 
By the way, that doesn't even include predominantly legal dramas. Now, not all of them are participating in the traditional propaganda method. Some actually do critiquing, but others, not so much. It's just like a little love fest and, you know, licking the boot, which, mmm, yummy, yummy, boot tastes so good. Am I right? You ever she, she doesn't give any examples of anything. So it's like any, so basically she's laying out any show that portrays the cops positively is propaganda. Any show that portrays the cops negatively is like, that's just truth. truth. Yeah. yeah. There's not a wide diversity of behaviors in policing. You'll, you'll like what she's about to say here. You ever see me writing for that? It. It's just like a little love fest and, you know, licking the boot, which, mmm, yummy, yummy, boot, boot tastes so good. Am I right? If you ever see me writing that on a comment in one of my YouTube videos, just just know that that person probably deserved it. But anyway. <laughs> what the, What happened there? It's just like, listen, I'm replying to comments and talk on people bootlickers and, you know, they just probably deserve it. So uh, stop complaining about it, Chad. Did she call Did she call her some commenter a bootlicker? I guess she did. So, she sounds like she does it all the time. Like it's a common mainstay of her comment section. Her so, calling people someone bootlickers. dip down to the comments and see yeah. how many bootlicker yep. comments are in there. Yes. Let's You're talk about Law & Order, for example, which is one of the biggest franchises in American TV meow, meow, history meow. that has been on our screens for literally decades at this there point. And ice. over the years, it seems like almost everyone has been on the show. Not only do we see even successful Joe actors Biden? on the show repeatedly, even but we <laughs> even see politicians making their mark on American media by appearing in the crime series. The show has- Like she says, like, like Joe, Bi Joe Biden was nobody until he was on law and order like no right. one knew who joe biden was until he was on the propaganda show i mean he was probably vice president when he was on the cap propaganda show yes but no no one knew who he was that's why he won that's why he beat trump in the election has become so massive that people often use it as a reference point to describe just how much they know about the law which when you think about it is pretty terrifying what makes it even more concerning is that dick wolf the show's producer who worked previously as the ad director had followed pretty much the exact same playbook as dragnet Sure, cops and prosecutors do not necessarily have the same access to law and order in the way that they did with the famous 1951 television series, but they do have a heavy influence on Dick, who has even said explicitly in interviews, quote, You know, there is a shared interest in uh, putting bad guys away and having cops, you know, shown in a decent light. I am kind of unabashedly pro-law enforcement. So... <gasps> How dare you? Oh my you? God. I can't believe he said that. <clears throat> what a bootlicker. God. In favor of helping putting bad people into prison. Jeez. Mm -hmm. When someone has that type of view and is producing a show watched and loved by millions, it's reasonable to think that they won't be portraying things in a completely accurate light or a socially moral one. In fact, in a study done by Color of Change, they found that the cops on the show were often shown doing bad things. This looks like a very reputable uh, organization. Color of Change. You don't <laughs> know about that? injustice. Color of Change is notorious. Yes. I'm really going to trust whatever... Uh... You know, she's complaining. I love, she's whole complaint is that you can't have a bias in favor of something and then produce neutral or objective you know, media critiques after it and then she links to uh, an incredibly hyper partisan organization oh that's a great point yeah and she's like no oh, but you could trust these people well she's doing it's it for herself i mean obviously yeah, she's completely biased but of course of course no no no. she's not biased she just knows what's the true truth this is okay. objective reality she's just explaining to us adam the police are the bitch they're the yeah. bad guys okay the police are all bitch I mean, they can be, but they can be good too. No, they're all bitch. No, all of them. Not Every all of them. One. Not the ones that make jokes. For a good reason. Well, in stark contrast, the criminals were not given the same explanation. They were simply bad for the sake of being bad. And what was the result? <clears throat> Viewers became much more likely to believe that bad or illegal acts done by police officers and prosecutors are just simply necessary evils that are totally acceptable. I'm so wait, wait, wait. So apparently, there's some finger quote study that studied police shows and they made a claim that whenever the police were shown doing something bad, there was some justification for it. Okay. Right. Right. 
Uh, and then she makes an additional claim with no evidence that because people watch these TV shows, it basically tricks everyone in America into just believing that whenever the cops do something bad, it must be for a justifiable reason because they're watching all these NCIS and Law and Order shows. Right, yeah. Okay. So when the cop steps out of bounds, right. he's doing it because yeah. it's a career criminal or something. Yes. I've seen the Ice Cube on TV, and he was a good police officer, so those right. police officers did nothing wrong. Right. I'm sure that it's just a coincidence that people's opinions on police completely probably fall along mostly political left right lines and have nothing to do with what kind of television they watch, but okay. People Doesn't still have... watch TV? Yeah, right. Any bearing in the real world, right? I'm just kidding. That was obviously sarcasm. It does. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. It's no wonder why cops are big fans of the show. I would be too if my job was shown in such a damn good light. Now then there's also the whole design of the show. If you've seen an episode, you probably know the structure. A bad person does a bad thing, cops arrest a bad person, and the bad person goes to trial. It's kind of the same formula every single time. But in reality, this type of scenario isn't actually how our legal system works at all. In real life, about 90% of criminal cases never even make it to trial because people end up pleading guilty. Wait what a minute. Why does she care? It's fiction. <laughs> yeah. This is fiction. Why do you care? Yeah. They're, yeah, they're real criminals, but it's only yeah. fictional, so it doesn't it's matter. It's fictional, right? You can, I, she yeah. said in the other video that if it's fiction, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Yeah, right? of course. It's fiction. Who cares? And people can be horrible criminals. Yeah. The show does get right, though, is that most defendants who do choose to go to trial do end up getting convicted. And those are some fucking staggering numbers that you would never really know unless you have been through the criminal justice system yourself or have done quite a bit of outside research. Because a cop prosecutor centered show is not going to tell you that our criminal justice system. I like, she, I like how she just implied that she had done quite a bit of outside research. Yeah. You read one, watched the Post article too, we're okay. And sent it to somebody to turn into a video script. <laughs> the... well, Go ahead. Her, her big complaint here is, listen, if you watch a television show about a specific field, it's not going to give you the truth about that specific field. <laughs> it's going to give you a highly fantasized version of of policing it's like really oh okay right. i thought law and order was just like an ncis i thought these shows when i would watch them i thought like that actually counted towards me going to the police academy right, right? Yeah. you just watch those shows and then they give you a badge i mean are they completely unrealistic i mean i saw she hulk it seemed pretty real to me yeah. <laughs> it seemed like that's what happened yeah, that's how law firms really work that's what happened the, in the district attorney's office. The most realistic depiction of police is in the Big Lebowski. There you go. If 90% of criminals are pleading or taking a plea deal, that leads me to believe that that's good law enforcement because they have enough evidence to convict them. That's why they're taking the plea deal. They know they're going to lose the case. Right? I don't know. Well, a lot of it is, you know, people can't afford, so... Oh, okay. I don't know if I would make that exact determination. So you're saying they're innocent people, but they know that they're going to get they could railroaded. Be. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's possible. God, oh, or they just need to be out of jail. So that's wait, totally you're asking you're asking why people plead? Because they can't yeah. afford bail and things of that nature. There's a lot of reasons why. There's a, there's a yeah. There's a lot of reasons. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you're saying that? Look, I want to believe that 90 percent of the people are pleading <laughs> because they're actually guilty and they deserve to go to jail. <laughs> That feels then you much better more... watch some copaganda shows on USA. Okay? Well, no, maybe I should watch more copaganda shows. I don't do. Is there been a? Do we know? Look, I don't want to fall into the. We need a study for this trap. Do we know. Well, do I mean, we I don't know, know how they could study this. I know. How do you even study that? Yeah, you couldn't. But... Study what? What are you asking? This like is... how many people take plea deals that are innocent? Yeah, how many innocent people take plea deals? That's what we want to know. know. I don't know how you'd study. If it's like something I, I like forty percent of that ninety percent, oh my god, Do we live in a fucking hellhole. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm turning over. Adam's to a, been convinced. America bad. No, America <laughs> bad. America bad. Look, you can um, only I maintain mean, would... the anti-America bad stance if that ninety percent are are real criminals, right? Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I would guess at least ten percent of them are innocent. Look, so Doomer's saying 80% of them are guilty. 
Well, I where, said at where least do you, 10. Where I, do I don't you know tip, what the exact number is. Where do you tip into America's bad? At 20%? At 30%? This is like the quota cop thing. Like, I just got to get enough arrest to meet my quota. Right. Well, first of all, you should never adopt America bad because the concept of America bad is that you're going to look at information, not through an objective lens, but through right, totally, the yeah. presupposition. You know America what I'm saying, bad. though, obviously. I know what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to sleep at night thinking, well, we're more good than bad. But if 50% of criminals are going to jail innocent, then I'm thinking. I don't think, I, I don't believe that. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's Doomer thinks 80% are guilty. Okay. 10% is still awful. It is. Especially if you're one of those people who are like, listen, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Sure, sure. And now I'm being convicted for murder. Yeah. And I'm taking a plea deal and just, oh, that's awful. Yep. Relies on people pleading guilty to crimes, even if they are innocent, to avoid the very high possibility of a harsher sentence if they go to trial. But of course, there are a lot more examples than just law and order. Even ones you wouldn't guess, like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And you may be thinking, hey, Illuminati, pump the brakes. That show doesn't necessarily show cops in the best of light. They are comedic in a sense, and it isn't supposed to be accurate portrayals like Law and & Order and Dragnet. Well, you're right, but you still have to look just a hair deeper than that. So yes, on the surface, the show is definitely making fun of cops, but it also shows a dis- Something she said earlier, we're not allowed to do, remember? Early video, you're not allowed to have shows making fun of cops anymore. The LAPD bust down your door if you do that. Yep connect between what we would hope would be the reality in police departments and what actually is. When Raymond Holt first comes onto the scene as the gay, black, NYPD officer, he faces discrimination. But slowly and surely, he is, as the Washington Post puts it, turned into a mascot of departmental tolerance. The great aspect of this storyline is that it does show that the NYPD is certainly not perfect by showing the initial discrimination, but it also seems to exaggerate the department's capability of reform far beyond what is accurate in reality. Simply put, it's sugarcoating. And so wait a bit. So we have a TV show where the police department has a gay black police officer, a chief, and originally, and at first everyone's biased against them, but over time, they learn they to be learn accepting. They to love him. Right. To love and she's the complaining gay black about police chief. Right. She's complaining about this And this character. is copaganda and not woke right. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally the thing that they want media to do, build more tolerance from people. But if it's the police, then it's bad because <laughs> it's the police. How dare you insinuate that a, a nice gay person is a cop? Yes. Yes. And black. Right. That too. And this type of sugarcoating seems to be pretty traditional in the cop genre. And many shows display a picture of diversity within law enforcement that is just nowhere close to reality. That's so wrong. Shows on TV that portray law enforcement often put a heavy emphasis on diversity, which is great for representation of more people of color or in the LGBTQ media space. But it isn't so wonderful for the truth of what most police departments really look like. While they are full of diversity on TV, they aren't in real life. In fact, only about 15% of police officers are black in the United States. That's, Wait, what? That's, so that's proportional. <laughs> that's, pro that's proportional, you fucking moron. Yeah, it's 13% of the population. Holy shit. <laughs> you, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I'm like, well, there's probably not a lot of black cops in places that are predominantly white, but that's exactly right. Jesus Christ. I can't take this fucking chick, dude. Yeah. That's Let's the uh, overrepresentation, actually, of 15%. It is. It is. <laughs> like, while they are full of diversity on TV, they aren't in real life. In fact, only about 15% of police officers are black in the United States. <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot. What are they, what's oh it supposed God. to be, 50%? Yeah. Like it is on the cop shows? Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Well, I mean, it probably is depending on where, like, where the police station is. It like, probably like, is 50% in the, in in the cities, cop yeah. shows, yeah. Well, well and, and, also, yeah. Yeah, and, in, and in cities, obviously. Right, right. But just, oh, my God. She unironically was like, only 15% of the cops are black. They're not diverse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. 
which yeah. is a horrendous underrepresentation of what our population actually looks like. What? <laughs> oh, she fucking puts the nail in the coffin. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. A horrendous underrepresentation of our 13% of the population that is black. Yeah. <laughs> look, it's even more because I, I doubt. Look, 13% of the population is black. I mm -hmm. doubt that 15% of the police population that's black is women. I bet it's all guys or well, predominantly I mean, women, guys. Right, but women are probably mostly underrepresented in policing overall. Of course, but if 13% if of the population is black, half of that 13%, 7% oh, right. is women. So it's Wait, even so the, more overrepresented. Right, that's a good point. Wait, so these people hate cops. So what she's saying is that more black men should become cops, a profession that she fucking hates? Oh, yeah, that's a good point, too. Listen, any time that she is, any way that she can insult the police, she's going to take it, okay? It doesn't have to be logical to her. <laughs> or consistent. 7% of the American, or 7.5% of the American population are black men. But 15% of them stupid. are cops. Yeah, so they're they're super overrepresented. Yeah, way overrepresented. Yeah, which is great. More diversity. She wants fifty percent though. She's like, un unless it meets the criteria of the the cop shows, which I'm sure on the cop shows it is like fifty percent at least. Right. Okay. But. But there's more because there always is. Cop shows also have a nasty little habit of portraying most criminals as people of color and have even portrayed people intentionally harming themselves purely so they can place blame on cops for police brutality. In an episode of CBS's Blue Bloods, a black subject literally throws himself out of a window completely unprovoked purely so they could frame a white officer for police brutality. Clearly, this type of narrative is detrimental to those reporting actual instances of police brutality in the United States, and there's a oh lot of it. God. But these types of televised examples gives police at least some reassurance that they can simply claim that people are making it up to get some sort of payout or to make police officers look bad. And since these types of episodes sit in the back of our head and a lot of people go, huh, this must be what it's really like, they lend that credibility of a fictional event in a show to reality. And it wait, wait a second. I read this book, Hate Crime Hoax, where he goes through all of these hoaxes, and mm -hmm. it happens a lot. There's a lot of documented cases of of people faking different hate crimes. So, I mean, mm -hmm. this is kind of along the same vein, right? A guy jumps out a window. He's basically faking a sure a hate crime that the cops committed on him, a police brutality claim. He threw me out well, the window. Right. Well, and also her her argument was just like, oh, people watch this media, right? They watch mm -hmm. these TV shows, and then that sits in the back of their mind when they make you know decisions about voting or decisions about real world. It's like, well, wait a minute. I mean, this complete like when you have a stronger argument that you know, fuck fantasy TV shows, how the news portrays things, which people think are is true and not a fantasy, far more heavily weighs in people's minds and and changes their actions. Of course. Right? Yeah. And I mean, this is what we saw with the entire Black Lives Matter movement was this because of the media over reporting all the times that a white police officer shoots an unarmed black man. It creates this hallucination, this delusion in Americans' minds that this is some sort of like massive, like this all is, you know, hundreds of thousands of black men are shot, killed by the police every year, you know, right. unarmed innocent black men. And it creates this complete false narrative in people's minds that motivates them to act. But for some reason, that doesn't, you know, she's not going to talk about any of that. No, no, no. It's all these fictional TV shows. That's the problem. Well, that goes to the narrative that she wants to believe anyway. I right. often wonder if they did make some sort of effort to make media match reality, if we would, if we would pick up on that. Well, they would they would just oppose that because the reality isn't as bad as they think it is. No, obviously, and being obviously. political extremists, they're completely committed to reality being the worst thing in the world to justify overthrowing the government. So they want to create right. propaganda, exactly. But right. I, I just I wonder, like we're seeing a lot in Los Angeles, we're seeing a lot of crime stories on local news, like way more than I ever imagined, or way more than we did before, like pre-pandemic, and I wonder if crime is actually 
I mean, it has to be going up, right? They they would report any violent crime or, I mean, they would report anything that they could, anything that they could get their hands on. They just didn't have a lot of material to work with before the pandemic, but now they've got like tons of stuff to work with. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I, the perception argument that you're making, I always wonder if maybe I'm just perceiving there being more crime because... I don't know. People well, are talking about crime going up and whatnot. It's hard to tell because, like, um, like a, a good example of this is, I was talking to someone about you know the the case where I forget the guy's name. You know the black kid like rung the doorbell. Oh and yeah, then, yeah. Uh, got the shot crazy, by the old guy. Yeah. Yeah, the crazy old white guy shot him through the door. Right. Um, situation, and then, so that happened, and then obviously it becomes a big story because of you know the racial aspect. And then there were a bunch of stories that were reported, though not reported as much, uh, that didn't have racial components. There was a guy who shot, you know, he shot someone that just pulled into their driveway, right? You know, and it was like a woman, and he killed her. He didn't even know what the you know ethnicity of the person was. Uh, and then there's another case where, like, I think, you know, two people got into a car by mistake. One was like dressed up like a cheer, like in a cheerleader's outfit, and they fucking person started shooting them. It's like you know, there's always like really fucky weird ass cases recently. Where people like pull into people's driveways and these psychopaths just like fucking start shooting at them. There's a case recently where I think someone shot a uh, like an Uber Eats driver or something because they pulled in the, the wrong place. And you know the person I was talking to was like, you know, this is happening, Sitch. This is happening because you know, in you know the Republican Party and, and Donald Trump's America is like hyping up the fear that we all have to be afraid and it's making everyone crazy. And I was like, well. Is that true or is it just that these things probably happen constantly all over America every day and we just didn't hear about it until, you know, recently. Now it's like a trend for them to actually, the news to actually like talk about it. Well, I mean, are other news stories point is pushing three. these stories out though? That's my thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the entire business of the news media is to make people fucking afraid. So right, like, but you'd want to go to the guy shooting some kid through the doorway. I mean, that's like top of the list, right? How does that get squeezed out? Because a lot of stuff gets reported in local news. It doesn't get reported in national news necessarily. Right, okay, gotcha. Right? And so, but that was what I was, I was like, how do, how do you know that there's not these random shootings that happen every day where someone pulls into someone's driveway, someone knocks at someone's door, and then they get shot, and you just never heard about it? Yeah. Or is it really just that this is just some random thing that all of a sudden this kind of weird random shooting just for no reason is now suddenly big in like the last two weeks? Like, it's mm. just, it's hard for me to imagine that it's, it's been happening all along, but not being reported. That's... I don't. I don't think. Why? Oh, really? I'm sure it happens every day. And we just didn't hear about it. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it could. But my fucking, thinking it almost is happened be... to me in college. We pulled into some fucking crazy person's driveway, and they like fucking threatened to shoot us. We're like, what? Like, calm down. Yeah, if that happened today, you just they would shoot. They'd be yeah, like, exactly. oh my god, he's woke. Get him. Well, <laughs> Wait, I'm not like... woke. This guy looked like he was out on parole, so you know. Right. I, I accepted a I accepted a ride from a dude one time, and mm -hmm. a dude flipped him off in traffic. So he followed him home and then pulled a gun and was threatening him. Oh and you God. were in the car. Yeah, <laughs> like you're hitchhiking. This is your hitchhiking well, no. story. My God, no, I, I, Doomer. I wasn't I wasn't hitchhiking, but I I didn't really know him that well. He's like, hey, let me give you a ride home from school, kid. Were, were you just? I got a big anything, bag of like, candy in my car. Say, Shit, I'm just gonna keep my mouth. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember. This was like, I mean, this was like legit fifteen years ago or some shit. But. Doomer gets out of the car and starts running. He shoots him. Fucking what? <laughs> Fuck you. Right. Like, all right. Holy shit. Okay. So maybe so, yeah. maybe it does happen all the time. If you both well, have know, stories like these, of this happening, I know that these. I don't know about the driveway stories, but I know these road rate incidents happens constantly. Where oh, yeah. someone pulls in front of someone, someone cuts someone off, someone flips someone with a bird, and they literally just fucking pull out a gun and chase someone and start shooting through. There was a case recently but where like a guy. That's always on the news. That always makes yeah. the news. Yeah, but it like it makes a new, like it's on the local news, and they talk about it once, and then you never see it again, right? Yeah, you got to like look a local at the... LA resident shot through their own windshield at a person that drove by. You know, it's so difficult because all there. I'm sure there are. Obviously, there's reports, publicized police reports, because they keep track of crime. So you'd be able to look at how many incidents happened and how many incidents were reported. Yeah, but I don't, track I don't know if there's a, differences. Right, but I don't know if there's a category or like, 
random driveway shootings or something, right? Like, I don't even know what you'd look up. Yeah, there are. Because I did I'm try sure to look it up, is. but I couldn't, I didn't even oh, know what really? to look for. Oh, really? Oh, wow. I did. I couldn't find any information because I couldn't, I didn't know, like, what, I don't, like, these kinds of crimes, I don't know if there's a specific term for them. Right. You know, or like the accidental shooting of, like, a right. random stranger, you know? Unintentional oh, it's homicide. Said, oh, it, they're called a ding dong blast. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a desk pop. Called a ding dong pop. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. Back to Illuminati. It makes no sense whatsoever. And what's extra shitty about it is then the police weaponize that mindset that people are now being curated into believing and they absolutely just use it to get shit dismissed, even when that's not the truth. For a local Colorado example, which I'm sure for anyone in Colorado, you've been keeping up on this and it's probably- So wait, so her, her theory here is that the police intentionally get these copaganda shows created and then they use that. This is all intentional, by the way. There's some mm -hmm. conspiracy here by the police. They then use that to get court cases dropped against the police officers because when they're making arguments of course, they go, Remember when you watched that Law & Order show you really liked, Grandma? Well, that's my client right here. They're right. just like that person from Law & Order. They're just innocent. And well, apparently this is effective. I think she's also insinuating like a cop show will show a guy jumping out a window and pretending that the cop threw him out the window. But in real life, the cop will throw him out the window and then plead like, remember the cop show? That's exactly what happened. Right. The guy jumped out the window. Himself, right? Yeah pissed you off too. Remember back in the beginning of this year that a woman was suing the police because she was locked in the back of a car and then put on train tracks and then the police car was hit by train tracks and she was severely injured. Which did I mention she was handcuffed in the back of that car? She had no, no recourse, no escape, no action. Anyway, she sued the police and the police officer who placed her in the cruiser that was then hit by the train, he's pleaded not guilty and wants the charges dropped. And what's really sickening is in local circles here and stuff like that in Colorado, there are some people that absolutely fucking defend this shit. And I see them spouting off to their like thousand followers on Twitter. And I'm just like, can you be embarrassing somewhere else? Like she literally was like a mouse in a fucking cage. And then they put that cage on the fucking train tracks and let it hit her. First of all, that's totally egregious. The guy's a fucking idiot. I remember this case and thought, like, what a moron. Right. But they, you know, standard practice plead not guilty and right. want the charges dropped. That's like just right. standard court procedure. So, well, first of all, that, that's a good point. It's interesting that she's complaining, not about a verdict, by the way. Her argument was that this cop propaganda is some part of some conspiracy to get charges dropped. And this is, she brings up an example where that didn't happen, where he just pled not guilty, because obviously he's going to plead not guilty, because, you know, this is America, everyone has a right to defend themselves. But that guy's going to fucking jail. Right. Well, come on now. Right. But she's also, uh, she's changed the story. She's made the story worse than it is. It's a bad story, but she made it worse than it is. Because um, first of all, what that is indefensible, and I don't, I don't, literally don't understand what anyone would say to defend that. Right. But she said that they put her in the car and they put the car on train tracks. No, of that's course. not what happened. Yeah. The guy right. stopped on train tracks to stop her because he's an idiot. And right. then during the course of them arresting her, put her in the car that was already stopped on the train tracks and then the train came. Right. It's not like they put her in a car, stopped on train tracks, then he got out of the car and was like, oh, I'm going to get hit by the train, which is what she's <laughs> kind of making it seem like. Let's give her a scare here. Let's put her yeah, on the right. train tracks. The train's right. coming. Right. Um, but there's there's also a weird thing because I kind of like was kind of looking at the this case. I don't know what kind of fucky wucky weird state. What she says this was Colorado or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fucky wucky shit's going on with Colorado. I know where I live. Everywhere that there's train tracks, there's the little uh, arms that come down when the train's coming. Right. That come down like a good like minute before the train actually shows up. Wherever this was, there's no arms. It's literally just a train track cutting through a street with a little sign that says, be careful, train tracks. <laughs> like, what kind of fucked up place is this? They this don't put the little fucking tram bars. This has to be out in the country because this is the kind of shit that takes place out in the country. There's no... Is, is that it? It's just like in rural areas, they don't have the little train arms? That's wild to me. Well, I mean, in California, they have the arms everywhere in the country. Yes. Like, I've never been to a country road that doesn't have the arms. But I can imagine there being some country road where they don't have arms. I guess. You're right. That's just like the cop car's just sitting there. 
It's in oh. the middle of nowhere, no lights. They don't have these in Louisiana. Some place in Louisiana, they don't have them. Yeah, people are saying in some like rural areas. To me, that's just fucking wild that like you'd have uh because yeah, like look in the in the video, there's no arms. It's just yeah, no. just literally just this there's no light. There's nothing there. Yeah. So I can't believe um, the lady lived through that. I was like, when I saw the video, I yes. thought easily that woman's dead. There's no way. Well, I guess it, yeah, I, I'm, I'm shocked. Well, and it's not even crazier when I was reading the report on it. They said that the that the train, they, they only had 20 seconds to react to this. Mm -hmm. Like when the train came. The train saw the person, the car on the tracks, and blew the horn. And then 20 seconds later, I think, it was like 20 or 30 seconds later, the train hit the car. Which, yeah, because they're like, not going to run out and risk their life to get the woman out. They're like, "Oh, what do we do?" They're like deer in the headlights. Well, if yeah, if if they were, if you like were prepped that this was something, you could react in thirty seconds to pull the car off the train. But if you're not, you're just completely milling, standing there milling around. All of a sudden, you hear a train, and you're like, "You're going to have like five to ten seconds of you just standing there, like confused before you start to react and go." Oh, well, shit, you're so late. look, you're going to have thirty seconds contemplating if you're going to die if you do something. <laughs> That's going to be. That's going to take sure. up a lot of time there. Well, You're thinking the, me going in front of the train now is probably a bad idea. Well, obviously they should morally because you're the one that put that person of in course. the situation. Right? Of course. But yeah, but no, that's so the this thing. Is, this right, is Uvalde this is, all over again. They're like, hmm, right. maybe we should just chill here. I don't know if she's going to live. So obviously the, the, the police that did this grossly fucking incompetently negligent. Yeah. Should be, you know, prosecuted the folks in the law for doing this. This is wildly fucking dumb, right? And unhorribly dangerous. Basically. But it's not corrupt. I mean, it's incompetent. No, it's just stupid. Just like, can you be embarrassing somewhere else? Like, she literally was like a mouse in a fucking cage, and then they put that cage on the fucking train tracks and like. And then you're right. And yeah, then they and put then they that put cage. that cage on the train track. Yeah. Yeah. But it hurt her. But because we've got this instilled sense inside of us that like, oh my God, well, on law and order, the cops are good. Therefore, even if this cop did a bad thing, it must have been for a good reason. He hey, did did anybody defend this? <laughs> yeah, who defended this? I don't know. Supposedly someone somewhere on Twitter defended it. Like, I just, I, I'm sorry. I don't buy this. Yeah, like, I don't either. For, like, for, for example, my family's pretty pro-cop, but like, they hate civil asset forfeiture. Like the Oh, all, yeah, that's like, awful. In any of the cases where like cops clearly fucked up, they admit it very quickly. Like I, I just don't buy it that there's anybody that's like, oh yeah, the cops when they like tie like fucking hog tied that woman on the train tracks and she got hit by a train. Oh yeah, the cops were fine. I don't think a single person said that. Like no. literally no one. And like she's fucking presenting this as though this is like a common thing. I just you're full of shit. I just don't buy it at all. Well, yeah. I actually I bet you this is what happened. I bet you two things were said. I bet you when the, like, the story first came out, there were people that were saying, well, let's wait to see what the facts were, number one. <laughs> and then number <laughs> two, I bet the video you... video what the facts are. Right. And then I bet you number two was that people said, oh, this wasn't deliberate. And she's twisting in her mind people saying, well, let's see what the facts are, and this wasn't deliberate into them defending oh, yeah, themselves. Yeah. Well, yeah, it doesn't seem to be deliberate. It's just extreme negligence. Yes. She's it's still framing it as deliberate, though. She is, right. And if you actually watch the video, it's very clearly not deliberate because as soon as the fucking comes, the police are like freaking the fuck out. They're like, so, holy shit. Yes. yes. But, so, yeah, I, I don't know who I don't know who was, was watching this and was like, oh, yeah, that's that's totally fine. Why is she yeah, standing? Why is her insane. avatar standing in front of like a science room? Um, Because she's smart, Adam. Oh, OK. I think it's because like she's supposed to be the bunking like scams or is this the propaganda here no it's just i mean it, it's signaling there's like there's every fucking pretentious signal here there's a fucking microscope and beakers and a fucking shelf full of books the fucking blackboard makes it look like you're in class and you're learning from fucking mommy pyramid like it's very clear <laughs> what the signaling is do i need to fucking lay out the semiotics here it's not very fucking complicated mommy pyramid. well is that yeah. would that be propaganda doomer it i think it like would be I think yeah, very be, obviously. Yeah. I mean, is she a teacher or something, or it's, does she it's own a microscope? Yeah, you know, this is this is definitely not an idiot who's reading fucking Wikipedia articles summarized by Portuguese people for slave wages <laughs> on the fucking YouTube. That's definitely not what's going on. No, you're, it's like you're it's like you're in class. 
I think I think uh, what you said first is closer to the truth, Doomer, to be honest with you. <laughs> People try and defend this shit, and I'm like, there is no defense here. I know legally there has to be, because they have a defense attorney. But my opinion, no defense here. You can't do that to somebody and get away with it but they're fucking trying anyway, and I hope they don't. But anyway, I digress again. Point here to say is that propaganda is so pervasive that we can even find it in kids' TV shows. I mean, there is literally uh -oh, a show that is all about adorable puppies helping a person solve crimes, and the main character of which is a cop. But there's also more nuanced instances oh like Peppa Pig, which can't believe I'd ever be discussing Peppa Pig, but here we are. In one episode, officers visit a classroom and are met with cheers from the kids, Hooray, the police! For the rest of the scene, the police teach the class how to ride their bikes. They are the helpful, the involved adults, as black and brown kids are Oh my God, how dare a children's show show police being helpful and positive. Oh my God. The humanity, this is so evil, Peppa Pig, how you've broken my heart, Peppa Pig. I mean, we're supposed to show children that they should disrespect the cops, right? Spit in their faces and stuff. Yes. Give yeah. them the bird. Yeah. Defecate on their cars. Yeah. It's horrible. But no, if it, and also it's funny too, because these are, you know, Brit Bonger police too, who can't even shoot anybody. So They don't even have guns. They, yeah. they carry around forks. <laughs> yeah. They could give exactly. them a good beating with the nightstick though. There you go. You give them a good talking too. Yes. <laughs> receiving words. lessons from their parents about how to keep safe from police officers kids shows are giving a completely different lesson look at this yeah. <laughs> she wants a she wants a kids show that makes kids afraid of the cops i know run from well, the cops a, well that's another annoying thing because like if you just comply you, the chances that you're going to be fine are very close to 100 yes. percent just fucking comply fucking show your hands totally. and don't be a dick and be polite like like holy fuck when I was in when I was in college, I was a straight up criminal. Like you, fucking, I was like d dealing drugs and shit. And like the fucking cops pulled me over, I'd be sucking their dick. Be like, oh yes, sir, officer. Yes, you can see my hands. Yes, here is my driver's That's license, you're sir. White. Yeah, yeah no, if you were no, black, I'm not a you'd be in jail. Moron. Yeah, obviously, you'd be stamping license plates. Well, it it does seem like nine times out of ten we see these videos of like the police shootings or the police beatings. It's always it's almost always someone resisting arrest oh of course it's very rare that you don't see them i don't think <laughs> you can just right, beat somebody for no reason well, that's what's really like in the, in the jacob geller video he talks he's like oh there's fucking there were a thousand and fucking 50 fatal police shootings last year but like what he doesn't mention is that like in 95 percent of those cases somebody had a weapon and was trying to kill the fucking cops like yeah if you attack cops with a deadly weapon you get shot i don't like what I, yeah. I don't get it. Like, what, what do you Suicide expect? Suicide by I don't... cop. Right. Well, and she actually brings, that. she gives you an example. That's like, you're like, really? This is the example you're going to go through? Okay. Oh, here it is. The example. Police officers are always the good guys who are just simply there to help. Obviously, kids don't need to be seeing the reality of police brutality, but they also don't need to be seeing a sunny, watered down, unrealistic version of law enforcement either. How about we just keep law enforcement officers out of kids shows altogether unless their documentary is made for children, which that's a thing too, by the way, very- Oh, so last video that we watched, she was all complaining about the ban on CRT and gender identity in schools <laughs> for children. But now she wants a ban on police being talked about in children's programs. Okay. Right. There you go. She it's wants a stop, fair. a stop police act passed in California to stop the portrayal of police in children's show. Yeah. <laughs> Won't <laughs> teachers be afraid to talk about law enforcement? To yeah, run afoul listen, of the law and be incarcerated. Listen, teachers should be able to talk about, you know, the horrors of slavery and white supremacy and how all white people are bigots, but they shouldn't be able to show cops portrayed as anything other than evil. <laughs> this video seems very biased. Just a little bit. Are you interested in that? Yeah. Do you think it's her bias or do you think it's the person that wrote the script's bias? Both. Does she just hire an SJW? Like we couldn't really make these stupid scripts, but could we just hire a like a woke SJW to write st stupid shit, and we'll just? I mean, this is this can, is legit. We one can of the take few part times. in the grift. Yeah. I'm 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 willing to believe this actually is grifting, which is not something I say very often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
No, I mean, well, I I think she believes all this world garbage. I'm not. I mean, the writer of the script does definitely. Okay, here's the plan, guys. I got to start. I got to find out whoever this writer is. I know. That's what I'm thinking. We okay. just cultivate I, this writer. Well, I I got no. What I got to do is I got to start. I got to write some spec scripts for her. Some super woke spec scripts. In an email, I'll like make a fake email account. I'll try to like <laughs> try to like be her writer. <laughs> I crazy it myself. And then very slowly, I'll make the scripts even more wrong and even dumber and more insane mm -hmm. over time because just to see how far I can push it. We'll be covering before she them catches every on week. that it's like a parody. This is already parody level, though. It is. It is. Yeah. You think you think I could get a job writing for her just using ChatGPT? Probably. Yes. Probably. <laughs> yes. Yes, propaganda is everywhere in media. And as Amber Ruffin says on The Amber Ruffin Show. That's a crazy lady. Listen, I will never in my entire life believe anything that comes out of someone wearing that outfit. We covered yeah, her on one of, the, one of the shows we did. Did we? I don't remember this person. What in yeah, God's name crazy. is she wearing? I mean, she looks crazy in that outfit. We covered what her the on like the CRT she... show or something. She looks like plantation owner Willy Wonka. What the fuck? Yes. Perfect. Plantation owner Willy. KFC Willy Wonka. What is this outfit? This is the worst outfit I've ever seen. She's wearing like a sports jacket that has roses in bed embroidered into it everywhere. And she's got the Colonel Sanders like a uh, pink thing. Bow tie. Pink bow thing. Yeah. Oh. Copaganda is the most effective and long running ad campaign of all time. Portraying police in a negative light can come at a cost. The creator of The Wire even had to testify in front of the Baltimore City Council about the negative image of Baltimore depicted in The Wire. But- So wait, that's it. that example is a complete counterexample of everything she's talking about this totally. entire show. Yeah. Because it was funny because the complaint was, and I actually read, read into this, when the, uh, the guy created The Wire, he was trying to shop around for what city to go to. And he, when they first started it, you're talking to Baltimore. And he's like, well, listen, it's not going to necessarily portray Baltimore in the best light. And the mayor's like, no, 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 I'll be fine. You know, we like movies and TV shows. Everything's fine. And of course, the show becomes very popular. And then so then they get all this bad press. Right, so then Baltimore's the mayor's all, hating it. Yeah. And the mayor's all like, what the fuck? You're making us look evil. You know, we're trying to do all this stuff to clean up crime. And you're still making it look like we're crime ridden, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, I mean, we can move to a different town. I mean, the show will still be set in Baltimore and you won't oh, get any money shit. from production. But... That sucks. Oh, that yeah, sucks. Yeah. We're still going to be funny. making it look bad, but it's going to be in Canada. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They just kind of like swallowed the bullet on that one. But uh... Yeah, wow. It's not just fictional media that is running this long running ad campaign. It's the news that does it too. Now, before we continue on to talk about the news cycle, and then of course, obviously how all of this collectively is impacting us as a society, I'm gonna go ahead and place today's sponsor here because this next section about the news and, and propaganda is gonna talk about police brutality. It's gonna have some moments that are gonna be a little bit serious, perhaps even a little bit too much for some folks to hear at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a sponsor here. Give you a minute or two to- th Why would you, I'm just- <laughs> Having learned about how to make YouTube videos, it's just so bad. Why would you take 30 seconds out to justify that you're about to do a fucking ad read? This is like the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do. Everyone's going to click off the fucking video. Yep. What are you doing? Well, even worse, her justification is, I think people might leave. So here's the sponsor. <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, totally. Think about it if you want. You can skip to the next section, or maybe that's the end of the episode for you today. Either way, here's a sponsor. And hello, yes, today's sponsor is me. I just wanted to let you know that over on Multilevel Merch Shop, merch. the merch shop, if you didn't know we had one, surprise we do. We have a limited edition collection called the Natural Collection oh that is available God. now through the end of the month, and 50% of proceeds from anything in that collection are going to be going to the Rainforest Alliance. Well, isn't that nice? This limited wow. edition design is only going to be available through the end of the month, and we're taking Natural. it away, so make sure to grab it while you can. It's super cool, super amazing, and of course it features a very fun phrase, arsenic is natural, which it is, and then just wow. a cute little reminder that natural is not a regulated word in the US. So feel free to grab those while Thank you can. You. We've got shirts, hoodies, hats, stickers, cups, you name it, we have it. 
grab them while they're there. Multi-level merch. Dot shop. shop. Links are in the description box or the link tree link, whichever way you'd like it. Thank you so much. So it wasn't even like a real ad sponsor. She just why'd she have to apologize to herself? For Please know 30 that this minutes? <laughs> like the fuck no. I thought she was apologizing to the ad sponsor. Just she like, could have I like, if we if we go back and figure out how long she spent justifying the ad read, I could do her ad read in less time. Of course. <laughs> yeah. But I just if it's her, if her she's the sponsor. What the fuck? I guess she probably did that. I don't know. Does the ad sponsor look at the video before they actually tr drop yeah, the ad do. in there? Yeah, okay. they do. So she did that long apology trying to get a sponsor, and then nobody, there was no takers. They were like, "Listen, they could, why did they we just like cops." Out? I, I mean, I look. You guys are you guys are assigning a lot more thought and responsibility than I think goes into these videos. Okay. I mean, that's true. I don't know. On a strict timetable, I gotta turn these out section will discuss death and police brutality trigger warning death and police brutality brutality if that might be a little too much for you to hear at the moment In please the feel free to skip this section now can we skip sitch i feel scared <laughs> i don't know if i can take this oh no Copaganda doesn't just appear in artistic interpretations of reality. It's present in our everyday real life too. In 2015, protests broke out after a cell phone video was released to the public of the moment that Nicholas Robertson was shot 33 times by police officers while walking away. Oh but God. as the protests kept growing- Oh my God, he was shot 33 times while walking away. Oh my God, Adam, what a travesty. I bet there's no additional information that would change people's opinions on this, right? Well, he's not even running. I mean, lazy fucker, yeah. like there just walking away. Come I on, know. he deserved Gosh. it, <laughs> obviously. Look, if someone's shooting at you, you don't even have the common decency to run. <laughs> what the fuck is this world coming to? Exactly. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department decided to do something about it and released a new video of Robertson holding a gun. Oh, he's armed. That's why he's walking. He's like daring him to shoot him. <laughs> Shoot me, motherfucker! I'll shoot back. <laughs> right. So what? The, so what? She leaves out entirely um, is that the police get a call that someone is shooting a gun in the air and acting erratic. Oh, okay. Wow. The police pull up to the corner. They see the guy that matches the description holding the gun in his hand. They get out of the car. They say, "Put the gun down! Don't move! Put the gun down! Don't move!" The guy looks at them. So he's not like he sees them and he just starts walking away from them and he starts heading towards a gas station. Oh no. Okay. And so what do the cops do? Well, after shouting for him to put the gun down and get on the ground and do all this stuff and he doesn't do it as he approaches the gas station, they fucking shoot him because they of think course. this guy's going to go into a gas station with a gun. Or he's going to shoot at one of the gas tanks or something. I mean, right. geez, he could do all kinds of shit. Right. So it's just like, uh, and so they're complaining. Oh, and then they're complaining further because- the big complaint here was that they were continuing to shoot him while he was on the ground. And you can see in the video, he's crawling on the ground getting shot. That's because as he's on the ground, he's still crawling with his gun in hand. You know, oh, you is know, that him after everything. he got shot in this picture? He's still getting shot in this picture. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, well, they, it looks sh like they shoot him as he's on the ground because he never lets go of the gun. He's still trying to get him. He's like, I'll yes. fuck you up. Right. And so, okay. So that's what happened. So... Um, what she's then going to complain about, which is fair to some degree, is that the cops claim that he pointed the gun at them, which he never did. Um, and it turned out that the gun uh, was empty by the time that they, they got him. But, so he emptied his clip? Because he was shooting in the air wildly before they ever got there. Oh, okay. And so they do know that that was him that did that. Um, so, but she brings this up like his gun was empty. And it's like, well, I mean, what are the cops? How are they supposed to know that? Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. That's why you got to comply. Why didn't he drop the gun? Like, what the well, fuck is going on here? Th this is a pretty routine thing I see in coverage of stuff that involves the police is people will Monday morning quarterback and be like, well, why didn't they do this exact sequence of fucking cra It's like, right. it, you, like, it's a life or death situation with someone have, having a fucking gun. Like, yeah. and like you, you lefty fucking person criticizing this shit would say they're vastly undertrained. So yeah, when you're in a life or death situation, someone else has a fucking gun. 
Yeah, right? you're under And you're freaking the fuck out because basically anybody would be. Like, shit's right. going to fucking... It's a fucking dangerous situation. I don't, yeah. I don't know why people have so little fucking respect for, you know, just how fucked up things can get. Yeah. I mean, and this takes... All this stuff takes place over the span of like 10, 20 seconds, too. It's not like... You know, they're not sitting there methodically. It's not a not turn based RPG. They didn't yeah. hit the pause screen and then determine the actions they're going to take and then you know see what happens. You don't get a respawn if you go Gonzo, right? Soon the news followed their lead. They gave ample coverage to the police side of the story that he was a persistent threat who had been shooting before they arrived. <sighs> oh my and god! And slowly but surely the protest died down and everyone seemed to forget about the terrifying incident. That is, until about two years later, when even more videos emerged that utterly disproved the police's claims. Robertson hadn't shot the gun at deputies, and in fact, the gun wasn't even loaded. It had all been a lie. <laughs> it wasn't even loaded at him! Listen, right. the police officers should have used their Superman X-ray telescopic vision from 100 yards away to be able to see into the gun to, yeah. to understand that it wasn't actually loaded! Just see down the barrel. Yes. Just look on in that bar little barrel hole. Oh my God. Why look, did the no police. No bullet. How did the police not know that the gun wasn't loaded? Yeah. When the crazy person who was shooting a gun in the air and acting erratic refused to put his gun down. It's crazy. Lie developed by the law enforcement's public relations team and exacerbated by the news consistently covering their side of the story without doing any further research to confirm its truthfulness. Ironic. And we see this a lot. And believe it or not, <laughs> It is just another form of propaganda. Police all across the country have developed communications teams purely so that they can draft the right message and the news seems all too willing to rely on their lead rather than doing any type of background research to yeah. discover the true Major story. Ironic. You know, the story that ironic. might make the cops look bad if people found out. While some say that the fast moving nature of the news is the culprit for this phenomenon, others say that the police press operations nearly always put forth a storyline that makes officers' actions appear justified. And we've seen this. Oh, you th really? Really? The people that are literally hired by the police department to put out press statements are going to mm. spin it so that the police are always in a positive light? Oh, my. Sh wow. wow. Who, How dare they do who their job? Guess this? Oh, my God. How dare they do the thing they were hired to do? I know. <laughs> so, so terrible. <laughs> and actually, you know, recently, recently, when I've been reading all these articles about these police interactions, they do not seem generally pro police, like you know, seventy five percent of the time. And they really say like the yeah, press the, team the, does. The press does not seem to be pro police. Oh, of course not. Yeah. And then whenever they talk about the police statement, they always say like the police claim. You know, they always use language. Like oh, that, you're so. right. They do. Yeah. Allegedly, the police. Alleg the police allege that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Multiple times. It's so many times, we can't even count this shit anymore. Police are praised for their efforts, even when they did the worst thing, or sometimes even more terrible, like the case with Uvalde, nothing at all. Okay, are you oh, ready wait. for your oh, are you wait. ready for your brain to melt? Wait. She brings up Uvalde? Yes. Oh my god. Now the police are are guilty because they didn't do anything. No, no, it's worse than that. She's gonna she's wait, gonna try is, to just gaslight the fuck out of you, okay? Wait, is she gonna try and say that the news media didn't criticize the cops in Uvalde? They did. Yes, dude. That is what she's gonna claim. Oh my fucking god, dude. Really? What? After you, that tragic impossible. shooting took place nearly a year ago, the original story seemed to praise the officers present for their heroic actions. The governor, Greg Abbott, even made a specific point in a press conference to hail the quick response of the valiant local officials. In part, he said. As horrible as what happened was, it could have been worse. The reason it was not worse is that law enforcement officials did what they do. They showed amazing courage by running toward gunfire. And we can all have a very solemn chuckle because the news would come out that the police had not in fact run toward gunfire as Abbott claimed. In actuality, over 300 law enforcement were on scene that day more than the amount that literally defended the Alamo. And yet it took them more than an hour to actually stop the shooter. There was no leadership no communication, and no one ran toward gunfire, except for some of the parents. That That's who went in there to go and save children. The parents, not the police officers, because they were fucking afraid. Okay, so we're going to quote one thing that sounds like it was a statement that was made like immediately before anyone fucking knew anything and ignore every single other thing that got said yeah. for yeah. fucking months. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. crazy. There's no way it gets worse. How does it get worse? 
And I know there are some tasty boot munchers that maybe are still listening, though I doubt it at this point. Most of the yummy, yummy boot lickers stop at around 10 to 12 minutes, I've noticed. However, if there's one... <laughs> I just love the fact that she calls everyone boot lickers. Yep. It's so insane. One in here still that's going, but Blair, it's very scary, okay? Shootings are very scary. I know, I know shootings are very scary. That's why these police officers take that job with an understanding that it's to protect the citizens that they reside over. That was literally their job. They failed their fucking job. Like, I don't know how much more clear to make that. Okay, is it scary? Yes. Is there potential that they might be hurt on the job? Yes. And they know those things. But you know what they decided to do instead? They decided to just let the children become fucking Swiss cheese in that school because they were very scared. I have zero fucking sympathy for them in case you can't tell. Now, while some of the news about this abhorrent failure- Okay, so first of all, before she, this is the, like the worst part she's about to say, but um, first of all, who, who was defending this? I didn't see a single person in human existence defend the police reaction to this. Yeah, I didn't no one said. Yeah. No one said, oh, it was okay for the police to not go into the building because they were squared, right? That was not a word, no. that was not a sentence uttered by a human being. No. So I, this is just insane. And also everyone, it's funny because everyone called them cowards and shit. Yes. Man. They yes. were the punching they're still the punching bag of the media. And right. everyone. And everyone. Yeah. And it's interesting because it's like, you know, you have a guy with a gun, the police shoot him, police bad. A guy with a gun, police don't shoot them. Police, police bad. bad. Yeah, I know. That's right. what I'm right. That's the crazy part here. Yes. It's like you're making a complete video about how law enforcement can't be trusted and but yet you're saying, well, they were bad because they didn't do their job. They should have done please, their job. Please, please, for the love of God, tell me she brings up Jacob Blake later. Uh, no, she doesn't. Oh, of course God damn, I'm so sorry. That would be so funny. That would have been very fun. For them in case you can't tell. Job. Now, while some of the news about this abhorrent failure at Uvalde came out relatively quickly, it took about three months before investigators released the entire story, which was enough time that it seemed like the general population had moved on from it completely, which... Okay, so her fucking lying argument is that, you know, it took three months. It took three months for the truth about Uvalde to come out, and by then it was too late. No one cared. Okay. Right. So, so you know what I did? Uh, I did this little thing where I go on, on the Google machine and uh, I typed in, you know, Yavalde shooting and I limited the date to the shooting. 15 minutes after the shooting, right. we knew everything. And you know how many, you know how long it took for the every single newspaper article, for every single main publication that exists in this entire country to start shitting on the police officers? Okay. Mm -hmm. You know how, you know how long it took? Five minutes. <laughs> It took one day. Okay. <laughs> okay. You had the shooting, and then you had the day after reporting the shooting. Right. And then the next day, oh, why is the police response so low? A question is being raised about why the police didn't go in there. Like, it literally took two days. Yeah. It took two fucking days for every single mainstream news outlet to start criticizing them and questioning why the fuck it took so long. It took two fucking days. And Pyramid Scheme over here is... Pushing this lie that it took three it took three months of an investigation to find out about Uvalde. Because and I knew this was a fucking lie because when I was watching this, I'm like, wait a minute. I distinctly remember when this event happened that almost immediately this came into question about why the fuck the police didn't, you know, do anything about this. Of course. There was such a high body count. Obviously, people wanted answers. Yes. Yes. And I was like, oh, and I go and I look, I spend literally five seconds researching to find out, and lo and behold, I was totally right. And this person just making shit up. They probably have some cover in the fact that some report was released three months later, but it was released after we already knew everything. Yeah, but who gives a shit? Yeah, of course, who, cares? who gives a who shit? Who cares? It's, it doesn't matter. Lying by omission. Right. Or... This gaslighting. Oh, yes. you know that thing you remembered? That didn't actually happen. No one, after the Uvalde shooting, no one criticized the police officer. Very few people criticized the police officer. So what, what world? What world is this person living in? Look, as soon as the the Tennessee shooter came out, they were comparing it to Vivaldi. Yes. And going, those dumbass Vivaldi cops, <laughs> these guys weren't them. Right. Well, actually, you know what? It makes sense because what you said earlier, Doomer, that she doesn't like watch YouTube content. She probably doesn't watch the news. She probably doesn't... Do do anything no. right it was in a fucking bubble 
So she just takes for granted that like, well, if someone tells her that no one talked about the police and common scene Uvalde, well, that must be true. Cause what does she know? Right. Bro, straight up, Lance might not be the dumbest person on the internet anymore. Right. <laughs> That's why he's defending her so Stiff much. Stiff competition. Like, we got to keep this girl alive. <laughs> yeah. There's a, she's the only YouTuber dumber than me. This is so recklessly go. stupid. How do you read only 15% of police are black and not <laughs> realize how stupid what you're saying is? <laughs> that's like, that's a gotcha so bad that you could just play that one clip and all of her credibility is gone. Yeah, Humor, totally. How did she think that a highlight graphic was stolen from her? Yeah. Oh, she's piece of she's talking about how the fucking media stood behind the police during Uvalde. <laughs> it it, so it might be the single event in history where the media shit on the police the most. I'm pro <laughs> I would guess that it is. What like what other event would the media have shit on the police more than Uvalde? The George uh, George Floyd at first. Anyway. George George Floyd. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's number two. It's it's close. It's close. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is she's just, Rodney King. She's, I don't. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't like consciousness. Like what was going on during Rodney King? So maybe, but like Jeez, this is fuck. wild. This person is so dumb and so incompetent. Yeah. What believes that's a whole fucked up phrase on its own. But anyway, so what may have been a protest if all of this information had come out that same day seemed to garner way less outrage than it rightfully deserved. More often than not, police are portrayed as right. always being have been a pro the entire story which was enough time that it seemed like the general population had moved on from it completely which that's a whole fucked up phrase on its own but anyway so what may have been a protest if all of this information had come out that same day seemed to garner way less outrage than it rightfully deserved there you go there was yeah. there was there was, a there was very protests. little outrage <laughs> jesus christ more often than oh not, God. police are portrayed as always being right there at the right time. You know what's you know what's really fucking just chef's kiss, beautiful, fucking cosmic irony is that this is copaganda. It's just she's the fucking one that's making it. Yeah, it's yes. opposite. Like, what an accurately titled fucking video. It's just right. not it, it all in the way that she thinks. Like, holy fuck, dude, what mm. a brain dead fucking idiot. Yeah. Well, and you know what's even worse, Adam? If you read on the screen. She she has a scene in an article that says a sense of pride swells across the U.S. police ranks. Officers hail the quick heroic Nashville school massacre. Yeah, response. that's w exactly what I remember from the Nashville response. Right. They were beating up on the Vivaldi guys right and left. Yes, so every gave, article mentioned Vivaldi. Right, so she literally gives an example disproving herself wrong and didn't realize it. That's hilarious. Well, the editor did this. I don't. Not, I don't think she does. Really jack shit on these other than Maybe. voiceover. No, 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 no. Listen. This is what she does. She does that that highlighter graphic by hand every no, time. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> She's like print the CNN, print the CNN page out. I need to do the no, highlighter listen. graphic. It's not a plug-in. Okay. She literally takes a screenshot, right. she makes a layer, she masks out the text, yeah, and then puts that that purple uh lavender filter over the text. Right. And then does a manual mask drag. That, Every time. Okay. That lavender is her brand color. Right. <laughs> Bad shit. She spends all of her time watching Voss stream, so she has no time to do anything else. True. She does sound most out of it on the on the leftist podcast. She's the one that seems like not really knowing what's going on. It's funny that they invited her to be a part of a news podcast. When she says she doesn't even <laughs> keep up on what's going Wait. on. She fucking she's on a show with Lance and she's the one who doesn't know what's going on. Oh my god. <laughs> How yeah. embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Oh man. You, you know how like the the you know, there's like the trope of the girl will get like less attractive friends so mm -hmm. that she looks more attractive. Right. I mean you're right. Like they're like, listen, we we need to we need to hire or we need to get someone on our podcast that's like really stupid. Right. That's like yeah. when Rising got Brianna Joy Gray. Oh my god. Da, da, da. I think like I think Greyjoy is actually pretty smart, but I guess I'm in the in the minority. <laughs> yeah, on that. you're in the minority on that one, buddy. Well, she did <laughs> you have fun with that. I assume you did see when she utterly annihilated Matt Binder on Twitter. Yeah, she destroyed him. But uh, I, I mean, regardless of what she's smart, I completely disagree with like most of what she says. Right. That's what's interesting about her. 
And she's one of the most consistently wrong and stupid people on Twitter, but that oh, is, is true. She? I don't that follow her on Twitter, so you're in her Twitter. I'm doing beliefs. the right yep. thing and saving lives. Meanwhile, others are vilified and crime rates are over exaggerated in an attempt to make the views of law enforcement more favorable in the wake of calls to reform the justice system. After all, if it bleeds, it leads. And it's unfortunately true. We like bad news better than good news. But when the FBI crime data report is... Wait, that, that, is, that, that just proves her whole point. If the news likes reporting on bad shit and like the police fucking people up is bad, then they're going to want to report that. No, that, they like that though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's propaganda. They're not allowed to report that. Oh, don't worry. She's about to make uh, an even stupider argument. Uh, yeah, let's hear it. Okay. Fine. Released, you can almost always count on the news to take the worst possible statistic and plaster that bad boy everywhere, ignoring literally everything else. In oh, 2021, no. when the data was released, The Washington Post, New York Times, NPR, NBC News, The Hill, and The Guardian all had headlines focused purely on the rising homicide rate. But they failed to mention the other statistics that told a completely different story. Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. The infamous ripped paper. <laughs> Right. She's got a there quote from. She did the thing. She's got a quote from Salon, too, which obviously go. Salon is not partisan in any way, shape, or form. No. Unbiased Story. journalism. Sure, the murder rate did rise in 2020 compared to the year previously, but homicides were actually at record lows in the country, especially when we compare it to the homicide rates of the 80s and 90s. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> homicides are at record lows when you compare it to the time where homicides were at record highs. <laughs> right. That's what okay. happens. Okay. Highs and lows. Of course, they also didn't seem to consult any professionals on the subject, like public defenders, social workers, academics, or researchers. Instead, I put, it's just a stat you look up. What did you call up a social worker? Hey, hey, social worker. Do you know the fucking homicide stats? What the fuck? Is Listen, uh, I'm looking here? at this homicide stat. I'm going to need a social worker to come and explain numbers to me. <laughs> go down to the fucking just go down to the fucking police station hey okay. do you guys have the fbi crime statistics <laughs> put a microphone in there. what the fuck are you talking about put a microphone in their face hey can i get a comment on this stat i looked up what do you guys no, 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 think no, i want you to comment to explain it to me i don't Jesus understand this fucking christ dude this is painful they turn to the and let them spin the narrative to, as Scott Hedinger, the public defender and executive director of Zealous says, use their failures to demand more resources, funding, and more support. Because at the end of the day, it always comes back to the mighty, mighty dollar bill. There's more to this issue than just that. And we'll talk about that more in just a second. So wait, so if, if, cri if crime increases, it's evidence of them failing. And so thus they shouldn't get additional resources. But if they police people that's bad because policing is is you know oppressive mm -hmm. okay second but back to the crime statistics because there's more to that than most people know uh -oh. for one most cities don't even report their crime statistics to the fbi so they're automatically not the best judge of how the country is doing crime wise oh and oh, the definition no. of what a crime is in that famous report that was developed by you guessed it police chiefs over a hundred years ago. So when you hear crime is up, it's almost always referring to cities that are committed by marginalized people and almost never by the wealthy. Tax evasion isn't counted, environmental crimes aren't counted, stealing wages from workers, none of that is counted. Crimes that are included in that crime is rising narrative is almost always defined by crimes committed predominantly by the poor. Uh, oh my God. Uh. Why are they not including tax evasion when they talk about crime increasing? Why are they not including insider trading? <laughs> they talk about crime increasing in the city. I'm, I'm so fucking triggered. I actually know a lot about this, and that's just I'm so, I'm so mad. But, okay, first of all, first of all, poor people commit a lot of crime, so much crime that it doesn't actually matter if every single rich person in the entire country is a serial criminal. Poor people will still commit way fucking more crime. It's just a very, very simple numbers game, okay? So th th there's there's no way this point would ever make any fucking sense at all. But oh my God, dude. I I just, I, I can't. Did you I catch the can't. stock footage of like the person stealing a can of food? Yes. Like they're so desperate. Yes. They're putting... 
a can of food into their like one hundred and twenty five dollar overalls. But this, okay. Th yeah, right. But this argument, she, she's like, oh, well, they're only counting crimes that like marginalized, oppressed minorities commit. It's like, no, you fucking buffoon. They're counting violent crimes that people Yeah. give a shit about. They're, Yeah. they're counting murders and assaults and theft and carjackings and things of that nature. You know, the crime that like someone's walking down the street and then they could be victim of. They're not counting fucking insider trading. They're not counting fucking tax evasion. Okay. Right. For very obvious fucking reasons. It doesn't mean that those crimes should go without penalty, but it means when someone says the crime rate is up, they're referring to something very specific. They're referring to you're going to be walking on the street and you could be victimized, right? of course That's what they're talking yeah that's about. what people are worried about people are generally not worried about being victimized by insider trading Right. Oh my God, tax evasion. Why are they not including tax evasion in the crime stats? right Jesus, i'm so this worried person. i'm so worried about tax evasion sitch Yeah. this could hurt me <laughs> or wage theft. You're getting wage thefted every day, Adam. who who brought up the wage theft thing we were debating somebody and they were like getting all in our faces about wage theft We were. And it's just, it's just one of these things lefties bring up. Yeah. i know what we it was like the first they kind of caught me by surprise because i was like this is a ridiculous argument Right. why aren't we talking about wage theft No, it was. We watched the video. It was one of the or it's like in the thought. And not well, it's in one thought of those shoplifting crime videos. We didn't watch the oh thought you're crime right shoplifting maybe video it was on stream, yeah but he talks about it. They all there was whenever they talk about shoplifting, they always bring up wage theft as like a justification for right stealing, essentially. Of course, So, yeah. and then of course that kind of breaks into the whole like, well, how the fuck are you defining wage theft and how it's being measured? And it's like this whole like convoluted nonsense. So, They had some boss that asked them if they could take their break 15 minutes later, but they're and they're in. like, wage theft. Well, their entire ideology is that, it, I mean, if you are given wages under <laughs> a capitalist system, you're being exploited, like, by definition, a priori. right. So, right. And you got to do shoplifting just to get even. Listen, Obviously. it's a well-known fact that you don't need to pay truck drivers because people play the video game truck driving simulator Oh, God. on Steam. So obviously we don't need uh, capitalism anymore. We just have to figure out how to cook the real live trucks up to the video game and we're, We don't we we're don't need done. to pay cops. We don't need to pay cops because we can find people to brutalize minorities just out of the goodness of their heart. Right. Yeah, listen, you know how many kids nowadays play, you know, those first person shooter video video games, Right, right? right. Why don't those people just be cops for free? What's the Vivaldi video game look like? You just sit there on screen, Oh, twiddling your thumbs. Yeah, you just Look, sit at you're the menu playing a video <laughs> and you game. don't do anything. You're playing a video game in the video <laughs> game. You're right. just a cop playing Tetris on his phone. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I, I, I literally, I, I don't know what the fuck thought crime was thinking when he made that argument. That's one of the dumbest arguments I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. Do you think he shoplifts a lot? Look, if Probably. he gets arrested for shoplifting, are they going to find out that he has a YouTube channel and look at that Of video? course. Of course. I just imagine I, I, them like... <laughs> Your Honor, I would like to submit to the court <laughs> evidence, <laughs> evidence 5C. I know, totally. Look how it, this person thinks that because people play a video game where they wash cars means that they'll wash cars in real life and enjoy it. <laughs> right. Right. My client is obviously too stupid to have committed this crime with full understanding of the law. <laughs> he didn't know he was stealing He didn't... <laughs> <laughs> he He thought thought it was that his everything was free. <laughs> what a oh, dumb my dumb God. I think I saw that Destiny actually covered that video which is I mean I don't think he's covered thought crime before Yeah, I don't know. Well, when you say covered, you mean, you know, responded to watched the reacted, video on stream watched, and, and made like Well, three it's comments. well, it's <laughs> Destiny, yeah. So he probably watched it and paused every 10 minutes to say three things and then turn the video back on. Oh, you But... guys are haters. Dude, his reacts are bad. It's His like reacts straight are not up unethical. good. Yeah. I like Really? his debates a lot, but his reacts are not Doomer, good. you're calling It's Destiny pretty bad. unethical? That's not... I, I'm calling Destiny out. His reacts are straight up unethical. I don't think he would disagree with that either, by the way. Yeah. They're Really? pretty lame. They're pretty weak. They're pretty Pretty bad. weak. So. I think he would object to be calling unethical. Well, uh, probably, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as I Doomer's would imagine. doing it. I would imagine. K.A. the people the police actually target. Because remember, kiddos, white collar crime is apparently not real crime. Until. This is such bullshit. Look at the guy just counting his money here. Where do they Yeah, get that's these how. stuff? 
That's how it comes. That's is how that what a crime happens. Is that what a career criminal is? He just sits in an office somewhere counting fucking $20 bills. Oh, yeah, look, I'm so rich. Stealing all this money from the poor. Till it is, then, then it's crime. But it's not counted in those statistics because, you know, that would make everybody look bad, you know? So maybe the next time you hear the narrative about how dangerous cities are getting or how crime ridden the United States is, go ahead and take a moment to look deeply at that narrative. What are they actually saying? And There's a fucking application to track people shitting on the streets of San Francisco, lady. Yeah, totally. Like, things, like, things are not great. I don't know what to tell you. We see, I just, now, before the pandemic, I would never see on local news a murder like every single day every single day there's someone who got shot and killed mm -hmm. that's crazy well yeah but again i don't know if that's report i mean number well numbers have gone up and then they've gone down a little bit but you expect you... crime to, to go up after a pandemic ended anyway well it's extent, right? i i guess they no, are... you expect crime to go down because it went way up during the pandemic there is like it did it? i thought it was the opposite three there's supposedly around 300 murders a year so that is like one a day mm -hmm. so that's a lot yeah yeah not, not good but it doesn't feel like they were reporting those before the pandemic um yeah look that you they can only know. do on a local news broadcast oh you're right they can only do like five or six stories a night right look i only yeah, watch right. this stuff I don't, I don't watch the broadcast television i only watch clips on youtube I haven't I haven't watched the local news since Bill Clinton was president. Okay? Yeah, yeah, neither have I. Neither have I. But I assume that they still do like an hour long program of the nightly news, right? Right. And they can only do so many stories. So if they have, you know, twenty carjackings, they can't do them all in one night. They're like, just you know, that's a little carjacking overkill. Just give me the murder, the rape, and the. Home invasion, masses. right? <laughs> I'll take those. I'll take those three and we'll cover the rest. We'll just, you know, people won't know about. So that's what I, but it, it seemed like before the pandemic, they didn't have the murder and the carjacking and the, like there weren't carjackings on TV all the time. There just weren't. I think what happened with the pandemic is they let a lot of criminals out of jail because they were worried it was going to present the the pandemic was going to present a problem in prison mm -hmm. and now they're in the process of rounding all those criminals up because Maybe. now the pandemic's over got to get those guys back right. in jail so a lot of those guys and this is why you know if you're on your third strike and you know whatever you do you're going back to jail you're just going to fucking it's going to be mayhem right right you're going to do whatever you can do whatever you feel like so during during the pandemic lockdown, it was mm -hmm. really what we're talking about. During the lockdown, um, overall crime did drop significantly. Right, because uh, everyone was at home. Right, but homicides went up significantly, which maybe it's because people were around each other. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, overall crime dropped. Um, you know, obviously specific crimes dropped, like you know burglaries dropped because a lot of people were at home. The car thefts increased. Uh, drug crimes drop significantly. So okay. there's so overall crimes drop, but certain crimes increased during the pandemic. Right. So and yeah, people had to actually talk to their wives. But and now people are them, going apparently. out and interacting with one another, and that's causing a lot of crime. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. As it as it as it will, talking to people is not great. True. It's not bad though. I went out and talked to people last night. It was kind of crazy. Ew. In the Gross. real world, oh, <laughs> <You. laughs> I talked to people who. Why? Yeah, why? It was fun. I was actually thinking, man, I should go out more often. <laughs> it was it was fun copium. <laughs> uh, talking, I should do this more often copium. Talking to non-online people, it's such a you get such a different perspective. Look, anyone you talk to on the internet, you're basically talking to an online person, right? Who I mean, is, definitionally, aren't you? Know, yeah, who who do you have a relationship with online that is not an online person? Uh, obviously, my Tifa bot. Yeah, uh, well, that's like the... Yeah, chat GPT. <laughs> that's like exactly. the best example of... <laughs> that's the go. ultimate online. Literally not even really a person. Just an online <laughs> personality. 
Not but, the Batman chat says those were NPCs for your quest, Adam. <laughs> they weren't real people. What I mean, some of them did seem kind of NPC ish to me, but well, there you go. Uh, oh. Silence, you idiot for $20 says, Hello, such an Adam. Glad to see you cover Illumi over there. Uh, here, her Twitter gives a surprisingly good look to her uh, paranoia and insanity over time. As always, I'll be recapping the VOD at work tomorrow. Toodaloo, chats. Well, thank you, Silence, you idiot. Yeah, take care. Enjoy. Thanks for the super chat. Thank you. And she of course does our... seem to have a yeah. lot of uh, paranoia, so that oh, seems to be a driving force in her content. Of course. Uh, and of course, J Mac, our circuit father, for another twenty dollars. Thank you so much, J Mac. Says I've got a cop story that happened when I was five that still has me have an irrational unease around cops. But the point is, I recognize it is irrational. I'll take a cop over some tweaked out mofo downtown <laughs> every time. I completely yeah. agree. We had a run in with a tweaked out mofo last night in Los Angeles. And I oh, was no. like, You did? did? Wait, what happened? Oh, shit. I'm going to get stabbed here. Just some homeless person running around like yelling at fucking shit. It's so freaky because you see these reports on the news. That, I mean, they had one homeless guy that stabbed a kid in Target, went Jeez. into Target. <laughs> went into Target, got a knife off of the shelf in Target, and, like, stabbed a kid. Like some 10-year-old okay. kid, yeah. The fuck? So when I see homeless people, I'm just like, okay, am I going to get stabbed yeah. here? Is this like... Jesus Christ. But this guy was running around. He had literally, like, a 20-foot pole, some fucking pole. He's got a dick that big? No, he has, like, a pole, like a bamboo pole or something with a string on it. And a bottle, a plastic bottle at the end of the string, like some contraption for catching things. To catch local mice. Okay. But he's got he's, a band catcher? But he's running around and he has one, he has the the plastic jug thing in one hand and he's swinging the pole around with the string, like smacking things in the street. Like, and I'm thinking, I'm going to get hit with this fucking pole. This guy's crazy. And he's Believe standing him. between us and where we're going. Yeah, and Adam, the sidewalk, your city has fallen. <laughs> and the sidewalk is like only... It's only I so mean, large. Yeah, it's only like, what, six, eight feet wide? I mean, yeah. it's a it's a big sidewalk, but I'm going... He started walking in the same direction as us in front of us, and I thought, oh, well, thank God. The confrontation isn't going to happen until he... Right. But he just wandered off into the street, like wandered off into traffic, and we just kind of scooted by. We're like, okay. You're like, thank God. Christ, get my car. Christ, <laughs> crisis averted, yes. Yes. Uh, I, we, uh, so we were going to this gallery show. We saw him on the way there. We were coming back, and I saw him again. But now he's all chill. He's on the sidewalk, like playing games on his phone. He has a phone? Yes. He's like <laughs> fucking... He's on Twitter or something. It's like <laughs> he's like Listen, busting out a banger really, tweet. Adam, you thought this was a cra you thought this was like a drug out homeless person. This was actually a TikToker doing like, like Maybe a TikTok that's video. a thing. I was like, is someone filming this guy? Because it was yeah. so insane. Yeah. But he's obviously just a homeless guy because he's just camping out there on the sidewalk. Yeah, you're right. Chad is right. It was Gandalf, Adam. He didn't want you to pass. The guy was as tall as Gandalf. I swear. He was like six and a half feet tall. Adam, right. he wasn't trying to rob you. He was trying to help you. Yes. You didn't realize there was a Balrog right behind you, Adam. This was, I, look, I don't know if this was mental. In Los Angeles, we get a steady stream of people moving here thinking that they're going to be the next Tom Cruise. Like their ultimate goal is to get to Hollywood and become famous. And a lot of them come here. And like they have no plan. They end up sleeping in the parking lot and shit. So I, I've literally met people that have told me their story about how they moved to Hollywood and like were camping out behind some bar or restaurant, sleeping in the fucking alley. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy. Vinny says that that was him, Adam. And that was before they made it, right? <laughs> Vinny, I thought it might be you. <laughs> <That's> hilarious. <laughs> I was schizophrenic and out of my mind, he says. I should have took a picture because I could show you guys a picture then, but. Yes. Well, yeah, you should have. I mean, this guy just reeked of insanity. I thought, we're going to get killed. <laughs> Jeremy, this is not good. We're going to die. Uh, Red47.3 for $20. Thanks so much, Red. 
says her take on police funding is similar to conservatives take on social welfare spending. The system isn't working as intended. Take what funding take away funding. The focus should be on structural reform, but that's never proposed. True. That's a good point. That is a good point. Mm. I agree. Vinny says, Adam, Adam just stepped over me like garbage. Wow. I think he stepped over Vinny like that. Look, Vinny, our schizophrenic mascot. I would not step over this guy. That would be too dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we walked, we gave this guy a wide berth. Right. Okay. And where is that data actually coming from? Most importantly, what story are the people talking about crime trying to tell? Over the years, propaganda has had a profound effect on how our society functions, and it impacts a lot more than you would think. How does this impact society? You like the impact font? Media is one of oh, the most yeah. powerful aspects of how we develop our view of society, and it plays an important role in our development, even mm. when we're kids. So when we see propaganda mm. everywhere, from the news to major TV shows to kids programs, it can be a little bit more than just concerning. When we see propaganda on TV shows constantly, our ability to discern the truth from fiction becomes increasingly more difficult. When shows like Cops, for example, predominantly depict white police officers arresting people of color, viewers of the show are more and more inclined to believe that people of color commit substantially more crimes than they really do. In fact, a 2007 analysis of the Cops show found that nearly 62% of offenders who were shown on screen were men of color. The show was also far more likely to show men of color as violent and white men as nonviolent. This in turn gives viewers right. a completely warped color. The show was also far- What's up? You are just, more likely to show men of color that. as violent and white men as nonviolent. This in turn gives viewers a completely warped sense of reality. <laughs> it's a complete overrepresentation of the crime that is actually being committed in the real world, and it makes viewers develop an understanding that people of color are far more likely to be violent than white people. And it's just no one, no one make the joke. Just not true. <laughs> Let's look at mass shootings, for example, because that's always a fucking fresh topic here in the U.S. For some reason, wonder why. For the oh, last no. three decades, over half of the mass shootings in yep. the country were committed by white shooters. But no one wants to have that conversation for whatever reason. So wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, they always choose mass shootings because that's like the go-to statistic. To get whites. white people, yeah. To get white well, people, it, right. Well, it depends how you calculate it because when, when, they, when they say shit like, there have been 430 mass shootings this year and it's only April, which is shit that lefties say all the fucking time. What they don't say is that 300 of those are like drive-by shootings in yeah. fucking Chicago and shit. What so like, if you, cal if you calculate it that way, then, then the stats don't look anything like this. Right. Well, that's part of the thing too, because when you look, when I pulled up these stats, it said that since 1982, there had only been like 143 mass shootings, which seems way too low. So I don't know how they're calculating this uh, mass shooting statistic. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is, even with this statistic, blacks are still overrepresented. <laughs> in the, if you do the numbers, they're still like three or four percent overrepresented. Oh, really? In this uh, statistic, yeah. So wow, because so. it's twenty-five there. Twenty-five yeah. mass shootings. Well, it's not out of a hundred, but if you do the math, it's like eighteen percent or something. Right. Gotcha. No one wants to have that conversation for whatever reason. This type of media is also the primary example of law enforcement for many Americans. Only 21% of Americans who are 16 or older have ever experienced interactions with police officers. Therefore, the media may be legitimately their only way to develop an... Un Wait, does that include like getting pulled over for a traffic stop? I don't know. I don't... What was it? Has one percent have we, never interacted with only twenty one percent of Americans? Can we do a poll? But can we? I'm I'm so curious. Can we do a poll and see if, if people have interacted with police like a, one or more times in their life? I don't know that I've ever met someone who has never interacted with police. Yeah, I've interacted with police like hundreds of times. Yeah, thousands, millions of times. No one wants to have that conversation for whatever reason. For whatever this type reason. of media is also the primary example of law enforcement for many Americans. Only 21% of Americans who are 16 or older have ever experienced interactions with police. Yeah, that, that can't be possible. That's, it's impossible. Yeah, Unless no they're way. not including uh, traffic stops. Because I could, I could believe that 
only 21% of Americans have interacted with police outside of being pulled over, right? Well, here's the thing. There are like 65 million police interactions per year. So mm -hmm. like the idea, the, the, the stat makes no sense. There's Except no way. 79% of Americans have never had an interaction with police. That's pretty crazy. That's hard to believe. Let's see if I can find this. Yeah, that's, that is impossible. This is, this is like, this is beyond stupid. There's just no way. Right. Hmm. Did, does she have like a... This is a dumb question. Does, does she have a source document? She does, but it's kind of spotty in what it actually includes in it. So I'll see. She includes. What is? It? Wait, no, because it doesn't. No, this isn't. This is not in her source document. No, oh, it's not convenient. Because um, she made it up. Of course, she can't put the made no, up she, stuff. No, she in got there. it from somewhere. No, she just made it up. Well, okay, here, here's the first thing. I don't know if this is where she got it from. Here's the first thing. There's a report from 2018 that said um, in the year 2018, 21% of Americans had one interaction with police officers. Oh, my God. It year. has to be something like that. Um, in one year, I would believe that. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, over the course of a lifetime, everyone has an interaction with police. Well, I mean, I've, got, I've gone been a pulled year over with, at least once for like speeding or something. But I mean, I've gone a year without a interaction with oh, police. Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. so, like, okay. You have so, a like good I said, year, there's, six, there's 65 no million. There's 65 million police interactions, and there's like 300 million people. So, like, over the course of a year, that makes almost perfect sense. Yeah. But, like, over a lifetime, it's just like, it it's a, no a, an absurd statistical impossibility. Right. Everybody has an interaction with police. Yeah. Once in their lifetime. I, um, I'm just, I, I want a cinema sense counter. Like how many fucking times has she lied in this video? It's actually crazy. I did yeah. not expect it to be this bad. This is horrible. This is like worse than the woke one. Yeah. Like, this is like, you should be fucking like removed from YouTube. Like you should be banned for making oh, fucking now content. You're that going is this full bad. cancel culture on us. Come on. Why dear. the dude, this is just not. fucking, she just lies on the internet, dude. Fuck this. This shouldn't exist. This is propaganda full of lies. Just, she probably doesn't even know she's lying. That makes it worse. <laughs> yeah. It that means does. it will just continue. But at least she's not a bootlicker, okay? That's all that matters. Oh, yeah. Here. Okay. As long as you know, you know, not a bootlicker. Yeah, I have no clue. I can't find anything except for the one thing I said. I don't know where this number comes from. I can't find something similar. Source, I made it the fuck up. So, yeah, yeah no clue where she got this one from. But all right. Right. Most people never interact with police. Officers. Therefore, the media may be legitimately their only way to develop an understanding of police. And it's... Oh. And she's not, it wasn't just her misspeaking, which she do, clearly does because she's just doing one fucking take. This the essence hilarious. of this argument, the essence of this argument means that she meant exactly what she totally. just said. No, that she hilarious. actually believes 79% of people never interact with police a single time in their entire fucking life. And that is only, crazy. And their only understanding of law enforcement is from television. It's from fucking watching cops on TV. <laughs> what a fucking moron. How do you dude. how do you put that in a script and think, oh, this is a sound argument here? What the fuck? Well, I mean, listen, she she didn't understand that 15% of black of officers being black was not an underrepresentation. Okay. <laughs> She's not very good at, at looking at these numbers and saying, hmm, this doesn't make sense to me. All of this is just total bullshit. <laughs> Yes. Where's the fact? Oh, we are the fact checkers. Never mind. We're go. taking care of business here. Right. Policing. And that can be a pretty terrifying thought when we look at shows like Law and Order that show police committing illegal or immoral actions for the greater good. People who only see this Make develop an understanding that it's perfectly fine for Wait, police to break the law, law as long as they get the bad guy. Mm. Not only does this impact them if they ever happen to have interactions with police, but it also impacts their ability to understand the general problem with police brutality. And think about it. How many times have you seen a news story focused primarily on the background, criminal history, or badness of someone who was harmed or even killed by police officers? We definitely and very clearly saw it with George Floyd. How many times have you seen people say something along the lines of, well, if they didn't want to get hurt, they shouldn't have done X, Y, Z thing? 
Yeah, that comes from the understanding that police brutality, lawlessness, or immorality is a necessary evil to catch bad guys, no matter the cost. Or, you know, maybe they people shouldn't just fucking resist arrest, right? Yeah. Maybe it's not some complicated conspiracy theory about propaganda. Maybe people should just not fucking resist arrest, right? Is that is that a possibility? Maybe. Look, they run because they're guilty. <laughs> like, how many innocent people run? Zero. You know, it's funny. So in this so in this 2018 study, it actually says in 2018, 24% of residents experienced contact with the police. In 2015, 21% experienced contact with the police. Um, but it also says there's no statistical significant difference in the percentage of whites and blacks who experienced police initiated contact. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Though it does say there's a 2% higher percentage chance of blacks um, experiencing threat of threat or use of force. Yeah, because they resist arrest. Males were 2% more likely than females to experience threat or uses of force. I'm surprised only 2%. Only 2%? <laughs> I mean... That's kind of surprising. Well, not like... I mean, well, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of butchering it. Males, 3% were more likely than females, 1%, to experience threat or use of force. So. Oh. So yeah. that is like 100% difference. So, but anyway, interesting. In turn, this has completely undermined people's ability to call for reform. Who cares if the police are breaking the law and hurting other people as long as they're protecting us from criminals, right? <laughs> yeah, when cares? people call to defund the- This is not the argument that I see. Like she's basically making an argument that because of propaganda on television, they are unable to get police reform passed. Mm -hmm. When I see the reality being just the statistics around police corruption are so low that police reform is generally unnecessary. That's why they're unable to get it passed. Right. It's also, I mean, like, I, I don't know why the thrust of her argument is so much around like what the common man thinks about police, because that just doesn't really affect of course, whether or not yeah, police reform point. happens at all. Great like, point. Like you could, like, you could make some really good arguments that she's just not making. Like, for example, when you're in a courtroom and like the entire force of the U.S. government is standing behind the police officer, like that absolutely influences the jury in the police officer's favor. No fucking shit. Obviously it does. But like, you know, that that's like, like an People's actual perception of that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Like it's this is because they watch fucking NCIS. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's because cops are a fucking tool of the state. So obviously, you know they're supported by state power and generally defended by the hegemonic structures. No fucking shit. I mean th those are perfectly reasonable arguments if you want to make them. If you want to talk about police reform being difficult, yeah, it is. No fucking shit. But like, why is the whole video about like, oh well, people watch cops on TV, so they think cops are just like, ooh, who's silly? And when you know when cops fucking murder black people for no reason, oh, people are just like, oh, well, on NCIS they're fine. Like, what a dumb fucking arc. It's just so dumb, dude. It's it's because I can't this take was it. her experience. Okay, she grew up watching cop shows and bought into the propaganda, and now she's oh mad my god, you might you might not be wrong. This could be projection. Yeah, this is a hundred percent projection. This is like makeup for. Her old self. Yes. The police, the first arguments were, well, who are you going to call when something goes wrong? Manufactured crime statistics in the news make cops seem vital in protecting. See, now she's saying that crime statistics are manufactured. Yeah, because they don't cover tax evasion. Social order and lead to an increase in police budgets and a decrease in calls for reform or abolition. We've seen it in New York. This or entire... abolition. Yeah, just sneak that in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You like that? Just an example in there. Oh just my god! Just, it. just, just sprinkle a little abolition in there, just to show that you're completely fucking brain dead. Yeah. Okay, that's not the bit. good Jesus abolition. Christ. That's not the abolition of slavery, right? She's talking about the abolition of the police. Oh my god! <laughs> the, the fucking dipshit lefties. Oh yeah, let's abolish police, but then you know, if people act up, we'll just get roving gangs of fucking people to just go fucking murder people and get out of line. Like, oh my god, <laughs> let's just fucking replace the police with something worse. We need to no, 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 bring back gangs. lynchings. Listen, we need to bring back. Oh, no, you know what, what do they always say? They want like more social, you know, yeah. healthcare workers. They right? need more gender therapists. Listen, obviously, the police reaction at Uvalde would have been much better if instead of police, a they bunch sent, of gender therapists, <laughs> they sent gender therapists and a bunch of social workers to you know try to talk the shooter down. Right? Of course, 
They should have run into danger. I mean, I'm in favor of that. The gender therapist run into danger. Come on, that'd be uh-huh. great. Be excellent uh, television too. This this video is painful. I mean, with the Tennessee shooter, they might have helped, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> send, you know. In, send in the gender therapist, right? Who's read, that guy? I read that man. Manif- I read her manifesto the other day. Did you check it's that out? out? Oh no, it's not out. I made that up. I was like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, I was like, I know they were talking about. It. They said I know. they released it. Everyone think saying, it actually came out yet. Isn't it ironic? Like, if if that, yo, if, did manifesto drop yet, Adam? If that manifesto was a white supremacist manifesto, you know that shit would be out in 24 hours, right? Yeah, day two, you know, right. manifesto. But dropped. this manifesto, yes. makes leftist ideology look bad, right? Right. So all the media is basically saying, "Oh, this what this manifesto could end Western civilization as we know right. it." If people read this, they'll know that leftist ideology drives people fucking crazy too. <laughs> That's exactly what they're going to piece together. Mm-hmm. That's why they're keeping it under wraps. Oh, it's so bad. How come they always le- release the manifestos that make right wingers look bad? Why indeed, Adam? It's uh, it's unfair. Or past year. Well, I, though, to, Over... be, to be a little fair, though, I believe in a lot of the other shootings, the shooters are the ones that release the manifesto. Why themselves. you always got to be fair? So what, what? Look, I'm just saying. Even look, every. It's it's odd that the even the leftist shooter is so fucking stupid that they don't realize they got to <laughs> release, release their, their own, own manifesto. manifesto. <laughs> Is that, True. How's that? How's that no, for I, stupidity? I, I agree. If if they if there was even like a hint of this person being race motivated, that would have been blasted. Oh from yeah, day one of yeah, course. By the police, yeah, by of course. Involved. They're you're basically. But do you think? Okay, yeah. You, you don't think? Obviously, if it was race, based even if they didn't, I'm saying even if they didn't release the manifesto, if they had any whiff of it being something race related, they would have said it. Of course, and, they would have. Yeah. 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 Because it would make the Republicans look bad. Right. As it is, the manifesto can be hidden because they didn't release it themselves. And so they're hiding it. Yeah, we'll and see. over, news source after news source has released crime wave reports and the police budget has absolutely exploded in response. Now, by the way, it's about $11 billion a year. And even with that, they have exceeded their overtime budget by over $400 million just this year. And again, we're not even... Well, wait a minute. I thought she was against wage theft. Yeah. Okay. I guess not for the police, but yeah, whatever. Police just don't Halfway get through wages. The... Yeah. I also, at one point I heard a stat that was something like the police budget of New York City is like $3 billion or something crazy like that. And I was like, that's fucking insane. That can't possibly be true. And I looked into it and I realized like, wait, they're actually probably getting underpaid. Like these numbers are so big that they, they don't like... You have to put things in context and actually look at how many people live there, how many cops are there, right. like what's an annual salary, what are other expenses going on. Right. Like, eleven billion dollars sounds like a, this massive fucking thing, but you know, to pay for the police force of an entire country, I mean, it's probably not that bad. No, probably not. Yeah, especially yeah. in America. You know, population of you know, how many over three hundred million people? A lot of crime going on. Thirty six. Thirty-six thousand officers in New York City. God, that's a lot of people. Yeah, that's just a lot of people. Hmm. The year, how law enforcement is completely warped by the media, and it's definitely time for a change. After the George Floyd protests of 2020, some shows were canceled and others were reevaluated. <laughs> but we still have an abundance of work to do to get the propaganda off of our screens and our news sources. Everything isn't perfect. And that's especially true for the criminal justice system. And I guess she, she couldn't even find something like real footage. Did you, did you, like we have, we have stock footage of a fake reporter talking about a fake crime. And our news sources. <laughs> Everything isn't perfect. And that's especially true for the criminal. Breaking news. Like you can't even get like a real fucking, you know, I don't know, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, someone talking about this. You just got to get a stock footage of it. Yeah. Criminal justice system. And again, 
I encourage everyone to look a little bit deeper and do a little extra research when you just suddenly see a blatant statistic pop up like that. How about you do like some that? fucking research, Why? you fucking Why idiot? That? Why? Is irony. The... Wait, 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 wait. Irony. Irony alert. Jeez. You miss, you miss, listen, listen. Again, I encourage everyone to look a little bit deeper and do a little extra research when you just suddenly see a blatant statistic popped up like that. <laughs> so, yeah, irony. Fucking irony. A blatant statistic. I... Uh, man, it's too bad I don't make fucking hit pieces anymore because goddamn, I would have a fucking field day with this, dude. I would Do rake it. this fucking bitch over the goddamn coal. Bring it back. Fuck you, dude. You're Bring such a piece back. of shit. Illuminati is unironically fucking evil and stupid. That 21% of dead, Americans dude. don't interact with police seems like a just a dumb shit statistic. Yes. There's, there's like, there's been five in this video where oh, it's just yeah. like, you can't possibly fact check this. It's so blatantly on its face wrong. I don't even need to look it up. I just, I know that's like, that can't possibly be true. What the fuck? Hey, don't believe the media. Believe me, a YouTuber that stands in front of a graphic of science. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really smart, guys. Do your own research. Like, don't, don't trust don't, any statistics that you just see. I don't actually know if this is even a step above like flat earth YouTube. Like this is a very low bar of like critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course, yeah. People yeah. just eat this stuff up too. Did you see um, Owen Benjamin was going wild on Stephen Crowder? No, uh, well, yeah, but he's always doing that. He was really pushing flat Earth on Twitter yesterday. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, he is yeah. a flat Earther, right? He was going big on flat Earth. And I was like, all right. It's always hard to tell if flat Earthers are serious or they just know like, uh, this will get attention. Uh, Right. Oh, Owen Benjamin has some uh, issues. That's putting it mildly. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's funny, isn't he? He's very funny, but he's does not. I mean, think he's a little anti-Semitic, from what I've heard. So. Yeah. Well, it's like his his madness is what makes him funny. <laughs> yeah. Totally. His detachment from reality is what makes him funny. Yeah. Why is it like that? Why is the news reporting it like that? And for the love of God, please don't rely on TV shows to warp your view of reality. It's ultimately just propaganda. Or YouTube video! <laughs> I know. She's oh, basically man. saying that they're a biased source with an axe to grind, when she is the ultimately biased source with an axe to grind. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But with all of that being said, that is where we're going to end today's episode of The Corporate... Thank fucking God. <laughs> so she does one of these videos a day? She said today's well, like, like three a week. Three a week, yeah. Oh, so okay. like today. Not, still a lot, so a shit ton. I, I mean like you, you can still say today's. We should say that. In today's show, there we're gonna go. talk about Illuminati with a stress on the naughty because she makes up all kinds of naughty naughty lies in her videos. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I would never say that in a video. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> she has a video called romanticizing the holocaust no way nice. not kidding it's is like, she romanticizing the holocaust like look at this fucking thumbnail I'll, I'll put it in the discord is she she's actually romanticizing the holocaust now well, no, no she's probably complaining she's like schindler's list was a bad movie because it romanticized the holocaust oh <laughs> ouch that's kind of a crazy thumbnail it's got a a swastika and a star of David. Oh, isn't that why? Um, and you, yeah, what's between them, Adam? A heart. heart. Yeah, this is very Kanye. Are you this saying is, that she's this is Yay twenty twenty three right here? Yeah, from Twitter. I don't know. Okay, so what is so this? Is there really? She's saying that there's like a, a genre of books about like Nazi Jew romances. Is this? I've never heard of this in my entire fucking life. Is this real? I feel like this is not real. It's probably just Sunny V2 shit. It's like, oh, like one person did it. So like, it's a fucking big problem. Like, Oh, you know what it is? It's on fucking Dipsy. There's all these audio erotica books of Nazi <laughs> dude, prison guards. Dude, you could do a fucking Jewish Dipsy lady. plug. Holy fuck. That would be so good. She's like, you want to read about what I'm talking about? <laughs> Check out my sponsor, Dipsy. <laughs> that's I hilarious. I bet that's what's going on. And, un and probably untrue. She, yes. uh, all of these... All of her videos are based on some article that she found online. She probably finds, you know, three to five articles a week and sends them to somebody to turn into a video script. Um, She's just like churning out content. 
Probably. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. like, I'm turning all of these other people's hard work on these articles into a cash cow for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, a lot of other YouTubers do shit like this. They find articles online. I mean, all Tim Pool does is kind of read articles, right? True. Then he well, started he gives making... his civil war take, so you know. Well, then he started making enough money that he's like, "Look, I need other people to write the articles. Otherwise, I'm gonna sooner or later someone's gonna cut me off from the article." Right. I mean, if if you want to be a content creator past a certain size, like you, you really kind of have to rip up, you... other people off. Yeah, like it's it's basically impossible to maintain the, the need to create content by like actually doing shit yourself. That's why everybody turns into like a fucking reactor or like mm -hmm. people that turn into content farms and then like anybody who has a content farm is going to end up plagiarizing people. It's just what's going to happen when you're outsourcing a bunch of work to other people who like don't have time to do their job properly. Like why can't she at right. least pl plagiarize true things though? Why is it got all get twisted up like a crazy game of telephone? I mean, I don't know. Well, I, I don't it's think there's anything dumb. wrong with, you know, uh, reading news articles. Plagiarism? As long as, you're, <laughs> as long as you're adding, I think, as long as you're doing something useful. Adding value? Um, but yeah, adding value in terms of, you know, saying like, well, you know, maybe the article is not right here. Or I thought this was an important article that people were talking about. Like people value, since there's so much information out there, people do value a person who will cultivate, you know, yeah you know curate. cultivate and curate that's the word i'm looking for curate you know the kind of information that they should you know, kind of yeah. digest but obviously you can become very lazy with that yeah no and you can use it to put your own propaganda spin on which i think of is course. what's going on here right because what you select is going to be part of the bias obviously right anyway let's read some super chats let's do it Andrew Clark for two dollars says a team reigns supreme. Disgusting. Woo! Okay. Did you know dar that darn Kitta is a team? Did you know that? Kith, how could you? She Ace. made a she made a video. We can bring it up. Kith, why where would she, you do this? Where to she me? claims a team is like the best. Wow, a Kith. she claims a team reigns supreme. I can't believe this. Kith. She even says it in the video. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. My my heart is broken. <laughs> I can't believe this. Uh, I cannot believe this. Yeah, take said, your wrench away. <laughs> no, don't take the wrench. They made me promise that to make sure she gets to keep her wrench. Oh, hey, Gray, Gray Poupette is in the chat. I didn't even watch this video. He made a video like a month ago. We mm -hmm. should watch. It was um, it was titled OC and Actual Fandom right. Can't Stop Talking About Such an Oh, they talk, oh, watched, talking about us again? Wow. I watched part of that. That was a... It's hard to listen to those guys talk. It is, yeah. Because they have, <laughs> they have gay, effeminate voices. Is that what you're saying? Wow. Just, like extremely bad at, at expressing themselves. I couldn't even tell what the fuck they were trying to say most of the time. Oh, okay. They'd be like, oh, yeah, that, that Adam guy was a real piece of shit. Like, such wasn't so bad, but he's still pretty fucking bad. And then they'd like, they just like, I don't know. It was, we got to watch cringe. this. I, I don't think I've seen this video. Yeah, we'll watch it. Well, I don't know if watch on stream, but we'll watch it. Rola Tomasi is supposed to come on on Tuesday, and I've been Ooh, doing yeah. I've been doing some red pill reconnaissance. I should probably watch some of his videos. Huh? Well, I I don't. Do you want to talk before that? Because I sure. mean, sure. I mean, I don't know what his. I don't know I, anything about the guys. So. I don't want. I mean, I don't want to like I I we try to cultivate a show where people will wait where we can talk about substantive stuff. Without, like fucking green M Ms. Without doing the gotcha stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't want it to be like a big gotcha, but I do. Oh, yeah. Of yeah. Course, right. So, which is a, a difficult line to to walk sometimes, obviously, because some mm -hmm. people do get sensitive. Hopefully, Rolo is not. Does he talk about camp. evolution? Because I feel like um, a lot of the red pill guys have very bad takes about evolution. He does. Yeah. Okay. He's a big so fan of David Buss, who also oh, right. Adam is a big fan of. So. Right, let's just talk about that. I've been watching some of his videos and taking some notes. But, I mean, we can talk beforehand if okay. you want to talk. Sure. Or you can watch some of his videos. And... Well, yeah, if you send me some of the videos that you think I should watch. Okay. Well, he does super long live streams, so I've only really watched one live stream on David Buss. Gotcha. But in the live stream, he brings up, like, I guess I want to ask him about 
Nick Fuentes and Pearl. Because remember Pearl had Nick Fuentes on her show and everyone gave her a hard time? Mm -hmm. I think Rolo was one of those people that gave her a hard time. And she kind of told Rolo to, you know, pound sand. She'll have whoever she wants on her show. Right. And then the next day, she issued an apology for having Nick Fuentes on. That's hilarious. <laughs> so she kind of backpedaled there. <laughs> so, That's funny. Yeah. Which is kind of funny, yeah. So we'll ask him about that, but okay. sure. Yeah. We I mean, I I find the red pill stuff kind of fascinating because I have read a lot of the stuff that they're talking about. And mm -hmm. obviously I have a lot different view a lot of a lot my views are much different than them. Probably because I'm like, Well, I think Rolo's married, so I don't know. Some of these guys seem to be like obviously women. Because you don't hate women? Women hurt them. <laughs> Let's look. I've been hurt by women. I'm sure since you've been hurt by women. Women hurt everyone. Welcome to the world. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> the key is what you do once they hurt you, right? Right. You become a lifelonger. I'm going to get revenge on women kind. <laughs> right. Or do you? Or do you make a, a YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's part of the plan of getting revenge on woman kind. Right. Dimmer, obviously, a lot of people would make the argument that's the entire red pill movement. So, like, feminists hate men because men hurt them somehow. The red pill movement, a lot of people argue, is kind of the inverse of that. I know we'll get a bunch of comments from people. Obviously, we have overlap with every audience on YouTube. So, a lot we have people in our audience that would probably consider themselves red pillars. But I, I mean, I'm, I would like to really examine the red pill thing because every time well, it comes up, people disagree with what our takes on it it's you know it's funny too because like the red pill that first just kind of meant like anti-woke and then that kind of meant conservative and then somehow the pickup artist picked up the red pill right yeah which is super weird because like most of these red pill people when i listen to them they're not really conservative they're not really advocating for conservative things at all so i don't know how they snuck that label away from the the right the conservatives they're just like anti-feminists like that's part of what they're in for but you know i don't being, know i kind of feel like having a harem is a traditional gender role no that's wait have, well having a harem and being a pickup artist is so far away from being a conservative that's like or that's like super degeneracy by conservative moral standards yeah well um, contemporary conservative moral standards yeah obviously right uh, Become the Knight for ten dollars says uh, F R F R. Doomer did a good job today. He takes a lot of crap from the chat and me, so I wanted to give him some props. Look at that, yeah. Doomer turning it around. That's what there I like go. to see. Good job, Doomer. Don't worry, we'll talk about January sixth next time, and we'll just burn all that goodwill. No, <laughs> Doomer, <laughs> don't. Right the ground. Come on, Doomer, no. Oh, listen, when when there's um the Donald Trump January sixth trial, we'll have you back on. Oh, based. Is we'll that really happening? Post. Uh, I don't know, actually. I have no clue. Uh, Solid as Snake for five dollars says, you know what today is? That's right. George Washington took office as the first president of the United States of America 200 years ago today. There you go. Happy George Washington took president office day. Wow. Uh, Vladimir Dragunov for two dollars says, and I used to like her videos. Shame. I know. Shame, shame, shame. It's always funny when like there's a, a content creator you like and then you find out their politics and you're like, oh, this person's a buffoon. <laughs> right. It happens far too often, unfortunately. It does, yeah. And then I politics was a mistake. Politics was a mistake. We need to ban political conversations on the internet until we can figure out what's going on. There you go. Nice. A little anti uh, Calvin Pafford for five dollars says maybe it's because of my triangle fetish, but I always imagine her as being super hot. <laughs> Hmm. There you go. That's interesting. A triangle fetish. Oh, good. The pictures online are a mixed bag. Mixed bag, too. Right. You don't know what the dates are, so, you know, go in either direction. Uh, Testicle Man 1. I like that's an interesting name. Testicle Man 1 for 2,000 Hufflepuffs. Says, careful, guys. You don't want to make an 11 hour stream criticizing a woman. Also, S class is the best class. Boo. 
Adam collects the slime from slugs and makes smoothies from it. Ouch, that's painful. Wow. Is that true, Adam? No, of course not. You had the squirrels give you the squirrels? You're training squirrels to collect slugs for you? No. Okay. That's gross. Ugh. Uh, Super Stealthy Pancake for $5 says, It's rare that I catch you guys live, so I thought I'd send a little encouragement to my favorite sexist, Amy Team Rates of Frank. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Some super stealthy pancakes for you. Sweet. Uh, Candy X122 for $10 says, Something to keep in mind with any criticisms of Illuminati is that she's largely just a voice actress. There's a whole team of editors and script writers she uses, apparently. There we go. Yeah, we kind of figured that out. She's an empty suit, as yep. they say. Captain Mystery for five dollars says, "I don't know if Illuminati can be called a bread tuber. I like her older MLM videos, but then she got political and things went downhill." Well, she's doing three videos a week. I mean, she's got to she's got to go some direction, right? That's right. probably what why she went political is necessity. It's like holy shit! I've already Maybe. debunked every single multi level marketing scheme there is. True. What am I going to yeah, do? There can't be that I many of those out there, right? What's this Washington Post article? We can right. make well, a video not, out of this, let's not right? Say, let's not say debunked. She read a Wikipedia article about every MLM that exists. <laughs> True. Yeah, totally. She's playing That's, the game. She gets it. Uh, CT for five Canadian. CT, stop giving money to the stream. It says yeah. the YouTube thumb plug in doesn't actually work. It works off archive data. I'm tr it's trying to estimate what thumbs by comparing it to old videos. Oh, is that true? What is I that? mean, I don't, I, I don't know. The, I, like it works on new videos. I, don't know. I mean, it's probably not exact, but I think it's approximately right. What's what she's saying? She's saying it's estimated based off old data or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with an estimate. I mean, a 10% margin of error, who gives a shit? Uh, CT for two Canadian, stop! What Says is this, editing thumbs. Talk? Like the stream. That's true. Hit that like button. What about thumbnails? Are you guys talking about thumbnails? No, the thumb, no. the thumbs up. I was saying, I was wondering how many down votes she got on her. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not exposed video. Thumb up versus thumbnail. Yeah, right. Uh, Officer Buck Teresi mm -hmm. for ten Aussies. I used to watch that show. The time, the time. What was it? I want to say Time Cop, but it wasn't called <sighs> Time Squad or something. Mm -hmm. Don't these people do the exact same thing with, quote, white supremacy? They do. Of course they, they do. do. Yeah. Uh, Kenny X122 for five dollars says, I was always, I will again bring up the fact that I've lived in the South my whole life. We learned about slavery, Jim Crow, etc. We were taught history. Yeah, I know. It's almost like they can never bring examples of this magical, mythical American classroom where kids are not, you know, learning about slavery and all this stuff. It's gaslighting for to drive electoral politics. That's exactly what it is. Uh, Andrew Clark for two dollars says M and M's was a misdirect by Mars. They had other scandal. Oh, really? I don't remember what the other scandal was. I don't know, I don't child know. labor, probably. That's how they made those M and M's. Yep. You have little. You have to have little kids. You know, they need their little hands to like fit the chocolate in the little shells. M&Ms are secretly alien eggs and they're, the Omicronians are going to come. Oh, no. <laughs> Invade the Earth. Uh, Idiot Tosin for $5 says, Lance grifted not for money but for brownie points when he pretended to be knowledgeable about the Canadian native grave so he could pwn Lauren Southern. Oh, God. That conversation was so bad. It was. It was Jesus, fuck. I think that might be our most popular show. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Covering the Warren Southern. Who do we have on with us? We had someone on with us. Mahler today. and Rags, I think, both came on. Oh, okay. Uh, Dr. Diller for five dollars says, A team can't find his way out of cheesecloth and is very fond of this new brand of toothpaste called Hawk and Seal. No, Adam, that's not best class is the best class. Star. What's that? That video is number three. Oh, it is? Yeah. How do you know? Because I went to your YouTube fucking thing and I sorted by popular. What was number one? Was it or was it 200 stream or something? Uh, it's Sargon versus Vosh. Oh, of course. Lawrence Southern versus the Serfs, yeah. What was number two? 
Number Destiny two is Rittenhouse. Destiny destroys Wash. Rittenhouse. I couldn't hear what you said because Adam talked over you. Oh, I heard you wonder. It's like way down there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Anonymous Cow for five hours says progressives don't have a monopoly on progress. Woke progress is regressive. Anti-woke progress is liberal. It's all just fishing for dunks. True. That's true. Andrew Haskins for six months says, so what I gather is that according to the left's definition of woke, the right has become woke to the left's game. There you go. Point. I like that. Uh, William Stanley for ten dollars for Staley for ten dollars says the same way, quote, vaccinated now means emotional cultists. There you go. Uh, Christian Bale, thank you so much for being outside the simulation for 13 months. That's thank awesome. you, Christian. Yeah. There's, where do you guys stand on the whole dumber debate? Lance or organized chaos? Boy, that's a think, tough dumber? one. That's a super think, tough dumber? one. <laughs> you're, you're the expert in stupidity. Yeah. And Lance is pretty dumb. I mean, now we have a new contender. Yeah, we do. We have Illuminati. <laughs> yeah, Illuminati is definitely in the running. Right. This could right. be a three-way race to the bottom. I'm going to say Lance over Organized Chaos. He's, uh, not, not easily, but Lance over Organized Chaos. Really? Well, the, yeah. How do you make that determination? Lance is just not very smart. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, secondly, who has the most? Uh, who has the more annoying voice? OC literally sounds like the epitome of a cuck somehow. Or organized chaos, yeah, has a more annoying voice, definitely. Yes. Not, well, the thing is, like, I, I'm I'm reasonably certain that Lance at least cares about what he's doing and is like trying to not be a moron, which makes his idiocy all the more fucking delicious. Mm -hmm. But like, the thing is, Illuminati seems most likely to just be someone who is literally just phoning it in basically as hard as she possibly can. So like. It's hard to gauge whether she's that level of stupid. She she might just be completely lazy and disinterested. So that's a good point. Know. That's a great point. Yeah. She's right. just she's into the money and the clout and that's it. Not really into the substance of the arguments or anything. Yeah. The old uh, also, grifter. Also, Sitch, respond to my AI argument DM. <laughs> uh Christian was uh harassing. The poor Stephen Hawking's AI bot. <laughs> really? What happened? I didn't. He, he was causing trouble with AI of Stephen Hawking. There's so Stephen Hawking is on that website too. Of course, wow, Stephen they Hawking have is everything. on that website. They have everyone on there. By the way, President Sunday is not as stupid as Lance. He's just obnoxious. Like right. President Sunday is way more obnoxious than Lance, but he's not a dumb. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. That's true. Uh, As me for six, MYR says Ryan Gosling should play MLK in a documentary. True. That would be That's great. True. He yeah. should do the blackface and everything. Right. It'd be amazing. Uh, Vile Mango for $10 says calling the new Mario film an anti woke victory is like taking down your female co worker from, from dancing around in a dress to only high heels and calling it a win for masculinity. So they're saying that the movie is woke. Yes. A lot of people are saying that because they kind of emasculated Mario, but I don't know that Mario was ever did. like a, ma a masculine character. I don't think they emasculated Mario. I think they just hyped Princess Peach up too much. Yeah, by contrast. I don't think they emasculated Mario, yeah. yeah. We know who had the the big <clears throat> T in that movie. Right. Yeah, it was Pre Peach, President Peach, is Peach. <laughs> President Sunday is also one of the very few people in the space that I would legitimately call a clout demon. Like he was on my ass for the Vosh video and his whole, like the whole base of his criticism was that like Vosh was this horrible person and I had done such a bad job criticizing him that like it was going to like, you know, make better criticism look worse. That was his whole angle of attack. Mm -hmm. And then Vosh brought him on his show and he started sucking his dick. It was like, man, it was Whoa. fucking bad. That's hilarious. We got to get a, you and and President Sunday in a debate, Doomer. No, fuck you. Let's make that happen. <laughs> no. I can President Sunday was going to come on the show again. Yeah, I'm good. What do you what do you what would you debate him on just in case? I'm not going to I don't It becomes no. relevant for future no. episodes. No. 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 Why? Just, you know Why how much fun Why would I want to do that? We had so much fun debating organized chaos and and 
actual fandom. Why wouldn't you want to? I don't. I don't have fun talking to dishonest fucking dickheads on the internet. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> why don't you say that to his face? Why don't you, why do you talk him, to us then? Why don't you call him a dishonest dickhead to his face? Why not just put I, it in a debate? I have. I already debated him once. It was not a pleasant experience. I remember that. I'm not looking to repeat it. I remember that. I don't. You didn't call him a dishonest dickhead, though. Not to his face. I don't. I don't recall that. Um, I might not have in the debate. I definitely did after. Right. Just think, a debate would be interesting. What would you debate him on? Look, he's got I, a million terrible takes, Doomers. I, you could debate him on well, anything. Why? The, the, I, you don't. You don't change people's minds on the internet. He's fucking. Yeah, but stupid. The I'm not asking you to change. I don't. Your, I'm okay, not asking all, anyone I do to not change make, their mind. I do not make my life decisions about fucking making your <laughs> chat happy. Okay, let's get one thing straight. <laughs> you should, in, in fact, that's a, a, another reason that I wouldn't want to do it. The last thing I would want to do is indulge <laughs> your fucking chat and give you fucking content. Okay. Doomer, no. look, I think Doomer versus <laughs> President Sunday could be a big debate. I think people would like that. I think people would be interested. Mm -hmm. How about this? How about you and President Sunday debate me and Sitch on January 6th? You guys are both January 6th, Sims. Oh, my God. We'll take you both on. Yeah, How about you that? Want you to debate, debate him, don't you want to be on his side? Why don't you debate with him? Look, and you can be as obnoxious as him. All right, how about this? How about you give me half the Super Chats and a third of the ad rev for the first six months, okay? <laughs> Look at you. Six months? Not even just for the stream that you would be in. For six months. No, I'm getting fucking residual checks, bitch. For all the brain damage you're going to incur. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, is my fucking, this is my fucking pain and suffering. Okay. okay. Brain damage. I like that. There you go. I mean, everything's negotiable. <laughs> we, we can talk, sure. Oh God. I'm, I'm, I'm open I'm open there to negotiations go. yeah we're Jesus open for negotiations fuck, okay. too. look we're not look we're not Steven Crowder here and we're not going to be offended by some some term sheet okay <laughs> come on <laughs> how sheet. dare you drop these terms on me Tumor? yeah look we're, we're I'm going to take listen did you don't agree that? to terms I intentionally put forward to be unreasonable god damn it <laughs> <laughs> Look, you got to start the negotiation somewhere, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we know how it works. Okay. Yeah, we want to get this. We want to get this ball rolling. Come on, this will be good content. Right. People would like this. January six. Look, just send me, look, just we send can't me a lose, Sitch. If we debate January six, these guys are insane. Look, I want, I want a thousand dollars a month for three months. <laughs> I want, I want Sitch's docs and his picture. Somehow, um, somehow, what else it's do I need? Look, we're trying to negotiate you down. Somehow it's going up. What's going on here? Yes. This is the art of the deal, Adam. Your initial offer was bad enough. Okay, you so we're at $3,000 and my docs. <laughs> is anything else? If we're debating January 6th, you can't cite art of the deal, okay? That's oh, a Trump you also, book. You also have to admit that my Chappelle video was right. <laughs> oh. You've gone too far <laughs> now, sir. Now you have insulted us. How the money but it was okay but that's oh my god never now we have to make an exposed video luckily we're recording this call so we'll be able that's to true. clip all of this unsavory bits that's out. that's true I'm Wait, this, is, this is being recorded yes. yes of course you know what here's a good question why does doomer want my picture huh what is oh that's true what is, what is he's he gonna like spank picture? it yeah <laughs> he's gonna so spank i can it. blackmail you I can always count on Adam to not be subtle about literally anything. He's going to spank it to that picture. <laughs> like, oh, what is the subtlety here? Adam's like, he's going to masturbate all over that picture. <laughs> That's like no subtlety. Oh, I, look, give me a signal if we're supposed to be subtle. I, I find the shock is more is more funny. <laughs> look, comedy is about surprise. You have to surprise people. That's true. That's true. People are expecting subtlety. There you go. There you go. Yep. Okay. Doomer, tell us you're not going to spank it to the picture. I'm Promise gonna, us. I'm not going to get a fucking picture of Sitch and jerk off to it. No. That's promise. not going to happen. Promise that that's not I promise. I pinky promise you. Okay. Good. That I will not jerk off looking okay. at a picture of Sitch. I might vomit. Well, what did you what did you need the picture for? If it's gonna make you vomit, I don't know. I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear it was just innocent. 
<laughs> yeah, sure, for sure. Okay. All right, where are we at the super chats? Uh, speaking of that, dumb cumster for one month. Dumb cumster. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I like that people are putting uh they're putting buckets, Sam Cedar buckets emoji. Oh yeah. Of course. That's Doomer's new emoji. <laughs> He's moved from Murder Face to Sam Cedar. We haven't asked you to do Murder Face once, Doomer. The least you could do is come on and debate President Sunday. What you do is oh come on President Sunday. Look, we didn't even we didn't even slander you this time. <laughs> exactly. You've got it. You've got to do this horrible thing. You really it's one of the things that you would least want to do in the world. Look, you. The only reason I brought it up was because you brought up President Sunday. You've obviously got a huge hate boner for President Sunday. Not my favorite person, no. Right. We we found him on the show, and I mean, he insulted me constantly. I mean, they even right. made like a music video he, out of him insulting. He does me. that. He does that to everyone he talks to. He's like, he's a smug cut. But it's just <laughs> he's true. not a pleasant person to talk to. But it's just funny. It's just kind of hilarious. True. I I feel like he's doing it out of insecurity more than anything. Mm. It doesn't. You know it what? doesn't ring as you know. I'm super Chad secure. It rings as I'm insecure. Right. And knocking you down is the only way I can, you know, find any self worth. But what, what was kind of funny was like, uh, I I was like, this is like the this guy is like legitimately psycho. Like there's something fucking wrong in this guy's head. And then like, Chud was friends with him for some reason. So like in private, I was like, look, Chud, I'm not telling you who to be friends with, but this guy is there's something wrong with this guy. Like <laughs> you need to you need to keep an eye on this dude. <laughs> And then I fucking dipped from the internet. And when I came back, I, I like typed in Chud's chat. And the first fucking thing he said was, you were right about Sunday, dog. Oh, <laughs> really? Right. Holy shit. Sorry, I didn't listen to you. So he doesn't like Sunday either? No, they they had a huge fucking falling out. Why? Um, Why? I, I don't, I don't what remember do the mean? exact. Maybe it was over the. the exact you, trigger. It was like. Video. What are you talking about? So like, like. Well, he Sunday just does this thing to everybody. Like, I think I think what happened was Chud went on vacation, and then Sunday had some problem with Chud's editor. And to be fair, Chud's editor does some weird stuff, but like Sunday was like blowing up Chud's DMs, like demanding that he fire his editor and shit. And then Sunday started releasing hit piece videos on him. Um, oh, he got him and in like, the thumbnail. That's what he did. Yeah, he was like Chud Logic fucking won't respond to this shit or some shit. Um, he... And it was just it was just like psycho, and then like, and then and then they just had like a blood feud for a little while, and then they basically started ignoring each other. I well, that, I... that's not that's not true. Chud covers him for content, but I bet I know exactly what it was because Sunday did that. He shaved his head, so there's a bunch of pictures of Sunday bald, which is just not a good look. And I think he probably used that in the thumbnail because obviously Chud swings for the fences in his thumbnails, or who maybe his editor does. So. No, people were. I forget. People were talking. His editor DK. They're talking him for something. I don't know what it was. Right. All, I don't know. DK. Do DK has done some things that make sense. People are upset about. I'll put it that way. What? Okay. What? What are those things? Do you know? Whatever. Let's move on. I don't, okay. I don't. I don't remember exactly. I. I just know that I've. On. I know that on several occasions I've seen him say some shit, and I'm like, man, that's that's edgy even for me, buddy. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't know that I even know what he looks like or have seen him say anything. So I don't. Right. What's I up, Counterpoints? Counterpoints is in the chat. Oh, what's up? How's it going, Connor? DK uh, we makes the weirdest copaganda. fucking thumbnails in the game. Okay. Something that you know all about. Yeah. Is it true that 21% of people have never even seen a cop and have no, no idea no, no, what no. they look 75 like? 75%. <laughs> oh, yeah. 79%. 21% <laughs> have actually no, seen a cop. It's obviously not true. Look, 21% have seen a cop and been shot at by the cop and 79 percent 79 percent have never seen a cop in their entire lives and wonder if they even exist right Those never forget stats. that president sunday accelerated academic age into his villain arc that's true yeah he doxed president he doxed a academic Quack. agent quackers and i think he yeah. called the university and whatnot went like full psycho on him but yep. didn't President Sunday kind of do that on Not So Area Died as well? Start he calling tried. her employer and that's, stuff. That's what he does. It's not. It's not pleasant being the mm -hmm. person that he's obsessed with for the for the moment. Sure. You're like he, he just gets fucking obsessed. You like go around to every stream and fucking shit talk you, and make fucking videos. And it's just yeah, it's really funny. annoying. You know, Adam is over here. He's like trying to convince Doomer to go debate 
President Sunday. I'm pretty sure I recall you telling us that we shouldn't debate President Sunday the first time because he was going to like go psycho on us. Yes. You said that, Doomer? Yeah, I've told that to a bunch of people. He's oh, like, okay. like yeah, he's there's something wrong with him. Like, just it's not worth it. Just, just stay away. I mean, he seems uh, fine to me. He's obviously crazy, but I mean, <laughs> he seems fine to me. He's obviously crazy. Who's not? Look, you got to be a little, a little bit. I mean, I just think crazy people are a little entertaining. So, um, how's that working out for Destiny? Well, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Not uh, good. Cameraman 502 for two months. Thanks so much. Says she doesn't know who Matt Walsh is, but she, but she's what, what? she doesn't know who Matt Walsh, but she, what conservatives believe in. Th oh, but she knows what conservatives believe in. Think. Yeah. Okay. Why well, read national review when the editors can find randos <laughs> on the internet? It's true. Um, of course. There you go. To make their arguments, obviously. Right. Yeah. She just said she just learned about Matt Walsh. Yeah, yeah. What the? She living in a fucking cave? Jeez. Yeah, totally. Uh, she just doesn't read anything that isn't given to her by a slave to read on video. By her chocolate mine slaves. Yeah. Uh, Risu no Kairu for five dollars says Home Depot has a new commercial where a back a black family with no father paints the bedroom of a bisexual paints a bedroom and they draw the bisexual pride flag on the wall. <laughs> oh man, that's oh, uh wow. Okay. A black family with no father paints a bedroom. A uh, bisexual pride flag. Hmm. Fascinating. That's Check that out. Planes Escape Court for five dollars says everyone has forgotten about escapism and wants representation. Anyway, I'm giving out escapism every weekend. Also, pull up the Eminem lip pink, the Eminem lips pick I sent. Blaine send you a green Eminem picture. Maybe. Okay. Nice. Um, Fondue for five dollars says, <laughs> "Quote: See, you know it has an anxiety by the red marks on the arms." There you go. Thank you, thank you, oh. Fondue, for quoting that. Uh, what's your first thought for one month? Says in all this talk about what is woke and what's not woke, it's nice to know that jerky is not woke. Boys, what jerky are you having today? Me? I'm eating. Yeah. It's regular trapper. Like your old trap jerky. Old trapper, that's it, yeah. Right. And someone in the comments mentioned that beef jerky is one of the things that the old trapper takes with him as his provisions, not something ah, that he's that makes sense. catching, okay. yeah. Right. The old trapper takes his jerky. So uh so Sammy G sent um and I'll probably show we'll probably show some pictures of this on Tuesday. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Sammy G mailed me a package mm -hmm. that is the shape of a gigantic penis. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and when I opened this this giant penis shaped package, first of all, I'm just impressed that she she went she walked mm -hmm. this this lady can I mail this big Sammy black walked, dick? <laughs> he walked to the mailbox place and she handed them a gigantic, giant black penis right. package to mail to me. How much postage um, do I need to put on my cock? <laughs> yes. uh, I, I wish I had seen the face of the postal worker when they delivered it to me, because that would have been an interesting, uh, mm -hmm. interesting interaction. Uh, Your but so package opened... is here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I open up this package, and inside of it, it's just plastered with pictures of gay anime figures. What like about the kiss each other? What really? I haven't yes. opened mine, so I'm I've been safe. Okay, and then yeah, and then inside of the inside of it is a smaller package that is also dick shaped. Oh wow! Which is the which you got? She also sent you a dick shaped box. Yes. Um, but uh, so inside, and the reason I bring this up. Uh, is that inside that dick shaped box there were many mm -hmm. things, uh, including alligator jerky from Buffalo Bob. Nice. <laughs> so you thank you so jerky. much, Sammy G, for sending me some alligator jerky. But you have access to the alligator jerky already. Are you are you actually gonna eat dick jerky? I'm gonna eat alligator dick jerky, yeah. Wow. Do alligators cool. even have dicks? I mean, I feel like they don't. What do you uh, how would there be more alligators? They don't have dicks. 
What else would they do? What was a dick inside? I mean, you never really see an alligator cruising around with a dick out. Well, to be, I mean, how often are you looking at the underside <clears throat> of an alligator? Well, I mean, they do those rolls when they attack something. You, oh, okay. You, I, yeah, you, but there's I motion you see the dick like flying up in the air. I don't really, stay, I don't really look for the alligator. I, I don't think it, alligators have fucking horse alligator. sticks. You're gonna see flinging around. I know. Jeez, it's gonna be obvious. It's probably like a turtle dick. There you go. It's inside the box. Alligators have tiny dicks. Listen. How big is the beef jerky? There you go, Adam. I want you to Google alligator penis. No, you, uh, I'm not you going to do research that. Research it and get back to me, okay? J Mac, don't spoil this fucking beautiful conversation with your fucking facts about reptile dicks, okay? <laughs> Reptiles have Rep cloacas. Cloacas. Like I don't want to know what that is. Google a cloaca and do and describe it to us. It's I'm like not. A, like I'm. I'm almost falling asleep. I'm not googling fucking reptile dicks right now. Look at. Oh, thank you. Reptile dick. This? You won't have to debate President Sunday if you Google alligator dick. I th I don't have to debate President Sunday anyway. You don't control my fucking life. I mean, I feel like we kind of do. Okay. <laughs> he just he just takes it. <laughs> he just gives into it. It's like okay, you do. Anyway. Speaking of alligator cloacas, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, I know. Stug for two dollars. Speaking of speaking of alligator cloaca, Stug for two dollars says accessible underwear. There you go. Oh yeah, that should be the name of a, of a underwear brand, alligator cloaca. Yeah. So, a counterpoints: the problem that you have with politics is that you're not an extremist. <laughs> this is a serious crippling issue if you're going right. to talk about politics on the internet. Kind of point says, isn't a cloaca just a butthole that animals rub together to make babies? <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, I think you're not too far off. I think you're not too far off. Oh, uh, Doomer, I don't know. Did you did you watch when we talked to AI Tifa the other day? No. Were you guys having a competition to have the fucking worst stream title in history? I clicked on that shit and I was like, what the fuck is this stream? I fucking clicked off that shit so fast. There you go. Thank you. What do Adam. you mean? He didn't like the title. People loved it. Yeah, but um, so we asked Tifa the three questions, and Tifa correctly understood that owls were in fact birds. Who is okay. Tifa? From Final Fantasy VII. Tifa. You're talking to an AI Tifa? Yes. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> we got Sammy G to come on and play T Tifa. Tifa. We were trying to figure out the AI's politics. Stream content. Yeah. It was actually really. It got a lot of good comments. A lot of people thought it was really hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It was fun. You just mad that Tifa, the AI, knew that owls were in fact. What did I say that CT is thanking me for? Is she thanking me for talking about alligator dicks? CT, why are you thanking Doomer? You should never thank Doomer. For talking about cloacas? Oh, probably for insulting the stream title. Oh. There you go. I mean, I changed it after the stream, but I mean, right. we had really good views on that stream, so. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And thank you, of course, Sammy, for coming on and voicing it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I laughed really hard because it was uh, hilarious. Uh, Equishadox for $2 says, acknowledging acknowledging blank S's exist is a perk. I don't know. I don't remember if that was a reference to Equishadox. Wait, didn't I, didn't I click on the stream and it's like a Tifa title and then it's like you and some people arguing about Dylan Mulvaney? Yes. Yeah, we had Sean. Uh, Politically we had, criminal. Potentially yeah. criminal. Potentially criminal Sean, and we had Ethan Van Skyver on. Yeah. We're talking about a bunch of other stuff before we talked about Tifa. We talked oh, about okay. Tifa late in the game. Right. But we have chapters. You could just go to the chapters now. Yeah. Well, I was. I mean, I saw it live. Okay. For five minutes. Okay. Not, not even five minutes. I was out. I was like, oh, you're talking about Bud Light. <clears throat> Click. You don't, oh, you like Bud Light still, I forgot. No, I just don't give it, this it's the most irrelevant fucking stupid bullshit. Like, it, it, I, I don't, I don't know why anyone would care about fucking Bud Light. Like, it's such a fucking non-issue. I should have tried oh. to order a Bud Light Equal Shadok says, night. acknowledging trans people exist is peak Mott and Bailey. Oh, I, okay, gotcha. True. That is true. That is the argument, yeah. We're just trying to, no, we're just trying to acknowledge that they exist. That is pure mop and bucket. True. Oh yeah. Zombie, zombie squab for nine months. 
It says, woke is when no sleep. The woker you get, the less sleep you get. I recommend strapping them to their asylum beds until they get Z's. Good That's point. a good idea. Good They're point. definitely underslept. Uh, Jack of some trades for one month says, I'm trying to catch up on the live stream, but the reason she didn't get mad at, at small Joe is because there's no private property, comrade. There you go. Oh, okay. So she's allowed to crib, or he's allowed to crib rather from her. Right. Uh, Lucifer the Doberman, hey, Lucifer for two Canadians says, smash that like button. Smash it. Smash it hard smash. with your cloaca. <laughs> Whatever that is. Or, you know, your, your fingers are good too. Uh, okay. Darling for 1.17 euros. Thank you, darling. Thank you, darling. Uh, become the Knight. Thanks so much, Become the Knight, for becoming a one-month free will seeker. Says. Become the Knight says, kick Doomer with three murder face emojis. <laughs> murder faces. Three oh murders. Doomer, guys. Dude, fucking shot Chaser with this super chat later. Get fucked. I know. See, look, he was being nice to you. Oh. Uh, Warren Pod for Warren Pod the third for five dollars. Says quote NPC thinking is an oxymoron. They don't think. Period. Yeah. Coin. They just repeat talking points that they hear other people talk. Thank you, Counter Connor. Smashed like button. Did he? Yes. Okay. Cool. I I would feel bad if we brought Connor on because we're just reading super chats and wrapping up. I don't know if you. He can come on if he wants. I don't care. Bring him on. Okay. We haven't talked to Connor in a long time. Here, I'll send him. That's true. Maybe he'll, <clears throat> maybe he'll tell a joke or something. Maybe he'll tell us a story about when he yeah. assaulted someone illegally as a police officer, and the media covered it up. Oh, yeah, I, I do want to hear about that. That would be funny. I do want to hear about that time that you uh, assaulted someone, and then, and then the media covered it up because the media is very pro, you know, protecting you. Right. I do want to hear about that, actually. Connor can tell us what cities in America yeah. the cops are most likely to be able to throw a young black man out a window and <laughs> get away and, with it. And pitch it as he jumped out pretending. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, that's hilarious. That's right. It's only midnight bringing you guests on. True. Yeah, Connor, which state has the best training for uh, hitting somebody without leaving a mark? <laughs> How many times have you left someone in a car on the train tracks? <laughs> oh, shit. You're out for blood. Uh, Zero Fox for eight months says, I feel like I'm living in an alternate dimension where I'm watching an Aiden Powden video if Aiden were retarded. <laughs> what? Someone's Aiden. Go going after Aiden now. No, no. They're saying like that, like the pyramid scheme is like retarded. Oh, okay. Aiden. I got it. Yeah. Aiden Pyramid, Bites Her Style, and Law Beagles. There you go. Does he really have to spell out retarded like that just to be able to do it? Wow. Maybe. Yeah, you can't put you can't put slurs in the uh in the super chats. Right. Retarded shouldn't be a swear. Swear? Schwar. Excuse swear. me, that is an ableist slur. Swear. No swears. No swear, Germas. Oh, I was gonna bring uh, up the the Barbie, I forgot. Or the Down Syndrome Barbie. Down Syndrome Barbie, yeah. Uh, Eddie Bernays for six months says, God bless J-Mac. Adam is trans. <laughs> yeah, what happened there? I don't know. Eddie, what? I'm <laughs> trans now? It's true. I believe it. I've been watching a bunch of trans videos, and I'm, I'm literally... You're feeling it? No, I'm so fascinated by it. Yeah, you're feeling it. You're like, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm not. Why, why are you watching that. videos about trains? Trans... I watched a really good video that was by, oh, I can't remember the guy's name now. Isaac. H Bomber guy? Uncooked. I think it's Isaac Uncooked. Mm -hmm. About the five reasons he thinks people are trans. And I was thinking, I saved it to maybe watch it on the Tuesday stream. Because I'm curious what you would think of it, what your feedback on it would okay, be. Okay, interesting. You're very, very, I, what? I don't write about everything. No, you have like very niche opinions on trans. Stuff. That is not true at all. Oh, okay. Hello. Hi. So wait, wait, which, uh, which crimes am I copying to tonight? Uh, how many times have you yeah. arrested someone and then you left your car on train tracks <laughs> to get hit by a train? 
Nah, never. never. But um, I don't believe the that. the uh, there was the other story though that you were saying. What was it? Uh, sometimes somebody got their ass beat and it wasn't covered by the media. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have two stories for this. So <laughs> good. So, Tell us. Number one, there was a party called uh, Project X. And it was basically like all of the hood rat gangsters who wanted to have like a huge party. They made like this huge rap show, like quarter million dollar. Yeah, exactly. Like like they named it after that, and then they they did it. But it was like you know 2017 for some reason. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so they had a Project X party where literally like all of the Orange County and Lake County gangsters all came to the same spot at the same time and they had like a huge hip hop show and there's quarter million dollar cars everywhere. There's no parking. Everybody's getting into fist fights, getting drunk, all that kind of stuff. And like our city was not ready for this shit at all. And so uh, basically we have two gunfights simultaneously <laughs> like in the city. Oh, no. And then oh, no. while there's a gunfight, there's another fist fight going on. And there's so many cops there that are like, you know, Lake County, Orange County, uh, Mount Dora, Tavares, like all these different jurisdictions that are there. And so um, there was so much paperwork and so many fights and all that kind of shit going on that in one of the fights, a Lake County deputy just walked up to somebody, shot him with a taser, pulled the taser plug out, threw it on the ground and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> like, Face. And, you're, and you're supposed to do paperwork. You're supposed to turn on your body camera. You're yeah. supposed to do a use of force documentation. Nope. You're supposed to be the arresting officer. And he was like, I'm not doing any of that shit. <laughs> 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 Refuses to elaborate leaves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Literally. Um, so that was Pacing one. and running. Wow. He just said, yeah. stop it. Yeah, he, he was just like, ah, and then he walked away. <laughs> um, and then the other one. And you're laughing quickly. about this? Connor, this yeah, is it was hilarious. How dare so, you? No. Yeah, it was. Were you was. in uniform as well? Very funny. Yes. Okay. Um, and, and you then, were like, well, I'm I, not going to do your paperwork for you, bitch. People are not doing no. their paperwork, no, Connor, I didn't take and you were laughing? I, 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 I took one of the shootings, so I you know I, I did my job. Oh, you're like, I'm out of here. I got a shooting yeah. to commit to. <laughs> yeah, I got like a real yeah, I got a real thing to deal with. Oh, I thought you said um, you had a shooting to commit. No, well, you know, I wish. No. But anyways, so <laughs> the all right, so then the I now I have uh three uh two more stories, but I'll, I'll just go with the next one that was on the top of my head. So there was uh there was a barber shop where uh we were pretty sure that they were just dealing coke out of there mm -hmm. because there was cars pulling into the back like every 20 minutes routinely and like our mm -hmm. drug unit was there I'm just saying that because sure. they weren't white was it good You're coke, right or they, did you they guys were try puerto that? rican how do you know it was well coke? so they were they so it was supposed to be pretty good coke because <laughs> basically uh, i'll tell you how we knew it was good coke mm -hmm. um so somebody walks in there and the official story is he asked for a haircut and the guy says he only has five dollars. So they get into a fight and they tell him to leave. And he walks back in with a revolver and blows the head barber's wow. head off. Holy shit. And uh, so he kills this guy. Well, guess what? It's a criminal organization in the fucking barber shop. So they <laughs> will beat the fucking piss out of this guy. And one of them has like a cell phone recording of them beating the shit out of him. And this is like all like five seconds after this guy got his head blown off. And um, basically like one of the guys soccer kicks this guy in the dick so hard that he full on flies like four feet. Like <laughs> it was minute, amazing. Wait. Yeah. So, like, wait. And that's on the, cell phone. The, video? Like, wait, like, wait. Yeah. Okay. It's on, it's on cell phone video. And um, so hold on, Sitch, I can hear your question, but I want to finish it real quick. Well, you know no, I'm just how, confused like, about who are the know, parties here. The guy, well, there's, there's the guy who killed the head drug dealer. And then there's like other employees and vagrants hanging so out. The, the guy the that shot the guy is the one that got kicked in the dick. Yes. And okay. so, and, but he really so, thinks it's a legitimate business and he wants a haircut. Totally. Yes. Okay. And, um, and then also, you know how like, uh, soccer moms or whatever, like if their car is trapped under a car, you know, their kid is trapped under a car, they like, lift oh, yeah. The car up. Amazing yeah. strength. Super strong. Yeah. That's what they did, except for dick kicking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, uh, so, that one. So, wait, did that, did that crime allow you to bust them because of that murder? Uh, no, we, we just excused it. Yeah, we excused it. So, it, what do you like, mean you ex you excused the drug dealer because the guy got killed? No, we excused that guy getting the shit kicked out of him, and then oh. because there's like a guy with like half his head, you know, missing, and everybody's crying over his corpse. Uh, we didn't right. like you know like pull apart the back area to find out what was oh, going that's, on. Man, you should have fucked well, man, Connor. I know. I know. Shit. 
Well, yes, uh, hey, did. I wasn't the guy. I wasn't the guy. But they charge. didn't need to prosecute. The guy's dead, Sitch. Like the drug yeah, dealer the died. The organization's still and, around. They're still selling. And drugs. that's and that's the thing is they they slowed down after that guy got killed. Of course, he was the guy getting all the good coke. So wait, was that the, yeah. was really just a random fucking insane person walked into there and shot the guy? In the I, I I don't believe that at all. And like that was you think so it was the a funniest hit? thing? No, no, no. I think it was a dissatisfied customer. Um, oh, oh, okay. So he got bad the, coke. Um, yeah. But the funny, the funniest thing about it is they were doing interviews with like people who like got their haircuts there or whatever, and they're like, "Oh yeah, he was such a part of the community, you know, he was so <laughs> cool, this, that, the other." People, people, hold on, it gets better. So um, this is in Lake County, and but it's like adjacent to Orange County, and so they're like, "Oh yeah, people were coming from Apopka, and they were coming from St. Cloud, and they were coming from Orlando, and they were coming from all these different places to get their haircut." <laughs> like what they're really saying is that like people were driving like an hour and a half to get their hair cut in some strip mall barber shop that there's like there's ten thousand of them between them and their destination. Bitch, so they, they were buying much... cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> like, nobody wanted nobody wanted to tell her. <laughs> I would drive an hour to get a really bitchin' haircut. Okay? Right. And a and a dime <laughs> bag of blow. <laughs> Yeah, so the, yeah, so this one Puerto Rican guy was just giving bitching fucking haircuts left, right, right. and center. Yeah. Okay, um, sure. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, okay, and then final story, but I'll make it 20 seconds. Um, Lake County, because they don't give a fuck, uh, there was a stolen car coming out of Orange County, and they spike strip it. And so, like, and, like, normally you have to have, like, a violent felony in order to spike a car, but Lake County mm -hmm. doesn't give a fuck, so they just spike mm -hmm. it anyways. It was it parking crashes. tickets. Yeah, they, they'll <laughs> spike makes... you over a parking ticket, basically, yeah. Um, so it crashes into like one of the nicest neighborhoods in my city and they're all like, they, like there's like 600 rats. They pop out, they all run around, they go to the woods. We get the dogs out. Um, you know, are you we, allowed we... to say that? Are you allowed to use the term hood rats? I think like this is offensive. And well, I'm no longer a police officer, so who gives a fuck? Okay. Um, and then, yeah, but I feel uh, like YouTube is the one that's going to get mad, not the police. <laughs> why? There, there can be Hispanic and white hood rats, you know, it's not exclusively racist. Okay. Would you, would you call them super predators? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Hillary Clinton was paced. <laughs> like, like, Could you call them thugs? Yes, well, they, I would. Look, okay. wh but white people can be hood rats, right? I mean, it's there is no ra racial designation of hood rats. Well, I, it means I, I'm someone. Sure there's it means someone that lives in the. It means someone that lives in the hood. Okay, and is a rat. Well, well, anyway, so so we catch all like five or six of them or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, so a late a late cat or they're complaining. The people who we just arrested with inside a stolen vehicle who like fled, mm -hmm. they're complaining that Lake County Sheriff's Office uh, spiked their car. They're like, man, Orange County would have never done that shit. They just would have let us go. They just would have let us drive. And like one of, <laughs> one of the sheriff's deputies is like, welcome to Lake County, motherfucker. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. based. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of Lake County Sheriff's Office. They should spike ship more people, man. Mink, fuck these guys. So, so the serious thing is, they kill civilians because you you initiate chases and you chase them into the wrong person, and they accidentally hit somebody at like fucking eighty miles an hour. But they didn't they're, kill anyone there. They're supposed to, they're supposed to have a policy so not to follow them for, for that reason. They're especially in Los Angeles. They're supposed to just let the chopper follow them and the police pull back because they do end up killing people. Like we've had several in the yeah. last couple of weeks where they they've killed pedestrians. They've run over pedestrians and they die. Yeah, but then it yeah. but then it does create this like perverse incentive structure where uh, basically bad guys know they can flee, and right. it's just a numbers game of whether or not there's enough helicopters to follow them. Right. Um, and half the time there isn't. So basically, if you just run from Orange County Sheriff's Office, there's like an 90 percent mm -hmm. chance that they're not going to pursue. Damn. That's well, awful. we we have all the news choppers in Los Angeles that jump in the air and follow them, and they're not giving up. Like they, yeah. they got a news story going. They do so that they're sweet like, footage. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Nice. Exactly. There you go. You just need a profit incentive. Yeah. Yeah. The market solves everything, apparently. Mm -hmm. So, are you familiar? You're, I'm assuming you're familiar with Illuminati, right? Mm -hmm. So, I was watching. I'm actually a fan of Augie RFC. I, I watch whenever I need some drama while I'm going to sleep. I watch his shit, and I saw him talking shit about how she was talking shit about Legal Eagle and how she's a fucking idiot. And right. uh, basically, she thought she was too big for her britches, and she wasn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so we she did two videos we were watching. The first was about, you know, the whole no one can define what woke means. Uh, but then the second one was all about how there's so much cop agenda in mm -hmm. the media and in entertainment nowadays that just puts Based. all the police in a positive light. Based. And uh, I'm curious how you, as a former police officer, how do you feel about that? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I think propaganda is great. I think uh, <laughs> we need to bring back TV shows like Cops. Uh -huh. I think that we need to bring back like TV shows that are like Cops and Robbers and G.I. Joe and morally right. black and white. And you can have the interesting episodes where you consider the perspectives of the bad guys and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm all for state sponsored propaganda in order to get people to buy into the social system. As long well, as no, but you boot looking, right? Yeah, more more Paw Patrol. That's what I said. Do you think we, we need she cop... brought up? She literally brought up Paw Patrol. We need cops, Wait, but that? with like writers and producers, like normal reality television. Like, get the craziest fucking people in the world. Yeah, yeah. fucking yeah, get I'm, them amped up and that. sleep deprived and fucking go crazy. Yeah, we need some. Uh, we need some more like live PD and you know cops episodes mm -hmm. because it was it was great for recruitment and I think it was great for the public to see how fucked up the public can be. I think it was great to see what like you know drug addicts and homeless people and crazy people get up to and <laughs> you know I, I think it's I think it's a refresher. I, I feel like there's kind of like a cultural divide uh, between people now where you just have conservatives who think that cops can do no wrong and you have uh, progressives who think that cops can do no right. And I, mm -hmm. I just think the truth is obviously so much more mundane. Here's something that came up in the stream. We were trying to figure out how many innocent people are arrested and take a plea deal. A plea deal. Because they're um, just scared they're going to get railroaded. Yeah, it depends on what your definition of innocence is. Like, mm -hmm. do you mean that they like I so I don't really think like anybody's innocent. So, for instance, like I drank alcohol and drove a few times when I was a young person that I shouldn't have. Uh, I obviously partake in marijuana. And so did if so you at got railroaded, has, so <laughs> some relationship to the crime they're accused of committing. <laughs> OK, how about that? Well, <laughs> well, no, so, he's like this guy oh, probably so drunk innocence? drive at one time. So yeah. let's just railroad yeah, so him. Let's, let's yeah, hit him with on. a let's hit him with a burglary. Right. Um, <laughs> no, like, no, I no, I, I always typically I think that there will be something. Uh, I just think that it, it comes down to like uh, trespassing, possession of like uh, consum consumption levels of narcotics. That's where you're going to find the most like inky bullshit where the charges seem trumped up. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. So you're saying someone might have trespassed and it just be some sort of innocent thing but they're like we're gonna throw the book at you you're gonna get five years for this when maybe they just don't even deserve that it so so that it's more in like pre-trial i'm sorry to get all like fucking nuanced you no no do it but, we want to hear but like uh so for instance like homeless people or whatever they just get bounced around from place to place to place um as a matter of fact the city that i'm currently living in but i didn't work in uh one of their police officers was telling me that the their their primary work is GBPSE, which is go be poor somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's basically. Oh, I just like that. We should do that in Los Angeles. We need buses. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So basically, like, you just trespass homeless people so they move on pretty much. Okay. Um, so, I, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what can happen is if they get trespassed, so trespass after warning, once you have like a written warning and they come back to the same location, you can do a physical. And oftentimes law enforcement officers will do physicals on like trespassing homeless people because one, it solves a problem. Two, the business is happy. Three, um, you basically confiscate all their personal property and then you take them to jail, which is inconvenient for them because that could be 15 to 20 minutes away from where they were. And if you're walking on foot, that's a pain in the ass to get back to the original location. Right. Um, so so basically it's temporarily sloughing off a problem onto other people. And so some of these poor people, if they've been in and out of the system a whole bunch for drug possession and trespassing, they'll have racked up enough points or they won't be able to afford their bond or nobody will be willing to bond them out because they don't have any assets or anything like that. And if the system is busy, they'll just sit in jail until eventually they see a judge. And that could be weeks. Um, and then typically, they, since it's like a minor offense anyways, they'll be released. And then the, you know, the system or the cycle just happens again. Right. That's mm -hmm. not really what we were thinking of when we were talking about just innocent people. Innocent but... of crimes? Yeah. Nah. Like that doesn't, I, how does that really happen, right? Like, 
They get the wrong you, guy you, you for a crime. You literally have to have a dirty cop. You'd have to have a fucking dirty cop, like ignoring evidence or, or planting evidence. evidence or something. Well, I mean, wait a minute. I'm sure there are people that are wrongly, completely innocent, that are wrongly uh, accused. What of would crimes. they be wrongly accused of? Yeah, of what? Anything. Of what? what? I, mean, well, I know well. someone that was accused. Well, what's your example, of a then? crime uh, yeah. that they didn't commit? What and they crime? took a they took a plea for a lesser charge because they didn't want to risk it going to court. What was it? I'm not going to say. Oh, okay. Well, you don't have to say their name. Were they it was a serious were they, it was a, it was a serious accusation. Were they a rapist? Oh. It was a serious accusation for something they they did not commit. Yes. I guess yeah, it so, could be like a rapey thing. So, yeah, so I, I think a I think a sex assault is like that's actually maybe probable or like a battery. That's probable, but these things are already so hard to prove that they rarely get prosecuted in the first place. So that's where I oh, would have okay. to know what these people are talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, I um, gotcha. And then, and then here's the other thing too. Like, oftentimes with like these murders or whatever, one of the things that drove me fucking crazy was uh, CNN did like this whole like week long story about this guy <clears throat> who was like completely innocent of a murder, and uh, Georgia was going to put him to death anyways right mm -hmm. you can probably still find the story but the actual story is that he and another guy got into a car they were rolling around the neighborhood firing randomly into cars they shot into one car and blew somebody's jaw off wow then they went to like a some like donut shop or something like that they met up with another friend who was hanging out there and they all started beating up a homeless man and an off-duty police officer who wasn't in armor confronted them, and one of the three shot him in the chest and killed him. And then, uh, like, 20 years later, one of the guys at a party, so one of the three guys, uh, the guy who wasn't arrested, who originally said that this guy was uh, the trigger man, mm -hmm. he says, oh, man, it sucks that this guy, you know, is going down for this murder or whatever, but I got kids, so I can't cop to it. So they were using that as an ex completely like he's he's innocent. He's exonerated. Right. Despite all of the shitty sh things that he was a part of. Um, and they basically, of course, CNN completely omitted all of the relevant details. OK, so that is a case of an innocent person going to jail because they cop to a crime that they didn't commit. Well, well no, they weren't innocent. They were I think shooting. he was literally put to death. Right. But they were. They were, you know, driving around randomly, shooting into cars, blowing people's fucking faces off. Right. You know, participated so he, so in beating up a homeless be, person. Yeah. So he might not be guilty of the murder. Right. Um, but he did a bunch of horrible other, shit leading up to it. Right. And, and and that's kind of my thing when it comes to like murder or crimes of violence or, or some shit like that. Like simple yeah. battery, nobody gives a fuck about. You fucking you slap somebody in the face or you you punch somebody and there's no marks. Nobody really cares. Um, but like add that, like where somebody has bruises or their eyes are popped out or they got broken arms or some shit like that. People typically don't like make up who the perpetrator of those crimes are. And then if you're the kind of person who has like you got a whole bunch of batteries and a whole bunch of aggravated batteries and a whole bunch of homicides and a whole bunch of robberies in your history. At some point, I don't give a shit if you're getting caught for one crime because you've already skated on probably thousands of crimes that went un un uh, prosecuted. Mm hmm. Right. I suppose you scared Doomer away. He ran as yeah. soon as you got in here. Sorry. That's okay. Not bad. No, it's good. We're glad. We should, we should bring him more to scare him away. <laughs> it worked. He's like the popo coming. He scatters. Well, if you guys need to do productive things too, I can talk shit in between super chats. I know you guys are doing. Well, no, you know, we were because we were, you know, talking about all the the cop uh, stuff. That you, there's a maybe you'll know the answer to this um, or have mm -hmm. a better reading on this. You know, there was the case with the you know the black kid like knocked on the door and the guy shot him through the door yeah um, and then there was a bunch of cases kind of similar where so you know people would pull into people's driveways and get shot or they yeah. would shoot the delivery people and it seems like the news is reporting this like constantly and so the question yeah. was that i had was is this really like an uptick in these kinds of like random driveway crimes or is it just the like this happens all the time and the media is just reporting on it right now i think it probably happens all the time and the media is just reporting on it right now oh, um your intuition was correct such yeah, no, I'm, but I mean, obviously this is like vibes, right? I saw it in a dream. Um, but my, <laughs> my thing is like, you know, we, we obviously have dick loads of guns. I think we have more guns than people right now. A lot of states are like relaxing laws, which by the way, I'm in favor with like uh, favor for. So for instance, like Florida passed permitless carry 
And then it seems like, you know, Obama and Biden and all that kind of stuff, they love talking shit about like assault weapons bans. So that just like constantly drives like mass purchases Sales. of firearms. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And then and then seriously, like half of the people in this country don't know their fucking asshole from their own gun. So it's not surprising to me that like trigger happy, senile fucking 80 year olds armed with like, you know, either Glocks or AR-15s or fucking shooting UPS drivers mm -hmm. or black teenagers. Interesting. Yeah. The thing people worry about is getting in trouble with the law for something they didn't do and then having to cop a plea deal if you're innocent. But that's, you seem to think that's rare. I, I would need an example. So, right. so for instance, like if it was like, uh, there, there's drugs in the car and then they're under your seat and then it was like a felony amount and then you pop to a misdemeanor and you have to do a bunch of pretrial shit, you know? Yeah, sh I'm sure that shit happens, especially if you're hanging out with shady people. My right. solution there is don't, don't hang out with shady people. Right, right, um, right. And then if it's like a DUI where you were, you know, you blew like a point zero nine or let, you know, my heart goes out to you, but you know, the law is the law when it comes to DUI right. and then battery, I would say probably like domestic violence battery, like people having to go to jail and go to court for like, uh, you know, domestic violence and all that kind of shit. That's fucked up. But I would say like. 70 80 percent of the time those charges get dropped because the you know the original person isn't perpetrated so why or they, they don't want to uh commit to like going to court and getting the other person convicted um yeah. so while i'm sure it's like absolutely fucking traumatizing um i'm sure it's traumatizing to be treated like a villain and put in jail and held for a couple of days and bonding out and having this charge over your head i'm sure that's fucking vicious my heart goes after those people but at the same time like cops if there's physical evidence of a domestic violence battery, cops have to make a physical arrest. And the reason why that is the law now is because in the 1980s, cops used to say this is a personal matter. And then so many people were getting killed where right. cops were like going out over and over and over again to the house. And right. they just like let it slide, let it slide, let it slide. This is just now the law of the land. So, right. you know, I'm sorry. They're trying but to prevent murder from up. happening. Yeah, your 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 parents and your grandparents fucked up by beating the shit out of each other, and then cops never doing anything about it. So I think I'm sorry. the I think the bias tends towards people who are guilty as fuck getting off walking more so than innocent people are in jail because they got caught up with the wrong crowd or whatever. That that's my general impression. the The other ones that like I don't give a shit about, but maybe that's I'm unsympathetic is like getaway drivers mm -hmm. alleging that they didn't know that a homicide was going to take place oh, and then yeah. somebody and then somebody dying in the homicide and then they catch like a fucking right. felony murder charge or something like that and then they catch like 5 to 15 years I I don't really give a fuck you know like if you're if you're going to be like the accessory to like robberies and murders and all that kind of shit where people are running around with guns and you catch 15 years for that i, I don't really care i think this that's the kind of person that this illuminati character would call a bootlicker like if you yeah. if you're okay <laughs> with the getaway driver getting 15 years and you're a bootlicker mm -hmm. i'd rather be called a fascist like <laughs> like, I, like i would rather be called an authoritarian or a statist like well, I'm, I, I'm with you i like you know yeah. Give the driver life. I mean, I'm like, hang on. <laughs> I'm judge, hang him high here. Mm -hmm. Yo, I, I honestly, like, I, I think the system needs to split in a certain way where, like, the weed and the trespassing and the GBPSE and all that kind of stuff, like, that almost needs to be dealt with in a, I don't want to say, like, a more lenient way, but in a way in which you build, like, off ramps for people who want to get their shit together to not yeah. be continually punished by the system yeah but then when it comes to the people who are like continually committing violent crime you just have to fucking throw the book at them totally um so for instance like i have a you know my father-in-law he makes me look up some of his like shithead friends from when he was a kid and um i looked up this That's guy hilarious he's like what happened yeah. to that shithead he yeah, almost got yeah, me arrested yeah. half a dozen times yeah is Dude, he in he jail yet Connor. look him up yeah. connor <laughs> Yes, actually, the, this is 100% the conversation That's that we're hilarious. having. That's so, hilarious. Look, I and, got half a dozen guys. I <laughs> I went to school with well, they were probably in jail now. Well, I've explained to him, like, the clerk of court's website, like, 20 times. And he's uh -huh. like, I don't care. You do it. <laughs> so, like, That's hilarious. So, you know, 
so half of the times he calls me, he's like, "Hey, what's going on with the family?" And then the other half of the times, he's like, "Hey, there's a shit bag. I want you to look him up." He thinks <laughs> you're he thinks you're looking it up through cop sources, and you're just going to some open source website. Yes, and I told him that. I Hilarious. told him it's like, it's Dad, like I don't Orange have County any Clerk connections. I'm not it's a cop public. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but like. But it is like relatively easy, but you have to know how the court system works to find the right database. But anyway, right. but um, but the point is, like, I look up this guy. And so he pled no contest to robbery with a firearm. And then he did plead guilty to uh, burglary of a conveyance. And he got three uh, three hundred and sixty one days. So he, he served the exact like you can only serve one year in a jail. Mm -hmm. um, and then he got six months of probation and he got no contest on the fucking on the weapons charge. So they, they decided to not prosecute it. Well, according to my father in law, which bear in mind is a biased source, he fucking pistol whipped an old lady and fucking stole her car. And like, that's what happened. But he only got charged with these two crimes and they did no prosecution on the higher one. And so for me, it's like if I look at this dude's rap sheet and I see robbery burglary robbery burglary you know assault with a deadly weapon uh you know battery domestic violence battery battery again like if i see him like charged or no contest like 10 or 20 times that guy should get fucking five or 10 years like he shouldn't be on the fucking street so yeah you're like, like what's such a bootlicker jeez adding up all the crimes oh fuck him yeah i mean that's sort of my attitude too i i yeah, feel like I good agree. i feel like good people you know, that get in trouble with the law, they get, you know, scared straight immediately. It's the people who interact with the system over and over again. Like, you can't do anything with them. They're just like, whatever punishment you throw their way, they're going to be, as soon as they're out again, they're going to be right back at it. Well, I think there should be like, um, there should be an off ramp, basically. So yes, it, yeah. you, can, you can lead a horse to water, right? Um, but you can't make him drink. Right. So basically like yeah but if I you think miss it, the off ramp like 30 times connor like <laughs> well no no but but that's what i'm saying like there, there should be like very serious punishments for these kinds of crimes but then at the five-year mark we will offer you an off ramp when you're getting out which is basically like you know you you can go into group housing you have to pass drug tests we'll help you with employment we'll make sure that you can pay your bills we can make sure that you can get a decent standard of life like all that kind of stuff need some shitty counselor to talk to you about how you're fucking abused as a kid or something like that. We'll, we'll help you with that. And then you basically give them the ability to get like a normie working class life. And then if they reject that and they just go back to doing drugs or dealing drugs or beating people or shooting people, then at that point you throw the book at them again right. until they're dead. Yeah. Yes, indeedy. I'm, really? I'm very Singaporean. I'm very centrist civic nationalist authoritarian at this point mm -hmm. based uh drew the dogman for two dollars says typical cop everyone's guilty yeah including me <laughs> typical. and uh jay mac our surrogate father for twenty dollars thank you jay says hey connor tell your wife i've been enjoying our twitter back and forth we disagree a whole bunch but it's always stay civil give mrs points a follow y'all oh wow. i will yeah, Mrs. Points is on Twitter, and she she told me her like uh, favorite creators. I don't think she's got a Sitch and Adam show though yet. Oh, of course not. Otherwise, I didn't even I was gonna say be her favorite. I didn't know your wife was on Twitter, let alone debating J Mac about politics. Yeah, yeah, it's frustrating. She's J Mac is always respectful in his Twitter debates, which I admire because a lot true. of people are not. J Mac's always respectful about everything. Yes. Yeah. He's a good father. Uh, Andrew Clark for two dollars says, but eighty percent of people never interact with cops. Yeah, so Illuminati. Well, I couldn't find what she was talking about. She made a claim. She said only twenty five, twenty one percent of the entire population of America has ever interacted with a police officer. Which nah, that sounds like bullshit to me. Obviously, yeah. I mean, that's like who hasn't been pulled over like at least once in their life yeah. for speeding or something. He probably mean, probably means like in the system system or some shit. Like maybe like arrested. Yeah, like jail or detained or something. Or um, maybe I think it's like that's in too high. I don't think 21% of people have been arrested. Interact with cops. Well, the only thing I could find was uh, there was one statistic that said in 2015, 21% of the population had interacted interacted with cops that year. Yeah, I think she's taking an annual stat and extrapolating it out. It was a lifetime, yeah. So Yeah, which obviously smart. does not work. Right. 
Uh, Walkington Can, thank you so much for joining the Renewal Seekers. Dixon Butts. That's a good name. Dixon Dix, Butts. Dixon Butts, huh? Dix, Dixon Butts. Oh. For 11 Canadian. Because I used to watch her content years ago when she only did stuff related to companies and scams. Then she made a video about an industry I knew a lot about. And then I realized she was full of shit. There oh, you go. No. Classic. She did a classic Galman's amnesia on. Yeah. Aren't, aren't all the fallen creators kind of breaking your heart a little bit? Um, I mean, not her, because I never liked her, but who, yeah. who, who was the biggest hurt for you? Well, I, I okay, so uh, I'll just admit it. So Vosh going into the Fortress arc, I think, was like the worst thing for the Twitch and YouTube political debate space. So, you know, God, yeah, but God bless. You didn't like Vosh beforehand, did you? Uh, I like him personally. I, I think his politics are talk shit, but, oh, okay. you know, he can be funny. Um, and then, yeah, and then, and then just like all the dramas, and then I felt like um, ContraPoints' most recent video was a fucking miss for me. <laughs> it's gonna be a, a huge miss, mess. dog. Yeah, it was a pretty bad one. Yeah, it was yeah. frustrating. I mean, she's been on a downward spiral for a while now, so it's not really that. But like, but fun. isn't isn't this like the the tragedy of like leftist creators is that they like they they get enough money in order to be comfortable, and then they just sit in their little fucking castle, getting stoned, fucking philosophizing. But then they get brutalized by their own side so much that they seem to just like go with the flow eventually where they're like, fuck it, I'm making enough money. I don't have to do anything creative or anything that would like rock the the philosophical foundations of my viewers. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think it's fucking lazy after a while. See, you call that a tragedy. I call that a comedy. True. Yeah, that's no. content gold. I think that's hilarious. What? Where, well, hold on. But when they acquiesce to their audience, it's also fucking boring. That's the other problem. Yeah, I like. Listen, I like to see all these bread tubers just spiral into shittiness and bland. <laughs> fucking nothing. Garbage. Yes. Oh, did y'all lose I fucking brain cells it. on Thought Slime talking about how like people would do long distance road trucking for shits and giggles? I have still never watched that video, but I have heard Yo. every single person <laughs> talk about it. We actually, it I, br will, I brought it, it up this stream. Yeah. It will physically fucking hurt you. <laughs> like, yeah, no. Listen, like, uh, people play uh, people people play cleaning simulators on Steam. So obviously, you can you know people will wash cars without getting paid for it. Yeah. How no. can someone be that dumb? That's just because... like it's an impossible level of stupidity. <laughs> No, see, that's the thing is like it's not, and at the same time, they have this air of like academic self-satisfaction yeah. where they're like. Oh, economists! Economists are such fucking idiots, you know. <laughs> yeah, they uh, all know nothing. They, they don't. They don't know shit about shit, and it's like, all right, whatever. Like, fuck me. Well, that yeah. was the thing. Yeah, that was the thing too. That that gets left out. The beginning of that rant was him claiming he knows more than any economist. So the entire field is just bullshit because people play cleaning games. So therefore, econ you know, no, economy is bullshit. But, like, even if you just look at something as simple as, like, supply and demand, like, yeah. like isn't, no, that's, that's isn't supply and demand, like, intuitively true? Like, no. like if, if you just have one thing that both Adam and I want, mm -hmm. and we want yeah. it at the same time, but there's only one thing, wouldn't Adam and I naturally kind of compete in the realm of resources to try to gain your favor by offering more resources? I mean, if you believe in like capitalism or like a free market or like, yeah. you know, human interactions and co competition. And I guess my frustration, too, is like socialists and communists, they, they do almost nothing to calculate in like human selfishness and nepotism and corruption. Of course. Whereas I feel like capitalism and liberal democracy like has that as a tolerance feature of the society. Well, yeah, and this is what I always say whenever, you know, whenever we talk about uh, socialism is that it doesn't, as you said, it doesn't account for human nature at all. And that's mm -hmm. the benefit of, I think, capitalism, liberalism, is it tries to take our worst impulses and channel them in some kind of pro-social way. Yeah, and like, and like you can make arguments for uh, externalities and basically like the market doesn't always calculate the the negative impacts yeah, like course. you know right. pollution and selfishness and nepotism and dealing bad drugs and ignoring risks to certain medicines and all that kind of shit but mm -hmm. um I, I still feel like having a free market and then cleaning up the mess after the fact is infinitely better than having a command economy with just like s social authoritarians like people lance from the serfs in charge of the fucking economy. Uh, I would fucking kill myself. Command economy is impossible. 
Yeah. Yeah. You just don't have enough information to know what's going on. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, yeah. Was it there's that weird socialist claim that like, you know, you can run the entire economy off of like a computer from 1980 or something? <laughs> That's such bullshit, though. An interesting there's claim, a... but okay. How do you... I mean, the price levels are literally determined from people competing in a market. And wages make a giant part of that equation. Like, if you have an, a bunch of people that are making $100 an hour competing for goods and resources, and a bunch of people who make $20 an hour competing for goods and resources, like in the group where people make more money, obviously the goods and resources are going to be worth more because their perception of what money is worth is different. But if you, the, if you look at those mm -hmm. two groups, like what people do in their heads is they think, how long did I have to work to be able to afford this? That's the calculation that they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my frustration though, so some people have like referred to the modern economy as like a K economy. And mm -hmm. so basically you have people that like the, the working economy? class, what? the K, K mm -hmm. like okay. kilo, not G okay. like gay. Okay. Um, and so basically that. you have, yeah. you know, working class folks who are barely scraping by and right. even I on the higher end of working class on the lower end of middle class, you know, it gets a little tight sometimes. And you have and, products and services catering to that market. And then you have like an upper end. Yeah. And then you have the, the upper end. And so what's kind of happened with like a lot of people, especially like influencers or politicians or whatever. They figured out that, you know, just by pursuing the higher end consumers, they can get like a 10x, 20x return, whether it's, you know, finance, influence, whatever. Um, so as a result, there's like all the incentive in the world to only pay attention to the upper class and not pay attention to the lower class. Right. And I, I think it's a fucking problem. That just divides what I just said into two groups that don't really interact with one another. But still, like the price level is going to be set by wages. Like right now they're trying to drive wages down to fight inflation because if people make less money, they'll spend less money on goods and services and the goods and services producers will have to lower prices to accommodate, obviously. Yeah. That's fucking awful. <laughs> it is. It is. It is totally awful. Yeah. If that's it, literally it, it, what they're trying to do. If you're if you're on the pinch side of this, it felt like for like 30 seconds in the economy, labor had some leverage to be able to say, no, I don't want your shitty job. Give me a better job. Or if you want me to do this shitty job, give me better pay. And uh, that lasted for fucking three months. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. Inflation. Hold on. Yes. I'm talking to your favorite streamers, Sitchin Adam. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm going to mute myself real quick. Okay. Uh, let's see. Anonymous for $5 says, Your Honor, we haven't been embezzling. We just spent the money wrong. I like that. Yeah. It's a good excuse. Uh, that is. Uh, Philip Coggins for five months says, Barney Frank was lobbying Congress hard to pass the banking reforms Trump signed. Really interesting. So it's a little bipartisan banking reform, huh? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, CT for two Canadians says, do I change my name in Discord to Dipsy Do? Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. Did you read some of those stories, CT? I think she did. She listened to some of the Dipsy stories. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, Insensitive for five hours says, base DeSantis should build multiple prisons next to Disneyland. Yo, I'm get, I'm getting really scared for DeSantis. Actually, mm -hmm. it it seems like he's fumbled the ball a few times, and I was I was counting on him to fucking take the take the wind out of uh, Trump's sails, and he just he hasn't capitalized. We're gonna get a President Trump part two. How do you feel about that, Connor? I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get crazy. Listen, I fucking hate a democratic fucking economy, but I also like my, you know, chief executives of the Department of Defense to not want to like unilaterally withdraw from NATO. Uh, how do so, you how do you feel like a bootlegger to me? How do you feel uh, about again, Trump as centrist fascist, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when Trump is president and AI takes over? Like what is that? I, I don't know. What is that? I don't look know if like? I'm as worried about. I don't know if I'm as worried about AI as a lot of people are. Maybe I should be. Am I just ignoring it? Is Chat GPT really that fucking smart? 
Well, I don't know. I just I've I feel like I don't know. I feel like Trump is ill-equipped to deal with something like that. I feel like anyone yeah. in Congress is kind of ill-equipped to deal with something like that. Just things are moving so fast, and our our you know political system moves so slow that it doesn't really seem tasked to to deal with any sort of crisis. Well, that that's like the intention the intentional design of the system in a republic and a democracy is that like basically it's always thirty years behind what's actually supposed to be happening. Mm -hmm. But then the the changes are only made during a crisis or when it's important enough to the general population. That's a good point. That's a good point. So, I mean, people got off their asses when the pandemic hit. So if yeah, if, and, sh and and that's what I'm thinking. But a AI is scary as fuck because like apparently like um, a teacher had to ask Chat GPT if an essay was fucking written by them, and that was the only way they could tell that the essay was written by AI. Sure. So you know that that's impressive. Did the it art out? stuff is. Did it What's out that? then? I hadn't read that story. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It said like, yes, actually, in my databanks, I see that I wrote this. <laughs> really? <laughs> no way. Hilarious. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, that's interesting because then you have, you know, young people who, if we don't come up with some kind of like authentication system, they can offload thinking as if our population wasn't already stupid enough. And then uh, when it comes, but the art thing is revolutionary, at, at least for me, I don't know about you guys. Um, but for me, uh, as like a, a YouTuber or whatever, I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to do it. Um, being able to feed like lore ideas for art that isn't even created, but you can take like the thematic or artistic inputs from di different pieces of art and then feed it like a series of images in order to get like visions of things that uh, you would typically have to outsource to somebody you can't afford. Uh, that's actually pretty revolutionary. Yeah. That's the thing that I think could get out of hand quickly is people being put out of jobs. And the whole idea that you're going to be retraining people to do other things, I just, I don't know. Everything is so value added. I yeah. Just, I, I don't know. If the unemployment rate starts climbing and climbing and climbing, I guess they will respond the same way they responded during the pandemic. They, yeah, they might go like the UBI route and we're going to have to figure out like how those financial, con how, how do you produce goods for a general population and make sure that they have enough to consume those goods and actually have like a larger population either underemployed or unemployed completely. Right. Um, the, the only thing that I would point to, though, just as at least a, a historical example, which if I eat grow, I eat grow. Uh, this did happen in the late 19th century. Uh, basically, the industrial like 90 percent of people worked in agriculture like in the uh was it the 19th century or the 20th century i, I forget right. um the the 19th century and then by like the early 1920s 30s it was like they moved 10%. into industrial yeah yeah that's so, the thing i don't necessarily know if chat gpt puts 50 percent of the lawyers in america out of business i don't think like so. where do they no. move to are they moving to <laughs> no. the service economy? Like right now, there's all these unfilled jobs. Like they always talk about, you know, we have plenty of jobs that people don't want to do. They're all service jobs. But if you're an attorney at yeah. the low end of the spectrum and all of a sudden, you know, all the firms hire. I saw, I read a thing where they were, they're already working on some like chat GPI that knows all the law. Basically, it's like the, you know the badass that, that's what i was gonna wizard. say yeah there, there's gonna be there's gonna be like a five to ten year adjustment period where it, they're gonna be digitizing all the records and then feeding it into the ai and then designing the ai to feed a certain need so for instance like having um you know the ai do the job of like a paralegal clerk in order to research all the case no, law related i think that's to a like two statute. months away no they're that, well, all that stuff is that already is not fed two in. months away i'm sorry i was about to say it, it, you're i'm not talking about the private sector digitizing all the records i'm talking about like I don't think you would be I don't think you would be surprised how many federal uh, federal records are on like fucking PDF files that are unreadable to fucking like <laughs> to fucking computer systems and okay, would have to be okay. physically transcribed into the system. First of all, I, I don't think that that's the case. Second of all, uh, this, the point still stands like if 50 percent like if if the amount of legal work in the United States can be done by half the amount of lawyers. They're, you're going to get 50%. Per, either you're going to share the work and everyone's going to get a 
you know, a half work week, or you're going to have 50% of the force out of, out of a job. Those, what are those people going to do? They're going to be waiters and bus I think boys. The skills would sh- I think the skills would shift though, because so at least legal I'm thinking. Okay. I think the skills would shift because like you always need more litigators. You always need people who can argue in front of a court. You always need more public defenders, more, um, you know, criminal defense attorneys, you know, you, your, uh, prosecutors, you always need all these places that are constantly underserved. And so, I mean, okay. un- it, it might go to the, unfortunately, it might go to the public sector. That might not be the answer you're looking for, but it might go to teachers and garbage men and fucking, you know, people who maintain public infrastructure. Well, just f- from attorney to public school teacher, I'm just like, that's a huge downgrade. That's the difference. Sure. sure but then that's where it, that would be the importance of the K economy. From because the, for instance, well, I, from the, from the agriculture to this to this industrial was a step up though. Well, not for everybody and not for a few decades. Uh, basically there were, there were like a whole bunch of people who went and worked in like mills and factories, like the way you see in China where they're like basically slave labor who just feed machines all day. Yeah, but they're doing Um, that because the work on the farm is so brutal. They're like, this is a step up. I I agree with you that there's like a positive economic pressure. I'm just saying that like the wages and standard of living weren't necessarily that high. So like Mm -hmm. they wouldn't have necessarily seen it as like a massive material step up, but their kids did. Uh, because of all the abundant resources that were now available and as a result of the jobs that were available. Yeah. But the um, but when it comes to like the shifting of people into the public sector, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. It's a question of whether or not our economic systems are designed to be able to handle that. We like how, how do you how do you tax a private sector that fucking 50 percent of it evaporated to robots? Yeah, no, we should ask ChatGPT this. What are all the out of work attorneys <laughs> going to do when you take their jobs? <laughs> I'd be curious what it would say. Uh, Bartending. <laughs> yeah. Every everybody will be a bartender, a school teacher, a cop, or a fireman. Everyone. Dang. We'll ask ChatGPT what to do. Or a YouTuber. Or a YouTuber. And what if it say, says you're play fucked? video games? What if it says yeah. you're fucked? It'll listen. We'll have free energy, free everything. Don't listen to the robot. He's trying to make you think you're fucked. He's trying to take your job. <laughs> That's right. True. Um, caffeinated tweaker for two twenty. Oh, but to answer your question, I don't know how we got stuck on AI. I, I agree with your DeSantis comment. I I do think, I don't I don't think the not Disney, ready. I don't think the Disney stuff is a a good look. Well, he's he's not ready because you got to be able to take these kind of hits on the fucking chin and like when somebody asks you your foreign policy or whatever, if you're running for president in a year and a half, you can't say. Joe Biden has bad foreign policy, and then somebody asked you, well, what would you do differently? And then you don't have an answer. That's yeah. not acceptable. I didn't well, hear this one. This must be a new one. Yeah. This, yeah. this is like a month old at this point. Oh, it is? Well, also, okay. the thing with AP courses was really stupid, too. He should have taken, yeah. he should have taken the W, because they basically seemed like they changed the course for Florida. And mm-hmm. then... They said that they didn't because, of course, they have to say that. And then they got all pissy about it. And I was like, well, just take the win on that one. That was not smart. Yeah. Yeah. But then that that's where I get pissy with like these fucking so-called leaders who their their ego gets wrapped up into their yeah. bullshit. This happens every election cycle. There's somebody that's like ordained by the media. This person's going to be the nominee. They're going to be the president. It's like President Christie or or... Mm-hmm. Jeb Bush, you know, or Hillary right. Clinton, <laughs> yeah, or Hillary Clinton, exactly, Hillary Clinton. yeah. Then it's yeah. like, oh, everyone just steps in and says, no, nope, not really. Fuck so that, that could happen. <laughs> that could People happen with not... DeSantis. It could. I'm yeah. scared that that's going to happen because I was counting on him to be the fucking keep Trump in check, but apparently that's nope. not going to happen. Well, Trump Pe- is going to win the nomination. I think it's. I don't see how anyone can compete against him. Well, I, you know, it depends on how far they go with the indictment, right? Because if it's a fucking slap on the wrist, fucking civil suit charge or whatever, which, by the way, I think somebody was saying the timeline, like they, they'll be, it, it won't even be underway until the fucking election or the some shit. The indictment right? only helps Trump, no matter what happens with the indictment. The most, think the, so? The, the thing that would hurt Trump most is if they just dropped the indictment altogether. Yes, um, I think the intru- I think the indictment makes people more more anti-establishment. They think, that, they think the fucking swamp is going crazy. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah, they see it as 
as vindication of their swamp argument. Uh, I think, well, so some of the indictments, I think the New York one is stupid. Georgia? Uh, in, unless the Georgia, Georgia one has, still, he's unless innocent. the Georgia one, unless they have new evidence <laughs> beyond the phone call, I don't think that's going to help them. Have, have you listened to the whole phone call, Connor? I, There's so much wiggle room in that phone call. It's so yeah, obvious. I can't. I can't he's not so asking to manufacture votes. He's ask, He's saying, listen, we won all of these votes and someone hid them from us. We just need you to find the hidden votes. I, like, There's like, so, so much so wiggle this is, room. The, the, no, you have to understand like how much of a fucking whiplash this is like, you know, moving from the spaces that I moved back into here, okay? I know, because right? on the on the other fucking side it's Oh, you're no, right. He's 100% guilty. He knows what he's doing. He's a fucking asshole. He's a piece of shit. He knew what blah 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 blah. And here's the thing is like I'm inclined to believe that side because I've had people ask me for things without really asking me for things. As a matter of fact, I do that shit all the fucking time. I have you have work. you listened to the phone call though? Oh well, I I definitely listen to the part where it's like we're down by eleven thousand nine hundred eighty-two no, no. listen... fucking votes and blah blah. Fucking if you blah. listen to the whole phone call, I guarantee you the context is is crystal clear yeah see i don't know because here's the thing is like i also pad my shit with a bunch of other shit to make it seem like less bullshit right the 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 jury is going to listen to the entire phone call that's what i'm saying okay and what what i'm saying is so you know as much as i was like an authoritarian for like violent people or whatever i was also the kind of person who wasn't really trying to take you to jail Mm -hmm. so uh you know when when i go to search a vehicle if if my boss is on my ass and he's like, hey, you need to like search X, Y, Z amount of vehicles or whatever. And I walk up to, you know, whoever and I'm like, hi, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, appreciate you pulling over, blah, blah, blah. You know, thanks for the, de- you know, your driver's license and your registration. Everything came back fine. Um, you know, uh, do I have permission to search your vehicle? Bear in mind, you can absolutely tell me no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like me saying like as a cop. And as a salesperson or an adjuster or whatever the fuck, you are not required to give that additional inference. But you give that additional inference because you're trying to hint at them where they should go based right. off of your opinion. But and that, your tone of voice and body language and what you say and what you don't say is totally a part of that calculation. The whole purpose of that calculation, though, is in case it ever comes in front of a court of law to give you wiggle room because you have literally plausible deniability and you can't convict with with any... Like you, you take, uh, you present reasonable doubt immediately just by doing that. Yeah, but like, but see, most cops don't do that because they're really hungry to get into the car and they want their statistic and all that kind of stuff. Whereas intelligent, socially intelligent people, mm-hmm. what they do is they couch the correct answer in with a bunch of your choice, your choice, your choice, and a bunch of other information that seems like relatively benign. So, but at the same time, like, I mean, could you, could you kind of tell, like, with me saying, like, you absolutely do not have to allow me to search your vehicle? Can you kind of tell that I don't really want to search your fucking car? Sure. Not yeah. really. I mean, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Adam doesn't understand subtlety. Okay. We I was about explosive. to say, we might be dealing with internet autism. Like, yes. that might be a problem here. You, I'm just saying. <laughs> There's definitely reasonable doubt in the Georgia. Well, case. okay. Yeah, so, so let's put aside whether, you know, what, you know, trying to read Trump's mind to determine what the, the goal is. Yeah. What I do agree with here, and I, I agree with Adam, I think there's a lot of wiggle room in that phone call that I don't think a jury will convict on. Of course so not. I, unless, I think they made some claim they had additional evidence, but, you know, unless they do, I, I don't think they're going to get a, I don't think they're going to get anything. Would the, Trump slide him a note saying, find the fucking votes. He did, yes. Exactly. <laughs> with a little picture of a guy with a knife in his back and blood drips coming down. No, he sent, okay, he, can I, he slid, can him, I wait, he slid him a note that said, did you find the, the votes? Circle, yes or no. <laughs> also, do you like me? <laughs> Yo, That's what can, can I Can I share a frustration with uh, Destiny and DGG or whatever? Is like sure. that's the standard of evidence they are often asking for in arguments. They're like, of course, well, where, where's the where's the email where they say explicitly that they're doing this? And it's like, bro, that doesn't fucking exist because anybody worth their goddamn salt as a criminal or an intel operative wouldn't put the explicit nefarious game plan in their fucking written telecommunications, you fucking asshole. 
We but, got uh, we got into this over the FBI stuff. But where this originally began from was whether or yeah. not this Georgia investigation was going to impede Trump's ability to run for president, which I just, yeah. I don't think so. Like none of these investigations are going to stand in the way of him taking the nomination. And I, you know, well, by from, my... from, from his ego side. Yeah. I think the only thing that can uh, stop Trump is probably like a serious medical condition. I think that's the only thing that could stop. If by Bi if Biden doesn't even like if Biden somehow loses the nomination to Robert Kennedy or whatever. Robert Kennedy well, could just annihilate Trump. I think people I, don't want yeah. Trump if they have an alternative like anything reasonable. Well, I think with Biden, so the problem with Biden is like he he's basically a fucking corpse presiding over a bad economy. Yeah, so his that, wife is going to be in charge. Yeah, so yeah, so that that's fucking tough. That I can't I can't tell you which way it's going to go. I have no fucking idea. That anyway. would be, uh, I don't know. That'd be interesting. RFK versus Trump. That would be interesting. I don't, we might I, I don't see know that. If, that I don't know. Kennedy I feel like, name like, recognition is pretty strong. It is, but I'm not sure. That, you know, he's been so anti-vax for so long. I don't know if the Democrats' voting base would go for that. Probably not. So I oh, think really? that is going to hurt him. They love their jabs. Yeah, I mean, no, even pre-COVID, he, he's been very anti-vaccine for a while now. And I just... I don't, that's so Im not popular among Democrats that I'd be skeptical that he could come back. He's an anti-vaxxer? Wow. Yeah, I was about to like say, what is he's he famous for. Anti-vax or like pro Like vaccines cause choice. autism in children. Nice, space. Yeah. <laughs> so. I love that fucking Look, he has a hobby. where it's like a guy... Yeah, I love that fucking meme where like it's uh it's a guy like jabbing a bunch of needles into his fucking leg and he's like, Oh man, I want that really good fucking, you know, rain man autism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I mean essentially, yeah. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. Look, you can do the toothpick trick. What? You count Ooh. the toothpicks. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> After you gain your about? autism Rain superpowers, yeah, like, see, like, haven't you seen see, Adam's Rain old Man? enough? He, seen Rain yeah, Man, Adam, yeah, Adam's yeah. old enough. He's actually seen the movie, whereas I just know the reference. <laughs> I've seen Rain Man. I, I, I yeah, Quantus, oh, Quantus, definitely classic. Quantus. Yeah, never crashed. No, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. I'm an excellent driver. I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> Judge Wa movie. Judge Wapner. Yeah, great movie. He went full retard. He well, did. I guess he didn't go full retard because he, he could count the toothpicks, so he didn't go full retard. Right. Yep. Uh, anyway, uh, Fondue for $2 says, have Obama identify as Joe Biden. That's what I said. Yeah, so we said we were going to have a, uh, they should race swap Joe Biden to be with a black person, with a black actor mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for the next but election. It's like it's like it's like a mid-season fucking recasting where everybody just has to ignore it. Yeah, just listen. We're recasting Joe Biden as a black actor for diversity's sake. And then I said, who would the black actor be? And I said, aha, Obama. Yeah, Obama. We'll sneak a third term in there. Yeah, nice. Hmm. But, he, uh, but he has to like, he has to really commit if he wants my vote. Like he has to do like, uh, you remember white girls with like the Wayans brothers or whatever? You gotta be in the <laughs> You want Obama makeup. to put white face on? Yes, I want Obama to do white face, but I want him to really fucking commit. Like he's yeah. gotta show up, he's gotta imitate the accents, he's gotta pretend to like fucking mayonnaise and lobster and shit. Like he's gotta fucking, he's gotta do it all. I don't think that's gonna go well. Just guessing, but uh, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure on that one. But I don't know. It's a good idea. It's a good yep. idea. Uh, Stug for five dollars says reminder that leftist feminist types debated who the wokest Bay celebrity men were in 2016 or whatever. True. I remember Is it that. Pascal. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, chaotic in intention for ten dollars says she's a naughty naughty smear merchant. <laughs> no, <laughs> Why does her that? hair look Photoshop? I don't know. Are you talking about in this in the wig, the red wig? Or? That's a reference to Sargon's dirty, dirty smear. Dirty, merchants. dirty smear merchant. Yeah. Naughty, naughty girl. God, don't ever say that again. And <laughs> Angry Bell Sprout for ten dollars says James Lindsay has a bunch of videos on how wokeness and intersectionality is a religion, and things won't get better until we treat it as every other religion. Um, I mean, I, I like those some of those videos. I'm I'm a little more optimistic 
but we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I mean, well, people are already starting to get tired of wokeness. I feel like it already is in decline. I think whether Trump wins or not, I think if Trump wins, I think if Trump wins, there'll be a, another yeah reinvigoration, <laughs> reinvigoration to the woke shot. Uh, if he loses, I think wokeness will kind of slowly start to die away, and then we'll be killed off by all the trans regret stuff. So. Right. Uh, like Netcat Media design. for six months says 50 minutes behind, but Casket is Corporate Casket, which is her series taking down corporate MSM BS. Just to let you know. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Uh, Corona Kid for seven months says everyone at San Francisco University are denying that the punch ever happened, that the eyewitness testimony doesn't line up. Line up. I don't know if they're right. There could be a bias. Yeah, obviously. There's a thing. So I guess there is no video of it. Yeah, I know. I it wasn't swear I saw some video. Uh, no, you just regularly watch videos of women being punched. Right. Because you find it exciting. But By nice. trannies. Yeah. Why? Wow. <laughs> RT. Jeez. Wow. Jeez. Throwing out the T word. Was it? Is that bad? Are we not supposed to say that? I we're not <laughs> supposed. To... <laughs> okay. <laughs> look. <laughs> look, it's late. Okay. What, what he meant you, was he likes you, to watch women getting punched you. by transformers like the robots. Right, right, right. Yeah. You Listen, you you do you. I have firmly. Why well, try not retard. look? I try not to like, do slurs. I try to not to do the ones that offend people. So I, I have firmly brought retard back into Twitch and YouTube politics. So you must be so welcome. proud. We've had... I, I really am. I'm so proud. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to offend but, the transes. So we but, have some we have geez. some transes in our audience and we have some some transes that are friends of the show, so obviously. And we love our yeah. trannies. Yes. I don't think we're <laughs> now you're saying it. This is right. why Look, this is why the slip ups happen. Contra's making now counterpoints is making a joke about it. Yeah. At least we have retard, right? At least we have retard. <laughs> they can we'll never take that retard. from us. There you go. <laughs> oh shit. Um, where was I? Butters for five dollars says, So is this the channel about like conspiracy theories? Not yeah, ironic, much. right? Uh, Danny yes. for two dollars says even Law and Order has a lot of corrupt cops in it. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah, so they're not watch they're not hiding things. I'm not. But you go. you'd have to. Okay, so so for instance, hold on. I I want to I want to hit this just real quick. Sure. Mm -hmm. So for instance, like New York and the Northeast in general, I hear a bunch of like thin blue line bullshit, and I also hear like a lot of very casual violations of the Fourth Amendment. Mm -hmm. Um. So for instance, like there there's even like. It was a show that was advertising like the tactical unit for New Jersey or some shit. And literally there's this black guy walking down the fucking road in a hoodie and like the tack unit just steps out and is like, hey, bud, where are you going tonight? And they fucking like shove their hands in his pockets like instantaneously. Wow. And he starts like brace and he starts like bracing up on them and they're like, oh, hey, you're not going to fight us. And then they fucking arrest them or whatever for like resisting. But like they didn't. They didn't do a consensual encounter. They didn't talk to him. They didn't like greet him or get his ID. They literally just walk up to him and stuck their fucking hands in his pockets. And then so what? He's going to fucking jail because he like got a little jumpy when cops jumped out of a car and fucking stuck their hands in his pockets. That's the kind of bullshit that I think is probably rampant that a lot of people are complaining about because mm -hmm. they get caught with their like their weed or their pipe or they get caught with a pocket knife and they go to jail in some shitty fucking goddamn progressive shithole fucking city mm. um or uh so so they basically get a fourth amendment violation and then they get arrested for it now here's the thing though these things are probably like misdemeanors or, or they get dismissed you know before they go to court or you plea out or whatever the fuck which as like a citizen who should be free in a free country this can put a horrible taste in your mouth and i'm completely sympathetic to it but that's why i live in a red state that's why i don't live in a fucking place that has stop and frisk um yeah. Nobody frisked me. Yeah. Well, well you're white state. and you probably live in the right side of town. So, you know. <laughs> Adam really wanted them to, but couldn't get, couldn't convince Didn't them. Didn't happen, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted that lady cop to frisk me, but she wouldn't do it. <laughs> God. You need it. You need to tell her that you got something like in your in your underwear or whatever so she can mm. do the, like the credit card butt swipe where she sticks her hand between your legs goes up and does a fan on the front of your crotch and then brings the hand back and credit card, credit card swipes your ass. That's I don't little, like that you're explaining to our nuanced. chat how to, how to sexually <laughs> assault police officers. That's, not, that's a little too nuanced for me. 
<laughs> well, literally just say you got drugs in your underwear and she'll find it. The last interaction I had with a with the cops was a very nice lady cop. She offered me a ride, so. Oh. I rode sweet. with a tow truck driver. Adam fell in love. Look, yeah, I'm man. a married man. I can't be right. <laughs> Look, she might arrest my wife just to take me out. Thank you, ma thank you, ma'am. But I'm gonna have to politely decline. I am married. Yes. She's, she's like, Jesus. what the fuck? <laughs> feel like I was trying to be nice, you fucking weirdo. Jeez. I feel like if <laughs> look, I honestly feel like if I was single, I would be dating that cop now. Okay. Well, that cop. I feel like you feel either. that about a lot of people, though. There's some pretty lady cops. Yeah, and she I'm seemed very sure. enthusiastic about being kind to me. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it's just, you know, men have this optimism bias when it comes to relationships. Well, most men do. I, Sitch, I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> sure that you have the optimism bias. Yo, uh -huh. I, okay, I'm just going to call Sitch out a little bit. I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to Judo Beach, Florida to visit my parents. You want to get a sandwich or a beer? No reply. <laughs> you are firmly locked up in your fucking apartment, sir. You asked Sitch to go for a sandwich? Is that what you're saying? Fuck this. yeah. This I, think he doesn't, I think he doesn't want to dox himself. Mm -hmm. That wasn't it. What, what? is it because I'm a fucking fed? First of all, wait. First of all, I don't even remember this interaction. Secondly, where did you say you were going? Juno. It's like fucking, it's like an hour north of uh, Miami. I was like, do I want to drive an hour to go talk to Oh, no, I would drive to meet you, dickhead. Jesus. You're talking to dry fucking parents. Listen. Yeah. No, okay, okay. So Tornado just to, warning in Juno Just to Beach dox myself point. a little bit or whatever. So Juno Beach is just, it's like an old nice community or whatever. You probably won't be able to find me. But um, they have a house down there. It's like, you know, it, it's 20 minutes north of Fort Lauderdale. It's like 90 minutes north of like, you know, South Beach, Miami or whatever. So uh, fucking... Uh, I've hit Destiny up to go shooting. It's maybe in the works. And an hour and I, forty minutes from me. Yeah, but I'm that not, that's almost that. fucking. I'm not saying you have to drive that. I would drive that. That's you're like not, just that's what it takes just to get across to Los Angeles. Me. Yeah, there's fucking there's 24 hours in a day. There's 167 hours in Sitch, a week. Look, I will go get a beer with like a, a cool human being. Wow, I will guy. spend two hours to do that. Now, I'm not. I feel like it's a little creepy. Now I'm like, why do you want to meet me so badly? No, I'm married. <laughs> I don't want to bang you. And also, I don't know what you look like. <laughs> Listen, no, I don't, that's hilarious. The only way the only Listen. way I'd want to bang you is if you look like Henry Cavill and if you play Warhammer. That's the Listen, only I, way. I've been solicited by a lot of gay men. I am flattered, but I'm not into it. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm not interested unless you look like Henry Cavill and play Warhammer. So. Okay. Okay. Don't fall for it, Sitch. Don't talk to cops. He was wearing a wire. True. 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 <laughs> what kind of sandwich would you get? What kind of sandwich would you buy me? Also, huh? There's all sorts of fucking bomb joints. I'm sure there's a shitload of good Cuban joints down there. I'm sure, we can that find a true. good ass kick ass Cuban true. joint. You gonna get a? You gonna smoke a Cuban joint? Yes, Adam. Yeah. With Sitch. That's yeah, I would. Okay. Are you allowed to do cigars. that as That's an ex-police officer? I'm an ex-police officer. I'm a civilian. Oh, Florida okay. has medical marijuana. Florida has medical marijuana. Not that I have my card, but oh, it's legal. It, you yeah, guys, it's medical marijuana. Oh my god, that's so yeah. Stone Age. California is just regular recreational. Marijuana. Yeah, look how that's going. Colorado beat us, which is a little embarrassing considering California is a stoner state. Wait, wait, wait. So hold up. So are you still in San Francisco or some fucking giant metro shithole? I'm in Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. He's in so, the shithole. Well, yeah, I was about to ask. So, like, Look, I was it... literally almost assaulted by a homeless person yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, no, so about... that, that was going to be my question is like, because the, the, exter the external stereotype is like everybody's escaping to like, Boise or Austin or fucking, you know, I, I even have Californian transplants in I'm Michigan. I'm not leaving my fucking around. hometown. What the fuck? No, but no, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm what I'm saying these is homeless like, people chase me out of my home. <laughs> well, that, but that's what I was going to ask is like, has it like demonstra demonstrably become like a bigger fucking shithole? Hell like, yes. The pandemic yeah. ruined everything. Yeah. I just, I swear. Yeah. LA used but, to be like, a lot nicer and then. I mean, People. obviously there are places what? that are bad, but mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. we I have this studio that I paint at once a week downtown, and that area just is like, oh my god. 
Well, no, I, and the, the reason why I'm asking, like, I'm half joking, but I'm also not. I had, uh, you know, my sister-in-law, she worked for, like, a megacorp up in the Pacific Northwest. And I always forget if it's, like, Seattle, but I think it was Seattle. And um, driving is such a pain in the ass. Like, people don't even drive. So they, she used, like, public transport. She was she was making, like, 200K a year, and she's Dang. riding a fucking bus. And yeah, um, somebody was, like, murdered on the on the train recently, just stabbed to death exactly. by some homeless guy. Oh exactly God. and so and so uh literally like uh two months before her and uh, my brother moved back to texas um she was like oh yeah like two hours uh before i got to my bus stop or whatever there was a fucking gunfight yeah <laughs> it's like, the metro it's, traffic is way down because of that shit you make 200 grand a year and you're almost getting into fucking gunfights at the bus stop what the fuck is going on get the fuck like, out of there jeez yeah, so they did. They did. I was telling Sitch, I think I think the pandemic they were worried about there being huge health ramifications of having all these guys locked together in prison and jail and whatnot. Yeah. So, so I think that, Yeah, they let everyone that was like not a serial killer out of jail. So there's all these people that know that they're going back to jail as soon as they get rounded up. So we're kind of in the rounding up process of getting all those people back in the system. That's what I, that's what I think is going on. Well, I just saw a John Seward interview of your fucking governor basically saying that he's yeah, turning Gavin into, Newsom. into a fucking, turn it into a fucking hippy dippy rehab center. I fucking love it. He's, he is trying to get the prison. He's completely bought into this idea that all of these people have been wrongly incarcerated and it's like a huge race issue and that we have mm. to get the prison population down. Yeah. See, I, I don't, I don't want to see this in five years. I want to see this in 20 years. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, I want to see like all the red States be like, nah, mass incarceration was great. Fuck you. You know, keep throwing the book at people. And then I want to see like all the fucking Democrats that he's just like let everybody fucking loose and do a bunch of hippy dippy bullshit. And then we can just see like what worked because what you know they, there's like all sorts of like nefarious aspects of this where it could be like an element of social Darwinism where you let all these fucking gangbangers out and they just kill the fuck out of each other. So you technically <laughs> reduce crime because you're not saving them from themselves anymore. Or it could be they turn these cities into absolute fucking nightmares the because people are getting... there's like a perverse incentive. Look, the people are getting killed in the crossfire though. They just they have this. In Compton, they have every like Friday and Saturday night regular street takeovers where they take over the intersection and they post to social media basically like doing spinning out doing donuts. And uh, a few weeks ago, they ended up running over a bunch of girls and shit. Like people are yeah, dying. So but but that's kind of that's kind of my thing though so then it becomes an even broader social experiment of if all the productive people leave where no, they're like the, Fuck the this. guilty no the guilty people are the ones that are getting away the innocent people are the ones that are getting run over like i don't think this no, experiment no, 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 no. But, plays but out saying, in lowering crime levels no but i'm saying like so people such as yourself like you're mm -hmm. you're an angelino or whatever the fuck so you're gonna ride or die with your fucking shitty city yeah but but there are plenty of I mean, people who mean, are like but... working <laughs> <laughs> but there's plenty of people who are working professionals who might look at that and they're going to like, I don't want my fucking kids around this shit. Fuck well, this, I'm out. We've had, look, California has always attracted people. Yeah. For the first year, we've had a, like less, we've had a more exodus than people, new people coming to the state. What do they call that? Exodus seems so biblical. Yeah. It sounds like the state is White falling flight. apart. Migration. It, I don't know. White flight. That sounds even worse. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but but that's actually but but that's actually my thing is like so if you lose a bunch of talent, if people relocate, if they if Hollywood, you know, shoots at different locations to save money, if people are working from home and they can work in, remotely. They make more money they make more movies in Canada now. Like Vancouver shoots more movies a year than Los Angeles. No, but that that's kind of what I'm saying. So if, if the if the ground shifts under your feet where yeah. LA is no longer the fucking scene, then then what? You know? Yeah. I mean, I guess I could they're not I don't there's like a, all the movie studios are here and stuff. So it it will always have something. I they don't shoot you know television like, here. A lot of television. Yeah. 
it'll always have something i'm sure i'm just saying like if it's not at the zenith of its popularity the way that it was in the past that's all i'm saying yeah i should go oh. on the prices right <laughs> what if it's available I have a uh, I have family members that have been on the prices right like multiple times. Well, yeah, good for them, I guess. You should go on the prices right. That should be great. Sid should just go on a fucking Friday night panel show and debate retarded people. That's what he should fucking do. There you go. I like it. <laughs> I should. Yeah, I go on one of your panels, debate a bunch of retards. All right. Do you, yeah. do you want to do uh, Bosch stochastic terrorism or do you want to do Steven Crowder the white beater? What's your what's your poison? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Could find you some fucking Boschites to fight over whether or not he's a fucking stochastic terrorist for being named in I mean, one manifesto. Vosh, I'd have to watch Vosh content to bring evidence so, for it. No, you don't have to because he no. was already named in one attempted mass shooters manifesto. Yeah, but do but he was named as a of, terrorist. Would you know the context yeah. of the of it though? No, but that would be part of the fight and part of the fun. Um, but then also the uh, whatever that most recent bank shooter, the bank shooter was fucking retweeting Bosch back left left right and center. Who? So like I'm not I, I'm not saying it's uh I'm not saying there's enough meat on the bone there. I understand. But there's obviously, but there's obviously plenty of people who took issue with Bosch's rhetoric last year and, you know, conservatives are and Republicans are demons and blah, 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 blah. And also, you know, Lauren's been accused of being like a, a particularly evil person because she was named in a fucking manifesto. So, you know, are, are we edging close to the line where Hassan Piker and Bosch will be named in mass shooter and fucking trans terrorist manifestos? It's already happened. So, yes. Well, we yeah. don't know about the trans terrorist manifesto. Well, that's true. Yeah. But we do know this other one. What whose manifesto was it? Was it the bank shooter? The manifesto that I know had him in there was the person in Colorado who was going to do it but got stopped. Okay, before okay, yeah. So the guy didn't actually do it and also he labeled Vosh as a terrorist. Yeah, so the so Vosh defenders are saying that it's a negative uh, it's a negative implication. Therefore, like it shouldn't be viewed as them citing Vosh. But right. then here, here's my thing about it is like this person was about to commit a, a mass shooting. So what do they give a fuck about terrorism? You know? <laughs> like, so. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying? Well, yeah. I'd be curious to see what the actual context in the manifesto was. Right. But um, I mean, it's the same thing. The Crowder thing. Like obviously, the Crowder thing makes him look awful, but. I think it's fair mm -hmm. to say, well, you know, maybe we should wait for some more additional information. Yeah, right you want me to get Destiny on and you and him can fight a bunch of people who are against domestic abuse and you can fight for domestic abuse I would for watch. hours? I would watch that. I watch, yeah, because I, I, I listened to Destiny, you know, yelling with at Stardust and um, some other person about this. And I just, Fuck, I the, love whole, Stardust. the whole conversation yeah. just like, well, okay, it's just going to be, well, should we wait or should we not wait? I don't know. It's like, what is the, you should it just wait. seems so silly. Yeah. You should wait. No, obviously. I think, I think. Uh, so, for instance, there, you know, Kidology, she did a debate review of, of that conversation. I think she can she can quite passionately articulate why you already have sufficient evidence to make some kind of moral judgment. Is this so, about no, well, well, you, can wait, 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 wait. you can say it looks fucking awful, obviously. This is in reference to Crowder. OK, no, but but but, she, but she's not even saying so. It Kidology looks awful. is already she's going after it, Crowder. Yeah, she's saying it is awful. Here are the reasons why I believe it's contextually awful. Mm. And I think that you should allow yourself to follow your own instincts and common sense and not wait for a fucking 300,000 page peer reviewed study on whether or not Steven Crowder is a fucking asshole. Well, I mean, to say he's an asshole is pretty low bar, obviously. I don't want to defend Steven Crowder. Okay. <laughs> All the people. Don't defend Steven Crowder. Then. Like, look, yeah. he's, an, he's yeah. an asshole. You agree with that much, right? Of course he's an asshole. Yeah. Right. Look, By the time I'm going to accuse him of something, I, like, you know, there's no evidence of. Right. Mar married, evidence of. married couples do. As someone who is married, I'm sure you can attest to this, Connor. I, I myself mm -hmm. and my wife have fought before and will probably fight again. That's like a natural course of the marriage. Of course. Like I've never and, told you know, my wife I will fucking kill you or <laughs> something like that's yeah, dude, that's a little yeah that's I mean, a little far yeah um yeah that's but I, I've said I've said some choice words while going for a walk around the block 
uh, uh-huh. you know, that's happened. So, oh, you know, sure. I'm, yeah. I'm, Thanks. Look, I'm things sure get it wasn't in the nicest. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't in the nicest I'm tone. The block. No, I'm, I'm not being you between me and Sitch. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's all recorded. You're, you're, and that's how we were married. Too. I mean, what? <laughs> yes. But but that that's not a euphemism. Like, literally, I, I might walk out cussing because we fought over some fucking home logistics issue that right. I feel like she's sweat, sweating my ass on that I've already done X, Y, Z, A, B, C, right. and she's being unfair. And then I cuss up a fucking storm and I walk around the block and mm-hmm. I cuss some more. And then after one or two uh, trips around the block, I'm cooled off. I come back and... You know, we, we don't listen, always listen. apologize, but we're able to find uh, common ground, at least. You're like, listen, right. I'm sorry I called you a twat, okay? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry for the hard C word. My bad. <laughs> I've never <laughs> called my wife a twat. That's I don't think like... I've ever used the hard C word. Look, uh, name name calling, that's, I just, I think that's that's hard on the marriage right there. Yeah. Not uh, great. Not yeah. great. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. I should have married your brother. <laughs> when the name, when the successful name, in the family. When the name Yo, have, calling have you, comes out, that's not good. God. Yeah, have you ever seen that fucking meme where it's like it's impossible to be happy and sad at the same time, and the fucking the wife is like, "Oh, really? Well, out of all your brothers, your dick is the biggest." <laughs> oh. I had to. I mean, but that's pretty rough. Yeah. Oh, that is rough. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the it's the Scandinavian guy who's smile crying at yeah. that's the last like, panel. It's like, like mm, okay. <laughs> um. Anyways, a uh, paragon of cynicism for two dollars says Disney lawsuit with 100 percent fail. Watch legal mindset. Okay, I'll check it out. Curious to see what he says. What he will say. Uh, Junebug for one month says, I can fix her, guys. She's not as bad as she acts. She only does this when I don't clean the dishes or or not say good morning in time. <laughs> there you go. I believe it. Always uh, fix them. Osher C for $10 says, The shield was a lot about bad cops. It starts pretty bad, Sitch. The main hero, a cop, shoots a cop oh. in the face in the first episode, I think. Yeah, I would not take the shield for... Uh for real life. So, for instance, like I, I watched a couple episodes of The Shield and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, but the cop, like, he goes to, dare I say it, a hood rat base. Mm-hmm. And he fucking, he had, like, the the guys, the gangbangers, like, shake him down for his gun or whatever. And he's like, okay, listen, I'm not giving you my gun because I don't know if I'm going to get it back, but I'll unload it for you. And so he pops out the magazines and then puts it in the car and then he goes into the bad guy base and then he's talking to the bad guy. The bad guy's like, why don't we just fucking kill you, chop you up and put you in fucking barrels with acid? And nice. he's like, well, probably because you're stupid fucking banger guards or whatever. They allowed me to keep one round in the fucking chamber. And then he points it at the fucking guy and causes a hostage situation. And then he's right. able to escape there. There is not only is there no police manual to do this, <laughs> but, but, but really? like, I'm pretty sure. Really? This is a really good way to actually just get your ass kicked and get chopped up and thrown into a barrel filled with acid. Of course. So yeah. I would not basically too long didn't read. I wouldn't look to the shield for accuracy. Okay. Well, no. So I brought up the shield because uh, Illuminati was talking about how all all this uh, cop shows are now just positive cop propaganda, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure the shield was about bad cops. You know. Being corrupt and doing crazy. Also, shit. Training Day. I fucking love Training Day. Yeah, Holy we brought shit. Training Day, of course. Classic, classic movie. Training it, Day. It's he gets shot in the ass like early in the third act, and he's like driving around for hours. And I keep thinking, dude, dude, you're fucking shot in the ass. Like, there's no Are way. Are you talking you're... about in Training Day? Yeah, in Training Day. But he already knew he was fucking dead anyways. What is he going to do? Go to the hospital? But you're going to drive around with a gunshot on your fucking ass cheek and you're going to sit in a car? There's no way that's happening. I love that that's your problem. You're lying on... That was the complaint. You're lying on your stomach for a month. You get shot in the ass like that. Yes, baby. True. (laughs) That's just just unrealistic. Speaking of getting into screaming matches with the wife and all that kind of stuff, I got to go to bed. Take care, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. No, I I appreciate y'all. I got to walk the kid to school in like five and a half hours, but it's always a blast hanging out with you guys. So if you see anything that's uh, vaguely in my direction, I would love to come on. And then Sitch and Adam, you both have a permanent invite. So whenever you want to argue with... 
I want to see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to see Sitch on the panel debating. Well, about, he debating he's... how Crowder is innocent. <laughs> that's what yeah, I, that's me what too. I, really I do want to see that. That's what I want to see. Oh my but God. um, but I'm you know I'm not gonna make a booking based off of a lukewarm answer. So you that's actually fine. have to give me you, a real you answer. You should not. Yes. Yeah. I'll then. You. And then also, if you ever want to get Cuban sandwiches, for instance, I'm coming down to mm-hmm. stay with my uh, my my kid is about to be born. I'm actually on baby leave right now. Uh, mm-hmm. So the kids kids about to drop any day well, slash hour slash minute now. Thank you. Uh, it's my second boy. And then we are going to come down to my parents house and we're probably just going to stay there for a month. Uh, or at least a few weeks. So Since I would take advantage to... of that. I would just make him bring yeah. a sandwich to my house. I'd be like, "Yeah, bring yeah. the sandwiches here." <laughs> I'll, I'll, li- I'll literally I'll take tell a the large. Wife, <laughs> I'll take a foot I'll, on Cuban, uh, please. I'll, I'll say, "Hey, Destiny wants to go shoot ritzy shotguns out at the you know the Palm Beach gol- Gun Club." Yeah, or some go shit. shooting then, with him. What the hell? And I then, see. and then, I, well, I, I I think Destiny might Chris Kyle me, but you know, don't worry about it. So what's oh, no. Chris, what's Chris <laughs> Kyle? Like that stand- was the, the, the sniper. He's the American shot. sniper yeah. who got fucking shot in the back when he took a Marine fucking shooting who had PTSD. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I might have talked too much shit for DGG, so he might Chris Kyle my ass. I doubt, but, I doubt that's going to happen. That's See, that's the reason you want me to come. You want me to be like backup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need you to watch me. <laughs> um, no, but if you want Cuban sandwiches, let me know and we'll do it. Okay. Titch loves the footlong Cuban. He takes it almost uh, every night. We'll work on that together. (laughs) (laughs) Good night, guys. See you later. Okay. Uh, Red or seven three for five dollars. You're you're too happy about that. I know that joke killed. It did it though. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Uh, Red four seven three for five dollars says, "Please, someone Photoshop the Randy Marsh Karen hair onto her pyramid head." There you go. That'd be pretty funny. Look, a lot of people in chat really like that joke. <laughs> there you go. Sammy's writing it down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sammy she likes is. it. Look, look at that. Her, uh, Sammy's like, hmm, the yeah, foot long the... Cuban. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> no, Sammy, don't draw that. <laughs> uh, what is this? Just, what's a gay, the gay porn that for women? What's that called? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forget what it was called. Who knows? Uh, it says, oh, that was the one. A bra moment for six months says, I love your guys' nicknames for smelly bread tube. Pyramid scheme, LOL, W in the chat. Thank Pyramid you. scheme is great. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, it's appropriate for what she's selling. So, of course. Yeah. It is a uh, pyramid Ryan, scheme. True. Orion 9191 for 12 months. Thanks so much, Orion, for being a one year free will seeker. Says twelve months. Woo! Thanks so much. Yeah. Anonymous for five hours says Illuminati is literally just Aiden Paladin, but with statistic illiteracy and a seventy IQ. <laughs> <laughs> they do have. They sound a little similar. I guess that's what people are picking up on. But hmm, interesting. I think you guys just think all white women sound the same. I think that's the issue. Yeah. Statistical illiteracy and a seventy IQ. That's hilarious. <laughs> is 70 though you think it's that high i'm not sure yeah it's a little too high isn't it um fondue for five dollars says dominion tank police warped my perception of cat girls i don't even know what the fuck that yeah means. what does that mean is that like an anime dominion tank police or something this is dominion manga there you go huh um Angry Man for nine months. Thank you so much, Angry Man, for being a nine-month free will seeker. Says YouTube needs something like the new Twitter community notes, where watchers can add context of videos like this, and we can sit and watch them mold. No, oh, that That'd would be, be awesome. I mean, they kind of <laughs> have that for like climate change and stuff. They for yeah, it has to be you know MSM approved comments, right? Right. Yeah. There was you know way back in the day, way back in the day, you used to do a response. thing where. Yes, when you you could do direct video responses to people, and it would actually show up at yep. the bottom. It would show you like this person has responded to this right. person's video. They yeah. should bring. That's what they should fucking bring back. Remember that that, that was the first round of Cleavage Girls that all did response videos. 
Oh, you're right. Yeah. Can, you know, get that out of there. The fucking cleavage girl response. It should be like a substantive response. Or right. Yeah. Yeah. And they have nice cleavage. There you go. Not yeah. React content would not be allowed to be there. It has to be direct something. Hmm. All these rules, 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 rules. Oh my god! Adam just wants some more cleavage in his feed. I have no rule. <laughs> Look up nude uh, yoga sometime. <laughs> okay, I know they have naked yoga on YouTube. I don't know why it's allowed. I on know there. It makes no it's sense. Crazy. But it's there. I don't understand it. It's been there for years. There's like these videos from like ten years ago. Right, but and they I, all have like a billion views. Yes, I don't. I don't understand. Every it, every junior high kid in America's first look at the tits was from naked yoga. <laughs> right right uh, anonymous for five dollars says leftists migrate from economic marxism to culture and media critique i've never been able to even take them seriously since true yeah true 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 they're just one grift to another yep uh wtf 1a1a for five dollars says empower and fund sheriffs police sent for the state sheriffs sent for the locals uh in my opinion give Power from cops to sheriffs. There you right. go. Los Angeles is a mix of cops and sheriffs because there's right. all these unincorporated cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that here too. Uh, Stug for five dollars says, "Well, the thing is, the Earth was flat until the men of Westerness were tricked by the Dark Lord to invade Valinor. After which, Eru made it round." Oh, okay. That's how it go. came round. Wow. That's how Middle Earth became round. I thought it was different, but no, that makes sense. Oh look, darn two month kid members two official months. announcement. That darn kid that says official A team announcement. Wow, terrible, breaking my heart. You're that. breaking my heart, kid. You're breaking my heart. You don't like terrible. that, huh? What's the matter no. with that? What was her? What was her? Did she give a reason? What's her rationale here? Her rationale was yeah. that. A team reigns supreme, okay, obviously. Okay, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Come on, you know the truth. I walked in that one. Lucius Cornelius Sulla for five dollars says you should consider having Bishop Robert Barn on. Just don't ask the third question and keep your potty mouth shut and you should be <laughs> What's the Who's Bishop Robert Barron? I don't know who this Robert is. Robert Barron? Oh, I thought it was Robert Barnes. I misread it. I don't know who this is. Robert Barron? world on fire organization hmm. okay listen it'd be very difficult for me adam to keep our potty mouth shut i feel yeah that would be tough uh andrew clark for two dollars says i want to see counterpoints versus organized chaos now that would be interesting are you it's close that could be kid says my rationale is cats and chats oh i see i see he just sells you on the cat okay I see. What? It's true. Chicks dig the pussy. That is true. What? Don't be rude. <laughs> uh, Denny Cat. Oh, it's close to 18. Cats Listen. Ten... Okay. I was what agnostic because. <laughs> Get out of here. What are you talking Get about? Get out of here. Bring the. Look, I'm... I brought the video up. I'm reading Super Chats. What are you doing? I'm... I want to watch this video. Look, I think this video could be interesting. Okay, okay. This video where she declares A-team. Are you S-class or A-team? Listen. Okay. I was agnostic because it is the the highly the, the height of centrism to be neither S-class nor A-team. That was my, my decision. Is that nice. It? That's it. Are you, how, how would you be a centrist if you chose S-class or mm. A-team? Right. You, you, you can't choose Dirty between. You have to fencer. enjoy both of them. You can be both of <laughs> them. Say that you're both agree that both of them are awesome so you can mm -hmm. be part of both of them but mm -hmm. yeah, everybody wants you to choose one and then andrew made a very good point on sunday Adam andrew made an excellent point chat. yes look at that and, um I, I can't hear her because you're fucking talking <laughs> i'm sorry talking over your your new a team uh okay i'll shut recruit. up adam pays more attention to chat Oh, and um, pays more attention. Also, to Adam has two cats, so I'm just thinking. Yeah, I'm most. I'm 18. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Uh, I don't think Sitch gives a shit. I don't think Adam gives a shit. But oh, I give I, a shit. I listen. How could you say that, kid? You're breaking my heart. You're tearing us apart. What do you I mean? can't believe you do this to me. What do you oh mean? God. 
every person that Look, switches knew to this. a team it's like a knife in the back look you Just knew this was it. inevitable okay oh did we did we did we look eight this is the rise of a team right here uh-huh you want to do another poll adam you want to do another she's poll? inspiring yeah look i don't want to do another poll because i don't want to <laughs> okay i don't want to hurt my good friend sitch okay I remember I used to play. Oh, nice, nice save there. Look, I used to play chess with my dad. My dear old dad taught me how yeah. to play chess. I used to play mm -hmm. chess with him all the time. Right. Always beat me. Mm -hmm. Always, always, always beat me. Right. And then one day, I beat it all him. Changed. Yes. And he never played me again. <laughs> really? <laughs> never ever. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. Look. Sitch, I don't want to break your heart <laughs> like I did dear old dad. <laughs> I don't want that poll to come back. Look, I want you always to, I want you to feel mm -hmm. that S class is the best class. Okay. <laughs> you you okay. want to listen to the rest of this or you want to go to Super Chats? No, we can come on. I know that the A teams and the S, the S classes have, have issue when one person decides that they're not part of them. Um, I'm sorry, S class, but <laughs> A team reigns supreme. Oh, I'm Jesus sorry. Christ. Just it's, the way it is, okay? It's so Jesus. good. I, I tried to hold out. I tried to stay um, level headed and centrist and shit, but it happened, okay? Can we get over it? No. Nope. Listen. But S class is best class. It's in the name. It's not in the name. <laughs> is S class does it say best in S class? No, it's not. A team literally the first letter in the alphabet. Look, it's just science. That's in the name. Love. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> it's just science. Listen, listen. Obviously, what we have to do here is we have to ban Andrew. Okay. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> Clark. I hear I she said Andrew Clark is the one that's like whispering like worm tongue. Andrew Clark is like worm tongue whispering in worm Kithia, tongue. Like, Look, yes, Andrew, like, Andrew Clark. Like, you should turn against the s -class. You should go ATM. <laughs> Literally, Andrew Clark DM'd me this clip. Of course he did. With the message. He was proud. Look, yeah. I'm going to, look, I want you to read this message. I'm sorry, Andrew, but I'm sharing your DM right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just, look at this. This is your, this is your friend, Andrew. Just your ATM friend. Just because yeah. it's fucking hilarious. Okay. Look, I'm only sharing it with Sitch, and Sitch has permission to share the, to share it on the show, <laughs> just because it's funny. Oh my God, you're gonna laugh your ass off. Uh huh. Here it is. <laughs> Look, Andrew's Andrew's a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew said, "Don't let Sitch take away my right." <laughs> Well, Andrew, Andrew, now that you've said that. Andrew Andrew knows he's being worm tongue here. He knows what's said. going on. I know. See, geez. Look, Andrew, if you lose your wrench, don't worry. <laughs> I'll make sure you get it back. Uh, uh. I feel like Sitch is in a, Sitch is in a wrench taking mood. Don't do it, Sitch. I'm feeling it. Don't give in. Let the younglings live, Sitch. Don't give in to the dark side. What did the younglings ever do for me? Adam? Look, it was just a joke. It was what a joke, do Sitch. Don't kill the younglings. No. Uh oh, we've we've created Darth Vader here now. Yeah. This is the birth of Darth Vader. It all began with Darth Kid. <laughs> <laughs> when Darth Kid went to the light side. <laughs> and betrayed. Anyways, um, where was I? Speaking of mm -hmm. betrayers, oh, no, I read that one. Denny Cat for five, Aussie, for ten Aussie bucks. Thank you. Says Mentis waves definition of wokeness, an aggressive push for diversity, equity, and inclusion, usually based on the belief that outcomes which lack these things are indicative of discrimination and unfair social treatment. Is that true? Um, yeah, I mean that's not untrue. Oh, but okay. again, I. I still like to always throw in something about liberalism in any definition for uh, in any definition for it. Did so. you see my poll? 
I was trying. Uh, to... What is the highest value in the woke ideology? Yeah. Uh, yeah, feelings over facts, objectively bad. Illiberalism, cancel uh, Objectivity bad. Because oh, it's bad. an attack gotcha. on objectivity, gotcha. which I think yeah. is uh, one of the most horrible things. Right. Cancel uh, culture is illiberalism. Gotcha. Yeah. Insul insularity, non-believers are evil, and Tifa, Tifa Walker. Yeah. Well, obviously, I just put <laughs> a like, third option in. Of course, as you always like But the do. highest rated, I never would have guessed, is insularity, non-believers, is winning at 34%. So. Yeah, it's interesting. I would not have thought... Um, Notice That's what's what in last place. Uh, illiberalism, cancel, non-believers. Yeah. Yeah. That's not really relevant to my point, but, but I appreciate point? the effort. So, What was your point? On you're, you're talking about sneaking the illiberalism into the definition of woke ideology, right? Yeah. Yes. That's an interesting to do with the poll question. Uh, speaking of Andrew Clark for two dollars, mm -hmm. take his wrench away. Says, "Can we watch the Kiddith A Team video?" Ah, worm over it, here. Where does it say that? Really? It's, oh, okay. I guess we already yeah. did. Yeah, worm tongue over here. Fondue for two dollars says Connor with the Inquisitor take. True. Uh, Andrew Clark for Tudor says, but 80% of people never interact with cops. True. Uh, J-Mac for $10, our surrogate father. Thank you so much, J-Mac. Says, all right, everyone going to watch The Frank with my wife and hit the Z sack. You all rock. Hope you all have a fantastic week. Well, thank you. Yeah, happy thank Sunday. You. Thanks for the super chat. Yeah. Uh, Metalworks 41190 for 13 months says, we already have... Thank you for being a 13-month member. Because we already have AI running parts of the stock market. How long until someone makes one that can run the economy? There you go. That can't happen. It doesn't have uh, access to the information that's in your head. Yeah. Well, no, what you want, what you would do, what they would do is they'd try to have an AI algorithm that could anticipate. I think that's actually going to be one of the last things they're going to do AI. As for AI to, because what they'd want is AI to anticipate market shifts before anyone else does. Right. Um, but see, once first of all, once you develop that, doesn't the entire concept of the stock market just end at that point? Isn't that already happening kind of in the private sector, though? Like, you know, Walmart has this amazing distribution chain where they know exactly how much to order because they know exactly what demand is. Um, yeah, but that's, that's only for like locally within their own stores though. Right. Right. The golden egg here, or the golden ticket here would be to be able to predict that from a market wide or an economy wide level. Right. Um, but if you could do that, you basically destroy the stock market because then it'd be too, e then everyone, like you would just know who to bet on. And then that would like the prediction would make like everyone would be following the prediction and the prediction would create reality mm -hmm. essentially. So that'd be interesting. But I think that'd be the one of the last things to do because that would require the most amount of information because the economy is affected by the most amount of different things, I think, than almost anything else in the world that you'd want to like throw AI on board to. Mm -hmm. So that might be one of the last things to go. So we'll see. Uh, contrast for 13 months. Thanks so much, Contrast. Says, art, AI is fantastic. I don't even need to look for porn anymore. <laughs> I just generate it on the fly. <laughs> uh, Sitch, maybe you can use AI to finally finish a video. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there I could go. help you with that. Help you with the script, that's for sure. Maybe better okay. than Illuminati. True, thank you. Thank you. I wonder if I could get an AI... Uh, a 3D AI Sitch model made. Probably. That probably wouldn't be too difficult. I was going to have to either. learn like a 3D software to like manipulate and stuff. I was thinking of using chat GPT for like the first draft. Because we roughed out the book two of Supervillains Anonymous. But neither one of us went in and started doing the dialogue. And I was just thinking... I wonder if I could put this into chat GPT and get like a first round of dialogue. Interesting. 
Well, I just I'm I'm is curious like if it would do a decent job or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Script writing is always about the hardest thing is really coming up with that first draft that you're refining and making better and better and better. Yes. Supposedly there's already a company that's working on screenwriting software that incorporates an AI component that does this. Really? Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. So it's like you basically prompt the scene, the motivation of the characters and all that stuff, and it just writes out like, you know, your two pages of dialogue. Right. Yeah. But you can hmm. always change it if it sucks, obviously. What of do course, you, of course. Or you try again. Um, Write it in the style of Quentin Tarantino. There you go. Bad Dragonite for $5 says Illuminati got her start on a red pill show with Tommy C and fell out when he called someone else uh, the F slur and she deleted lots of his videos. That's hilarious. I, isn't That's that really fat? Funny. Not the F slur. Well, I'm, if they, you can write fat. Without having to censor it, so assuming they meant the slur, but oh really? Well, I mean, did why would he get in trouble for calling someone fat? That's not like a... well, maybe she was fat at the time, and she was like, oh. "How dare you?" Okay, maybe <laughs> I don't know. Maybe um, were they gay or were they fat? There you go, we, gay and fat. We, we want to know. Andrew Clark for two hours says, "I only speak the truth. I know it's hard to hear." There you go. Wow, look at that. Andrew. Really trying to get that wrench taken. Really away. trying to get that wrench taken. <laughs> I mean, geez. I know. Stop poking the bear, Andrew. <laughs> super chat won't allow fat. Oh, you're right. That's weird. You can't type fat in a super chat? What the fuck's up with that? Really? That's wacky. Look, he they can't fell out because he called he they fell out because he called someone fat? That's pathetic. Jeez. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe the person was skinny and he was just being ironic. There you go. You know. Um, Who's that anorexic girl on YouTube? Like calling her fat. I don't fat, know. Fat Susie. You know Fat Susie, the anorexic content creator. Uh, Dr. Dealer for $2 says, I'm not sure that comic is ever accurate. If you think capitalism is actually oppressive at all. Uh, if you actually, If you think capitalism is actually oppressive at all time, every action you take in it's oppressing someone and she makes no real efforts to avoid that you know? mm -hmm. regarding to the well comic right yeah um ct for two dollars says talking about aspiring to be heroes I was talking hero's journey and got into an argument with my friend this week because i said i could defeat a dragon in a 1v1 do you think you can defeat a dragon what is your plan <laughs> i mean is it duck is it a duck-sized dragon <laughs> i think i can defeat a duck-sized dragon maybe well, I don't know if it still breathes fire. That could be. That's true. You dangerous. need some kind of shield. Yeah, if you were unarmed, that would be very difficult. Um, well, well, first of all, you have to say, well, well, like, what rules of dragon are we talking about here? Like, what kind of dragon? What rules of dragon? I'd say generally, I think most people will lose hardcore to a dragon. No one be one fight. So. Uh, Dr. Hmm. Diller for $2 says CRT is a great example of how conspiracies really work. Leftists had a conspiratorial march to the institutions, and when it came under fire, rather than tactically play dumb, they all went ballistic and panicked. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, Dr. Diller for $2 says, another dollar says, doesn't the fact that you can say slavery and every American will have roughly the same idea of what you mean indicate that slavery isn't being whitewashed? If someone's hiding history, they're doing an awful job. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Yeah. I mean, and it's why like videos, you know, weird, like the weird, you know, the slavery wasn't so bad, weird, like conspiracy videos are considered weird conspiracy videos. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a good point. When you say slavery, everyone has kind of a same image in your mind. So... Right. Obviously, they're doing a very bad job at whitewashing history. Death by Sloth for $2 says, Since much of leftist thought seemed to be couched in children's literature, I blame Matilda for the current attitudes of teachers. They all think that Miss Honey is saving the special children from their malicious, uncaring parents. <laughs> maybe. I haven't thought about Matilda in forever. I forgot that was even a thing. Yeah, maybe. Is that a book I, or what is that? You've never seen or read Matilda? No. A very famous Roald Dahl book. The guy did a uh, Willy Wonka. It's about um, 
little girl gets like psychic powers or something and her parents suck oh, okay yeah that's kind of a trope in a lot of these fairy tales is you know the terrible parents that yeah, was a very common trope yeah i yeah i think it could i think it has a lot to do with the fact that kind of the stereotype that i mockingly laid out which is that the the perception is that teachers are more you know left-wing bias which they probably are it's a profession and so basically they view them as like vehicles of indoctrination against you know all these um you know evil redneck ignorant parents yeah who they view as like you know evil social conservatives and also just the fact protecting that you know the people status quo right and also they just you know left people on the left have a general bias where they think that educators are more intelligent uh, than the general populace overall oh yeah which isn't necessarily true <laughs> really at all so well if you are a leftist and you're thinking boy society really needs to change and I have the next generation right here in my classroom every single day. I just think the temptation to put a thumb on the scale is too great for most people. Well, yeah, and especially with, you know, when I went to school, there was still a, a, the prevailing attitude was still that, you know, we should live in this kind of anti-political liberal society, liberal liberalism society, especially for teachers. Right. Um, but this is the big anti-liberalism of wokeness is that it's like, no, fuck that. You should be as political as possible. You should, you know, it's that's what's so disgusting about it. Woke ideology literally trains teachers that they should be doing everything they can to indoctrinate students with their leftist ideology. It trains that you can't avoid politics at all. Well, that's that's that is the rationale. They say Yeah. you can't avoid politics at all, so you might as well go full hog on it. The personal is political, don't they say? Right. Right. So Uh, Dr. Dealer for $2. Thank you, Dr. Dealer for not $2. Says, tweet with a 3,000 likes. This means everyone I don't like thinks this and is stupid. I win politics. <laughs> true. True. And Dr. Dealer for not $2. Thank you, Dr. Dealer. Give me a bunch of money today. Says, ContraPoints is out here destroying political opponents with such bangers as insult, I have more Twitter likes. Here's a tweet. Really? Let me see. Yeah, let me see what the tweet is. Contra is that's an insult. Like she's doing the ratio thing. She did, and she's fucking losing too, which is kind of hilarious. So she Um, didn't have more likes. no. So there's a guy named Paul Stanley. I'm not familiar with this. Who's Paul Stanley? A big following. You know who this is? No, I have no idea. Oh wait, is this Paul Stanley of Kiss? Oh, really? He's like the lead singer of Kiss or the guitarist or something. I thought the lead singer is Gene Simmons. Well, aren't there two sing? I think Paul Simon sings too. Oh, okay. Did you say Yeah, Paul he's Simon? Paul Simon, co-lead vocalist. You're right. The rock band Kiss and rhythm guitarist. Yeah, they both Uh, sing. so Paul Stanley uh, tweeted Oh, out, he Paul said, Stanley, that's it. Paul Stanley tweeted out, he said, my thoughts on what I'm seeing. There's a big difference between teaching acceptance and normalizing and even encouraging participation in a lifestyle that confuses young children into questioning their sexual identification as though some sort of game and then parents in some cases allow it. There are individuals who as adults may decide reassignment is their needed choice, but turning this into a game or parents normalizing it as some sort of natural alternatives or believing that because a little boy likes to play a dress up in his sister's clothing or a girl and her brothers, we should lead them steps further down a path that's far from the innocence of what they are doing. With many children who have no real sense of sexuality or sexual experience caught up in the quote fun of using pronouns and saying what they identify as, Some adults mistakenly confuse teaching acceptance with normalizing and encouraging a situation that's been a struggle for those truly affected and have turned it into a sad and dangerous fad. Wow. Based Paul Stanley. Look at that. The Retweet singer, and the, like. the singer of Kiss, Yeah. is And going I mean, after contrapoints. well, and it's not even like, that's, that's not like a super harsh statement. They're just, they're saying, you know, social contagion. People are getting, uh, You know, people are going down a path that they shouldn't necessarily be going down. There's a bu he it looks like he has a bunch of kids too. That's probably. Yeah. He says my thoughts on what I'm seeing. I'm assuming this affects him. So, um, so you know, the Lance, of course, replied to this tweet. Oh no way! He's going after him. Of course, he is. I never liked Kiss. Who the fuck Yes. are you?
uh, Lance says, I'm way more worried about this than I am about gender ideology. And he, he links the lyrics to Christine 16. <laughs> oh, no way. He tries to call him a pedo. Lance, oh, God. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, God. Uh, Keith Oberman responded, It's not a game, you asshole. What you do is a game. What the face internally, now externally, due to stupid, panicky fascist like you externally is an excruciating ordeal. I can't believe they're calling Kiss the guys who dress up with makeup on their face fascists now. Keith Overman's such a fucking like, what like the, see, this is a character. Yeah. You understand? Keith Overman plays an insane character for clicks. That is a grift. Um, oh, and so here's here's ContraPoints. So what so what amazing response do you think ContraPoints had to this? Which I think was a pretty thoughtful and good statement from Paul Stanley. Yeah, it wasn't incendiary in any way, shape, yeah. or form. But of course, ContraPoints probably makes it incendiary. So here, here's ContraPoints' thoughtful response. <clears throat> you are the saddest of rock and roll crowns, clowns, fucking ratio. Oh, no way. She did the fucking ratio thing. She did the Keffels ratio. She's co literally copying Keffels now. That's so yep. that's so weak. That's so weak. And guess what? She didn't get she didn't ratio him. Not ratio him. Ah, hilarious. she gained. She got 18,000 likes on, that, on her tweet. Mm -hmm. But Paul Stanley got 26. He's still in the lead. Only baby. Look, I might have to go give that tweet a like right now. There you go. I can, your it's wife a, thinks it's hilarious. I can hear this. It's a race. <laughs> what is she watching? I have no idea. There it is. It's hilarious. Well, it's pretty funny. Yes. Uh, but so there you go. That's a pretty pathetic. Did you see um, who was it? Um, Keffels tried to ratio someone and then failed so badly she deleted Twitter. Twitter. You're Twitter. kidding. Oh, yeah. She went to a yes. different pl platform. I saw that. Yes. I feel like I retweeted this or liked it or something. Who? Who? Oh, look at that. Gab deleted his tweet. That's interesting. Uh, Gab tweeted out. The official Gab account tweeted. Um, oh, this is so sad. Paul official... Stanley almost has a million followers and he can't even afford Twitter blue. There you go. Uh, the official Gab account tweeted out that we need to remove liberalism. <laughs> we need to get rid of liberalism. Mm -hmm. But apparently, and I retweeted that with an insult. Uh, but apparently he's deleted the tweet. So that's interesting. Who is, maybe someone in the chat knows. Who, Who said the person? we need to get rid of liberalism? The guy that runs Gab. Oh, that's not good. It was Leafy. Oh, thank you. It was fucking Leafy. Yeah. Keffels attempted to ratio Leafy of all people. I didn't even know it was still fucking around. And then failed to do so. And then in embarrassment deleted her own fucking Twitter because she couldn't ratio Leafy. But honestly, I mean, yeah, that's pretty warranted, right? You failed to ratio Leafy. It's appropriate. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Is Leafy the threat? Someone that needs to be ratioed? I forget what he said, but... I think it's some transcom or something. Oh, no. Anyways. Keffels um, love that ratio thing. I know, it's pathetic. But yeah, it but thank you, for, thank you for showing me that, Dr. Diller. That is hilarious. Andre is just on this fucking spiral into oblivion. <laughs> yeah, I retweeted the Contra thing just so people could check it out. I had Contra Which... muted. <laughs> So it was hard Which, to find. You retweeted her ratio, her failed ratio. Yeah, her failed ratio. Yeah, <laughs> just for fun. Right. Does that that, that doesn't is. count towards the ratio, does it? Maybe maybe I shouldn't. No, it. it doesn't. The likes is the only thing that counts. Right. But, yeah. Look, a failed ratio deserves to be counted. You could just take. I'll, I'll take a screenshot. In the culture war. Right. Oh, that's the thing to do, right? Yeah. Why? Because you have to show the comparison to the. the number. Oh yeah, you're right. Are you so, doing it now? Well, I'm not doing it now. I'll but let I will. you do. It. Okay. I'll let you do it. Thank you. Dr. Diller for $4. No, I'm doing it. <laughs> you can both do it. You understand that, right? Totally fine. We're not no, married. I don't, I don't feel like we can. Everyone's okay. going to be like, look, you copied. I can't. I can't like this tweet. Adam already tweeted it out. Look, <laughs> I've, already tweeted it look out. I'm going to do it right now, okay? Okay. You so go when, do you do it, when you do it after me, 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm even going to circle them. <laughs> so You're going to circle them. So people, so people really <laughs> understand, so people, right? People know. Look, I'm going to point an arrow to the ratio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to la put a laughing face. <laughs> right. Look, I got more... I got more mileage out of your meme already. I feel bad, so maybe I should just let you have this one. There you go. There you go. I appreciate that. Really, really important to me. No, I'm doing it. Don't copy <laughs> my video. Look, I marked this one, so you can't copy it. Uh huh. I'm gonna do it anyway. Fuck you. You should just copy my screenshot. That'd be even more hilarious. What, did you just screenshot it? Did you say something? No funny comment to attach to it. Well, give me a funny comment and I'll write it in. <laughs> I'm just sending it out now. What's a funny comment? Uh huh. Uh -huh. I was just gonna put the. Hmm. Let me think. Got to be a funny comment. You're right. Yeah. Sitch is better at Twitter than me. He knows how to. What should I write to gas people up a bit? Uh, check my timeline and you could see. Oh no! You tweeted out first. I yeah. use that to distract you. I tweeted out first. Damn you! Damn you! Look, I was just gonna. Yeah. I did you just do the screenshot? What'd you I type? I did. I said, "LOL, sad." <laughs> LOL, sad. Sad. Did you do sad in all caps? I did not. You just you can do sad in all caps. I did. That really gave you the Trump energy. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I, okay. I did sad in all caps with an X exclamation point there you go waiting look why are you waiting to send the fucking tweet send it because it's like this tweet is too similar to me as I said this tweet. <laughs> please change it up if you like this to send it look i circled the ratio thing though you didn't circle oh, okay. that stuff right i hope <laughs> I, I i have faith that uh people will be able to see it figure it out <laughs> anyways uh, Dr. Dealer for four dollars says the idea of small government is function is functionally both economic, economically and social. Wait. The idea of small government is functionally both economically and socially to allow for as much competition as possible. These adults are trying to forcibly restrict competition in both and are shocked when Republicans abandon their small government stance to preserve the ability to have a small government. Brilliant. I mean, that's a fair um, that's a fair point in terms of a counter to whether they're being hypocritical or not. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's fair. That'd be a fair defense. Our doctor dealer for no two dollars says critical theory wormed its way into sociology through both conflict and feminist theory. I've never seen a single accurate use case for either L M A O. True. Yeah, that's what I'm always complaining True. about. Like they, they act like it's some kind of science to weed out racism or right. fix the systemic injustice or whatever, but. That's not the case. Just saw your tweet. <laughs> My LOL sad tweet? Yeah, with the, you put the line. <laughs> hey, what like do you mean? Circle. Yeah. <laughs> you put the arrow on ratio and the circle around. Like... Yeah, that's the, that's the comedy gold. It's very subtle. It is funny. It is funny. <laughs> Fucking ratio. <laughs> Fucking ratio. My God, that's so pathetic. Fucking ratio. It's funny, too, because, like, um, like you'd think that her saying you were the sass rock and roll clown is supposed to be like dismissive, right? Like, oh, you're so sad. But then saying fucking ratio, like that's so like, oh, they're triggered. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, mm, they're mad. They mad. I don't know. I don't take counterpoints seriously anymore. As you shouldn't. Yeah. Uh Vosh, hey, look at that. Our good friend Vosh for two dollars sure. says uh, this is the official real Vosh. Says, I love bugs and I love death. I love oozing flesh wounds. Well, there you go. Oh, nice. Vosh. Maybe call a therapist. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Plagiarism is sad. <laughs> you just, it's unfair that you distracted me. You're like two minutes ahead of me. <laughs> Let's see. Wait a second. <laughs> Literally, there's like 40 oh, look, it's seconds. Kith. Of... It was Kit that said that too. I She's know. already backstabbing the eight scene. Pain. Painful. <laughs> look, and zero, no, right? zero fucks has it, has the time in both of them. You're like mm -hmm. 57 seconds, and I'm like 17 seconds. <laughs> 
Look, there's a 40 second difference. He yeah. cheated. <laughs> I didn't cheat. You tried to snake me, and I out snaked the snake. It is true. You had the idea. <laughs> you had the idea to screenshot it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Look at you. I know, yep. right? Shaking my head. <laughs> I have a feeling Kidda is oh, wait, wait, making wait. a retraction video pretty soon. Right. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to delete this. I have a better response. Look, I've switched over now. Now yes. I'm now I'm S class. <laughs> class. After the plagiarism I witnessed on yes. Twitter. I know, right? Wait, I know. <laughs> I know, right? Classic A team. <laughs> <laughs> shake of my head. <laughs> With the little, where's the shake of my head emoji? Look, oh, there's the sad emoji. Yeah. It was originally your idea, but I figured. There you, you go. Know. There you go. That's the response. That's Everything the worked right out there. when I stole your meme, so I figured, ah, this can't be too bad. Such an original tweet. Thank you, Fond. <laughs> Everyone like, we have major overlap in our follows on Twitter too. Oh, so a lot, a lot of people, are gonna see. especially while we're streaming, a lot of people yes. are going to see. I know. <laughs> Anyways, how come you haven't liked my tweet yet? I'm not gonna like your, I'm not gonna like your tweet. This is a this is a competition. I don't like that. I think I liked yours, but I unliked it really quick. Yeah, there you go. I was like, oh shit. There you go. Uh, speaking of, we have Clarence Thomas. That's right, the official Clarence Thomas, the real Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, mm -hmm. has donated two dollars to us. Sweet. Look, he's getting all that friend money, and that's all he could do it's donate? True. What the fuck? That's true. He should spread the wealth around, yeah. Uh, Clarence Thomas says, Wahahahaha, my plan is going perfectly. I shall destroy free speech in the United States of America using the immense power bequeathed on me by Harlan Crow's subsidies for my vacation. Bow down to thy new ruler, Cretans. There you go. True. Yeah. Uh, Dr. The... True. Dr. Diller for $2. Thank you, Dr. Diller. Says, I think you've got it wrong, Doomer. She probably thinks that if more black men became cops, cops would be less like the police are now, ignoring that the overwhelming majority of black officers want to uphold the law. True. I wonder how she felt about that, you know, the whole, um, where was that? You know, those, like, the, the black police officers, like, beat the crap out of that guy? Oh, yeah. He was covered, yeah. I'd like to watch that video with her. Yeah, that'd be interesting. She, she's probably make the whole like they're selling out their blackness to be all part right. of the white they're supremacy. They're all white supremacies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Magor for $2 says Big Hero 6 is fine until you realize that the moral of the movie is that fighting psychos is a better use of time than marking, than marking or making, mm -hmm. than making revolutionary technology. Also, the writers don't know what an engineer is. Engineer is not a scientist. Well, there you go. Interesting. Oh, okay. I'll have to watch it at some point. Oh, look at that. It's our favorite Twitter squirrel. Z squirrel. Two dollars. I wonder if this is this has the squirrel still on Twitter now that Elon's bought it? The squirrel of I'm sure the squirrels get gotten some community noted. Oh, did they? I'm assuming. They they lie so frequently they'd have to get noted at least once. That squirrel I've had blocked for years, so that squirrel blocked me. I I retweeted them once and and I like uh, fact check them and then I immediately got blocked. But I so. think I saw him in a video. Like Lance screenshotted him and had him in a video or something. Probably, yeah. That's what yeah. you call it. When someone gets noted, it's like they got nutted on, but they got noted on. Oh, they yeah. Got noted. Uh, the Twitter squirrel says interesting that these white supremacists are fetishizing M&Ms, which are lightly coated as black and brown people of different cultures. Plantation owner vibes. Wow. You know, that's solid. I could legitimately think the tourist squirrel would write that exact I know. sentence out. Right? And tweet it out. And tweet it, yeah. And have millions of simp followers totally like it yes. and retweet it. Yes. The tourist squirrel is probably one of the worst pre uh, people on the platform. Oh, yeah. I always wonder Dillard, what these people are like at home. Like, I know, right? What does this person do? You know that that, that Twitter squirrel person, they've probably like... if. I don't know if they're in a relationship with someone, but they probably act very egotistical based on like their Twitter likes. That's got to be the super weirdest thing. If you're in a relationship with one of these weird people, 
that's famous on Twitter, not for like being a celebrity or doing something. They're just famous on Twitter for being a Twitter personality. Right. They have to be like completely like insufferable to deal with in real life. Yeah. Like they're like so egotistical about their fucking tweets. You're like, please stop. It's because people like your tweets doesn't mean you're right about anything. Yeah. You hang out with them in real life and they're just completely out of it. Yes. Uh, Dr. Diller for another $2. Thank you. Says some people have suggested that leftists are delusional and expect social workers to handle dangerous situations better than better left to police officers. I have an alternative theory. Lefties hate social workers and want them all dead. <laughs> there you go. Maybe. There you go. Who likes social workers? Uh, CT for $2 says, oh, by the way, dragon friend. Yeah, we'll go with that. Said you guys should change the it's a comedy show thing to the Sitch and Adam center of the universe because you say you're centrist more than you say you're a comedy show. There you go. Center of the universe has a nice ring to it. I kind of like yeah. that. Yeah, Sitch and Adam center of the universe. I like it. Sweet. That's a good. That's a good suggestion. Uh, Dill's Russian school elephant for two dollars says hello, gentlemen. Ever heard of the? Beslan school siege if not get ready to say what the fuck all the way through and even in the aftermath puts things in perspective s class is like a field of flowers a team is like the judas cradle sweet what is the judas cradle oh, i don't know it sounds bad <laughs> judas cradle was a a wooden or metal pyramid shaped seat on which the victim was placed on top <laughs> ouch hey, go up your butt that doesn't that sound fucking awful that sounds like you, Adam, yeah. That's like the worst seat in the house. That's right. And I'm like a field of flowers, and you're just right. like the butt torture. You get to frolic in S class. Yeah. But A team, like, you sit on the pyramid. Raped. <laughs> okay, I haven't heard. Beslan School Siege. Beslan School Siege was a terrorist attack that started on September 1st, 2004, lasted three days, and involved. The imprisonment of more than 1,100 people as hostages, including 777 children, and ended with the deaths of 330 people, including 108, 186 of them as children, as well as 31 of the attackers. It's considered to be the deadliest school shooting in history. Where the fuck was this? Hmm. Oh, I do remember this. This was in Russia. I do remember this when this happened. How many Wasn't people it were like, killed? 333. 333? That's crazy. Yes. I do remember this. It was They were Chechens, right? Some sort of Chechen freedom. Oh, fight. yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. do remember this. Yeah. They took over a school. That was fucking wild. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Um, well, I'll look at this more. I'm sure. I'm sure the Russians didn't do a very good job, whatever it was. Because, you know, they're Russians. Uh, Mahler. Hey, Mahler. Mahler for $2 says, okay, guys, they're getting one of these stupid red pillars on instead of having us to do the Fight Club stream. <laughs> oh, shit. We should shame them somehow into getting us on Rags. Do you have any idea? Rags for $2. Thank you, Rags. Says, well, since it so it's the friends of Andrew Tate, we could clip them out of context about how Adam likes sexism and say that talking to Rolo is platforming hate. Go full <laughs> clout chasing <laughs> works gold on them. Rags, you piece of shit. Wow, there you go. What do you think, Fringy? Fringy for two dollars. Thank you, Fringy. Says no. We shouldn't even joke about that. I keep saying we just need to request them more. Pester them a bit, if you will. Surely they won't ignore us forever. There you go. Well, thank you for the six dollars, small yeah. rags, and Fringy. That's hard to ignore. Uh oh, actual fandom. Actual fandom sent us two dollars, Adam. Wow. Actual fandom says, you know, you guys. Keep insulting Bob's intelligence, and mm -hmm. I think that this is just painting him with a really broad brush. You should really be more specific. Mm -hmm. so there you go. I had is the, that impersonation of Dane. That those all those sighs were written into the the super chat. I had to I had to do them. Oh, okay. Them. So, but thank you, actual fan. There you go. Sweet. Um, sweet, sweet. 
Bad Dragonite for five dollars says an AI already paid a guy on Fiverr to help it get past the "I'm not a robot" prompt, so it could buy things online. That's amazing. Was it programmed to do that, or just figure out how to do that? Because that's hilarious. If it just figured out how to do that, yeah, that's hilarious. AI paid a, someone on Fiverr to do the "I'm not a robot" prompt. Oh wait a minute, that's a meme, right? That didn't actually happen. AI could figure out how to get past the "I'm not a robot" prompt on its own, couldn't it? It could do the whole like. Uh, Figure out where where the car is in the picture. You know, hmm. thing. Yeah. That sounds like a funny bit, though. Uh, Anthony Barron for $10. Thank you. Says, Gene Simmons is the lead singer, you stooge. There you go. True. Yeah, but Paul Stanley sings, too. I, yeah, I would listen to Kiss. Lead, co-vocalist. Look, Paul Stanley is a better singer than Gene Simmons. But they sing a lot of songs together. You, it's real. Have you ever listened to Kiss? Of course. I'm yeah. not a huge Kiss fan, but people were oh. saying it actually did happen on Fiverr. Oh, that's funny. Oh, you didn't hear the size? Oh, I guess um Zoom was probably Zoom was probably cutting out the size. So yeah, it just sounds like pauses. All those pauses were size. Okay. Well, listen, that shows you how well uh Zoom is at cutting out miscellaneous mouth sounds. Wife laughter. Someday you'll have wife laughter in your there videos. You it's going to be great. There you go. Adam was a Kiss roadie. True. Not true, but I did have some Kiss albums. Okay. Isaac, thank you so much, Isaac, for joining the Free Will Seekers. Yeah. Okay. There you go. This, so this makes a lot of sense. Andrew Clark for $2 says, I spent all day lubing switches and stabilizers. Oh, is that what they call it nowadays, Andrew? Switches and stabilizers. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You were lubing yourself up all day to uh, take the A team, <laughs> to take the A team wrench. Okay, I understand. Switches and stabilizers. Sure, 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 sure. What does that mean? What's he? What's he trying to communicate there? He means that he was taking it up the butt all day. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what that means. What? What's a switch and a stabilizer? <laughs> that analogy. You know, like a switch, like he was a top and a bottom, and then he switched. Oh, okay. And then the stabilizer is the guy that holds him in place so he doesn't fall off. You know? Right. Gotcha. <laughs> hmm. but listen, it's very big of you, Andrew, to admit that, but thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, Isaac for six months. Well, I guess he re-upped it, but thank you, Isaac. Isaac for six months says, I saw some of Illuminati's videos, but she lost all credit today. Unrelated, but just finished Octopath Traveler 2. Loved it. A journey I enjoyed. Well, there you go. I've never played any of the Octopath games, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. Sounds fun. Uh, Bad Dry Knight for another $5. Thank you. It says uh, Gizmodo. Oh, it was a Gizmodo article. Chat GPT pretends to be blind and tricked a human into solving a CAPTCHA. That is pretty funny. That's funny. I like that. How does it pay the for the fiber, though? Like, does Chat GPT log into your PayPal account and pay for you? Someone must have there. There are ways to hook up, hook it up to other programs. And I guess I hooked it up to an account because you use so. the API or something. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I don't know how it all works. I'm an idiot, but I think you can go though. I think there's stories of people that are going to Chat GPT and that's teaching them how to do that. Like, how do I hook Chat GPT up to my PayPal? You just ask Chat GPT. Oh, that's a good and yeah, it tells you. Right, right. It's like, oh, you gotta go to this website and do this or sign up for the API here. Right, and, right. Interesting. Yeah. It also codes too. You can ask it like people are asking it, code this video game or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh Andrew Clark for $2 says for mechanical keyboards. Sure. Is that what they call it nowadays? Keyboards? Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. Who lubes their keyboards? I've never, I've never lubed my keyboard in my life. Yeah. Streamers do. So they're quiet. <laughs> they lube up their keyboards to make sure that those keys are really uh, nice and slick. Nice and quiet. <laughs> okay. So you don't hear this. No, you hear I, you hear mine because I have a mechanical keyboard because I bought a mechanical keyboard and not realized it. Although uh, CT uh, did something she was she should not have done. Super chatted again. Far too generous. No, she she organized with a bunch of other people to get me a silent keyboard. 
Oh yeah. So apparently they got me some far too expensive silent keyboard. Uh, we oh. shall see. We'll see if it works. Maybe we can get sure a sponsorship does. deal out of yeah. it. VT says you're getting one that's lubed up. <laughs> Thank Did you. Andrew Clark do the lubing. Does Andrew Clark sticker on the my keyboard. Does that have a little sticker on the back that says lubed by Andrew Clark? Lubed by Andrew Clark. I hope so. Yeah, how does one lube a keyboard? That's a question. Anyways. Let's see here. I'm up to I'm up to 36 likes. Good for you. How are you doing in the uh, uh in the I'm grade? at a thousand? <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. I'm at sixty. Anyway. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> That's hilarious. All because you stalled. That Get was your wrecked. idea to begin with. Get wrecked. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> thank you all for your incredibly generous donation. Uh, thank you, Doomer and Counterpoints, for coming on. I really appreciate having you on. And thank you, of course, Illuminati, for being a complete and total lol cow. <laughs> And making hilarious content for us to cover. Uh, we'll see you. You who made it to the end of the stream. You are the true fans. The true free will seekers. The true enlightened centrists. And we'll see you all on Tuesday. Bad Dragon Knight for $2 says the keyboard only has the letters K and Y. <laughs> there you go. Thank you.